However, this time, it seems much weaker and didn't go for any quicksand maneuver. I thought this thing was rarer than a unicorn. Did we both just get really unlucky? Jaden inwardly questioned, the team assumed their usual fighting position. Alex was alone in the front who will engage in close combat. Jaden and Molf were further back providing ranged support and protected Parson who was beside them, Jaden with her daggers and Molf with his wind blades. A little further back were Becky and Ali who provided only minimal support in a fight such as this. Over the past five days, the team had grown exponentially better as a group. Their teamwork was impeccable. This was mostly due to Alex's ability to be a great leader and bring people together, even forcing himself to act fake nice to Jaden so the team's atmosphere doesn't turn sour and negative, luckily for them. The worm seemed like it belonged to a lower B rank in terms of strength which allowed them to take it out with only medium difficulty. It was much weaker than the one Moby's team went up against. Alex was able to easily dodge most of the worm's attacks due to his lightning fast speed and reflexes, beating the worm with only minimal damages sustained. However, just like Moby's team, they did not notice that the worm was not actually dead, but rather shed its hard skin, burying itself under the sand for a sneak attack. Luckily, Jaden was already expecting such a maneuver thanks to hearing Moby's experiences with the fight, so she warned her team in time for one of them was swallowed whole by the worm's sneak attack. Eventually, the team's constant wailing was able to bring the worm down with Alex seemingly getting the final blow by digging a hole through its stomach. However, the actual finishing blow was snatched by Jaden who expertly threw an extremely enhanced dagger with perfect timing, before Alex could deliver the finishing blow. It was a strategy Moby told her to do called, kill stealing. The team cashed in the worm in for points keeping them comfortably in second place in between Team Natalia and Team Abby who were third and first respectively. The team took a quick rest allowing Ali to heal all their wounds before Jaden suggested them to go to the forest that was visible in the distance. The same forest that Moby and Natalia laid, luckily, her team found no problem with the suggestion and headed straight for the forest in the distance to continue hunting. Jaden had been subtly leading and nudging her team in Moby's direction and it seemed like no one thought that what she was doing was weird or suspicious, not even Alex who always kept a close eye on Jaden's every action. Ha 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 ha. The time has almost come. Jaden thought in excitement, trying her best to hide a devilish laugh and a smile under her impeccable poker face. Chapter 86 The appointed meeting time that was set by Jaden and Moby was drawing near and Jaden had yet to evolve from her lesser demon form, into a greater and more powerful regular demon like the rest of her family. This was due to Becky and her bug ability. Jaden simply could not find an opportunity to stay clear of her teammate's sight. At first, she had planned to go elsewhere to evolve under the excuse that she was going to take a shit. However, it did not work as Alex always kept a closer eye on her, not allowing her to go too far. And, due to Becky's spirit bug ability, she was able to easily spy on Jaden if she so pleased, which is something Jaden could not risk doing. This is why she also opted to not shapeshift and run away as there would be a high risk of being caught that she simply could not afford. She thought about just killing the spirit bug if she noticed that it is following her. However, she ultimately decided against it as it would seem treacherous and suspicious as hell. Even at night when other teams usually took turns to watch over, her team did no such thing as Becky's spirit bug was always hovering in the air, scouting the area around them, notifying them about any incoming beast making Nightwatch redundant. If Jaden wanted even a chance to evolve in peace, she needed some way to either kill or critically injure Becky. She would rather critically injure her than kill her as she was vital to the team's success and Jaden still wanted a decent score on the test. She needed her gone if she wished to sneak off to meet with Moby for a chance to evolve. Sadly for Jaden, she was sure that any underhanded tactic she could pull would be immediately caught by Alex, something she did not want at all. So, all she could do was wait and be patient for the chance that Lady Luck could shine upon her before the end of the exam. And finally, her gamble had paid off. While walking inside a narrow path in the forest, the group randomly heard a loud scream. Ah! Asterisk GAG asterisk asterisk GAG asterisk asterisk cough asterisk asterisk cough asterisk. The group was startled and immediately rushed over to where they heard the scream. They found a deep, narrow hole that had a large pile of leaves beside it, like a trap of some sort. At the bottom, they saw the bloody figure of the screaming and gagging Becky being impaled by a wooden spike that had some sort of purple substance oozing from its edges. Luckily, Becky was able to notice what she was falling into thanks to Parsons' night vision. So, she was luckily able to react in time to lessen the blow by kicking the tip of the wooden spike, breaking it off making it less sharp and lessening the amount of weird purple substance on top of it. Without hesitation, Alex cloaked himself with lightning, bolting down towards the agonizing Becky before stopping his fall by punching and kicking the walls of the hole with incredible force, quickly grabbing her with one arm before wall jumping all the way back up, laying her on the ground in front of him. Ali! Can you save her? Alex asked with nervousness and clear concern, looking at the agonizing, unconscious, skinny, blood-coughing, purple-veined, pale-faced blonde girl laying in front of him. Um. Luckily she is still alive. I am able to completely heal her injuries, but I have no idea how to heal this poison, I've never dealt with such a thing before. Luckily, not that much poison entered her system so I think she should be able to survive, best case scenario is that she stays unconscious and wakes up tomorrow. As for worst case is that she will stay unconscious until we head back to earth and get her proper treatment. I guess death is still slightly possible. Ali timidly explained while healing Becky, lessening her pain, making her tense face relax and go to sleep. Fuck. I can't risk her dying. Even if we lose out on a lot of points by doing this. It is still worth it to save her life. Alex screamed, holding the emergency button in his right hand. Hey. Bro. Cut that out. If you do that, we would definitely be docked points and would look like pussies in front of the entire school and teachers. I can't have that on my conscience man. I would not be surprised if there was an extra rule that they did not tell us about upon pressing the button to punish, and separate pussies from true warriors. My family would fucking kill me for being a disappointment and a disgrace if you press that shit. Don't fucking do it bro. I swear if you do I would rather fight you here and now to maintain my honor and dignity as a man. Moth said, tightly grabbing onto Alex's hand. I don't fucking care. An innocent human life is more important than your stupid fucking pride and family honor. Alex retorted in anger. Um. I'm okay with going home now too. I miss school. 
I would rather deal with bullies than high rank beasts lurking everywhere. Plus, she really needs help. That's a good enough excuse for using the button right. Parson nervously said. Shut the fuck up pip squeak. No one fucking asked for your opinion. Molf bellowed at Parson who was standing behind him making him shriek and shudder in fear. Alex, calm down and think things through, we can't be acting so hasty. I agree with Moff, the button is probably some sort of test from the school to see who is a pussy and who will tough it out to the end like a true soldier. Please calm down and make the right decision Alex. If her condition gets critical, then press the button. Just please hold off for now. Jaden confidently said with a serious face. Ahahahaha. You finally show your true colors huh bitch. I knew it. You don't care about your teammates lives at all. Alex screamed like a crazy person. Um. Alex. I would also have to agree with them. The chances that she will die are almost none. You should just calm down a bit and think things through. Ali reluctantly added. Do none of you understand? Do none of you care at all about the lives of the innocent? You are all a bunch of madmen. Alex screamed as he slowed delved further into insanity. Then, suddenly, Alex felt a small tug on his legs. It was none other than Becky who was laying beneath him. Don't do it. Please. Becky barely managed to mutter before once again going unconscious. Ha. Huh. Why? Why is everyone like this? Caring more about some stupid points on a test than your very life. Alex quietly said, dropping on two knees. Don't you get it? If we do bad in school, there would be no point in living. Military school decides absolutely everything in a person's life. That's always how society worked since the war. You're a good leader. Please, stop living in your own little goody two-shoes fantasy and grow up a little and face reality. Moff said in a harsh yet caring tone. Hey. Alex. Don't feel down. We all know that your heart is in the right place. But you sometimes need to stop and think of things from other people's perspectives and not just act on pure instinct. Life has gotten a lot harder ever since the war. People's ideals and motivations are entirely dependent on military school. Most people would rather die than to fail military school and get disowned by their families. I believe that she most likely also falls under that category of people. Sometimes saving one person will come at the cost of killing many. You are a very kind-hearted person. I have only ever seen you get mad when you stand up for your friends and at clear injustice. You don't go out of your way to bully the innocent like all the other high-ranking students. I have grown to admire that about you. Don't let this incident make you lose sight of who and what you are. Use this as a learning opportunity to grow. I believe in you. Jaden said with a bright smile that shined brightly like the sun, squatting down to meet Alex's eye level, reaching her hand out to him to help him get back on his feet. Yeah. I guess you are right. Alex said with a small chuckle, grabbing Jaden's hand, regaining his composure once again. Okay guys. We are going to find a good hiding place to safely camp out for the rest of the exam. We are far ahead of the team in third place and there is no way in hell we would be able to catch up to first place, so I think we should be safe just hiding for the rest of the exam or until Becky makes a full recovery. Does anyone have any objections? He picked up Becky's unconscious body, effortlessly putting it on his shoulder and announced to the rest of the group. They just nodded back at him with a smile and continued on the path they were on, only to find even more traps, all of which had already been activated but with no sign of blood on the spikes that were in perfect condition, which was really fascinating to the group. So, they just decided to take a more obscure pathway to avoid the traps and continue to look for a suitable hiding spot, to camp out for the rest of the exam. Phew. That was close. For a second there I thought that he was actually going to do it. It would have fucked up everything if he had actually pressed that button. Luckily. Now, I will have a greater opportunity to evolve and I think Alex hates me a little less now. I wonder how much stronger I will get. Natalia won't even stand a chance. Jaden thought, brimming with excitement and anticipation. Chapter 87. Day 5, 6.20 p.m., Planet Zabilvia, Team Natalia was taking their usual break after a long session of hunting. They were all huddled up around a fireplace eating some of Natalia's homemade cooking that she had stored inside her storage ring. Hum hum. Delicious. This shit fucking slaps. Natalia. Your cooking is amazing. You would be a great wife for whoever is lucky enough. Moby said, devouring all of Natalia's food. You're always teasing me. Um. It's not that good. You are just over-exaggerating. Natalia nervously retorted, covering her face that was redder and brighter than a burning sundae. I agree with my buddy Moby here. This cooking is absolutely delish. Travis added, only receiving a simple nod and a smile from Natalia. Jay just looked at Moby's cheerful face with contempt, trying to hide it under his poker face. You moved on from Haley so fast. Didn't you? You fucking man whore. He inwardly thought. Ever since Moby revealed his power, Jay and Travis had been treating him a lot nicer with a lot more respect, exactly like he expected them to act. This made his time around them a little more bearable, even though he knows that they were most likely doing so as to damage control just in case, he wanted to take revenge on them for their previous harsh treatment of him and to just suck up to him in general. They only had a limited supply of regeneration potions and they needed all the extra protection they could get as they now lacked a healer. Suddenly, a ringing noise sounded, it was what he was waiting for all day long. Sorry guys. It's an emergency. Gotta go take a leak. It should not take too long. I'll be back in a bit. Don't eat my portion or else. Moby said, sprinting out of the cave in a panic, every time Moby said that he wanted to take a piss, Natalia was always really tempted to go spy on him with her camera, just for a chance to catch a glimpse, or even take a picture of his mighty katana. Out of all the pictures and videos that Natalia had in her stash, that was the only yet one of the most important things missing. However, she never found the chance to do so as if she says that she also wants to go at the same time as Moby, it would seem really suspicious and creepy which is something she does not want to come off as, especially to Moby point three minutes later. Moby walked back into the cave, looking more refreshed and happy than usual. He sat back down around the fireplace in his usual spot right beside Natalia. 
he greeted his team once more before quickly gobbling down the rest of his food. Then, he slowly turned his head, looking Natalia straight in the eyes before saying. Um. Natalia. I've been meaning to tell you something for a long time. Mind if we talk in private? Moby said, looking at Natalia straight in the eye with a mellow yet serious stare. Oh, oh of course. Natalia stuttered, she could not believe what her ears were hearing at all. Before she had the chance to cover up her beet red face, Moby grabbed her by the hand, dragging her with him outside of the cave. Follow me. This shouldn't take too long, Moby said with the voice of an angel and a smile on his face, his red-tinted black hair dancing in the wind. In Natalia's eye, he looked like an angel sent down from heaven just for her. She felt like a princess being swept away by her prince charming. Have fun love birds. Travis teased from behind. It it's not what you think. This is some serious strategy plan that Moby wanted to discuss with me. All right. Natalia nervously replied leading to Moby giving her only a simple nod and a smile as a reply. We have some seriously urgent matters to discuss. Nothing more. We will be back in a bit. Moby said with a serious face. However, in Natalia's eyes, he looked like a charming knight in shining armor trying to protect the honor of his queen. Whatever you say. Well. You two have fun with your serious discussion then. Travis yelled at Moby and Natalia who were walking away in the distance. Jay just stayed silent as he looked at Natalia and Moby walk out of the cave with absolute disgust. He felt his stomach turning, making him want to barf out everything he just ate, but he somehow managed to keep it under his poker face. Moby and Natalia walked through the darkness of the night, no one speaking a single word. They were still both holding hands, Moby leading the way with a mesmerizing and beautiful purple aura surrounding his green eyes, that he had previously explained to her was a way to use his ability to enhance his vision allowing him to see clearly at night. She was too entranced by Moby's looks to even say a word as she drifted into her own fantasies and let her imagination run wild. Luckily, as they walked, they met no beasts at all as they had already cleared out most of the ones that resided around the cave. After a few minutes of walking, they reached a clearing in the woods where Moby stopped and let go of Natalia's hand before looking her straight in the eyes with a blushed face and a nervous look. Um. I'm so sorry for dragging you here. Especially in front of everyone else like that. I am sorry. Moby nervously said, scratching his right cheek. And no. Don't apologize. I, I really don't mind at all. She replied, playing with her long silver hair. Moby looked at the ground, taking a deep breath before standing up straight, looking Natalia straight in the eyes before saying. Natalia. I think I am in love with you. He said with confidence and a firm resolve. Huh? W A W A what? Really? Natalia replied, not able to believe her own ears. Of course really. You are an amazing leader with a heart of gold and an impeccable personality. You care for all of our safety. You treated me with respect even when I was an F rank with no ability. You saved my life multiple times. You risked your life for my sake and others over, and over, and over again. Not to mention that you are also the most beautiful girl I have ever seen. Your misrising long silver hair, her radiant smile. Your heavenly purple eyes. Your full luscious lips. They are all to die for. And you are even a great cook. You are the perfect girl. Will you please go out with me? Moby asked, closing his eyes, seemingly waiting for rejection. Suddenly, he heard loud sniffling followed up by the sound of heavy crying. When Moby opened his eyes, he saw Natalia on her knees, bawling her eyes out like a baby. Huh. What happened? I am so sorry. I didn't mean to make you cry. Just forget about everything I just said then. I am so sorry, Moby said, putting his hand on her shoulder trying to comfort her and make up for his mistake. No. You got it all wrong. I am not sad. I am happy. Really, 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 really happy. You actually don't understand. I've been waiting for this moment for so long now. I've had the biggest crush on you for the longest time now. What you just said was like a dream come true. She screamed, tightly grabbing Moby's hand that was laid on her shoulder, still bawling her eyes out. You are the perfect man in my eyes too. You are so pure, kind and caring compared to all those slut-chasing guys at school. The second I laid eyes on you I knew that you were the one for me and me alone. The way you work hard to train and better yourself every day even with the constant harassment and bullying, and the lack of an ability is truly inspiring and is what I really love about you. You're almost hypnotizing deep green eyes and your natural black and red hair along with your toned physique and beautiful face, and not to mention your hot jawline are something I just could not resist. This is by far the happiest moment of my life. I love you too. She yelled, still on her knees, a waterfall falling down her eyes out. I am so glad. Moby hugged her tightly with tears falling down his face startling Natalia, making her face turn redder than a tomato, prompting her to hug him back, they could not see each other's faces, which allowed Moby to rest his face and cringe really hard, while Natalia was smiling and crying like she was melting in his embrace like it was the best time of her life. Then, after they had been hugging for a few seconds, Natalia stopped the hug and went in for the kiss that Moby immediately swerved and dodged with no hesitation as soon as he saw it coming, that we can say for our first date. Moby said, putting his finger on Natalia's lips prompting her to pout and nod in understanding. Why don't we have our first date later tonight? After everyone else is asleep. Like around 11 o'clock? Same place. Just the two of us. All alone with no one else. I know that we are in the middle of an exam and all, but what would be more romantic than a first date on another planet under the purple night sky? Moby said with a smile. Yes of course. Natalia cheerfully replied standing up on her two feet once more. We should probably head back. The guys must be worried. We took a bit too long. Moby said, rubbing the back of his head before grabbing Natalia's hand once more, walking with her back towards the cave. Um. Not to be rude, but, what is that liquid dripping from around your legs? Moby asked as they were still walking together, seemingly clueless about what it is. Oh um. I think I just sat in a really wet part in the forest. Please don't pay attention to it. It's too embarrassing. 
she awkwardly said, looking away from Moby with a large visible blush. Um. Moby I have a quick question for you. Who is more beautiful? Me or Jaden Griffith? She nervously asked. Dot Moby's poker face broke down for a split second after she asked that question. Luckily, Natalia was still looking away from him in embarrassment awaiting his answer so she did not notice it. He gulped down his saliva and steeled his resolve before giving her his answer. Well, you of course. What kind of question was that? Where did that question come from? Moby somewhat awkwardly replied. You don't understand how relieved and happy I am to hear that. I know that Jaden Griffith keeps you as her personal sex toy and pet to do her every bidding, the entire school knows at this point. She is a shitty slut that no one likes. No one but horny guys that lust after her for her body and money. I know that you now have the power to break out of her control. But. Wouldn't it be better if she were just. Dead, she must pay for everything she has done to you. Her and her partner Abby Reed. With my family's authority. I can kill them both and get away with it as long as no one knows that it is I that did it. I made a deal with one of the teachers allowing me to bypass the lie detector test. So. What do you say? Are you down for revenge? Natalia said with an uncharacteristically wide devilish grin. Moby's brain was spinning in full gear after hearing what he heard, trying his best to formulate an answer. He knew full well that such a question would come but it still hit him extremely hard when it happened. I don't really condone killing people. But, in their case, I guess that it is fine. He awkwardly replied. TSK, TSK, I see that you have not yet made up your mind. Your soul is indeed too pure for such things. Don't worry. I will always be there to help and support you. I know what is best for you. Just put all your trust in me. I personally take care of everything. Don't worry, I will help you grow into a fine man. Natalia said with an innocent smile that had a much darker aura to it. Yes. I will trust you with that. Moby awkwardly said as they both neared the entrance of the cave. Chapter 88. 10.01 PM, Team Alex Camp, Moby, Jaden, and Abby just started one of their most important daily meetings yet. Moby and Jaden talked about their plan even further and Abby talked about how she was going to attack an entire city full of goblins and asked for permission to do it for the third time this week which Moby replied with. Remember, go in with a full plan in mind. If you are confident that you could take it down then go for it. Show them what the future general of the demon army could do. Burn them all to the ground. Which she then replied with an endless barrage of praises and promises of victory that Moby wholeheartedly accepted. Moby, by the way, do you know what the difference between a lesser and normal doppelganger is? Jaden asked with excitement. I'm sorry, I can't really answer that question at the moment. There seems to be something wrong with my head that is not letting me remember. Moby replied with slight annoyance. Are you okay my lord? Is something wrong with your head? Do you need help? I will fly to the other side of the planet in one night if I have to. Abby screamed in panic. Calm down Abby. I was only speaking metaphorically. I am completely fine both physically and mentally. Moby immediately replied, which resulted in a big long sigh of relief from Abby. Anyways Abby. Good luck with your city invasion tomorrow. I would love to hear every little detail when you're finished. Moby said, trying to brighten her formerly panicked mood. I wish you the best of luck to my lord. Give her what she deserves. Abby cheerfully said. So. Jaden. Same spot we talked about. I'll lure her there and then we both attack her. Make sure to evolve before you come for an extra power boost. I plan to go there as a wisp but I am scared that it might start to rain and I die. I could always come as a bird but I don't know how to fly yet. And I am not very quick on four legs so I'll have to come there as myself then transform into something else to blend in with the environment before you two come. I should be there at 10.55. Jaden explained. Sounds good. That should be completely fine. I should be at the spot at around 11 or a bit after. Just make sure to convince Alex to keep you on night watch and make sure you are not being followed and you should be good. When you see us, don't attack right away and wait for my signal if anything wrong or weird happens on my end I'll let you know immediately. Moby replied. Of course. Don't even worry about it bruv. Jaden said in an extremely confident tone before everyone said their goodbyes and closed their mind link. Jaden was just silently sitting around a fireplace with her teammates in a random yet secure cave located on the side of a mountain. The group was having dinner before their usual sleeping time at 10.10. Hey, Alex. Since we don't have Becky to keep watch for us while we sleep, don't you think that we should take shifts with night watch? Jaden asked. Mm hmm. Yes. That is indeed true. Well then. I'll just watch over all of us for the entire night. Alex said, nonchalantly stretching out his stiff shoulders. No. Don't be stupid. You need to rest too. If you stay up all night then you would be pretty much useless tomorrow. You are the strongest on the team. If a B-rank beast attacks us and you are too tired to fight then we are done for. I propose we all take two hour shifts to make it fair. Jaden replied with clear annoyance. Fine. I guess you have a point. But who is willing to start it? Alex said, looking at all his teammates. I call dips on last. Moth immediately said with no hesitation at all. I'll take fur. I call going first. I don't like waking up in the middle of the night just to go to sleep again. Might as well do it all now. Jaden said, cutting off Parson. I'll take second then. Alex said. This then makes Ali third and Parson fourth. He added. Wow. That was a lot easier than I expected. I thought that I would have to argue with him for minutes just so he can trust me with night watch. I guess he is, lightning, up to me a bit. Jaden thought with a smile after her teammates went to bed, Jaden waited until 10.30 to ensure that they were all asleep before slowly exiting the cave after checking if there was even a possibility of a beast attack in the next two hours only to find that the entire area clear was of any beast. After running away from her team's cave for a few minutes, she finally reached a much smaller cave that she had spotted earlier in the day. She thought it was the safest area for her to evolve. 
She used her energy sense to look around for any beast in the area to make sure that she was not attacked mid-evolution finding there to be nothing at all. She heard stories from Moby and Abby about how painful the experience was, but it did not stop her from being excited. She was by no means a masochist, but she could not help feel excited for a large boost in her power. She focused on the empty feeling in her head and began to fill it with her demon energy. Heh. Moby was just over-exaggerating. This shit isn't too bad, thought as a feeling of calmness spread throughout her entire body, then, out of nowhere, all that peace and serenity went away and were replaced by nothing other than agonizing pain. She felt like her heart was going to explode out of her chest. Her skin began to melt off before being regenerated, over and over again. Every bone in her body cracked and shattered all at once, turning her body into a jelly-like substance before they regenerated and allowed her to regain her previous form. Boiling black blood escaped out of every orifice of her body in liters, as she tried her best to grasp her air with no avail as she screamed in agony. It was by far the most painful thing she had ever experienced or even thought was possible. The six minutes that the evolution took felt more like months or even years of time until it finally came to an end, allowing her to open her eyes and freely move around once more. Even after all the pain and suffering she had to endure, she still felt like it was all well worth it for the extra strength boost and it didn't make her forget, or lose sight of her task at hand. At first, she didn't feel any different at all but when she looked at her watch, it told a different story. 10,640. That's a 1,000 plus point boost. That's incredible, she mentally screamed with excitement. She also assumed that her transformations were now stronger than 70% of the original, but she did not know the exact amount. If she had to guess, it would be either 75% or 80%. She couldn't wait to test out her new powers on Natalia as she currently had no time to do it now. She looked at the time on her watch that read 10.45. By her estimation, it should only take her 5 minutes at her new max speed to reach the location where Moby told her to wait and hide. She sprinted out of the cave at full speed, brimming with excitement and anticipation. Scenarios of what was about to go down played over and over in her head making her not help but let out a small, audible chuckle. Suddenly, as she was still running, she started to pick up the sound of weird whooshing heading in her direction. It almost reminded her of the sound that Dio's stand, the world, made when stopping time from that ancient 100-year-old anime she loved called Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Jaden immediately activated her energy sense to see if there was anything around her. She was surprised to see the aura of an unknown figure, disappear and reappear in bursts of three every few seconds until it finally reached her location. Jaden teleported her daggers into her hands and prepared for the worse. Then, out of nowhere, the figure of a girl with a gold and white suit of armor swooped in and went straight for Jaden's neck, slicing at it with a blade that extended out of her forearm prompting Jaden to block with her dagger, something she only barely managed to do. As their blades clashed, it allowed Jaden to take a clear look at the face of her attacker. Natalia Zane. What the fuck? Where is Moby at? What the fuck is going on? She inwardly panicked. As they concluded their clash of blades, they both backed off by jumping several steps backwards. Jaden started to slightly panic as her brain spun in full gear. When she tried to contact Moby using their mind link, nothing happened, he would not respond at all making her worry that something happened to him. What the fuck are you doing here? Where is Moby? Jaden bellowed. HMPH. I am surprised you were even able to block that. Especially in the pitch black darkness of the night. And, don't worry about Moby. Your little pet is completely safe. I just told him to sit tight at home base while his future wife takes care of the trash. Natalia said with a devilish smile on her face, licking her blades like an insane nutcase. Chapter 89. 10.40 p.m., Team Alex Camp, Becky struggled to open her eyes due to her still weakened and poisoned state. It felt almost like lifting dumbbells with the power of her eyelids alone. She somehow managed to lift her head up slightly in order to look around and get a better grasp of her surroundings. There, with her blurry vision, she saw Alex, Moff, Parson, and Ali in their sleeping bags, fast asleep. However, she could not see Jaden anywhere which made her panic. She was tasked by her best friend to keep an eye on her and she let her out of her vision which she thought was unacceptable, even in her current state. She used every ounce of her remaining power to summon her spirit bug, sending it outside the cave to scout the surrounding area for the chance that she might find Jaden's whereabouts. Luckily, she still had the help of Parson's night vision as her body was close in his vicinity. She continued frantically looking around from high above in the purple night sky like her life depended on it only to find absolutely nothing. Then, out of the corner of her vision, she spotted an unknown figure dashing out of a small cave in the distance, heading towards a large clearing in the forest that laid far ahead. From its agility and speed, she doubted that it was the D-ranked Jaden Griffith, thinking that it was most likely a really quick magical beast. However, when she went in for a slightly closer look, she confirmed that it was indeed Jaden Griffith which really surprised her. She had to immediately report what she found to her best friend, Natalia Zane, over the past month. Natalia had started to act strangely towards her, always asking her to spy on her newfound crush, Moby Kane. Becky did agree with her that he was indeed very dreamy, but she still could not understand why her best friend would be over the top obsessed with such a weak, f rank piece of trash like him. She even asked her to spy on him while he ate lunch on the roof with two other girls which only led to her spirit bug being squished like the bug it was every time it got near them, not allowing her to see anything. It was almost like they could sense it when it got near. So, Natalia then opted for her to just spy from outside the roof doors, trying to hear any conversation going on inside with absolutely no success, as it was completely silent which really frustrated Natalia to no end, more mad than Becky had ever seen before. Of course, she did not voice her opinion or discourage Natalia on her obsessed nature, and questionable love choices as to avoid making cracks in their friendship. Becky was very weak in a fight due to her extremely reckon and support-based ability which made her extremely susceptible to bullying. But, thanks to her best friend Natalia, she was always safe and protected at school. She owed her a great deal and she could not afford to lose her friendship with her, or even worse, make an enemy out of her. If she did, she would no doubt be eaten alive by the other students. So, when Natalia found out that she was going to be on Jaden's team, she asked her to keep a close eye on her and lure her in towards her location to beat her up and teach her a lesson. She said that she had been badly treating her crush every day, using him as her own personal slave to do her every bidding. So, she of course agreed without hesitation which made Natalia super happy. 
Natalia gave her a tracking device that would help her locate her and a phone that works on even other planets. She said that they were extremely expensive items she bought with her own money just in case of such a situation. These items were probably not allowed on the exam due to rule against teams colluding or sabotaging each other, but Becky did not care at all as it was all for the sake of their friendship, and because she promised her that she can get her past the lie detector test with no problems at all. So, Becky accepted the gear without hesitation, promising Natalia that she will keep a close eye on Jaden and report to her if anything important happened, or when she thought that Natalia had a chance to strike and take her out, luckily, their group spawned somewhat near each other and she had been trying to guide her team in Natalia's direction. What really surprised her was that Jaden was also subtly guiding the team in the same direction which she thought was just a coincidence. Over the past five days that she had spent with Jaden as a teammate, she did not find her to be that bad. Although she found her extremely annoying, she was nowhere near the description that Natalia had given her. However, she valued her friendship with Natalia and her own survival over the well-being of a random stranger. So, she felt absolutely no regret doing what she was about to do. Still in her crippled and disoriented state, she pulled out the phone that Natalia had given her from her pocket, and called her before she goes unconscious once again. Asterisk asterisk 10 colon 45 pm, Team Natalia camp. Back in Team Natalia's camp, Moby and Natalia were quietly preparing themselves to go on their first date. They went to bed at around 10 o'clock when the rest of their team fell asleep, and pretended to sleep until 10.45 when they thought that Jay and Travis were fast asleep. They were both eagerly excited to go on their first date, although it was of course for different reasons, then, suddenly, a small vibrating sound that was barely even audible came off of Natalia's body. Sit tight in the cave. I need to go take a quick piss. This shouldn't take too long. Natalia whispered before immediately running out of the cave. Moby thought nothing weird of Natalia's actions as he thought that it was probably some sort of hidden vibrator in her pants malfunctioning, or something along those lines making him chuckle as he sat on a nearby rock in the middle of the cave and patiently waited for Natalia's return. Then, only 30 seconds after he started waiting, the entrance of the cave suddenly collapsed, blocking him inside. What the fuck is going on? He inwardly screamed. What was that sound? What just happened? Jay yelled, waking up from the loud sound. Come on man. I was having a good night's sleep. Travis playfully complained. The entrance suddenly collapsed you idiots. I'll just break us out with my energy ability. Moby said, forming a large ball of pure demon energy from his hand, blasting it at the rubble blocking the entrance of the cave in order to vaporize it. The raging purple ball of demon energy flew through the cave before. Crashing against the entrance rocks blocking the entrance, causing a huge explosion. He had no doubt in his mind that such a strong blast would completely vaporize the simple rocks in its path. However, when the dust settled, the entrance was completely unharmed, fuck me sideways. How did that do jack shit? Moby thought, both shocked and confused, even Jay and Travis who were sitting behind him, still in their beds had the exact same reaction, then out of nowhere, Natalia's voice came from outside of the cave. Sorry for doing this guys. It was me that collapsed the entrance on you. Sorry if you were a little startled. I have really urgent matters that I must attend to. It shouldn't take too long. I just need to go take out the trash and I'll be right back. Don't worry. You will all be safe while I am gone. I added a temporary defense crystal to reinforce the walls and entrance of the cave so no one will be able to enter from the outside, or exit from the inside. The crystal's effect should only last for around an hour so sit tight and be patient for my return. Also, Moby, I know that you were super excited but I am sorry that our plans got all messed up. Luckily, we can always put them on hold for tomorrow. Well, you guys behave yourselves. Bye bye. Natalia said in an overly joyous mood before the sound of blinking and footsteps could be heard from the outside. No Natalia. Wait. Take me with you. I can help you out. Moby screamed at Natalia who just ignored him and kept blinking away. She thought that he wasn't ready for what she was going to do and it would be better off staying at the camp with others, until she finished taking care of business. Chapter 90. Moby started to genuinely panic, he could not believe what was happening. All his careful planning and strategizing were crumbling right in front of his very eyes. When he tried to contact Jaden using their mind link nothing at all happened. It reminded him exactly of the time when Jaden had gone to General Riker's office in order to take the lie detector test in his stead. In Moby's mind, there could only be one explanation for why his mind link had stopped working, a magic crystal used for blocking communications, one other than the one that she used to reinforce the entrance of the cave. He learned the hard way back then that his powers were not omnipotent and with no limits, that they still had to abide by the rules of the world. Truly, Moby's prediction was indeed true. Other than food, a sleeping bag, a high-quality 16K camera and an album folder full of Moby's pictures titled, Top Secret Do Not Touch or I Will Kill You, she had brought two magic crystals, one for defense, and one for anti-communications just for a moment such as this. She knew that Moby and Jaden had some way of communicating with each other as part of Jaden's filthy manipulation towards him, but she didn't know what it was exactly. Additionally, she also brought a large bottle of weird purple liquid that was powerful poison, and some rope for emergency reasons that she ended up using for the traps that she planted to try and kill Haley. Moby was still shocked and confused about what happened. However, he knew that he needed to find a way to get out of the cave and quick. Knowing Natalia and what going to take out the trash meant, he knew that she was headed straight for Jaden's location that she had managed to find, and know about by some unknown mean he did not at all predict. He doubted that Jaden, even in her evolved form would be a match for Natalia. He was convinced that she needed his help to win. He was currently running borrowed time. He needed to quickly reach Natalia and Jaden before Jaden undoubtedly dies. Hey. Jay, can you help me get out of here? I really need to go and help Natalia. Can you be a real homie and use your earth ability to create a tunnel to the outside? It would be much faster and more efficient than me using my energy ability, Moby said, trying his best to act as nice natural as possible so that he follows his request without any suspicions. Moby ran right past Jay who was completely silent, looking at the ground hiding his face and headed straight for the back wall of the very tall and large dome-shaped cave they were in. Start tunneling from here. We don't really have Moo. Moby said before being interrupted by his legs being engulfed in the ground and a giant rock spearheaded straight for his head, which he promptly dodged by flexing his head to the right in an extremely drastic way. 
Can you please just shut the fuck up? I am tired of your stupid fucking nice act. Just drop it already. It makes my blood boil every time you talk to me in a nice or familiar way like me and you were friends. I know that you definitely hate my guts for talking shit about you all the time. I know that you are a stupid fucking man whore that flip flops from girl to girl all the time. From Haley to Natalia in only three days of time. Have you need shame, decency or pride? You are the reason that Haley died. I still don't understand why she even liked an ugly mug like yours. I know that you must have done something to her. That is the only explanation for why she ever liked you. You ruined everything. Without you around she would have definitely fallen for me and she would still be alive and in my embrace right now. I've been waiting for this moment for so long now. I bided my time until Natalia was gone because I knew that she would definitely side with you without a doubt. But with you alone, I definitely stand a chance. I don't care about my own life anymore. I will definitely be arrested or even killed when the lie detector comes back that I killed someone but I don't give a shit. It will all be worth it if I can take you out with me. Now please do me a favor and die. Jay screamed like a lunatic, forming several rock spears around him, shooting them straight at the seemingly stuck and speechless Moby. As soon as the spears neared him, they were all destroyed by a blast of purple energy before Moby just casually walked out of the bindings ensnaring his legs with a devilish smile on his face that was followed up by a mighty laugh that echoed throughout the entire cave. Over the past three days, Moby had managed to level up nine times, reaching level 40. He assigned all the stats he had gained into agility and intelligence except for 30 points that he had used on mine to get it to level 100. The skill he obtained was not at all useful in combat but it was extremely useful in many other cases despite its major drawbacks. He could clearly see why Avilia claimed that it could help him bypass the lie detector. If used correctly. Moby's new stats were as follows. Asterisk asterisk name, Moby Kane race, draconic demon of sin level, 40 XP to next level 1, 440 000, 000, 000 power level, 12,600, 11,000 plus 1,600 HP, 165, 165 demon energy, 271 a 315 demon energy regeneration, 189 demon energy hour strength, 336, 281 plus 55, agility, 337, 312 plus 20. 25, endurance, 272, 222 plus 50, intelligence, 315, 285 plus 30, mind, 140, 100 plus 40, available points to distribute. Zero asterisk asterisk, ha 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 ha. Are you actually being serious? You are still crying and simping over an ugly dead goblin. That's two jokes. And yeah. You were right. I don't give a shit about any of you. I never had. Except for Natalia who I have special plans for and Naya who was an actually nice human being. I had just been acting nice towards your sorry as to keep a face up for reasons that your tiny pea-sized brain could not understand. Now, I don't really have time for this shit, so I am going to repeat myself only once more. Moby said in an ominous voice, demon flashing towards Jay, nearly effortlessly dodging all of his attempts at attacking him, then, when he finally reached him, Moby grabbed and held up Jay by the face, tightly crushing and squeezing it with an iron grip before saying in a serious tone. Make a fucking tunnel out of here before I shove my sword up your ass, making it come out of the other end. Asterisk cough asterisk asterisk cough asterisk what the fuck? How the hell are you so strong? You were never like this when we were hunting. Jay screamed while at the same time trying to catch a breath of air, kicking and shoving in front of him with no avail. Don't make me fucking repeat myself. Moby said, tightening his grip on his head to the point of almost forming cracks in his skull. I don't fucking care. Asterisk cough asterisk I would rather die than help out filth like you. Jay retorted, biting Moby's hand prompting him to infuse it with pure demon energy, burning the tongue and face of the still biting Jay like he didn't care about the pain at all, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? He's absolutely psycho bats it crazy. Why won't he just fucking behave and do like he was told? Moby inwardly cursed his seemingly never ending bad luck, Moby did not want to kill Jay just yet. He had no other choice, but to force Jay into making an alternative exit for him with his earth ability if he wanted to make it to Jaden on time. If he vaporized a hole himself, it would use up most of his demon energy to do so, something he could not afford to do if he wanted to even have a chance against a fully powered Natalia. He could always make the tunnel then use his drain skill on Jay, but it would only replenish a small portion of his demon energy as his drain skill was still at level 1 and was very inefficient, so he decided against it. He also doubted that his mind control would work on the stubborn minded Jay and he was not willing to try, just to end up wasting his demon energy. And even if it somehow did work, the control time would definitely not be long enough for him to complete anywhere near a full tunnel so he just scrapped that idea completely. Last chance before I gouge your eyes out, crush your balls and burn your sack, forcing you to swallow it before finally giving you a slow, painful death. Moby threatened once again, lifting his left hand, surrounding it with demon energy like he was about to strike before increasing the intensity of the energy flowing around his right hand, causing the still biting Jay to grunt in pain as his teeth started to burn off and his mouth began to salivate blood. Well, shit. It seems like he still has no intention of cooperating. I'll just have to increase the pain tenfold and see how he likes it. Moby thought with growing impatience. Then, as he was about to use his energy-infused hand to rip Jay's eyes right out of his sockets, a large, powerful, purple arrow came from the side, forcing him to let go of Jay to dodge the incoming attack. The arrow came from the complete other side of the cave from none other than Travis who Moby had nearly completely forgotten about in his restless frenzy against Jay. Stop torturing Jay you fucking monster. Travis screamed from the other side with a visible smile on his face that Moby only saw due to his enhanced vision. Chapter 91 Fuck. Why the fuck is he now butting in? And what is with that stupid smile on his face? I don't have time for this shit. Jaden needs my help. Moby inwardly cursed. He now had to go 2 vs 1 against them while at the same time trying to conserve as much demon energy as he could which was definitely not an easy task to do. Although they were much weaker than him, it was still a 2 on 1 situation where Jay has a clear terrain advantage as they were in a cave, and all the walls were made out of rock for him to manipulate. If he wanted to win in the best and shortest amount of time, he needed to use his demon energy efficiently to the point where he could win, and restore all his energy by draining both Jay's and Travis's life essence. 
He also wanted to not sustain any damage if possible so he could be in top condition when facing Natalia. Normally, Moby would have extinguished the campfire and any other remaining light in the cave so he could have the visibility advantage, but it was redundant in his current situation. The cave that they were in was extremely tall and had a large, unreachable hole at the top which let down direct moonlight, allowing them all great visibility. The campfire that they had only served as heat for them and nothing more. Jay tumbled on the ground before boosting himself away from Moby's location with a rock pillar that he erected from under him. His face was barely even recognizable due to all the damage he sustained from such close-up and long exposure to Moby's pure demon energy. Bloody hot red scars and muscle tissues filled his face, his cheeks where Moby was grabbing on the tightest completely disintegrated allowing his bloody, melted teeth to be clearly seen from his cheeks. His eyebrows were completely burned off and his once long blonde hair was now a patchy mess as his hair had almost completely shed or burned off. The heavens have gifted me a chance once more. This time they also gifted me with a worthy ally. They as well know that my cause is just. I shall not let this chance slip you get away this time. Jay screamed with awkward speech like a madman, controlling the earth from the walls and floor beside Moby into spikes before shooting a few rock spear at him from the front, prompting Moby to slash most of the incoming spikes in half and jump up to dodge the rest. Thinking that Moby was now a sitting duck, Travis shot out a barrage of tracking purple arrows that towards Moby, which he promptly dodged by boosting himself away by infusing demon energy in his feet, using his triple jump to dodge the arrows and make them explode behind him by crashing into each other. As soon as he dodged, many earth pillars erected from under him, coming at him in quick succession as Travis charged up another barrage of arrows in the distance. Moby used his last remaining jump to hop on the side of the pillar, boosting himself off of it straight towards Jay who erected a huge wall to block him. Moby did not care for such a weak wall, slashing it in half before finding out that Jay had suddenly disappeared prompting him to use his energy sense to see his location. When he found out where Jay was hiding, he could not help but smile and let out a small chuckle. I didn't think he was mentally stable enough to come up with any sort of strategy. He must think that he is so smart for doing this. Moby inwardly mocked his sorry excuse for a strategy. As Moby landed on the ground, he pretended to start looking very like he had no idea what was happening. What the hell? Where did you run off to fucking pussy? Show yourself. Moby screamed in anger trying to lure Jay out while casually dodging and blocking Travis's arrows in the distance, then, seemingly out of nowhere, a barrage of large rock spikes erupted from behind the seemingly unsuspecting Moby who instantly turned around, slashing all the incoming spikes in half with his katana. Ha 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 ha. I finally got you again. You fucking mole rat. Moby yelled, digging his hand right through the ground like a spear before pulling out Jay's head by what little was left of his hair. What? How the fuck did Y.O. dash? Jay screamed like a lunatic, still with awkward speech due to his injuries before being interrupted by the sound of cracking coming from his lower region. Shut the fuck up. Moby screamed with clear impatience, kicking and nearly breaking both of Jay's legs in one motion, making him let out a loud scream of pain. You will only be needing one arm for what I will be needing you to do. Moby said, grabbing Jay's tightly clenched fist, squishing it like a tomato before snapping his arm, ripping it right off making him grunt in pain with killer eyes still locked on Moby's face. Purple arrows came from the other side of the cave once more. But, instead of dodging, Moby decided to lift up the injured and incapacitated Jay by his head, using him as his personal shield to block all the incoming arrows that exploded right on his back. The impact from the arrows burned off the skin on Jay's behind and pierced through several parts of his body that were in a non-fatal area, due to Moby's masterful positioning. I'll still not yield to a bit dash, Jay muttered from his barely functioning mouth before Moby kneed him in the stomach causing him to throw up a kneel in pain, tightly clenching his stomach. You wait right the fuck here. I'm not done with you yet. Moby said looking down on Jay before spitting on his face before dashing towards the clearly terrified Travis who was spamming arrows like, his life depended on it. Stay the fuck away from me you monster. He cried out in clear horror, completely out of character as he noticed that none of his attacks were hitting their mark, Moby drawing nearer by the second. No. Please have mercy. I was only doing what I have been told. It's all the Zex dash, Travis pleaded as he was running away before Moby cut him off. He grabbed his head with two hands before he had the chance to run, and brought it straight to his knee, breaking his nose and several teeth, nearly knocking him out. I will leave you alive for now because I have several questions for you. Moby said, lifting Travis's crying and half unconscious body with one hand, using his drain skill on him. As soon as he did, Moby felt his energy being restored at a decent yet not extraordinary rate, managing to restoring almost all of his lost demon energy. Travis's once healthy looking tan skin began turning paler by the second until he looked almost ghost like. His big, round red eyes began losing most of their color before they flipped to the other side of his skull. His previously pitch black hair now had a few streaks of white and his chiseled, muscular psychic became slightly skinnier. Although barely, Travis was very much alive. Even if he killed both Jay and Travis, he doubted that it would give him enough XP to level up. And, he could always fill up the rest of his energy by draining Jay instead. So, he decided to leave Travis alive for now in order to interrogate him later on. He found his actions and his character especially odd and he wanted to know what his motivations were, but he did not have the time or patience to do it now. Moby threw Travis's unconscious body on the ground like a ragdoll before setting his sights on Jay who was still kneeling on the ground, writhing and vomiting in pain on the other side of the cave. He sprinted towards the other side of the cave at top speed before grabbing the, still coughing and vomiting Jay, lifting him up by his throat. Last fucking chance. Do as you are told or I'll show you pain more than you ever thought was possible. Moby said, with glowing eyes, using his nightmare skill on Jay. Chapter 92. After staring into Moby's cold, glowing eyes, he began to go completely crazy. It was fear like he never felt before, it felt almost inhumane like he was staring straight at the depths of hell itself. The feat was so intense that what was only a few seconds in real life felt like days of time. However, even through all of that fear and pain, he would not give up as his stubbornness prevailed. Fuck. You. He muttered, still somehow being disobedient despite all that he had gone through which angered Moby even further, forcing him to use his last resort, trump card. He grabbed Jay's head even tighter than before, now sending in a small portion of demon energy into his system. Moby opted to do this instead of using drain, as it was a much more painful experience according to Avilia. 
However, the only downside was that Moby had no idea how much demon energy would be enough to where he scares the shit out of someone, making them abide to his every wish. And, how much was enough to completely destroy a person's mind and body until they wish for nothing but death like he did was Nathan. That was why it was a huge risk, but, it was a risk that Moby was fully willing to take. As the demon energy filled and flowed through Jay's body, it began to calm his tense nerves. When he opened his eyes, he found himself sitting on a couch made of clouds, high up in the beautiful blue, sunny sky with luxurious clothing, eating the best of food. Then suddenly, from even higher above, Haley appeared in front of him like she an angel with a glowing face and feather wings flying down upon him from the shining heavens. She wore a completely see-through robe that left little to the imagination, allowing him to see all of her soft, luscious curves. She swooped down towards him, putting her hand on his face, sweetly caressing his chiseled jawline and running her hands through his soft blonde hair before giving him a sweet kiss on the lips, and a big long tender hug. For him, it felt all too real for it to be a dream as he was crying tears of joy in Haley's soft embrace. It felt absolutely heavenly, he wished for the moment to last forever. I love you so much. He said in a warm yet joyful tone, crying in Haley's fine tender hands, looking up at her gorgeous, angel-like face. He he he. I love you too honey. She replied with a demonic shriek, her once angel-like face dissolving into a hideous, naked, old, witch goblin straight out of the depths of hell. Suddenly, the once bright, blue and vibrant cloudy environment around him turned into a fiery inferno that reeked with the smell of death, and burnt skin making him shriek in absolute horror. His once luxurious set of clothing completely disappeared into thin air, leaving him with nothing but his birthday suit prompting him to cover up his putrid cock with his hands, as he stared at the world changing in front of him with absolute horror. Metal chains erupted from the ground underneath him out of nowhere, binding him in place, not allowing him to move or use his ability at all. What the fuck is this place? Where did Haley go? He cried out with extreme panic as he started to inspect his surroundings. Whatever do you mean? I am Haley right here? Don't say that you have forgotten me already. That makes me feel really sad. My sweet little Jay had already forgotten who I am. The ugly goblin in front of him said in a sad voice, playing with Jay's balls with her old, hairy, long-nailed fingers. Shut the fuck up and let me out of here. You are not fucking Haley. Haley looks nothing like you. He yelled out in denial. Hum. I see how it is then. I will now have to teach you a long, hard, lesson until you behave yourself. The goblin said in an angry yet ominous tone, crushing the balls she was playing with like they were little cherries before casting some weird spell on him that made his entire body cry out, in pain as his skin, bones and organs began to twist, melt and turn in obscure ways while she stood there, laughing at his agony. What Jay saw was indeed not reality, but a mental visualization of what was happening to his real body. But, as soon as it started, it ended a few seconds later. However, what he saw for those few seconds was enough to break him completely. Stay the fuck away from me you disgusting goblin bitch. You are not Haley. You are not Haley. He screamed in his still stiff voice as he snapped back into reality. Moby was really confused about what Jay was screaming about but he decided to play along for now to get what he wants. Fuck. She is right there. Run away. We need to get out of this cave right now. Moby screamed at the top of his lungs, pointing at a dark shadowy part of the cave in the distance. Although there was nothing there, Jay's still crazy and uneasy mind imagined the figure of that same goblin in the shadow Moby pointed at. No. Get away from me. Never again. Never again. Don't drag me back to that fucking place you ugly disgusting hag. Ah. He screamed like a lunatic, running away from the shadow Moby pointed at like his life depended on it, ignoring the aching pain that ravaged his entire body and the fact that his balls were completely crushed. To him, it just gave him even more motivation to run away as fast as he could as he now knew that what he felt and experienced was 100% real and not a dream. He eventually reached the cave's walls and broke a chunk of rock off of the side of the cave and began tunneling like his life depended on it. Hurry your ass up. She's catching up to us. She's almost here. We are all gonna die. Moby screamed from behind him in a convincingly scared and anxious tone. Phew wuck. He screamed at the top of his lungs before pushing his body past its limits, clenching his melted teeth so hard that large cracks began to form on them. After a few seconds of digging, a small crack revealed the light from the moon outside. They finally made it out of the cave, however, this was not the time to celebrate for Jay as he pushed himself even further to run far away from the cave, and from the hideous Haley that was chasing right after him. However, before he began sprinting once more, he felt a tight, iron, grasp on his head that didn't allow him to move an inch. Fuck. She got me. Despite all my efforts she still fucking got me. Why must I suffer such a hellish fate? W-H-Y-Y-Y. He cried out into the forest ahead of him, tears of blood running down his face. Then suddenly, he felt his energy being sucked straight out of his body. His once young, clear skin began to rapidly wrinkle and age until it turned to dust. Then, what was left of his already white hair shed on the floor before the only thing that remained of him was nothing but dust and a pile of clothes. System alert. You have killed a high D-rank enemy. Plus 10,500 XP, good. That filled me up to almost full demon energy. Don't worry Jaden. I'll be there in an instant. He thought with evident resolve, sprinting straight into the forest ahead of him. Jaden. I'll be there in a bit. Hang tight for me okay. Moby screamed to Jaden using their mind link. Asterisk cough asterisk asterisk cough asterisk please. Hurry. We don't have much longer. Jaden managed to mutter into the mind link before it was suddenly and abruptly cut off. Fuck. Was I too late? I can't allow her to die. Moby inwardly cursed, now using his demon flash and eyes of sin to increase his running speed despite the high waste of demon energy. Chapter 93. A few minutes earlier, back in a clearing the forest. What the fuck did you do with Moby you fucking bitch? And what do you mean by future wife? He doesn't even like your ass at all. Don't tell me that you noticed that. Jaden screamed, trying to buy more time to try and contact Moby once more. Ho ho ho. A you contraire. He just confessed his love to me today. And he even gave me the green light to slice you up into a million pieces. 
Natalia shrieked with a devilish laugh. Even though she knew that what Moby did was all part of their plan to lure her out and make her feel happy before turning on her, and snuffing that happiness away, it still made her a little sad to hear those words come out of Natalia's mouth. Now. Enough chit-chat. It's time for you to die. Natalia said with a cheerful clap, blinking towards Jaden who was still in her fighting stance, daggers in hand. Although Jaden felt like all her senses were extremely improved, especially after her evolution, she still found it extremely hard to track Natalia's movements. She knew that she cannot attack her mid-blink and only when she reappears. So, she transformed herself into her shadow figure and drifted away in order to come up with a better plan of attack. However, her shadow figure was not completely immune to all attacks like one would believe at first hand. All it did was turn her into a shadowy figure of herself that was extremely hard to spot, with a small, barely visible core in the middle of it that represented her life essence. Attacking the core would be the same thing as attacking her directly. Jaden doubted that Natalia would have enough vision and skill to accurately attack her extremely small, flexible core but, she was sadly mistaken. Where the hell do you think you are running off to? Natalia screamed as she effortlessly slashed down at it with nearly perfect accuracy, making Jaden go back into her normal form with a huge slash mark on her back, tumbling and falling before rolling over to hide behind a tree. Shit! What kind of insane buffs does that armor give? Jaden inwardly cursed. Ha 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 ha! There is no hiding from me! Natalia screamed, dashing towards the tree at her top speed. Then, as she got near it, an extremely fast shadowy electric dagger zoomed right past her face as she managed to barely dodge it, creating a large scar on her left cheek. Ah! Uh, my beautiful face! How dare you do that! Moby might now hate me all because of you! She bellowed, blinking around the extremely fast, speeding daggers coming her way. I got you now. She screamed, slashing the tree Jaden was hiding behind in half, only to find out that there was nobody there, making Natalia extremely confused. Where the fuck did you go? Show yourself. She roared at the top of her voice. Unbeknown to her, a blob of flesh and blood was being formed right behind her until it became the figure of a tall muscular man with purple hair, stabbing her in the chest with his shadowy electric daggers, making her cough up a small amount of blood. Jaden had transformed herself into a little rodent before sneaking up to Natalia from behind for a sneak attack. However, she only barely managed to miss Natalia's vitals due to her inexperience in a fight to the death, she still required a lot more training from Moby to be able to perfectly attack a person's vitals whenever she wanted. Jaden's doppelganger abilities were strong but had many major drawbacks. The first was that Jaden was limited to switching between only five transformations, and those transformations must have been people or beasts that she had seen within the last 24 hours, copying their abilities and powers at 70% of their original strength from the last time that she saw them. This meant that Jaden was limited to only her teammates and a few beasts, that she had no idea how to properly move with due to them all have four legs. However, she did find it a bit easier than usual to run when she transformed into that little rodent that she used for the sneak attack. The second major downside was that it required a second or so to switch between transformations, however, she felt like that time had been exponentially cut down due to her evolution. Jaden thought about running away from the fight to stall for Moby's return however, she knew that Natalia would then go berserk killing everything in the area until she was finally caught as well. What the fuck? Alex Hart. Where did you come from? What are you fucking doing here? Don't tell me you are siding with that whore. I thought you were better than this. She bellowed in anger, kicking him away straight in the stomach, forcing him to clench it in pain. Where the hell is Jaden Griffith? Answer me now. And where did you come from I didn't hear jack shit. She yelled at Alex who was standing in front of her. I have no idea what you are talking about. I was always here. Jaden replied, trying to buy some time. I am not that stupid you know. You were never always here. The point still stands, you tried to kill me and you don't want to tell me where she went. So, you have no use for me. So die. She yelled, blinking towards Jaden who already cloaked herself in lightning. Jaden created a shadow cage around Natalia in order to ensnare her movements which really surprised her as she did not see it coming as, Jaden was nowhere to be found. Then, Jaden threw one of her daggers straight at the ensnared Natalia while she rushed in for a direct hit up close. However, what she did not expect was to see Natalia blinking out of the shadow cage like it was not even there, startling Jaden, slashing straight at her chest before kicking her to the ground, causing a small crater and loud cracks. Then she blinked back down to the ground towards her in one swift motion with no hesitation at all, only to find herself clashing blades with herself, launching her other self back to the ground due to her immensely stronger power, causing her other self to spit out a mouthful of blood before it changed forms once more to Jaden Griffiths. What the fuck is going on? What the hell are you? Are you even Jaden Griffith or some sort of demon monster? Natalia screamed, rushing towards Jaden who was standing below her, who was heavily panting and in pain. Ha, ha. I am. Both. She managed to mutter before transforming back into Alex who was at this point her strongest transformation, cloaking herself in lightning before rushing towards Natalia, daggers in hand. She threw both her daggers at Natalia who just blinked away before bringing them back into her hand, slashing at Natalia in front of her forcing her to blink once more before predicting by complete luck that she would blink behind her, which she did. Ha ha ha. You used up all your three blinks. Now die. Jaden screamed in victory, slashing towards Natalia's face that smirked only an instant later. She blinked once more to behind the slashing Jaden before stabbing her straight through the stomach forcing her to vomit a large chunk of blood, and all the food that was in her system. What the fuck? I thought you were only limited to three blinks at a time, asterisk gag asterisk, Jaden barely managed to mutter. Ha ha ha. I knew that you and Moby had some sort of way to communicate with each other. I know you forced him to tell you all the intel he knew about me. So I decided to hide my true power on purpose just for a moment such as this. To see the stupid look on your face as you think you won and outsmarted me but ending up failing miserably instead. Don't worry. I won't kill you just yet. I'm going to have fun making you suffer you fucking demon whore. She said in a disturbingly ominous voice, taking her blade out of the still vomiting Jaden before kneeing her in the face at full force, breaking her nose and sending her flying before blinking right behind her, clasping her hand together and smashing her flying body to the ground like she was playing ping pong, breaking her back. 
Then, she blinked back down towards her, with a smile on her face, looking at Jaden's half-dead eyes, before slashing her right boob and arm off in one clean swipe before kicking her in the stomach, sending her flying and crashing towards a large tree in the distance. This is only the beginning. I would sure wish I were dead if I were you. But don't even try to kill yourself or I will make the pain twenty times more unpleasant. Natalia laughed like a lunatic, slowly walking towards the heavily panting and injured Jaden who was holding her lost right arm and boob in pain. Then, suddenly, out of the forest, the sound of lightning striking was heard before the sound of various bird beasts flying away in the sky was seen, not even a second later, a tall, handsome purple-haired man cloaked in a heavy coat of lightning emerged out of the forest and into the clearing where Natalia and Jaden were. What the fuck is going on here? Alex screamed as he saw the figure of an unknown armored girl walking towards a person who had lost an arm that looked exactly like him. Chapter 94 Although Alex started to feel more comfortable around Jaden, he still did not trust her at all. So, a few minutes after he went to sleep, he decided to wake up to check up on her. But, when he did, he found out that she was nowhere to be found. At first, he was really outraged that she would skip out on such an important duty such as keeping them safe while they slept. But, he gave her the benefit of the doubt thinking, she probably went out to take a piss or something, I should maybe go check on her, so, he left the cave, spear in hand, and began looking for Jaden in the deep dark forest, which he then realized was a bad idea, as he was so used to Parsons' night vision. Then, all of a sudden, he heard a loud scream of pain that sounded really human, followed up by many crashes. It was no doubt the sound of a battlefield, although he couldn't see through the night at all, he was still able to pick up the direction of the screaming and crashing, cloaking himself with lightning and running straight in that direction at top speed only to find an unknown armored girl fighting what seemed, like a crippled version of himself. What the fuck is going on here? He screamed in confusion. Oh. You must be the real Alex Hart. Natalia said, turning around, switching her focus onto him. Natalia Zane? Why are you here? And what do you mean by real Alex Hart? Is that a fake version of me over there or something? He replied, growing even more confused than before. Why of course it's a fake. That over there is none other than Jaden Griffith. She said with a hearty laugh. Huh. Is that true? He screamed, looking at his heavily injured self. Yes Alex. It's true. I have the ability to shapeshift and use other people's powers in addition to my shadow ability. See. Jaden barely managed to mutter before transforming back into her original body as she had no other choice but to reveal her secret to him. Alex looked at Jaden with eyes that were completely wide open in surprise, he had never heard about anyone with two abilities. And, even with his extensive knowledge of abilities, he never even heard about the shapeshifting ability that Jaden had and was talking about. I am still really confused about everything but what you said still doesn't explain what is going on here. Alex bellowed with a hint of anger and annoyance. Isn't it obvious? I am about to kill and torture this bitch for what she has done to my sweet little Moby. You've heard the rumors, haven't you? This bitch has been treating him as her little toy, raping him every day. She is trying to steal him away from me while making his poor innocent little soul suffer. That is beyond unforgivable. Aren't you Moby's friend? Why aren't you standing up for him? Pathetic. Natalia said to Alex in a clearly disgusted voice making him look at the ground in shame with a large frown. Ha ha ha. Don't feel sad. You can always redeem yourself. You can still restore your lost honor. Join me in torturing this little bitch until her bones get broken and crushed to dust. Until every organ in her body stops working. Until we peel off her skin like an orange with dirty and rusty blades. Until her tears of blood run dry making her cry no more. So, are you in? W will it really be okay? Will I truly regain what I have lost if I join you? Alex muttered in a low yet audible voice. No Alex. Don't do it. It's not really what you think. Jaden barely managed scream from the sideline. Shut the fuck up you dirty slut. No one asked for the opinion of a dead girl. And to answer your question, yes of course. I promise that if you just join me it will all be fine. I am sure Moby would understand. Natalia replied with clear confidence. W will Moby really understand? If I join you will all be forgiven. Alex mumbled still looking at the ground, cold sweat running down his face. Ha 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 don't worry. With him as my future husband, I can always talk some sense into him if things go south. So. Join me Alex Hart. Let us punish this bitch for her sins and dash. Natalia said before being abruptly cut off. But I refuse. Alex screamed, dashing towards Natalia at his top speed, leaving her little time to react as she was not at all expecting such an outcome but he attacked her straight in the chest with the tip of his spear, forming small cracks in Natalia's armor, making her spit out a mouthful of blood. B but why? I thought you hated Jaden Griffith as well. Natalia shrieked in disbelief. Well, let's just say that I have faith in the words of my friend. Alex said with a smile, thinking about the words that Moby told him when they got back from the amusement park the day before the exam. Also, one of the things I, Alex Hart, like the most is to find someone who thinks they're some hot shit, and say, no right to their faces. Alex added with a smile, pointing his spear at the clearly enraged Natalia. Also, don't get me wrong. I still don't quite like you Jaden. I just don't mind fighting alongside you just this once because I promised a friend that I would. He said, looking towards Jaden with a friendly smile that she somehow managed to return but only barely due to her clearly injured state. Alex cloaked himself in lightning once more and stared at the angry Natalia in the darkness of the night. Although the moon was shining hard on them, he still had a great amount of trouble seeing and tracking her movements. One second she was far in the distance and she was already behind him in the next. He only barely managed to react in time to dodge a fatal strike to his heart, causing it to land in a non-fatal spot before she kicked him away with the force of a bullet train, making him break through several trees in the process, fuck. I think I felt something crack. Alex inwardly cursed. He was at a major disadvantage as long as he couldn't properly see his opponent. So, he thought of a way that he could regain his lost vision. With a large visible smirk on his face, he infused his spear with a lot of lightning before running around the edges of the clearing in the forest at top speed, lighting the trees on fire allowing him to see clearly once more. Much better. 
Alex said, setting his sights on Natalia. That was pretty resourceful of you. But that still doesn't change the fact that I am stronger than you and will still beat your weak ass. She screamed, blinking towards Alex like a madman, clashing blades with him where she clearly had the upper hand. Even though Alex was much stronger than Jaden who was transformed into him due to his more proficient use of his ability, and body alongside his higher power level, Natalia was still overwhelming him with her blink ability as he barely even managed to dodge and counterattack. All the while Alex was barely hanging and trying his best not to get killed, Jaden was just spectating from the sidelines beside one of the burning trees, transformed as Ali in order to heal her injuries. Although Ali's healing ability was not strong enough alone to regenerate limbs, it became strong enough to do so when it was combined and used alongside Jaden's demon regeneration. After spectating the fight for a few more seconds, she screamed a mental, fuck it dude, before transforming into Alex and joining the fight as soon as she regained control of her previously missing arm, not waiting until she was completely healed as she had no time and wanted to conserve her mana. She swooped in from behind Natalia, throwing her shadow and lightning enhanced daggers straight at her. This forced her to blink away making the daggers aimed at Alex who was behind her instead. But, before it could make contact with him, Jaden returned them to her hands making him breathe a huge sigh of relief. With their combined efforts, Jaden and Alex managed to regain the upper hand. Alex did think that it was really weird to be fighting alongside what seemed like himself, but he would be lying to say that he didn't appreciate the help. They continued to wail on her until they managed to make her waste her for consecutive blinks on dodging their attacks, then, Jaden threw both of her daggers hitting Natalia's knees, forcing her to grunt and kneel on both the ground. Do it now. Jaden screamed at Alex who sprinted towards her at full speed. Go to hell. He screamed, thrusting his lightning enhanced spear towards Natalia's chest, not aiming to kill her but to incapacitate her instead. Then suddenly, Natalia disappeared from where she once laid. Then, all of a sudden, Alex lost the feeling in both of his arms as they were both cleanly sliced off, causing him to scream in pain as blood started gushing out of his hand like a geyser. A small black hole formed right in the middle of both of them, sucking them in and ensnaring both of their movements as they struggled to escape its grasp with no avail, fuck. I should have seen this shit coming. Jaden inwardly cursed, she had completely forgotten about Natalia's trump card that Moby had previously told her about. Natalia's nine blink black hole super move, Natalia then appeared right in front of Jaden and Alex, slashing off several of their limbs in a barrage of blinks that they could barely keep track of at all, especially in their ensnared state. They lost parts of their arms, legs, pelvis and shoulders. The barrage was especially bad for Jaden who was now nothing more than an armless and legless nugget due to her jumping in the way of some attacks, that were directed at Alex, since she knew she could survive by sustaining more damage than him due to her demon regeneration. As the black hole disappeared, they both dropped and began falling on the ground like ragdolls. Alex was still alive, however only barely, all due to Jaden's efforts. However, he was most likely still going to die in the next hour from blood loss. As Jaden's heavily injured, armless and legless body that was nearly lifeless and unconscious was dropping on the ground, she heard the voice of the one person she wanted to hear from the most. Even as she felt like she was about to die, she felt happy to be able to hear his voice one more time before she moved on to the other side. Jaden. I'll be there in a bit. Hang tight for me okay. Moby's sweet voice rang in her head. Asterisk cough asterisk asterisk cough asterisk please. Hurry. We don't have much longer. Jaden managed to mutter as she dropped on the ground, going completely unconscious, a wide smile on her face. Ha 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 ha. I am surprised that you forced me to do that. I never expected to use my trump card even while taking on both of you combined. I might have gone a little too far, it looks like you are about to die from blood loss any second now. And we can't have that now can we? So, I will kill you with my own hands. Just like you tried to steal my Moby's heart, I shall now steal yours as well. Natalia screamed like a maniac, before laughing a devilish laugh, making her hand into the shape of a spear before thrusting it towards Jaden's heart. Stay the fuck away from my Jaden. Moby screamed, swooping in at the last second, punching Natalia in the face so hard that it cracked and dislocated her jaw, sending her flying away through several trees in the distance. Chapter 95 Moby looked at the heavily injured, armless and legless Jaden who was bleeding out on the ground with a heavy face, tears falling down his face. He picked her up, hugging her really tight before looking for her pulse only to find out that she was still very much alive. However, he had no idea how strong the regenerative powers of demons were but he did not have the patience or find out. He looked at his surroundings only to find Alex's battered and unconscious body on the ground missing one leg, and one arm along with a few fingers. Technically speaking he was in much better shape than Jaden but without demon-like regeneration, Moby knew that he would no doubt not live for long. He slowly let go of Jaden's unconscious body, tears still rushing down his face before setting his sights on the still recovering Natalia in the distance with more anger and rage than he ever felt before in his entire life. Natalia Zane. I'll fucking turn you to shreds. He screamed at the top of his lungs, activating his eyes of sin, before dashing towards her at top speed causing large cracks in the wake of his every step, what the fuck was that? It felt like I was struck by a meteorite, Natalia thought, cracking her jaw back into place before trying to stand up to see what had just happened, however, before she got the chance to fully stand up, she felt someone's large, purple, burning, iron grasp grab her head like it was a basketball, smashing her face on the ground before dragging it on the hard yet muddy terrain, as they sprinted before continuously smashing it through multiple rocks and trees in quick succession. She also felt that a small portion of her mana was being sucked out of her body, but it was so little that she could barely tell if she was imagining things. As Natalia's face was being smashed, she tried to take a peek at her sudden attacker with little to no result. All she knew about her assailant was that they were someone that really liked, and cared about Jaden Griffith due to them screaming about staying away from their Jaden so she immediately assumed that they were not a good person, due to her face being burned, grabbed, and smashed in the ground, she was unable to blink out. So she opted to extend her retracted blade straight into the chest of her assailant, making him cough up blood on her face before he kicked her away in the stomach with incredible force, blowing her away and making her retract her blade from his body. Her attacker did not deal much damage to her. It was almost like his main goal was to move her elsewhere instead of trying to deal damage which was exactly what Moby was going for. He wanted to take the battle elsewhere so that Natalia doesn't try any underhanded tactics such as killing, or taking Jaden hostage in the middle of the fight. Natalia's face was at this point completely battered with bruises and burn marks. 
She looked at the ground in annoyance, spitting out a clump of blood that had a few teeth with a small chuckle, not even bothering to look her attacker in the eyes. Why do you all always attack my beautiful face? Are you all just jealous or something? Why am I so unlucky? All I wanted to do was to kill Jaden Griffith and I got an entire mob against me. Now what kind of bit dash, Natalia said in annoyance before biting her tongue in regret as soon as she saw who she was talking to. MMMM Moby. What are you doing here? Didn't I tell you to wait in the cave until I got back honey? Natalia's tone immediately shifted into a much kinder and almost motherly tone, Moby just ignored Natalia's words, demon flashing towards her in quick succession. He had no time for chit chat while his friend and his crush were both dying and bleeding out on the ground and for a future plan that he had. He infused his blade with demon energy before slashing the air creating waves of slash like pure demon energy projectiles that were headed in Natalia's direction making her naturally dodge a few while blinking to dodge the others when they got too close. When Moby noticed that Natalia had used three blinks in one quick succession, he demon flashed into close quarters, slashing towards Natalia's chest with all his might. However, when he expected to slash right through her armor dealing critical damage, he hit nothing but air, making him frantically look around in front of him with anger and impatience to find her whereabouts. Moby! Why do you look so mad? Are you angry at me for some reason? He felt a hand go on his shoulder before he heard a voice coming from behind him. Moby immediately turned around, slashing right behind him only to hit nothing but air once more. Moby dear! Do you not recognize me at all due to all this darkness? Are your purple night vision eyes broken? It's me! Natalia! Your one and only love! She said, popping up right beside him, softly caressing his cheeks with her metal gloves prompting Moby to slash at her once more only for her to blink away once more. Shut the fuck up! Moby screamed, predicting where she was going to reappear due to his small amount of future sight, slashing at her forcing Natalia to block with her blade. Then, as their blades clashed, Moby ducked down under her arm, infusing his fists with pure demon energy and punching her straight in the liver, causing slightly more cracks to form in her previously banged up armor. She jumped away from Moby before blinking away as soon as she could before vomiting a little on the ground, holding her liver in pain. Huh. That fucking hurts. From when were you that strong? You don't treat your future wife like this. I will have to teach you a lesson in manners. Natalia roared in anger blinking towards the battle ready Moby. As Moby and Natalia clashed blades, it became completely apparent who had the upper hand in the fight. Even with his future sight, Moby was unable to completely predict Natalia's blink pattern, especially since he now knew that she was able to use for blinks. And, it seemed like Natalia had stopped playing around and holding back, and began taking the fight seriously as her anger completely overwhelmed her senses, making Moby barely struggle to keep up with her. Didn't you tell me that you loved me? Why are you attacking me all of a sudden? She screamed, punching Moby in the face. Were you just lying to me? She shrieked, kneeing him in the stomach. And what was that about, get away from my Jaden Griffith, do you actually like her or something? She roared tripping him before kicking him high up in the air. Were you only pretending to like me or something? She bellowed, jumping up behind him, punching him in the side as he attempted to triple jump to dodge. Were you just playing with my emotions? She screamed, blinking and hitting him in the ribs. Tell me. She roared punching him in the face, tell me. She screamed, slashing him in the chest. Tell me. She roared, blinking from above him, with her fists clasped together, hitting him in him in the back, forcing him to drop down towards the ground like a meteorite before landing on the ground with an outstanding impact. Sorry if I have been too hard on you my dear. I know that we all make mistakes, and luckily for you, I am a very forgiving partner. All I will do now is teach you a quick lesson. Maybe even cripple you until you learn how to properly use your powers and appreciate my love for you. Girls like Jaden Griffith and Abby Reed are just nothing more than bad influences to you. See what they did to you. They corrupted your sweet little innocent mind into hating and turning against me. Your one and only true love. That is unforgivable. Don't worry. I am doing this for your own good. You will thank me in future and grow to appreciate what I have done for you once they are dead. I just know it. But for now I must teach you a little lesson. Trust me, it pains me to hurt you but this is for your own good. She said in an ominous, psychotic voice, licking Moby's blood splatters that were on her face with her long, serpent-like tongue, walking towards the small crater and dust cloud where Moby was. Then as she neared the edge of the crater, a bright black, purple and red light shined seemingly out of nowhere, blowing away all the dust in its path. The ground started to tremble like it was being hit by an earthquake as sudden cracks began to form in the ground beneath her feet. Abrupt lightning strikes began falling from the sky left and right, crashing on the ground creating craters, and setting some trees on fire in their wake. I and the small crater where Moby once stood laid a man with a raging aura of black, purple and red surrounding his entire body. His hair was a perfect mix of black and red. Under his eyes were black shadowy lines that looked almost alive and had a slight glow to them. Rips in his equipment showed similar lines and runic patterns that extended throughout his entire body. Small, scaly, pointy black horns were visible on his head that looked almost like a mixture of dragon and devil horns. I've already said this once but, can you please just shut the fuck up for one second? Moby screamed from the bottom of the crater with unbridled anger and annoyance. Chapter 96 HH Honey I is that you? Natalia barely managed to mutter as she looked at the horned human looking beast walking out of the crater in front of her in a clearly, injured state. Moby had just activated his sin mode as he was now more comfortable with Natalia's moves and attack patterns. He did not want to go in blindly with sin mode at the start as he only had a limited 5 minutes of time to defeat her before its timer runs out. He had also been saving and forcing himself not to say most of his rants and insults, as he was saving them for when sin mode was activated to maximize his power gains. Yes. Of course, this is me. Moby Kane. But don't you dare ever call me honey. That word is reserved for one person and one person only. Jaden Griffith. Moby retorted in confidence, still walking up towards her. As soon as he finished saying his words, he saw Natalia tightly clench her fists, and grit her teeth before he felt a small power boost enter his body which told him that his words and new powers were working. He remembered that the power boosts he gained depended on the emotions that his opponent felt towards him. 
Anger equals strength annoyance equals agility fear equals endurance shame. Embarrassment equals health regeneration plus energy regeneration so, what he felt just then was most likely a boost in strength and agility due to her anger and annoyance towards him. Also, I know that that time when we were having our little date, you got wet from me just hugging you. That's just pathetic. I also know that you most likely have some sort of stash full of all my pictures, and a vibrator in your pants to help you jerk off even on this planet. You dirty bitch. Moby screamed as Natalia looked away with a frown and a slightly red face, making Moby regain most of his lost health and demon energy as he felt his broken bones being regenerated, and his bruises fading away in the blink of an eye. Unlike what you think, I am the one in charge of Jaden. I am her one and only master, not the other way around like you thought. All of this was planned by me. Not her. I always had this power, I was just lying to the group about it to give me an excuse to use it. Also, due to your constant abuse of Jaden, we decided that it was time to kill you. However, then I changed my mind. I thought that you could join us if you were able to cope with everyone in the group. But then, I soon realized that it could not be done and that you were beyond saving. Moby continued. You are lying. No way that you were the leader all along. But you were right about one thing. I would never join such a group. Me and you should be alone. Alone and together. That's how it must be. I would rather die than live in a world that we are not together in. That is why I will make it happen. Even by force. I've tried being nice. But now I see that it was all useless. Natalia screamed in outrage, rushing towards Moby with a quick blink, slashing towards his face before cancelling her attack, blinking behind him for her actual attack which Moby just casually blocked with his sword, not even bothering to turn around. He had her attack patterns almost memorized and with his extra strength, speed, and regeneration he was able to much more easily keep up with her. For some reason, he also felt more comfortable using his previously straining eyes of sin. He did not know why but he just thought of it as an extra bonus to sin mode. After blocking her attack, Moby flipped his sword towards its hilt side and struck her in the stomach before she even had the chance to blink. Then, as she was being blown away, she felt an invisible tug on her torso making her unable to blink before it started to pull her back towards the demon-like beast in front of her. Get over here. Moby screamed as he pulled her in, then, he slashed down towards her chest to deliver a fatal blow. This forced Natalia to block with her blade. Suddenly, Moby abandoned his sword, ducking down under Natalia's attack before grabbing her face with both hands as to not let her blink before kneeing her straight in the face, breaking her nose and several teeth, sending her flying away, crashing on a large tree in the distance. He now found out that if she was being grabbed by something, she was unable to blink. He could use that to his advantage by grabbing her with his demon hand before she has the chance to blink or destroy it due to it being so fragile. This would have also had the added bonus of greatly annoying and enraging her, even further boosting his strength and speed. Moby picked up his sword off the ground and began demon flashing straight towards Natalia who was desperately trying to catch her breath. Did you know that I was the one that saved you from that worm on the first day of the exam when you killed Naya? Do you know why? It was because I wanted the pleasure of torturing and killing you myself and that worm would have given you far too light of a death. Moby roared as they clashed blades, feeling himself grow stronger the more that he talked. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. That can't be true. I was saved by the heavens. Natalia screamed, slashing at Moby with all her might, forcing him to block. Then, she slashed her second blade towards his lower torso prompting him to jump above it, as he grabbed Natalia by her long hair before thrusting the sheath of his sword straight in her stomach, forcing her to grunt in pain. Do you think that I am stupid or something? I saw everything. From stalking me and my friends, to all those weird, disturbing faces that you were making, to trying to kill any and every girl that got even remotely near me. How pathetic do you have to be to resort to such a thing just for some petty high school crush? You crazy slut. Moby continued as they clashed blades once more, feeling himself grow even stronger as he started to even further overwhelm her. Every time Natalia tried to blink towards Moby for an attack, he was always somehow able to predict where she was going to appear due to his far greater speed and future foresight, counterattacking every time which enraged, annoyed and confused Natalia all at the same time. What the fuck? How the hell do you keep getting stronger? Are you some sort of demon? Natalia shrieked, slashing down towards Moby with both her blades like a crazed lunatic. Yes. Indeed I am. Moby replied with a devilish grin, forcing his demon-energy-infused blade into Natalia's stomach, not allowing her to blink away due to him grabbing onto her with his devil's hand, forcing her to grunt and cry out in pain. Then, suddenly, when Moby released his sword from her insides to dodge an incoming slash, Natalia immediately disappeared and blinked away leaving a small vortex-like black hole in her wake. Fuck. She is finally pulling out her trump card. Moby inwardly cursed. Chapter 97. Moby did not know that this was in fact the second time that Natalia was using her trump card. Normally, Natalia would only be able to use it once. However, she forced herself to go well past her limit to do it one last time. She drained every last drop of mana in her reserves and even used up a good chunk of her life force to do what she did. She could not allow herself to lose. If she did, she would no longer have any reason to live. Nothing was more important to her than being with Moby, not even her own well-being or family. She was willing to risk anything and everything to be with him. Even with Moby's greatly enhanced speed, he was still unable to outrun the pull of the vortex sucking him in. So, he prepared another barrage of insults to throw at Natalia to even further increase his power. Things like, your breath really stinks, it makes me want to throw up every time I get near you. Or, even that ugly goblin bitch Haley was much hotter than you. However, when he tried to say it, his mouth wouldn't move at all. Whoops. Sorry, I forgot to mention in the description of sin mode that the user is forced to say only the truth or what he believes to be the truth. So, you can't just spout random nonsense and bullshit. Sorry. Avilia said with a casual chuckle in Moby's head. How the fuck could you forget such an important detail? Or was this another one of your silly pranks that you master's tests? Moby inwardly cursed towards Avilia who just laughed even harder in his head, further enraging and annoying Moby making him inwardly curse once more, then, all of a sudden, Natalia appeared from above him as he was distracted by Avilia's words. Peekaboo! 
She screamed before slashing her blade straight at Moby's eyes, which he only barely managed to dodge, making it hit his forehead instead. Then, she appeared right under him before giving him a strong uppercut to the jaw. Moby was able to predict exactly where Natalia would appear almost every time. However, due to the vortex behind him ensnaring his movements, he was not able to dodge properly or react in time. Natalia just continued to wail on Moby like a madwoman. Ignoring any of the insults that he was spewing at her such as, I never liked you, and, Jaden is one million times hotter than your crusty ass, which did not nearly hit as hard as when she heard them the first time. Moby released a massive amount of demon energy from his body, firing blasts everywhere in hopes of one of them hitting Natalia but, it was all for no avail as Natalia dodged every single last one of them. A slash to his shoulder, a cut on his cheek, a few bruises on his side, internal organ damage, a lost left hand, and a cut off ear, two cut off fingers and broken teeth. Those were all the damages that he sustained, bearing them with his teeth clenched and an angry scowl on his face. It's all over. You will be mine and mine alone. Natalia blinked above him with the last of her blinks, slashing down towards Moby with more speed and ferocity than her previous attacks, not allowing him enough time to dodge or block. Moby roared in absolute anger, hatred, and desperation, sent various shockwaves through the air, greatly startling Natalia. This allowed him to barely dodge Slash, before headbutting Natalia's face, breaking her nose and sending her flying, making her cancel her final attack. System alert. New skill unlocked. Asterisk asterisk, Emperor's Roar, level 1, the user lets out a mighty dragon roar that causes strong shockwaves to ring throughout the air. Side effects may include fear and ear damage, cost, 50 demon energy asterisk asterisk, the still enraged Moby ignored the sudden notification alert in front of him, and focused all his attention on Natalia who was in the air right in front of him. He grabbed his sword with his right hand, tightly grasping it with his three remaining fingers before demon flashing towards the heavily fatigued and startled Natalia, thrusting his sword on her chest with nearly all his remaining demon energy. When Natalia noticed what was happening, she tried her very hardest to blink away. However, when she tried, instead of blinking she ended up breaking every last tooth in her mouth from gritting her teeth too hard trying to force herself to blink with, zero mana. Moby's sword stabbed, cracked, and melted right through her armor as he moved his it in the shape of a circle, creating a large gaping hole where Natalia's belly button once was. F fuck, Natalia cursed her existence as she stared at the gaping hole in her stomach with wide open eyes, in absolute horror and defeat as she felt herself gag and quickly lose her vision. She was so damn close to winning and making her dreams come true, but she ended up failing despite all the effort, sacrifices, planning and dedication that she put into what she did, why did this happen? Is the world saying that we were just never meant to be? She thought, feeling her consciousness slip away. The last thing, she saw before going unconscious was Moby's heavily injured yet still beautiful face before she saw his knee make contact with her face, knocking her out. Instead of celebrating, Moby looked at Natalia who was dying and bleeding out on the ground with eyes of immense hatred and disgust, heavily panting and holding his injuries from the fight. He wished that she could have been conscious for what he was about to do, but it was the only choice that he could do in his predicament, and it was the thing that he had planned for even before the fight began. With his three remaining fingers, he grabbed and lifted Natalia by her barely recognizable head, infusing her body with the last of his remaining demon energy before dropping her on the ground. He watched as her unconscious body began moving on its own, twisting and turning in obscure and disturbing ways. The large gaping hole in her stomach instantly regenerated before being burned off like the rest of her skin that was melting away before, being replaced. The sound of bones cracking and organs turning filled the quiet air as black blood began to pour out of every one of her hole. A few seconds later, a large notification screen popped up right in front of him which was exactly what he was expecting, making him let out a small chuckle as his sin mode ran out causing his horns to retract, his raging aura and shadowy runic lines fade away, making him revert back to his former state, system alert. You have created a demon succubus. A new demon has joined your household, house of the blissful demon. Chapter 98 As Natalia opened her eyes, she noticed that she was staring at a very familiar purple sky. And, although her armor was almost completely destroyed, she still for some reason had the use of night vision. Am I dead or did I turn into a ghost? She thought in extreme confusion. However, the more she moved the more she doubted that she was dead. The wetness on the ground, the smell of blood in the air. It all felt too real to be fake. She slowly stood up, feeling herself a bit heavier and tighter in the chest area than usual. Then, she started to frantically feel where she remembered the gaping hole in her stomach was, only to feel her unnaturally smooth, silky skin instead, then, as she looked straight ahead of her, she noticed, him. Moby Kane, the love of her life was standing right in front of her, his arm and fingers half regenerated. She felt tears of joy start to run down her face as she began to sob uncontrollably as she immediately rushed over to give him a hug, and a big kiss on the lips. My love. You changed your mind and saved me. So you truly do love me. I am so happy dash, Natalia said before she felt Moby's three-fingered tight grasp her face once more to the point of nearly cracking her skull. M.I.L. love. She said before she felt an immense amount of pain ravage her body before she felt all her mana and strength being sapped away. When she tried to fight back to attack Moby, she felt her body suddenly freeze, not allowing her to move at all, it felt like she was being bound by invisible chains that made it impossible to move a single inch. Do you not understand what the words, shut the fuck up, mean? Don't misunderstand what I did. You are now my slave. I can do whatever I want to you. And you can't do jack shit about it. Moby said in a harsh, devilish voice, using his drain skill on Natalia to regain a large chunk of his demon energy and health. He felt his lost limbs grow back at incredible speed although he still had many visible injuries on his body, and a quarter of his demon energy was now refilled. He felt like his drain skill was much more effective on fellow demons than humans, and it did not give them the same side effects most likely due to the fact that demons had a much, much stronger life force than that of humans. Of course, Moby did not turn Natalia into a demon to show her mercy. In fact, it was the exact opposite. With his one-week control period over her, he can make her do anything he ordered, which included her not resisting any torture or attempting suicide, giving him a sum of cash from her rich family, an easy way to manipulate her so people don't suspect a thing, and he can take his time torturing her over the entire one-week span of time. 
Her new demon physique and regeneration would also allow for much easier and more painful torture, as she can withstand more punishment they don't have to worry about accidentally killing her which was especially good for teaching beginners. He also needed to do save her so she didn't die from his last attack, such a death would have been too light for the likes of her. When Moby drained Natalia to the point when he was satisfied, he let go of her head, making her extremely drained and tired body fall limp on the ground before he dashed away in a hurry, cold sweat running down his face, activating his eyes of sin and demon flashing away. To reach Jaden as fast as he could, he needed a way to restore his lost energy and injuries which was exactly why he used his drain skill on Natalia. Slut! Follow right the fuck behind me. Moby ordered the beyond fatigue Natalia who immediately stood up and limped in Moby's direction with the last of her remaining energy, why can't I fucking control my own body? This is bullshit. Natalia inwardly cursed, her anger clearly showing on her face. As Moby sprinted through the forest at top speed, he could not stop the many bad thoughts that randomly popped up and entered his brain. What if I was too late? What if she died? What if she died not knowing that I liked her? When he reached the clearing in the forest with the ring of fire, Moby noticed Jaden and Alex's seemingly unconscious bodies on the ground. He found things to be very odd. For some reason, it looked like Alex's injuries had suddenly stabilized making his condition non-life-threatening as he had stopped bleeding. This made Moby believe that he had some sort of magic equipment that helped out with his regeneration or something along those lines. Also, although Jaden still had many injuries, her limbs seemed completely regrown and all her bleeding had stopped making Moby breathe a big sigh of relief with a happy smile on his face. He felt more comfort in his heart than anything he had ever felt previously in his entire life. He slowly walked up to her body to try and wake her up. Hey! Wake up sleepy head! It's all over! We won! Moby screamed in Jaden's ears only to receive no reaction which made Moby slightly panic. So, he then decided to feel her heartbeat. WWY is there no pulse? W was I really too late damn it! This can't be real! It can't be real N O O O O. W-H-Y-Y-Y. Ah. Moby screamed, a waterfall of tears running down his face as a dark aura ravaged throughout his entire body. Black scales started to become apparent on his face as the shadow lines that were more ferocious than ever before as they were expanding and agitating at extreme speed. The same devil dragon horns began to grow on his head once more only much larger and longer than before. Surprise. Ha 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 ha. I got you. You just got pranked. Jaden yelled, opening her eyes only to find Moby who was blinded by extreme pain and hatred. She immediately felt immense regret grow in her now heart cracked as she hugged him tightly in her embrace with clear compassion. I'm sorry. I guess I might have gone a little too far. I was just curious to see how your reaction would be if I were to die. Please forgive me. But look. I am completely alive and well. So please. Calm down. Jaden said in a soft, tender voice hugging him before looking him straight in his dead purple eyes, running her hands through his hair before wiping his tears away from under his black, scaly eyes that slowly started to regain their original color, J. Jaden. Why you're alive? Moby said, snapping back into reality as his dark aura faded away along with his horns, scales, and shadowy runic lines. Don't you fucking dare do that again. That was too far even for you. I nearly thought I lost you forever. Moby cried, tears still running down his face. Yeah. I realize that now. I just wanted to see if you would say a few certain words if you thought I wa dash. Jaden was cut off by Moby giving her a warm kiss on the lips before hugging her really tightly like her was holding onto the world's most precious treasure, making Jaden redder and hotter than the sun itself. I love you. Moby said with tears still in his eyes and a bright smile on his face as he stopped kissing her. And I love you too. Jaden said, returning the sentiment with a hug and a kiss of her own. They both felt so incredibly happy as they wished that the moment could last forever. Then out of the clearing in the wood emerged a slutty succubus. She had clear skin, silky smooth silver hair. A nice proportioned beautiful face. Breasts that were tightly stuffed and nearly popped out of her extremely tattered armor with luscious curves that would make any man uncontrollably drool. She starred hate-filled daggers at the couple kissing with overflowing and uncontrolled rage. She didn't want to believe what she was seeing. She was witnessing her absolute worst nightmare up close and personal. Get the fuck away from my Moby you fucking slut. I'll tear you to shreds. Natalia shrieked a dreadful piercing scream, using all her remaining power to dash straight at Jaden with blind, unbridled rage, her beautiful face twisting and turning into the face of a true demon. However, when she got within five meters away from the kissing couple, she felt the same invisible chains tying her down, not allowing her to move a single inch forward no matter how hard she tried. Ah! No. Not again. This can't be happening. Get the fuck away from my Moby. She screamed like a lunatic, trying her best to break out of the invisible chains binding her, looking really stupid and animal-like doing so as she started to completely break down and lose her mind. The kissing couple in front of her both chuckled out loud at the same time as they removed their mouths from each other's lips only to go for a third, round of kissing. They did not at all mind Natalia's piercing shrieks, as they found that her unfiltered screams of pain and agony that were going on behind them as nothing more than soothing romantic music, perfectly fitting for such an event. Chapter 99 As they finished interlocking lips once more, Jaden wanted to go for another one. However, instead of Moby following through with another kiss, he put his finger on her lips showing her that it was enough for now making her pout before giving him a bright smile and a chuckle. You know I actually thought you were dead. You nearly gave me a heart attack. I felt absolutely nothing when I felt your pulse. How did you do it? Moby asked with a mix of worry and enthusiasm. Well. With my new evolution, I noticed that I had more control over my powers than before, allowing me to transform certain parts of my body instead of all of it. So, I changed my heart into the heart of a dead animal for the split second that you felt my pulse. It was really painful but you were the one who felt the true pain. All I wanted to do was to see if I could bait you into saying that you loved me which didn't work as well as I wanted it to. So, I just tried to make it seem like it was a prank instead of a bait. Stay the fuck away from my Moby or else I will shove my fist so far up your... Natalia kept on screaming in the background, looking almost like a dog trying to break out of its leash. 
Don't worry about it. It's all in the past. And at least now you know how much I truly care about you. Plus, I now know how I would feel if I actually lost you. Moby said with a smile, slowly playing with Jaden's long, silky, dark blue hair making her cheeks go slightly more red. Also, I have another question for you. How are you almost fully healed? And how has Alex's condition stabilized already? I could have sworn that he was almost dead a few minutes ago. Moby asked in confusion. Well. You wouldn't believe how strong our demon regeneration is. Especially in our evolved state. I am convinced that as long as we are not dead, we can regenerate from anything. I woke up only a little bit ago. I still heard the sound of you and skank fighting but I was too weak and injured to be able to properly help you out. If anything I would have just been a hindrance. So, I transformed into one of my teammates who had a healing ability, and healed myself and Alex with the last of my remaining mana and demon energy. Then, as I was still healing myself, I heard a scream ring through my ears that was extremely loud even from here. I think it was you saying, how many times do I got to say this? Shut the fuck up, which is when I assumed that you had won the fight. And, as soon as I finished healing Alex back to a stable condition, I heard the sound of someone coming in this direction which I of course knew was you because I had no doubt in my mind that you would be the victor, so then I quickly went to play dead where I laid before and did the prank that I had just told you about, Jaden replied with a smile. Mum, yes, a quick thinker like always. Moby said with a chuckle. Well, now I have a question of my own. What kind of thing were you turning into when you thought I was dead? It looked really fucking cool but it looked like you were filled with immense pain while you were in it. Jaden asked Moby with clear worry and concern in her voice. Oh. That. I think it was my sin mode. But at the same time, it didn't feel like my sin mode. It felt really weird. I don't really know how to describe it. But don't worry about me. I was only in that pain because I thought that I had lost you forever. Not from the transformation. As you can see, I am completely fine now. Plus, you did say that it looked really cool so, in the end, it was all worth it. Moby replied with a hearty laugh. Also, how did the fight go? I see virtually no injuries on you. Was it really that easy? Jaden asked with enthusiasm. Well of course it was that easy. It was a piece of cake. With my sin mode, my power level went up to 17,820 while hers was still only at a mere 16,530 so you can imagine how easy it was for me. Moby replied with an awkward laugh, rubbing the back of his head. I almost had you in my grasp my love. I was so close. Natalia roared from behind them. He, he. Ignore her words, she's just spouting nonsense at this point. Moby awkwardly said, making Jaden burst out in laughter. I see that you turned her into a demon just as we planned. What did she turn into? I am really curious. Jaden asked in anticipation. She turned into a, a. Succubus. Moby said, trying to hold in his laughter with no avail. Ha 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 ha. Really? That's two jokes. I thought she would be something else since she was only going after you, unlike a normal succubus that would go after any man. But, I am okay with what she became. Jaden said, laughing even harder than Moby. You have no right to make fun of me you fucking bitch. Natalia screamed, making them laugh even harder. I think that her personality was just, love crazed, and that fell into the succubus category as there was no such thing as a yander demon, at least to my knowledge, Moby replied after receiving the information from Avilia who was laughing in his head, enjoying the romance show while eating metaphorical popcorn. I see. That now makes a lot more sense in my head, Jaden said, still laughing her ass off. By the way, I have a question, our limbs were cut and off regenerated but it seems like our armor regenerated along with it. Is that normal? Jaden asked once more. Your armor and your regeneration work hand in hand. That's how demonic armor works. So yes, it is perfectly natural. Moby replied not needing Avilia to explain as he had already experimented with his armor prior to the exam. I guess that makes sense. The armor seems to be a lot better than I first realized. Jaden replied in a slightly less enthusiastic tone. And, by the way, what are you gonna do with Alex? He was a great help during my fight with Natalia. Without him, I would have no doubt died long ago. Jaden asked, turning extremely serious all of a sudden. Well, there is only one thing to do. Turn him into a demon. I still have one open slot which he can fill. He knows too much. He's seen your doppelganger abilities firsthand. It's either we kill him or we turn him into a demon. And I would much rather do the latter than the former, Moby replied, cheerful at first, but turning more serious as he talked. But will it really be okay? Will he even be okay with this? He doesn't seem like the type who would like to be turned into a demon when he is such a righteous guy. Can't you just use that new skill of yours to make him forget what happened here and we would be able to just move on? Jaden replied with a serious tone. Sadly no, that new skill requires for the person I do it on to give me full consent to activate it. It would never work on him. Plus, even if things go bad. We still have one week to convince him to join us so I think it could be fine. I also have a feeling that turning someone into a demon might change their perception of things slightly but I could be wrong. I can always try to convince him that we don't attack people that don't bother us but I am not sure how he would react to our killing and torture, Moby replied. Oh. I see. I guess it's worth a shot. Go for it. It definitely beats outright killing him. Jaden replied, trying her best to stay positive. Yeah. You're right. Well, it's now or never. Moby said, slowly walking towards Alex's unconscious body, ignoring the barks from Natalia behind him. He crouched down towards Alex and put his hand on his forehead before injecting a good chunk of his demon energy into his system. As soon as he did, he saw the exact same scene that he expected as he stared at Alex's transformation with anticipation. Alex's body began to twist and turn in disturbing and unnatural ways all on their own. His skin began to peel off and melt at the same time, exposing all of his boiling blood and innards that were being destroyed and regenerated over and over again. As his skin reconstructed, boiling black blood escaped out of every orifice of his body in bucket loads. 
The last time Jaden saw a demon transformation firsthand, she felt like throwing up. However, this time, she felt no such thing. Instead, the only thing that she felt was immense nervousness as to what he will turn into and how he would react once he wakes up. After a few minutes, Alex's body stopped moving and a large notification screen popped up right in front of Moby, system alert. You have created a demon knight. A new demon has joined your household, house of the blissful demon. Chapter 100. Ha. Huh. What the hell is going on? I am still alive. Where is Natalia? Alex said, opening his eyes, checking on his somehow completely healed wounds before looking around his location. Hey. It seems like you're finally awake, a familiar voice came from in front of him. Moby. Why the fuck are you here? It's too dangerous. Natalia might attack at any second. Alex said, picking his spear that lay to his side, pushing Moby behind him before taking a fighting stance. Calm down. She has already been dealt with. I now have her under my complete control. Moby said, putting his hand on Alex's shoulder before pointing at the crazy animal like Natalia who was still going insane behind them. Stay the fuck away from my love. Natalia roared like a wild beast. Heh, just ignore her. It's all part of the process. Moby said with an awkward chuckle. What the hell is going on here? I am so fucking confused, Alex said, his mind spinning in circles. Yo. Alex. Nice to see that you're still alive and kicking. Jaden said in a cheerful tone, popping up from behind Moby. J. Jaden Griffith. How the hell are you still alive? Why you saved my life? Again. I saw you jump in front of a few of Natalia's attacks before they hit me. I would like to apologize for everything. I was treating you so harshly and you risked your life multiple times to save me. Alex said in a truly apologetic voice. Heh, don't sweat it. I knew that I had a much higher chance of survival than you so it's no big deal, Jaden nonchalantly retorted. Huh? How do you have a higher chance? My power level is definitely higher than yours which means that I am definitely more defensively capable. Alex said in even greater confusion. Well. About that, we will explain it all later. Jaden replied in a more awkward tone. Anyways, as you can see. What she and I were telling you is in fact the truth. She doesn't treat me like a slave or rape me every day. There is absolutely no bad blood between us. In fact, we are even now actually dating. Moby said with a small chuckle. You're dating. Are you for real? Alex screamed, his mouth wide open in shock. Yep. They both replied with a smile. For how long? He asked. We got together only a few minutes ago. They both replied, still smiling. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I still have many questions. Why the fuck do I have night vision? Why is Natalia acting like a crazy wild dog? Why the hell do you think that you had a higher chance of survival than me? Why in the world are you guys dating? How am I fully healed when I was at death's door only a few minutes ago? And why the hell has my power level went up from 12,010 to 14,200? Alex asked in complete and utter disarray. Okay. This is gonna take a while to explain, it will definitely come as a big shock to you. I will start from the beginning. Moby said, turning very serious as he began to explain everything that had transpired in the past month. Asterisk a few minutes later. Moby had finished explained everything that happened to him, their demon race, their plan on Natalia, how he and Jaden met, what happened to Nathan and Eric, and what happened with Abby. As Moby talked, he saw no major emotions show up on Alex's serious face that was taking in all the information given to him like a sponge. He found that to be very concerning. Moby expected Alex to be very vocal and be strictly against everything he said. But, he kept his serious face the whole way through, not even once stopping him, even in the most graphic parts such as all the torture and killing. Then we confessed our love to each other and decided to turn you into a demon as well. You are now of the demon race too. A demon knight to be more precise. Moby finished his explanation and looked at Alex with expectant eyes. I see. I now understand everything. So you have been hiding your powers all along. You know, I actually really respect your decisions. They are all for the sake of justice. You got rid of all those scum that littered society in a way that they truly deserved. I found it especially noble of you to help out that teammate of yours that was unjustly and indirectly killed by Natalia's hands. You did not go after anyone that did nothing to you and kept to yourselves which is more than I could say for the rest of our school. And I also don't mind being a demon. As long as I can live my life as usual and still have my free will I don't mind at all. Plus, I gained a lot of power from it so I feel like it was a big win in the end, Alex said in a serious tone. As soon as Moby heard Alex's reply, he was indeed very shocked as his mind started spinning in high gear. He could not believe what his ears were hearing. He was not at all expecting what he heard. Especially from Alex, the paladin type. Jaden who was standing beside him was just as confused but kept it all under her poker face just like Moby, Avilia. What the hell is going on? Moby asked. Fine, fine. I was going to tell you this later on but I guess it wouldn't hurt telling you now. As you have previously guessed, turning someone into a demon will slightly change and distort their mind. The person will keep their core personality and morals but they would be twisted and exemplified in weird ways. For example, Jaden is a girl that just wanted to have fun. So, when she turned into a demon, that was what was twisted and was what she most cared about. Abby wanted revenge and a sort of hero, leader, or father figure as she had that missing in her life. That is what you now represent to her and what was twisted about her. That is why she is so fanatic and holds you in such high regard. As for Natalia, I assume that her love and affection towards you had somehow grown even further which even I find it extremely hard to believe. Finally for Alex. Avilia explained before being cut off by Moby. Alex cares about justice and doing what is right and now his perception of that has gotten twisted as well. Moby thought. Bingo. The best part is that the transition is so natural that they won't even feel like they changed at all. However, I would like to tell you that this world of wannabe superheroes that you live in for some reason acts very demon-like in nature. 
So, the changes of the transformation are not usually very apparent like for this Alex friend of yours. It's very entertaining to see. To my knowledge, most humans 100 years ago before the discovery of these abilities were nowhere near this malicious. Nothing close to how it is today. Avilia said with a small chuckle, does this distortion rule also apply to me? Moby asked in anticipation. That you will have to figure out on your own. Avilia said with an amused laugh before going quiet once more. The sudden revelation of what Avilia just explained did not come as a massive surprise to Moby, as he had that same thought lingering at the back of his mind. All it did was confirm his suspicions. However, what did surprise him was that the rule might have also been applied to himself as well. He started to wonder how Alex, Jaden, and Abby would react if they knew about what he knew. And, he wondered how things would have turned out if there was no such distortion effect in his family members' minds, and if they would have even accepted him as their leader or even friend if they were normal. However, he pushed those ideas to the back of his head and decided to forget about them for now. What was done has already been done and he could do nothing to change it and in the end, it all worked out well, luckily. Moby's thoughts and conversation with Avilia only lasted a split second in real time, so it did not at all disturb his conversation with Alex. I knew that you snuck into the bathroom for some reason the first day you came into the dorms, but I thought of it as you just needing to take an emergency piss. Also, the room did smell really bloody and all, but me and Ray thought that it was from you getting bullied or beat up by other people, so I decided to not pry any further into it other than asking you if you needed help with bullies, which you then rejected. It was pretty common for low rank students like you to come back to their dorms all bloody and injured. But now that I know what actually happened I really commend you for standing up to your long term bully and torturer like that. He got what he deserved. Alex said with a chuckle. Ha 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 ha. Thanks. Moby said, rubbing the back of his head. Also. You said that I was a demon knight. What does that mean? Alex asked in excitement. Demon knights specialize in close quarters battles. They usually have a strong physique and a really low reserve of demon energy that they use for certain skills that help in close combat. The skills and abilities you gain vary a lot depending on your fighting style. I can't give more specifics as my memory is still hazy about demon knights. You should probably do some experimenting and training for it on your own. Moby said, trying to squeeze Avilia out of as much information as he could. What in the hell is demon energy? Alex questioned. It's special energy possessed only by demons. I don't have time to teach you it now so Jaden will just teach you instead when we both part ways and go back to our teams, Moby replied. Well, anyways, night seems like a perfect fit for me. I was never into long-range combat anyways. Alex said with a smile. I'm glad to see that we are on the same page. Welcome to the team Alex. You are now the third official member of the House of the Blissful Demon. Moby said with a smile, wrapping his arm around Alex's neck in a friendly manner. It's good to finally join the cool kid club. Alex said with an amused laugh, wrapping his arm around Moby's neck as well, while Jaden smiled before giving a cute chuckle as the sound of Natalia's seemingly never-ending screeches still rang in the background. Chapter 101. A few minutes later, okay. So you got the plan. We will all meet up at the end of the exam before all the lie detector tests and then I'll get us all past them when our names are called. Don't forget to hide your sudden power boost and gradually build yourself up to that new power level to make it look as natural as possible, Moby said to Alex as he finished discussing with him his plans about getting past the lie detector. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I also need to get used to this mind link thing. It's not every day you hear someone's voice randomly pop up in your head. Well, anyway, we have stayed here for too long. Jaden and I need to head to our team before they suspect anything. I'll try experimenting with my new skills once I learn how to use demon energy. Anyways, CYA. Alex said, walking away with a smile. Bye baby. We will see each other real soon. Don't go too hard on Natalia and break her because I want some of the fun. Jaden said in a very childish manner, following right behind Alex. Yeah. I better get going too. The dog is getting pretty rowdy. I should probably take it out for a walk. Moby said, pointing at Natalia, making the other two turn around and chuckle before walking away once more. Then, suddenly, Jaden turned around, running towards the completely defenseless Natalia, daggers in hand. Yes. Come closer to me you little bitch so I can finally get rid of you. Natalia screamed, trying her best to attack Jaden with her nearly broken blades only to be stopped by the same invisible chains as before. In one swift motion, Jaden gouged out both of Natalia's eyes with her daggers before kicking her in the stomach making her cough buckets of blood. Ha. Ah, that felt good. Don't worry. Your eyes will heal eventually. That was my goodbye present to you. It was only a small, little, tiny taste of what will befall you in the next week. Now you can't find any sort of pleasure looking up at my boyfriend's face, as he drags you back to your team's cave to meet up with your last remaining member. Jaden said with a devilish yet somehow childish looking smile. Okay. All done. Now goodbye for realses, before turning around, running back towards Alex once more, what a girl. Moby inwardly thought with a chuckle. Before Alex and Jaden went out of his sight, he decided to use his, inspect, skill on Alex to see his new stats post turning into a demon. Asterisk asterisk name, Alex Heart Race, Demon, Knight, Ability, Level 5, Lightning Level, 45 XP, 11, 545, 000 Power Level, 14200, 12100 plus 2100, HP, 150 or 150 Mana, 224, 224 Demon Energy, 224 or 224 Strength, 401, 366 plus 35, Agility, 462, 407 plus 55, Endurance, 333, 283 plus 50, Intelligence, 224, 194 plus 30, mind, 25, 25 plus 0, asterisk asterisk hum. Just like Avilia said. Low intelligence and mind but high physical stats. 
He's pretty lucky that his armor somehow held up not being completely destroyed too. Moby thought before focusing his attention on Natalia, using his inspect skill on her as well to see if anything would even show up. Asterisk asterisk name, Natalia Zane race. Demon, succubus, ability, level 4 blink level, 36 XP, 11, 545, 000, 000 power level, 9520 HP, 78, 150 mana, 29, 224 demon energy, 224, 224 strength, 209 agility, 192 endurance, 230 intelligence, 321 mind, 150 asterisk asterisk. Well, shit. It works. But, it doesn't even show her armor. I guess it must have been broken too much for it to work. Fuck. I really wanted to sell it for a fortune. Also, she has a shit ton of intelligence. That explains how she was able to spam blink so much. And her mind is extremely high, it's even higher than mine. I guess it's part of being a succubus. I'll make sure to experiment on her succubus powers when I have time. Moby thought, then, he slowly walked towards the blind Natalia who was still coughing on the ground and gave her a simple order. Follow me but pretend to be a crazy dog that constantly licks the ground. Moby ordered with a small chuckle as he saw Natalia immediately start eating worms and licking the dirt off the ground despite being blind, making Moby burst out in laughter. After a few minutes of walking, they finally reached their cave that had a huge hole in the side. Moby passed by Jay's clothes that laid on the ground, and the magic crystals that Natalia had laid in front of the cave that were now grey and gave off no light, and stored them in his inventory before he and Natalia entered the cave. There, he saw Travis's slightly aged and shriveled body still on the ground where he left him. He decided not to kill him because he was interested in his motivations. He ordered Natalia who had started to slightly regain her lost vision to wait for him in the corner of the cave. His previous order of her acting like a crazy dog was still in effect as all she could do was bark, lick the ground, and do other dog-like things, Moby then went over to Jay's bag that was still on the cave's floor to grab a regeneration potion, forcing Travis to drink all of it. He knew that the effect of the potion would take a long time to kick in, so he decided to spend that time teaching Natalia how to use and control her demon energy. If he wanted her to be able to hide her powers and be able to use her succubus skills when he did his experiments, he needed her to know how to use demon energy. He dispelled his previous order and taught her in the most grueling way possible, beating her up for even the slightest mistake and talking down to her like she was a bug. However, to his surprise, he found out that she got some sick sense of satisfaction from every time he would scold or touch her which really creeped him out. Even when he hit her so hard to the point of breaking her bones and organ, she still moaned in satisfaction making Moby stop his abuse on her as it clearly was not working. Yes. Hit me harder daddy. Scold me more daddy. It was like in her head, they were going on a date as they were in private and his attention was all focused on her and her alone. Even when he started to mention how much he hated her and how much he liked Jaden, she still did not show any negative reactions and kept her horny, lustful acts, what the f-u-c-k? How does one torture a girl like her? Has she always been like this or was this due to her becoming a succubus? Moby inwardly cursed, trying his best to come up with ideas until he found a perfect way, making a devilish grin appear on his face. The way required more preparation as he could not do it now. He would have to wait until the end of the exam to do what he wanted to do. So, Moby only had to endure Natalia's nonsense for another day or so until he could make her truly suffer. Ha 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 ha. I am truly a genius. Moby laughed a mischievous laugh of excitement. It seems like Daddy is enjoying himself as well. Natalia said while moaning at Moby who didn't even notice her words as he was still in his moment. So Natalia took it the wrong way, then, after what felt like an eternity, Natalia finally managed to learn how to use her demon energy, exactly when Travis started to open his eyes. Moby ordered Natalia to hide her power increase, and act naturally like she was still the team leader as to not draw any unnecessary suspicions from Travis. The first thing that Travis saw when he opened his eyes was the figure of a smiling demon in human skin, that looked like he was ready to peel his skin off like he was an orange and cook him alive in boiling oil. No no. Be please don't kill me. It's not my fault. They ordered me to do it. I just needed the money and protection man. I needed to survive. I'll give you anything. Travis begged, smashing his forehead on the ground so hard that it started bleeding. Then, suddenly, he felt a friendly touch on his right shoulder making him look up to see what was going on. It's okay. Calm down. I won't kill you. Well, maybe. I am still not sure yet. I just have a few questions that I want you to answer, okay? Moby said with a disturbing smile before activating his eyes of sin that he shrouded in purple demon energy. You should be lucky that he doesn't exterminate you like the bug you are for trying to kill him like that. The still really injured Natalia added in a disgusted tone, that was filled with killing an effort from behind him which even further increased his fear. Why yes of course. I'll answer anything. Travis frantically nodded, not even daring to ask questions bugging his mind such as why Natalia was in such a state. Why did you do what you did? Explain everything and don't you dare lie to me. Moby ordered in a cold voice. Well. Like most of the weaker people in the school, I decided to join a gang for money and protection. The Zexis gang to be more precise, it's one of the stronger gangs in the school. The top members are even rumored to be in the high A ranks. In exchange for completing tasks for them, they give us both protection and money as compensation. If I don't comply with their demands I am as good as dead. My current task was to kill most of my team members so I would get a bigger piece of the money pool at the end of the exam. They promised to get me by the lie detector test by some teacher they had bribed so I did not worry about that. I plan to do it during the last two days of the exam to maximize our total beasts killed so we get more money. But, for some reason, I did not even have to do a single thing. All our team members started to drop like flies in only the first few days which was really messing with my plans, but ended up actually saving me a lot of trouble in the end as we ended up gaining a lot of points anyway. When I saw Jay lash out at you, I thought it was a perfect time to join him and take you out. Then once you were dead, I would turn on Jay, killing him as well. Then, when Natalia returned I would tell her that Jay killed you because of his terrain advantage and that I avenged your death. Travis nervously explained, wow. What the fuck? I swear I predicted like half of this at the start of the exam. Moby thought, mentally patting himself on the back. 
I am only doing this to get money for my sick mother in the hospital. And if I don't have protection at school I would no doubt be robbed out of every penny, Travis continued. Ah ha ha. Are you really pulling out the sick mother card? What is this? An anime? Don't bullshit me like that. Moby started uncontrollably laughing, his serious face completely breaking down. N no. I am actually being serious. L look, Travis muttered before pulling out a picture of him and his sick mother on a hospital bed. I always keep this with me for good luck. He laughed awkwardly. Um. Well. Congratulations. I have good news for you. I have chosen to be merciful and not kill you. But, it's only because I have a use for you. I want you to become my spy for this sexist gang and report to me on their activities and behaviors. I can just have a feeling that my return to school with all my new powers will cause a lot of trouble with the stronger kids. I have my ways of knowing if you betrayed me. And if you did. I would make you wish you were dead and long forgotten. Both you and your mother. Moby said in a cheerful tone that became really harsh towards the end. Why yes of course. I'll do anything. Travis said, bowing really hard once again. That worked out better than I expected. Now I have a disposable human pawn that I can do whatever the hell I want with. I am sure that these gangs might cause some problems for me in the future, and this will greatly help me out without having the huge risk of Jaden going undercover to spy on them. The best part is that this is almost risk-free as he has no idea about my demon powers, and him getting interrogated won't come with any information leading the school to think that demons exist. Moby thought with a sinister smile. Chapter 102 Day 7, 11.56 a.m., Planet Zabilvia. Two days had passed since Natalia's defeat and things had progressed with seemingly no surprises. The next day, Abby had reported to Moby about her victory over the goblins as he showered her with immense praise, as he also received a massive amount of XP from her actions, leveling him up 10 times, all the way up to level 50. She did much better than he ever expected and couldn't help but feel proud of his subordinate, however, despite all his praises, she still managed to shift the topic to about how she was reckless, and allowed one of her team members to die due to her carelessness making her unfit to lead which Moby thought was absolutely absurd. If someone who easily destroyed a city and committed genocide on an entire race, while convincing them that she was friendly all with only one casualty was not fit for the role of demon general, he didn't know who was, even after Moby told her that it was alright and she did a great job, she still insisted on a punishment that would help remind her of her mistake so she didn't do it again. So, Moby ordered her to do 1000 push-ups which she did with no hesitation at all, even for a punishment, my lord chooses something that hurts but still helps me at the same time like extreme exercise. Truly a wise and caring lord. She thought, starting to do all 1000, then, as she was doing her push-ups, Moby explained everything that had transpired with Natalia and Alex. This of course led to him receiving non-stop praise from her that did not cease even when she was almost out of breath, as she started to struggle with her push-ups past around 800. Moby did not complain, and awkwardly accepted all the praise as practice for when he will eventually rule over an entire race of demons as demon lord. Moby also told her that he and Jaden were now dating. And, instead of getting mad or jealous like he feared, she congratulated them instead. Moby was not sure if she just had a really low self-esteem or that she just didn't like him in that sort of way. Either way, his fears of internal love problems and fears of making a harem to appease everyone were put to rest. Moby decided to spend his 76 stat points on mostly agility and intelligence, followed by closely by strength, ignoring endurance for now in order to retain his borderline glass cannon build. Over the past two days, Moby had stopped abusing and scolding Natalia as he knew that she felt some sort of sick satisfaction from it. So, he opted to do the next best thing, completely ignore her unless he was forced to talk to her. To his surprise, that strategy worked out better than he expected as Natalia started feeling super depressed, slightly growing crazier every day forcing Moby to suppress her by force, using his orders that she must abide by due to her being his servant, Travis slowly started to notice his slightly shriveled, aged body with grey hairs which really scared him. He read in many places that extreme fear and pain could lead to grey hairs, which was why he attributed what was happening to him to his extreme fear of Moby when he thought that he was going to kill him. Thinking of that even further increased his fear towards Moby, vowing never to get on his bad side ever again. Becky had woken up and fully recovered during the last day of exams which was extremely good news for Alex's team. As soon as she woke up, she of course called Natalia to check on what happened as she knew that Jaden Griffith was still alive, and well as she was one of the first people she saw when she opened her eyes, Natalia, under Moby's command, replied to her that Jaden got away and that she still plans to get her during another day of the month past the exam, and that she should stay patient until then. Of course, Becky being the perfect pawn for Natalia did not suspect a thing and decided to wait patiently like she was instructed. Jaden had managed to teach Alex how to use his demon energy, but he was still unable to perform any skills with it as he did not have much time to practice. The time was now 11.56am, for minutes before the end of the exam and each team including Moby's team was trying their best to get their last few points in. Then, as time finally expired, a loud ringing noise came from all of their watches, greatly startling them. Attention all students! The exam has come to an end. All beasts teleported after this point will be worth no points. Congratulations on surviving and completing the test. Press the emergency button that you were given and a retrieval team with a large teleportation pad will be sent to your locations, and teleport back to the school. If you somehow lost your emergency button, other than paying a large fine, you must now wait patiently, with some sort of flame signal and wait for the retrieval team to arrive. I will see you back in the arena. A familiar voice rang through all of their watches at once, causing an echo-like effect. As soon as the message finished, Natalia pulled out the emergency button that she had stored in her inventory, immediately pressing it as per Moby's orders that he gave her through their mind link. Not even five minutes later, an armored group of soldiers wearing all black showed up in their location. Without speaking a word, one of them pulled out a large teleportation pad from his storage ring, motioning them to stand on it before blinding white light started to appear under them. Moby could feel the soldiers slightly mock them for losing three members in such an exam, but he paid them no heed as they were teleported back to the school arena where they saw the various other teams being teleported as well. Most of the teams teleported seemed to be missing members and either looked really angry. 
or really depressed with nearly no expectations at all. I in the middle of the huge arena surrounded by thousands of students. On a big stand stood the bored, almost dead-looking General Riker, trying his best to look as professional as possible before addressing the students. However, before he could talk, one of the teachers whispered in his ear before giving him a paper. As he began to thoroughly scan it, his previous dead-looking eyes almost popped out of their sockets as he began to heavily sweat and feel his neck, cursing his entire existence. What? How the fuck could this be possible? He thought, taking a large gulp of saliva before addressing the somewhat depressed-looking crowd underneath him. Asterisk aham asterisk attention all students. It seems like most of you have arrived so I will start by congratulating all of you. You have all done great to pass this exam. We had only received a few emergency calls disqualifying a few teams before the exam even ended. A true soldier would have seen it through to the end no matter what, hiding in a cave for the rest of the exam if they really had to. You have all done great to make it this far. You all have the true heart of a soldier. The general said, making people whisper a lot from underneath them. I knew it. See. I told you that it was a test. And your dumbass kept begging me to press it. Yeah. But we lost so many of our members, was it really worth it in the end? Shut up. Your poor weakest would never understand. Then, General Riker took a deep gulp of saliva before continuing on with his speech. This exam, we have smashed three country records. Both of these stand for the military school ZS around the country, the general announced making the rowdy yet slightly depressed crowd excited. The first is that the old record for most points in a single exam has been completely obliterated by Abby Reed and her team, the general said in an awkward yet enthusiastic tone making the crowd go wild as their attention, all went on Abby who was smiling proudly with her chest puffed out. Anne. The second is that we broke the record for most teams ending with a negative score and most students dead during an exam. The general awkwardly added, heavy sweat running down his face, making the once excited crowd suddenly turn completely silent and depressed once more. Chapter 103. Asterisk aham asterisk why yes. You heard that correctly. We have broken a new record on deaths for an exam and teams with negative points for an exam. Out of the 6,212 students that went in, only 4,348 returned. And over half of you actually ended up with a negative score. The general awkwardly continued, the crowd still silent and shocked. What was supposed to be a light-hearted exam to teach you, teamwork against weak beasts on a dark planet, to prepare for the unexpected turned into a bloodbath, something we did not at all expect. The average beast on that planet was only supposed to be around low E rank, and the ones higher than that were almost impossible to find unless you go out of your way to look for them, the general said before being cut off by a student in the audience. That's bullshit. The average beast was at least AD rank. And they all came at us in waves. All in the darkness of the night. That was bullshit. I can't protect three weak SF ranks you gave me all the while fighting hordes of beasts at the same time. Just because I am an A rank doesn't mean I should be stuck with a bunch of trash that did nothing but hold me back and make my score negative. A short yet menacing cyan-haired student complained. W well, we had to make the teams equal in some way. And, we had no idea about the beasts being that strong. The test was made on the same planet last year and nothing bad happened. If anything students thought that it was way too easy. We had no way of tracking or knowing if you guys were on the planet as the signal to your watch was too far, the only way we could find your location was with the emergency buttons. So, we didn't know that so many people died as the exam was going on. Trust me, if we did, we would have ended the exam long before any of this got so out of hand, the general awkwardly said, leading the crowd to go into outrage. You can't be serious. I failed this exam just because of some bullshit like that. Even if this isn't worth as much as the other tests, a failing grade will still fuck with my average. Fuck. My family is gonna kill me when they find out about this, my best friend died because of your negligence. A lot can change in a year. So, T that is why I have decided to give everyone a perfect, passing grade on this exam, despite all the low scores. This all happened due to my negligence, also, expect an extra $1,000 in your school's bank account as a personal apology from me and the school. The general said, making most of the high-ranking and even low-ranking students stop sobbing and complaining to celebrate. This proved that most of the students cared more about their grades and passing the exam than the life of their friends, which made Alex scoff at them in disgust. And for all your fallen comrades I am deeply sorry. I know that a lot of you probably stored their bodies in your storage rings. We will give them all a proper burial in the country's Z cemetery to honor their brave souls. The general said, making the rowdy crowd a little more serious once more. Now, the moment you have all been waiting for, the results for the top three teams. We did not mention the reward but that was only to see how much you guys would try when there was no reward you were aiming for. All the rewards will be split equally between all the members of the team. The first place team will receive $15,000, the second will be $5,000, and the third will be $2,500, the general said, making the other teams wait with bated breaths for the final results. Although they had access to a leaderboard, it was completely inaccurate as it did not include the minus 1,000 point penalty from losing a member. They all knew who was going to be in first place but the other two places were still a complete mystery to them. In third place with two casualties, we have Team Nags Axel with 9,947 points, the general announced, making the huge crowd turn their focus on the short cyan-haired guy, that spoke out against the general earlier as started to arrogantly boast of his achievements. I carried an entire team of shitters all on my back and still managed to get in third place. Ha 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 ha. Moby expected such a result. Although his team had more points, they still lacked behind due to their minus 3,000 point penalty. However, he did not care much, losing $2,500 was not the worst thing in the world, as he could easily make that much in a week just from Jaden's allowance alone. In second place with zero casualties, we have Team Alex Hart with 11,422 points, the general announced, leading the crowd to look at the smiling Alex's direction who just gave a cheeky wave at everyone looking at him. And as no surprise to anyone, in first place with only one casualty, we have Team Abby Reed with a record-breaking 51,897 points. She and her team broke the country record for this test, which was only 28,582 points that was set by none other than her sister last year, by a long, long, margin. 
The general said, making the crowd stare at Abby once more who smiled and puffed out her chest in pride, as in her mind, she was representing her lord at that moment. She not only managed to discover a new species of goblin, but also ended up completely eradicating every last one of them in their city, making them completely extinct, leaving us no live subject to study. He added with an awkward chuckle. Well, that will be all for now. You have all worked and fought very hard for the past week. You all deserve a rest. You will have a one-week break from school just to cool off and rest. However, until three o'clock, you must stay on school premises. In the next few hours, every single one of you will be called to down Arena B to take your lie detector tests. Just wait until you receive a ringing sound on your watch before coming down to the arena. You are now all dismissed. The general concluded his speech with a fake smile, sweat still running down his face, I am so fucking fired. He inwardly cursed before taking in a massive gulp of ciliava. After hearing the general's speech, Moby could not help but laugh as it made him in a very cheerful mood. A one-week break was too good to be true. It would make his life and Natalia's torture much, much, easier as it removed a lot of the hassle and lost time that school added. As the horde of students were exiting the school's main arena, Moby contacted all of his family members except for Natalia to sneak up to their designated meeting spot, the school roof. He ordered Natalia to just act completely natural as if nothing important had ever happened during the exam. At first, Moby was unsure if such simple commands would even work. However, after a few experiments with his power to give orders using her as his test subject during the exam, he found out that simple commands were also really effective as they completely conveyed his intentions. The only thing that he could not do was order her to do something that was impossible or control her emotions to make her feel a certain way. The most he could make her do in that regard was order her to do was pretend to feel certain emotion yet not actually feeling it. Natalia had told him that she had a way of getting past the lie detector test as she had a deal with one of the teachers, by bribing them due to her family status. At first, Moby thought that he could use her and this teacher to get past the lie detector test instead of using his new skill. However, he quickly scrapped the idea as it was extremely stupid and risky for no reason at all. He did not want to draw any unnecessary suspicions towards himself by doing such a stupid thing as making a corrupt teacher know that he had something bad to hide. So, he just stuck with his original plan, and told Natalia and Travis to get past the lie detector tests via the corrupt teachers as to not draw any doubts towards them. It would have been weird for them to make a deal with them only to not go through with it in the end. Moby's plan to get by the lie detector test was both simple and in his mind, completely foolproof. With the use of his new mind skill and Jaden's doppelganger powers, there was nothing that the lie detector could do. Lesser memory manipulation, level 1, by staring at a target's eyes for one minute, the user can tamper with, change their memories to a certain extent from the two weeks prior to its activation. The skill requires the full consent of the target and only lasts for 30 minutes before they go back to normal, remembering all that had transpired. This skill cannot be used on the user, activation time, 60 seconds duration, 30 minutes cost, 100 demon energy. Chapter 104. Moby was the first one to reach the roof, then it was Abby, followed by Jaden and Alex who came in together as they were on the same team. Moby was not sure how Abby and Alex would interact as they both had a very clashing definition of justice. While one thought that her lord was justice and might as well start her own religious cult, the other one had a more knight in shining armor or paladin-like sense of justice that had been a little distorted by his demon nature. And, exactly like he expected, it was a little awkward between them, although they had some prior interactions using Mind Link. They both used Moby as a means for them to communicate and get their ideas out which Moby did not at all find annoying, as he wanted them to get along. They all patiently waited on the roof, only using their Mind Link to talk for the same reasons as earlier. They discussed the various things that they planned to do with Natalia and things they could make her do with Moby's absolute control. Things such as make her give them money from her family reserve or from her personal belongings or getting her to be eaten half alive, and raped by Abby's undead goblins, and many, many, crueler things, making them all laugh every time someone came up with a good idea as they were always trying to top each other. This made Moby happy to see that the new family was going well, and there had yet to be any internal conflicts about torturing Natalia like he was previously worried about with Alex. They were all on the same page, then, as they were discussing, they heard the first ring come out of Alex's watch. Guess I'm up first. Hit me with that brainwashing thing of yours. Alex said, stretching his muscles, still using Mind Link to talk. Okay, just hold still and let me do my thing, I've never done this before so bear with me, Moby said, also standing up. He activated his skill making his green eyes glow an even more mesmerizing, an almost hypnotizing color as a mellow, almost mirage-like green aura began to come out of it before staring straight into Alex's eyes. Um. This is kinda awkward. Do I really have to stay like this for one whole minute? Doesn't this seem kinda gay? Alex asked. Shut up. This is definitely not gay. Just pretend like this is a staring contest and nothing more. Moby immediately retorted making everyone around him laugh. Then, after a minute had passed Moby's mind went completely blank as he started to become one with Alex's consciousness. Images and videos of Alex's memory started to pop up in his mind, allowing him to feel his emotions and navigate through everything like he was scrubbing through a video in a video editor, while still being able to easily find the most important parts. Alex really a nice guy with a truly has a strong sense of justice. Moby thought, feeling his emotions rush into him, so, this ability not only serves to replace memories but also to take a peek into someone's memories from the past two weeks as well, seems very useful indeed. Moby thought, trying to find the part where he and Jaden fought Natalia when he came across some funny and some disturbing parts of Alex's memory. Ha 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 ha. Natalia got her own best friend in her trap while she managed to miss her intended target every time. Moby inwardly died of laughter, before going completely silent at the part of seeing Alex take a massive shit that he immediately skipped over, then, after what felt like forever, he finally found the part where he found Jaden in the forest fighting Natalia, and decided to help her because he trusted in his words which made him really happy to see. So, he replaced all of those memories to him being injured meeting up with Moby and Jaden in the woods where Moby turned him into a demon, to save his life. Then Moby explained to him that he and Jaden were dating and had no bad blood between each other. 
This was to prevent any questions about sabotaging other teams as attacking, and nearly killing a person from another team definitely counted as sabotage in the eyes of the lie detector. And, finally, he removed the part where he told him about his brainwashing skill and the part that she was brainwashed by him, Avilia. Do I need to change the rest of his memories to make it make sense for what I changed here? Moby asked, nope. I have personally optimized this skill over many years to allow any inconsistency to be auto-filled and corrected on their own. It should work out fine. By the way, you only have a few more seconds with skill. Before it kicks you out. Toddaloo. Avilia answered in her usual casual tone before Moby was kicked out of Alex's mind and back into his own body. Moby went back into his own mind own body, and only to see Alex's dead-looking body in front of him that lacked pupils as his eyes were completely white with everyone around, then was waited in anticipation. Then, suddenly, the color in Alex's eyes began to come back as he stood back up and walked away. CYA guys. I'm gonna be late for the lie detector test. Alex said, walking towards the roof doors. Hey. Alex. Who is Natalia Zane? Moby asked him, making him stop to answer. Moby needed to make 100% sure that the skill in fact worked, that was why he asked such a question. Well, that question came out of nowhere. But, I guess I'll answer but promise me to keep it a secret. Natalia Zane is one of the nicest, most gentle girls at school. And she doesn't even look half bad. Definitely girlfriend material. Alex said with a chuckle, walking out of the roof. Avilia. What kind of sick autocorrect did you implement in that skill of yours? Moby asked, only to receive a huge burst of laughter from the other end. It seems like it worked, but not as well as you probably intended. Messing with a person's memory seems to be a very delicate thing. Jaden commented. Well, at least this will only last for 30 minutes. We just need it to be able to get past the lie detector. Moby replied, trying to comfort Jaden. Yeah. I guess it's not really that bad, but please, whatever you do, just don't make me forget about our confession and our feelings towards each other. I would honestly rather die than forget about it even for 30 minutes, Jaden said in a serious voice. Me as well my lord. Don't make me forget about all the things I care about most like my loyalty towards you. Abby added with clear worry in her voice. Okay, okay. Calm down. Of course, I won't make you forget about such things. Moby said before a beeping sound came from Abby's watch. Well, that sure was quick, Abby, it's your turn, stand still and let me do my thing. Moby said, activating his skill on Abby who just stood there with nervous yet confident eyes. After a minute had passed, Moby was able to see all of Abby's emotions and memories from the past two weeks. Her strong, unwavering loyalty and hatred towards her family overwhelmed him as they were much stronger than he ever expected. He saw her entire fight with the Goblin King and the lengths she went through to win, all for the sake of her goals. The effort that she put into everything was incredible. The more he looked at her memories the more that he started to really respect and feel proud of her. Now, all that Moby had to change, was the parts that she used Grunk to infiltrate the city as they would probably ask her how she was able to destroy an entire city full, of thousands of goblins. Telling them that she controlled an undead to infiltrate the city would not end too well for her. And, he also needed to remove the part where she killed the three girls in the dungeon for XP and to put them out of their misery for obvious reasons. He changed it to that she found the goblin city when scouting. Then, she found a goblin that was in danger, saving him in order to see if she could manipulate him. And, although they couldn't talk to each other, they could communicate in sign language. And with that, they formed a plan of attack on the city with all his of his kind to go against the new kind of goblins who were their oppressors. And, when they won, she turned on all the goblins that helped her and killed them all as well. This was the story that Abby had told her teammates. So, she needed a matching story as well so there would be no inconsistencies between each other's telling of the same story. And, just like Alex, he of course changed the memory of them knowing that they were being brainwashed. As Moby went back into his own body and mind, he saw the same familiar sight that he saw with Alex. Then, as Abby regained control of her body, she stood up before taking a knee. I will be off now my lord. I promise to not disappoint you. She said before leaving the school roof as Moby smiled and gave her the signal that it was okay to leave, now, the only two people left on the roof were Moby and Jaden. As they were both having a casual, friendly conversation, Moby suddenly interrupted her with a small blush on his face. Um. I have something to talk to you about. It's a torture method that I thought about doing to Natalia that would be the most effective and painful method for her to suffer. Moby nervously said. Mum? What is it? Spit it out. I really want to know now. Jaden asked in excitement. I didn't want to say this with everyone around us to not embarrass you and ruin the mood. But, what if we had hardcore sex and made her watch all of it? Chapter 105. Huh? Can you repeat that one more time? I don't think I heard correctly. Jaden said, rubbing her ears to make sure that there was nothing in them. I, I said would it be okay if we had hardcore sex in front of Natalia as I think it would be the best form of torture for her. From my experience, any time I hit her or scolded her she seemed to get off at it. The only time I ever saw true pain in her eyes was when we were together. So, what would be better than forcing her to watch the love of her life have sex with her worst enemy? So? What is your answer? Moby asked with expectant eyes. Yeah. That's what I thought you said. That's indeed quite bold of you to say. Jaden said with a beet red face. So is that a no? Moby awkwardly asked, looking away. Ha. Huh. Are you kidding me? That's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that too? Of course, I don't mind at all. I'm not a virgin like you you know. I promise to show you the time of your life. I will literally rock your world while at the same time making Natalia's world crumble. She teased him. Well, you may be mentally not a virgin. But, when you turned into a demon, you were pretty much given a whole new body. So, physically, you are still technically a virgin as long as you didn't let any other guy penetrate you ever since you became a demon. Moby teased back. Ha ha ha. Of course I didn't. I'm not the same slut I used to be. 
I used to just take any guy I thought looked cute, keeping them under my protection, using them as a sex toy until I got bored of them and released them out of my protection, only for them to be bullied and tortured by all the jealous and thirsty guys. You are the first guy that I genuinely fell in love with. Not only with your looks but your personality as well. You made me feel things that I didn't even know I could feel. I can't really say as much for any other guy. Jaden said with a bright smile that made Moby really happy before being interrupted by a beeping sound that came from her watch. Damn, that's quick. They must be using more than one lie detector to do multiple students at once and they must be flying through them at breakneck speed. Moby commented before he as well got a ringing sound coming from his watch, what the f-u-c-k? This is completely fucking with my plans. What were the chances that we would both be called down at the exact same time? Moby inwardly cursed. What Moby planned to do was that if he had to go, he would ask Jaden to transform into him and change her memories of every time he explained something to her into something else, removing key parts such as technically letting Naya die and killing Haley and Jay in cold blood, however, if they both went at the same time, such a plan would never work. The only way that he could see them getting out of such a predicament was if Jaden transformed into him, and they both used lesser mind manipulation on each other at the same time which would be very hard to do, however, that would not be the biggest problem. The biggest problem would be that Jaden would have full access to his memories which would allow her to know everything about Avilia and his system, something he wants to keep a secret for as long as he could, then, as Moby's head was spinning in full gear trying to come up with an idea on how to get out of his predicament, he heard Avilia's sound in his head. You know, I can help you out. It's actually pretty easy. Avilia said. Wait really? What is it? I'll do almost anything. Moby replied. Well, I can always use the lesser mind manipulation skill on you if you provide me with the rest of the XP in your gauge to fuel it as, I have no large demon energy reserve for myself and I am unable to access your reserves for my own use. All I need is your consent. Then I can do my thing. Avilia explained. Moby was really skeptical and worried if he should trust Avilia with his memories, as he felt like she might pull something dirty on him like trying to take over his body or something. However, he had no other choice in his current predicament. Plus, Avilia had been a major help to him and without her, he would not have gotten anywhere near as far as he did. They had some sort of unexplainable bond between them that Moby would be lying if he said he didn't at times enjoy despite some of the annoying parts. So, he decided to trust her and give her 12,400 XP and consent to change his memories. It was the ultimate trust test between him and her because she could really screw him up if she wanted to. In his eyes, the risk was well worth it as it could provide Moby with useful information on how much he could trust and rely on Avilia. However, before he did, he decided to use his skill on Jaden first. I'll use the skill on you before I use it on myself, so stay still and just stare into my eyes, Moby said to Jaden. Wait. I thought you said that you couldn't use the skill on yourself. I was just thinking that me and you were just going to use the skill on each other at the same time. Do you not trust me to take a look in your memories? Do you have something important that you are hiding? Jaden asked in confusion. No. Not at all. It's just that as a demon of sin, I am completely immune to such mind skills from outside sources. Also, I have been experimenting with the skill over the past few days, and I figured out that I am able to use it on myself although with extreme difficulty, Moby lied through his teeth with an impeccable poker face. Fine. I believe you. I guess I was just really excited to have a chance to take a peek at your mind. Sorry about that. Jaden apologized. It's fine. I guess that you probably have a lie detector in your house as well. So, if you want, you can use it on me if you have any doubts about my words, Moby said, trying to comfort her. He he, no, that's fine, I trust you. However, if you really insist, I might take you up on your offer sometime in the future. So, anyways, just get this brainwashing thing over with, I don't want to be late for the test or else it would seem extremely suspicious, Jaden said with a chuckle, leading Moby to nod before activating his skill and staring into Jaden's beautiful sky blue eyes. After an awkward minute of them staring and blushing at each other, Moby finally entered Jaden's mind. He felt all of her emotions, how happy she was feeling, how much she loved and cared about him, how much she valued her friendship with Abby, how happy she felt reconciling with Alex, and how much hatred she had for Natalia and many more emotions flooded his mind. As he was looking through her memories, he noticed all the parts where Natalia severely humiliated her in front of her entire class and sometimes school. And, all the times that she almost killed her, making it seem like an accident only for Jaden to barely survive which made Moby's blood boil, as his anger and hatred for Natalia somehow grew even further. Jaden had described everything that happened to her in detail to Moby, but it was a whole new experience when he saw what happened from Jaden's eyes and perspective. Trying to calm himself down, Moby scrubbed through all of her memories and removed all the parts about planning to kill Natalia and about all the parts about the fight, still keeping the important memories of their confession and her making up with Alex. This was to remove any ideas of sabotaging another team, something that the school would definitely ask for during the test, then, as soon as he finished replacing all of her memories. He went back into his own body as he was starting to run out of time, only to see the unconscious Jaden in front of him, regaining her consciousness and standing up before walking away from him in anger. Hey, Jaden are you alright? Moby asked with clear concern in his voice. Well, baby, I am still really mad at you for changing your mind about killing and torturing Natalia. She did so many bad things to me and you decided to let her go completely unharmed. Do you even love me or even care about me like you claim you do? I am starting to reconsider this relationship, maybe you should have gone and asked her out instead. Jaden said in clear anger, slamming the roof doors behind her with a loud bang, leaving Moby in shock, his mouth wide open. Chapter 106 What the fuck? She changed that much just from slightly altering her memories? She went from loving me to hating me in the blink of an eye. I need to be more careful when using this skill in the future, thanks Satan it only lasts for 30 minutes. At least this is a learning experience, I would hate to use this skill in the future when it is upgraded and has a much longer time limit. It could easily backfire on me, leading my servant to betray and go against me. Because if they did, even if I managed to defeat them, I would not be able to change back their memories as I would need consent to do it which they would obviously not give. So, I would have to subdue them until the time limit is over, Moby thought, indeed, messing with someone's memories is a very delicate procedure. 
That is why I will try to change your memories with my expert skill and surgical precision so none of the weird stuff happens to you. Trust me. Avilia commented with a chuckle. Yeah. I am trusting you on this. Moby said with slight nervousness, all that I will be doing is changing all the parts about you killing your teammates, except for Jay who you killed in self-defense as even Travis is a witness of that. I will also change your memories to make you think that the crazy story that you told your group was actually real to hide the fact that your spike in power level was due to you being a demon, as for your plotting on Natalia, I will keep all of it as it is technically not sabotaging another team as she is your own teammate, so, everything about the fight and past it will stay the same. Does that sound like a plan to you? Avilia asked in a more serious voice that was extremely out of character to him, throwing him off guard as it seemed like Avilia was being serious and not at all playing around like he feared. Moby mentally gave Avilia a nod that he was ready before closing his eyes and waiting for her to do her thing. Then after one minute, his mind went completely blank, as he lost control of everything in his body as his consciousness drifted into a space-like void in his mind. Then, all of a sudden, he felt his brain start to heavily throb like it was about to break right out of his head, leading to a huge headache. He felt memories being forcefully ripped out of his head only to be replaced with new ones which was an extremely painful experience. No wonder everyone I used this on went unconscious, Moby thought in agony, as the last of his remaining memories were forcefully ripped out of his head. Moby then woke up, finding out that he was alone on the roof just like he remembered. Then, he looked at his beeping watch as he started to panic. Shit! I am going to be late for my lie detector test. He inwardly thought, running out of the roof, rushing straight to the gym. Hey, pipsqueak. I am tired of this shit. I don't care that you are under Jaden Griffith's protection. Every time I see you with her it pisses me off. She should have been with. A big burly guy said, standing in the hallway, blocking Moby as he tried to attack him before he was interrupted midway through his sentence. This was not the only time that such a thing would happen. There were always a few outliers that did not care or understand what it meant to be under Jaden Griffith's protection. It meant that her butler, one of the strongest hitmen in the country, would be at their doorsteps to teach them a lesson that they would never forget. So, since Moby did not have to hide his power level due to his new ability, he could show the bully in front of him who he was truly dealing with. Get the fuck out of my way fatty. Moby screamed as he just casually slid and tripped his attacker, staring cold daggers in his eyes making him piss his pants before punching him in the stomach so hard that he was forced to regurgitate, his morning breakfast, surprising everyone that was around him in the hallway as he sped right past them like a bullet train. Am I imagining things? D did you all see that? Jaden Griffith's pet, that F rank trash just one shotted that C rank like he was nothing. One of the kids spectating said, his eyes wide open, almost popping out of their sockets. Yya, another student nodded in absolute shock. When Moby finally reached the arena, he saw several people behind tables with a lie detecting crystal on top of each one. He looked around the arena managing to find all of his family members who were still taking the test, including Jaden who still looked extremely angry. Name please, a voice came from an extremely short teacher below him. Oh, sorry, didn't see you there. My name is Moby Kane, he replied. Okay I get it. I'm short. I don't even know why they assigned me to this role so stop rubbing it in. And you go to table 32. Now scram. He said in an extremely annoyed manner. Thanks, Moby said walking away, trying to find table 32. Damn F rank brat thinks his hot shit. Moby heard him mumble under his voice which made him chuckle, as he wondered how he would start treating him if he took a peek at his watch instead of relying on what was written on his tablet. If only he knew that I had a good ability he wouldn't have treated me like that. People like him really piss me off. Makes me wonder how many girls who were so openly hating me that would all of a sudden flip the switch and start simping for me hard. Moby inwardly chuckled. When he reached table 32, he saw a blonde female soldier sitting behind a white desk with a lie detector in its center. As he neared the table, she motioned him to sit down before a sort of energy shield formed around them that slightly startled him. This is just a barrier to block out outside sound and keep our conversation in here. Just put your hands on the crystal and I will ask you a few questions. Answer honestly, if you lie you will be even more severely punished than if you told the truth, she said in a bored, monotone voice, leading Moby to nod in understanding. First question, did you kill or let any of your team members die out of malicious intent? She asked. No, Moby responded, making the crystal glow a green light. Good. Next question, did you ever sabotage another team or bring any illegal items with you into the exam? She asked once more. No, Moby responded with confidence, making the crystal shine green once again. Now, last but not least. On my paper, you are listed as an F rank but from your watch it is telling me that you are a B rank. Can you explain that? She said, her eyes almost popping out of their sockets. Well, you probably wouldn't believe this but that is what we have lie detectors for. I found an ability orb in a cave while fighting a bunch of beasts. It is some sort of purple energy ability, it's pretty strong but I am still not completely used to it yet. See? Moby said, forming a small ball of energy in his right hand. Wow. You are indeed very lucky young man. You seem to have discovered a whole new ability. Only a few people in history ever reported finding an ability orb on a foreign planet. Would you allow the science division to do some experiments on you and your new ability for research purposes? The school will pay you handsomely for your efforts. She said, moving closer to Moby with stars in her eyes making him lean backwards, her previously bored and serious attitude suddenly turning enthusiastic. Ah. Sorry, but I will have to decline your offer, Moby awkwardly responded. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate. If you ever change your mind please don't hesitate to contact the school or go to the general's office. Speaking of the general, I know that he wanted to give you the test himself. At first, I was skeptical about why he would choose to personally do the test for you, a former F rank, but now I clearly see why. But sadly he is now too busy dealing with the disaster that was the exam. The female soldier said, still brimming with enthusiasm. Oh. Is that so? I feel honored that the general wanted to see me personally, Moby said with an awkward chuckle, what the fuck? Why does the general want to see me? Did Jaden put him off last time, she took the lie detector test in my place? Moby inwardly cursed. Okay. 
That will be all. Thank you so much for taking the test. She said, releasing the energy bubble that surrounded them as she waved goodbye to him with a smile on her face. Damn, that sure was quite the experience. She changed so fast. Moby thought, walking out of the arena, trying to contact Jaden using his mind link only for her not to answer, Moby took a deep, long breath before he threw the idea to the back of his head as he knew that he had used his mind manipulation on Jaden, and that it would wear off not too long from now, making her go back to normal. So, he decided to train his air steps, in the forest that was now no longer out of bounds as there had been no forest killings in a very long time, then, after a few minutes of training, he felt an intense pain ravage his mind as all of his true memories came back to him, damn. Avilia. You have truly outdone yourself. That was perfect. I don't know why I ever even doubted you. Moby praised her, he he. Why of course. I am an expert at using the skill after all. I will consider this as part of your reward for doing well on the exam. Avilia boasted. Asterisk asterisk Alex was walking through the hallway in his usual cheerful mood. He had just finished his lie detector test and was on his way to talk to Natalia whom he suddenly had the urge to become friends with, and maybe date due to her pure, kind-hearted nature and cute face. Then as he was about to leave the school through the front doors, he felt an intense pain in his head as all of his true memories started to flood back into his mind. What the hell was I thinking? He muttered in a low voice, feeling his stomach turn inside out in disgust. Asterisk asterisk stop calling me. I will show you ungrateful scum about treating me so badly. I am going to officially break up with you in person. Jaden thought, walking angrily through the hallways at a quick pace, forcing everyone in her path to move out as they made way for her. Then, as she was walking, she felt her true memory suddenly enter her mind along with the feeling of extreme pain. W what the hell was I thinking? She muttered in a low voice as she felt her heart crack in two, tears falling down from her face before quickly wiping them away before anyone around her noticed. Asterisk 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 Abby was walking around the school wearing a genuine smile as she was on her way to meet up with her lord and savior, Moby Kane. On her way, many students congratulated her for her record-setting performance which was most likely all in order to suck up to her. When, all of a sudden, she felt a burst of pain enter her mind as her memories began to flow back in, ha ha ha. My lord is amazing. He already mastered his new skill in such a short amount of time. It worked perfectly. As expected of my lord. Abby thought with a smile. Chapter 107. The time was already 3 o'clock and students were now finally allowed to exit the school's premises. Did she get plastic surgery or something? Was she always that hot? And was her chest always that big? Natalia heard the many, constant, annoying whispers and rumors around her from the moment she got back to earth due to her enhanced hearing, as she walked out of the school gates only to find three bodyguards waiting for her arrival. Young miss. Your father is very angry with you. He wants to see you right away. A bodyguard said escorting her to a luxurious car that was not quite a limousine but really close. Fine, let's just get this over with. Natalia said with a sigh, following the bodyguard and entering her car before driving away from the school. Natalia knew that such a moment would come and she had been preparing herself mentally for it. She just nervously waited in the car with bated breath, thinking of Moby to comfort her the whole way there. Natalia's mother had died during the Shulka War and her dad was left to raise her by himself. Luckily, he was a very nice person that pampered and spoiled her, giving her everything she ever wanted. However, when he got mad, it was like he was a completely different person, nothing like the father she knew and loved. And, she knew that what she had done would have no doubt greatly angered him more than she had ever seen before. We are finally here. The bodyguard said, opening the door of the car, allowing Natalia to leave. I in front of her was a massive outdoor garden that was beautiful and well kept, and behind it was a large mansion that looked more like a castle than an actual house. Follow me, her bodyguard escorted her up the stairs to her front door, across the wide and extensively decorated hallway all the way up to a huge door that led to her father's office where he does most of his work. Your father is waiting for you beyond this door, he's been patiently anticipating your arrival for the past week. I will be off now my lady. The bodyguard said with sweat running down his face before he walked away in a slight hurry. Natalia was scared of virtually no one and no thing. However, one of the few exceptions to that rule was her father, the person that cared about her most in the world. But, what she was scared of was not the heavy beating that she would receive, but the immense anger, pain, and disappointment she would make him feel towards her. Natalia took a deep breath before swallowing her saliva, stealing her resolve before opening the pair of large doors in front of her. She saw the figure of a tall, lean man with silver hair sitting on a rotating chair behind a desk, facing away from her. That man was none other than her father. Dad, I'm back home. She muttered nervously. Ho ho. I see you're finally back. How was the exam, sweetie? He asked in an ominous tone. Gee good. She replied. Good. You better have done more than good after sneaking out with that armor of yours. Do you know how much that armor was worth to me? That armor was the armor that your mother wore when she was a soldier. They somehow managed to recover it from her dead body and bring it back to us in good condition that we later on renewed. It was supposed to be the armor that was given to you as a graduation present from your late mother, and you decided to sneak off with it for some dumb exam that isn't even worth that much in the first place. Have you absolutely no shame? For your sake, you better have gotten at least first place or else hell will befall you. Her father said, starting out calm before he exploded with anger, the entire room shaking from the force of his immense power. I, I only got fourth, she slowly replied. Fourth. He bellowed, turning around only to find Natalia standing there with a nervous and fearful look on her face. Where is the armor? Show it to me. He ordered with a menacing glare that sent shockwaves down her spine. Natalia braced herself and clenched her fists hard before pulling out the nearly completely broken and tattered armor that she wore during the exam. You fucking bitch. You broke the fucking armor. He roared like a wild animal as the room started shaking even more. In one moment he was standing in front of her, and he was completely gone in the next as he teleported right beside her using blink. He clenched his hand into the shape of a fist, punching towards Natalia's face so fast that his hand formed ripple through the air, leaving Natalia virtually zero time to react and dodge. 
However, when his fist was about to make contact with her face, he held himself back last second as to not kill her, opting to give her a flick on the forehead that was so powerful that it heavily dented and cracked her skull, sending her flying away crashing on a nearby wall. You even dared to come back after getting plastic surgery and a boob job as well. Are you just trying to make me mad? He slapped her in the face so hard that the skin on her cheek was torn off and many of her teeth were seen flying through the air. As he looked at the battered, bloodied, nearly toothless face of his own daughter, he immediately snapped back to his own senses and felt immense regret. However, he could no longer pamper her and go light on her so much. She was going to graduate and become an adult in two years so he needed to start acting stricter and provide her with proper punishments. I don't even want to look at you anymore. Get out of my house. If you can't respect me or your mother's wishes then leave until you've properly reflected on your actions and recognize the blessings you have over the many other citizens of this country. You are no longer allowed here. I don't care where you go. Go live on a bench, at a friend's house I don't care. You can go anywhere as long as it's not here. He said in a voice that started to become slightly softer as he turned around to hide the tears flowing down his face. Would it be possible if you gave me a lot of money? I am probably going to need it to survive. She blurted out of nowhere like she lost control of her own actions. That was of course due to Moby's orders that went as follows, go back to your house like usual, make your dad give you an unsupervised leave from the house. Tell him that you are going camping or something, anything that lets you out. And, try and grab as much money and as many expensive items from your house as you can. Don't act suspicious. Report to me when you are finished. Have you no shame? He lifted his hand to slap Natalia in the face once more before stopping himself mere inches, before making contact on her other cheek before he again, turned around to face the other way. In that instant, she noticed the heavily crying face of her father as extreme pain began to rush into her heart. She still had absolutely no regrets for what she did as it was all for the sake of her love. However, she would be lying to say that it didn't pain her to see her father, one of the nicest people she knew and the person that cared about her most get so angry at her. Not even a little money? She blurted out against her will once more, making her inwardly curse. Get out of my sight. Even after all of this, you refuse to show respect and stop acting childish. I see now that I have pampered and spoiled you way too much. Her father snapped once more, picking her up by the collar of her school uniform and walking outside of the room and towards the front door as Natalia struggled to breathe, all the while servants were looking at them in fear, trying their best to get out of their way, when he reached the front door of the house, he kicked them open with incredible force, sending the massive heavy doors flying like they were made out of cardboard. Now get the fuck out of my house. He screamed, throwing the still injured Natalia away far into the mansion's front garden, in the mud and on her ass. Now leave and don't come back until you've learned to respect me, and your dead mother. Learn how truly privileged you are compared to most of your peers. Leave and think long and hard about your actions and don't come back until you've fully reflected on yourself. Her father screamed, tears flowing down his face like a river before closing the door with a loud, resounding bang. Gee goodbye. She muttered in a low voice, shedding a tear of her own. And no. I mustn't be sad. Now I get to spend the entire week with Moby, completely uninterrupted. He did promise to show me a surprise if I did what he asked. Natalia said, wiping her tears away, trying her best to ignore her inner pain by cheering herself up and getting really excited to go see Moby's face once more. Chapter 108. PND no 10 for 20 p.m., Jaden's mansion, bedroom, Jaden. Please. Just calm down. I already told you, I know that you meant nothing of what you said. Everything will be okay. My feelings for you have not changed one bit. I still love you very much. Moby said, trying to comfort Jaden who was clearly in distress and not in the right place of mind. I am so sorry. Why did I even say those things? It was all your fault. Or was it my fault? Would I have actually hated you if you didn't agree to kill Natalia like that memory replacement suggested? Is my love for you really that shallow? Or did you somehow alter my mind in other unintended ways? Please, just forget everything I said about hating you or breaking up with you. I really didn't mean any of it. But it was all your fault to begin with. But you kinda needed to do it so we passed the lie detector test. But at the same time it was. Jaden kept on rambling over and over again from the moment she gained back her original memories, like she was going crazy, tears falling down her face, not stopping even when Moby constantly tried his best to comfort her. So, he decided to do the next best thing. Asterisk slap asterisk, just calm down. Of course, I knew that you didn't mean any of that. It was all in the past. I promise that I will be more careful while using the skill next time. It pains me a lot to see you, someone who I love very dearly, start acting like this. We are both together and well right now, and that's all that matters. Let us just move on from this and look towards the future. Moby said, wiping the tears away from her face before giving her a firm, loving hug. Why yeah. Thanks. I really needed that, I guess you're right. I was just overreacting I guess. I am so lucky to have someone like you in my life, Jaden said with an awkward chuckle, hugging him back, small tears still running down her face. Speaking of looking forward to the future. It seems like our guest has finally arrived, Moby said with a smile as he heard the sound of two footsteps approaching them from outside the room, as he began playing with Jaden's hair before kissing her passionately on the lips which slightly startled her at first, but then ended up easing right into it. My lord. The slut is here. May I have permission to enter? Abby said from the other side of the door. Yes, of course. Come in. Moby responded to her using his mind link. Your esteemed guest has finally arrived my lord. The butler was busy cleaning around the house so I decided to escort her here myself. Abby said, throwing Natalia's body on the ground in front of her like she was a toy doll. Why can't I kill you? What is wrong with my body? Why does my body not want to listen to me anymore? Natalia screamed, looking at Abby with eyes full of hate and disdain. Well, I will be heading off to the basement to finish setting up my study area. I have already thought of many ideas that I want to test out. But please, do not hesitate to call me if you require any assistance. Good luck with everything. You two have fun. 
Abby said with a smile, closing the door behind her, then, Natalia shifted her attention from Abby who had just finished slamming the door and focused on the kissing couple in front of her, her immense hate multiplying several times in that moment. No. Stay the fuck away from my Moby. Get your filthy hands and crusty lips off him or I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. She screamed like a banshee, trying her best to blink or even move, but with no avail at all like she was being held by invisible chains, the same feeling she constantly felt ever since she became a demon. Ha 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 ha. I would like to see you try. You look so pathetic. I bet you must be the most jealous girl in the world. Jaden mocked her with a demonic laugh. Bitch. Didn't I tell you that you are now my slave? My word, my will, and orders are now law. And there is nothing you can do to change that. Now watch as I show you something that you will never have. And with a woman that is millions of times better and hotter than your ugliest in every way imaginable. Moby said with a smile, leading to Jaden wrapping her arms around his neck and licking her lips in a seductive manner. Did you say slave? Why not use me as your sex slave? I would be okay with that. As long as you get that bitch out of here and penetrate me and only me. Then we could live happily ever after. Together. Wouldn't that be the best life to live? The perfect fantasy. Me and my sexy body and you together forever. She said in an alluring voice, quickly unbuttoning her shirt and bra, showing her new big succubus melons to Moby as she began to play with them and suck on them with a horny look on her face. Put that shit away. No one wants to see those things. Moby shouted, activating his eyes of sin and staring straight into her soul, sending shivers down her spine, making her immediately put away her massive breasts back under her shirt and bra. Natalia tried her best to turn things in her favor by showing off her sexier, new and improved succubus body to try and entice Moby into choosing her over Jaden who in her opinion, looked much worse than her. However, the answer from Moby was something she did not at all expect which made her go absolutely wild as her world began to crumble more and more right in front of her face. Why? Why are you doing this? I thought you said that you were going to show me a surprise that I would never forget. She bellowed in complete outrage. Ha 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 ha. You brought this onto yourself bitch. And, this is the surprise that I promise that you will never forget. You seem to find pleasure whenever I would hit you, talk to you, or even get near you. So, this is the closest thing I could do to make you experience true suffering, Moby said with his tongue out in a devilish smile, grabbing onto Jaden's gigantic tits with a tight squeeze. Oh. Quite bold for a virgin first timer aren't you? But I won't let you outdo me. Jaden said, grabbing Moby's already stiff package with a hard yet tender grasp as she kissed him once more, their tongues fighting each other in their mouths. Natalia could not bear the sight of what she was witnessing. The pain on her soul was way too much to bear. So she instinctively tried to look away. However, when she tried, that same feeling of invisible chains stopping her prevented her from doing it. So, instead, she tried to close her eyes only to be stopped by that same invisible force. So, she opted for her last resort, killing herself. However, once again she was powerless to move even a single limb. So finally, she tried to bite her own tongue which was also stopped by the same unknown force. She was quite literally forced to watch her worst nightmare right in front of her eyes and there was nothing she could do to stop it. If hell truly existed, she could not imagine it being any worse than what she was witnessing. Ah. Just let it end. Kill me already. Why are you forcing me to watch this? You actually don't understand the pain that I am feeling right now. My heart had long cracked and shattered into a million pieces. This is too much to bear. I should have been the only girl that should have ever been near you let alone touch you. Not that dirty whore Jaden Griffith. You are making a big mistake. It's not too late to stop now. Either take me as your one and only lover or kill me right now. I beg of you. Natalia screamed, tears falling down her face that soon turned into tears of blood. Ha ha ha. You are getting this desperate from this alone. I am glad I suggested to do this instead of traditional torture. This is working out better than I ever expected. And we have yet to even get to the juicy part. Moby said with a devilish grin from ear to ear, as he ripped out Jaden's shirt and bra in one swift motion exposing her large set of tits and round, plump nipples as they dropped down, making a crashing sound as her perfect tits clashed and jiggled together. Chapter 109. Hey. That was my favorite shirt and you ripped it all up. But I will let it slide just this once. Jaden said with a smile, removing Moby's hands that were fondling her tits before crouching down to unbutton the bulging gates of hell to release the beast from its cage as Moby stared at her with a smile on his face. Natalia stopped her constant screaming and begging as she started to hyperventilate, get wet, and drool in anticipation of the reveal of Moby's dick. She had been waiting to take a peek at his mighty spear for so long that she forgot the situation she was in. It was the only thing she wished to see before dying and she was about to finally witness it with her own eyes. As Jaden finished unbuttoning Moby's pants, pulling them down with her tongue out in anticipation, it showed his black boxers showed a massive stick protruding from it as it seemed to be completely hard already. Then, she held tightly onto his boxers with both hands as she pulled them down revealing Moby's hard, throbbing cock. Natalia's eyes almost popped out of their sockets, forgetting about everything that was going on around her. All of her worries and pain were gone and replaced with pure bliss as she focused solely on Moby's holy or in this case, demonic sword as it was the most beautiful thing her eyes had ever laid upon, making her cry tears of joy, however, sadly, that pure, naive, ignorant bliss could not last for long. Oh. I see that you recently shaved. Someone had been anticipating this. No matter how many times I see it, it always never fails to impress me. Have you measured that thing? Jaden asked, licking and biting her lips as she started to play with his balls, flicking them side to side like she was playing tennis. Natalia's happiness was extremely short-lived as she noticed that the world's most precious treasure in her eyes was completely out of her reach, and was in the hand of another slutty, filthy woman. Her tears of blood began to fall down her face at an even faster pace as her will to live immediately returned, as she had a new goal to strive for. Get away from him. His cock should have been all mine and mine alone. It should be me up there. She screamed at the top of her lungs, trying her best to move and grab her treasure only for it to not work once more which made her lose her mind even further. First things first, what do you mean, no matter how many times I see it? Do you transform into me on a regular basis just for that? 
and it was eight inches and a half was the last time I measured. Who knows, it might have grown even bigger by now. Moby said in a boastful tone which made Jaden chuckle, ignoring Natalia's screams as he felt a tingle in his balls of steel that hurt a little but surprisingly felt really good. After playing with his balls for a bit Jaden moved onto the main course, Moby's dick. She did not hesitate to grab Moby's cock tightly by the shaft, as she began to stroke it up and down tenderly and slowly before speeding up into a normal and stable rhythm. The feeling was unlike anything Moby ever felt before. Jaden's soft, tender hands going up and down his cock was unlike anything he felt in his life, one of the best feelings ever. It felt so good in fact that when he tried to refuse the urge to moan in pleasure his body would not listen at all. Oh. It seems like you are really enjoying this. I only just got started. Prepare yourself for more pleasure than you have ever experienced before. She said with a flushed red face, putting her mouth on the top of Moby's cock as she began to lick the tip of it, surprising Moby. Oh yeah. That feels great. Moby praised her, ignoring Natalia's screams that had just gotten louder by many decibels. The feeling of Jaden's tongue swimming, licking and wrapping around his tip made him feel pleasure like he never experienced before. The feeling of a woman's wet mouth and saliva was surreal and made his cock twitch and throb even harder. Then, as soon as she finished with the tip, she moved her mouth even further beyond, as she eventually swallowed nearly all eight and a half inches of his cock before bringing her mouth away as saliva dripped from Moby's hard dick. Hum. Is that precum I taste in my mouth? I guess it's expected since this is your first time. Time to bust out my moves while making you bust a nut. Jaden said with a smile, sucking Moby's dick at a fast speed using a combination of her hands and mouth. Fuck. A double combo attack. I am not sure how much longer I can last. Moby inwardly cursed as he was dying of pleasure. As Moby's dick was being sucked, he felt his knees grow weak as his face turned completely red, his entire senses pulsating with pleasure. Fuck. Why am I being so weak? I can't let her play with me like this. I am the master here. Moby thought, grabbing onto Jaden's head, forcing her to suck him deeper to the point of sucking his entire cock as he thrust his hips into her mouth, forcing her to choke on his cock as she desperately tried her best to breathe with tears of joy falling down her face. That should have been me. Natalia screamed from behind them only to be ignored by the couple that was clearly having too much fun. After a few minutes of hardcore oral sex, Moby felt like he was reaching his limit. Fuck. Why now? I can't do it now. I can't come now. I refuse to let myself be known as Moby Kane, the one minute pleasure demon lord. Moby inwardly cursed, letting go of Jaden's choking euphoric face to take a breather. Asterisk cough asterisk asterisk cough asterisk asterisk cough asterisk hum asterisk lick asterisk. You are much better and more daring than I ever thought. I've never given a blow job that felt that good and made me feel like such a slut. But believe me when I say that it was just the beginning for the pleasure I am about to make you feel. Jaden said in a seductive voice, quickly grabbing Moby's cock giving him no time to rest as she wrapped it around her big, voluptuous tits, stroking it up and down using them making Moby shudder at how good he felt. He felt his dick melt between the two large, soft balloon-like balls as he began to drown in pure euphoria. How big are those things? Moby asked with his eyes wide open in curiosity. Well, I am a G cup and my measurements in centimeters are 102, 58, 90, Jaden said with a wink as she started to suck and stroke Moby's cock as she was titty-fucking him at the same time. Oh no. It's a triple combo. This feels too good to be true. To survive I need to cut off all feeling to the second half of my body but that would be admitting defeat. I will hold out my best to survive. I refuse to be known as the Minuteman Demon Lord. Moby made up his resolve as he started to tease Jaden and go on the attack. Is that all you got? I thought you were an expert. Moby mocked her with a smile on his face. Nope. Not even close. Jaden said with a dealish grin, letting her mouth go from Moby's cock in order to talk before going on the offensive once more, jerking him off even faster than before as she started to use more and more of her super speed. Fuck. I provoked her too much. She's gone turbo mode. I don't think I can last another 30 seconds like this. Moby inwardly cursed. Shit. This feels so good. I think I'm gonna come. Moby screamed in pleasure, ignoring Natalia's constant screaming as it now sounded like nothing more than romantic music. Jaden did not respond to Moby and instead started to even further increase the speed of her sucking and titty fucking, making Moby come even faster than he expected. I am coming. He screamed, blowing his massive load inside Jaden's mouth, so much so that it started to overflow. Jaden let go of Moby's cock before swallowing his entire load in one gulp, as she began licking the residue of her face with a lustful look in her eyes. Yum. That was tasty. That sure was one massive load. I'm impressed that you were able to last that long even when I jerked you off at super speed to make it seem like you came fast. Jaden said with a chuckle. T8 there is more coming. Moby said, releasing a high velocity cum shot onto Jaden's face and massive tits making her chuckle, and licked them off her skin that made Moby hard once more. However, a small part of the cum shot missed Jaden and landed right in front of Natalia, but still outside her reach making her stop her banshee like screaming and stare at it. T8 that's Moby's cum. The drink I always long to taste. And it's right in front of me. I need it. I need it. She thought like a lunatic, trying her best to use every fiber of her being to move and taste the cum of the person she loved most. Jaden. Like you promised, you gave me pleasure like I never felt before. So. Now it's my turn. Moby said with a smile, pushing her onto the large bed behind her. Then, he jumped on top of her like a wild animal, lifting up her skirt, revealing her juicy, slim thick thighs that were covered by her thigh-high socks making her flushed red face smile and lick her lips in a seductive manner. Then, he grabbed Jaden's panties, pulling them right off before throwing them behind him in the air, somehow landing straight on top of Natalia's face making her roar and scream in outrage as she struggled to get them off her face. Underneath her panties was the holy grail, her pussy, something that Moby had yet to see in person until this point. You like it don't you? 
Jaden said with a cute giggle, playing and rubbing her already wet pussy. At that moment, Moby couldn't control himself as he began by going in and vigorously licking Jaden from the top of her left thigh high, as he formed three fingers out on his right hand while using his left hand for better positioning. Without any hesitation at all, he stuck all three of his fingers into Jaden's pussy in an aggressive manner, vibrating his fingers really quickly as he brought them in and out of Jaden's pussy at super speed, using his agility stat to its full extent and for what it was truly meant for. Oh fuck yes harder daddy. She moaned a high-pitched cry that sent shivers of excitement and euphoria down Moby's spine. I don't know any proper technique for these things, but it seems to be working. I am so glad that I put so many points in agility. It is all paying off now. Every stat point spent there was well worth it just for this alone. Moby smirked, as he moved up from licking her thigh highs to looking at the skin right beside and under her pussy that was increasingly getting wetter and wetter, your smell is driving me absolutely wild. Moby said as he started to lick her even more vigorously than before. Don't say stuff like that. It makes me even hornier. And stop going so fast. Arf. I think I am about to come. She moaned out loud in pure happiness. No. I don't think I will. Moby said with a devilish smile, going even faster and more aggressive than before as he added a fourth finger to the mix, making Jaden's moans even louder and her pussy even wetter. Then, suddenly, he stopped fingering her right as she was about to come making her disappointed yet still let out a sigh of relief. Then, as soon, as his fingers left, his mouth came charging in while his hands were now used to spread Jaden's slim yet thick legs out of the way. Ah. That feels so orgasmic Moby. Deeper. Faster. Harder. Give me all you love daddy. She moaned out loud, grabbing Moby's head and pushing it even deeper and tighter in her pussy. Moby used his tongue and began to vigorously suck on Jaden's beautiful pussy, finding it super hot when she pushed his face into it as it meant that she liked it and longed for more. He maneuvered his tongue inside her pussy as deep as he could, literally eating her out as he also sucked furiously like he was sucking on the best scoop of ice cream in his life. I, I can't take it anymore. I am coming. Jaden moaned as she released her juices all on Moby's face drenching it all in her cum, as she was still holding Moby's face tightly close to her pussy. Then, they dropped and laid there on the bed, heavily panting as they both looked at each other with a smile. Not bad at all for a virgin, Jaden said, still heavily panting as her legs felt super weak. Hey. You're technically still a virgin too. And what do you mean, not bad? You were moaning so hard and loud it was insane. Now we're even. Are you up for a round two? But this time, we actually fuck for real. Moby said with a dealish smirk on his face. Ha. Ah, you're on. Jaden replied, licking her lips and biting her tongue with a horny look in her eyes. Get this filthy shit off me. Natalia roared in outrage and pain, as she struggled to get Jaden's panties off her face as she was forced to watch her have sex with the love of her life through the holes of Jaden's panties. Chapter 110. Moby rolled over and on top of Jaden, his hard cock hovering around her still dripping wet pussy. He held tightly on her skirt, pulling them down under her thigh-high socks before biting and sucking on Jaden's right tit and grabbing, and fondling her left one making her moan in pleasure, hugging him tightly with her arms and legs making Moby go even more wild as they both began touching each other in weird ways. Why don't you take off my thigh-high socks? Don't they get in the way? Jaden asked with a smile. Well, to be honest, I think you look even sexier with them on. Something about them just makes me even hornier than before, Moby responded with a smirk, feeling up her thick thighs. Speaking of looking sexier, take off that shirt of yours. It's not fair that I am the only one topless, Jaden complained, completely ripping up Moby's school shirt to show his chiseled six-pack abs that had been honed through many years of non-stop training. Oh. Hot. Jaden said with a seductive smile, running her hands down his abs before licking them, ignoring Natalia's growing craziness in the background. Then, as she was doing it, Moby tightly grabbed her hips, going down to her fattus before bringing her closer to him as he began to feel her up. You know, I can transform my body in any way you like. Just ask and you shall receive. Jaden said with a wink as she stopped licking Moby's abs. Fuck no. I love you just the way you are. You're absolutely perfect. Why would I want to mess with perfection? Moby said with clear passion and conviction in his voice, turning Jaden's face into a red color that was even brighter and warmer than the sun. No. My body is better. My tits are bigger than hers and my ass is fatter. Are you blind? Natalia roared in hysteria behind them only to be ignored once again, driving her even crazier. Well. Now that we are finished with dessert. Time for the full course meal. Moby said, picking Jaden up by her ass, throwing her flat on the bed. Oh. I see what you're doing. Yes. Put it in. I've been waiting for this moment. Jaden said, biting and licking her lips while playing with her wettest pussy. Moby smiled as he held his long, thick stick of meat, slowly bringing it closer towards Jaden's pussy, his body filled with excitement and anticipation. As Moby's dick neared Jaden's vagina, Natalia saw her life flash before her eyes. Moby's magnificent cock was going to penetrate another woman. He was about to lose his pure, innocent virginity to a slut that was undeserving of his love. While she, the person most deserving, and only person deserving of it was watching it all unfold, powerless to do anything to stop it. No. Don't do it. I am the only one that deserves your cock inside them. Natalia screamed with the sound of 1,000 banshees, making the room shake from her voice alone. Moby ignored Natalia's incessant screaming as he gently put in the tip of his cock into the horny, blushing, and heavily breathing Jaden. M. Mori. Put it in more. I can't wait anymore. I need it all now, Jaden moaned in anticipation. Ha 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 ha. You asked for it. Moby said with a devilish smile on his face as he grabbed Jaden by the hips, thrusting all eight and a half inches of his cock into Jaden's extremely tight pussy, making her shudder in pain and pleasure as her head flew back and as her hands began to tightly grasp the bedsheets. The feeling of Moby's throbbing, long, thick hard cock inside Jaden's extremely tight pussy was even greater than he ever imagined. His cock was being wrapped and crushed by her tight pulsating pussy making him feel like he was in heaven from the amount of pleasure he was feeling. Ah fuke. She let out a sexy moan that rang throughout the entire room. N-O-O. -O. 
I can't let this go on. As long as I am alive and draw breath. You will stop this. His cock doesn't belong there. It belongs to me and only me. My sweet little Moby. What has this world come to? Jaden Griffith needs to die now. Natalia inwardly thought, finally managing to get Jaden's panties away from her face as she tried her absolute best to move towards the fucking couple in front of her. As Moby finished aggressively thrusting his cock into Jaden's pussy, he noticed that there were drops of blood flowing down from there and around his cock making his moment of pleasure come to an abrupt end, as he began to grow slightly concerned for her. However, when he looked at her face, it looked like she was having the best time of her life, her tongue out withdrawal coming down her face. Moby did not want to display any weakness as he wanted to show her who's boss. So, he hit a big mental, fuck it dude, as he removed his penis from her pussy only to shove it back in even harder than before. Oh yes daddy. That feels so good. Jaden's high-pitched moans resounded around the room. With a wave of my finger and a flick of my dick, one thrust from me will kill you quick. So spread them legs and show me what's within, spread them wide and let me deeper in. Moby said as he repeatedly thrusted his cock in and out of Jaden's pussy with a devilish grin. Ah few you. Now is not the time for poetry and references. You're making me even hornier. She moaned as she struggled to even breathe with such a large cock going in and out of her pussy, neatly hitting her womb every time. Jaden somehow managed to move her weak legs and wrap them around Moby's waist pulling him closer in as he continued to fuck her in missionary, with a devilish smile on his face making him go even wilder than before, as he watched Jaden's tits bouncing around aggressively in front of him. With every thrust of Moby's cock Natalia lost a part of her soul and made a greater resolve and sense of urgency become clearer in her head. Ah. Natalia screamed as her teeth started to show white cracks from how much she was clenching her teeth, while her entire body was so sore from her relentless efforts of trying to move. Nothing on her mind was more important than her current gales, she was willing to risk everything just for a chance to stop them, then, after what felt like an eternity of torture, she managed to move her right arm one centimeter which made her extremely happy and filled her with more hope than she had ever felt in her life. It was like a crack in the ceiling of the depths of hell that let out a small, brilliant light of hope, you're too cruel. Giving her false hope like that. Avilia died of laughter from inside his head, only to be ignored by Moby who was having too much fun. Chapter 111 After many minutes of hardcore fucking Moby was reaching his limit once again, if he kept going for any longer he would definitely come. So, he did the next best thing in order to save himself while looking as natural as possible, not allowing himself to show any weakness. He released his throbbing cock from the beast's den and swooped right in with his mouth, lifting her up with his super strength, eating out her wet pussy while feeling her biggest once again, making her moan in pleasure as Moby had gotten even better at doing it than the first time. Then, after a few minutes of eating her out like she was a full course meal, Jaden pushed Moby away from her, laying him out on the bed sheets before hopping on top of him using all of her weight. Time for me to take control. Jaden said with a smile, slowly stroking Moby's still hard throbbing cock before gently putting the tip in her pussy, dropping down on it with all her weight, forcing the whole thing into her body all the way up to her womb making her moan with pleasure. At this point, Moby had regained most of his stamina, as he enjoyed the feeling of his cock being jumped on and Jaden's big tits jiggling in front of him that he grabbed, and fondled with both hands making her moan even louder. Yes. Play with me harder. I am your little slut. She moaned with her tongue out, increasing her speed. Yeah, that's right. I am your master and you are my little slut. Moby said with a devilish grin, slapping her big round as making her moan and ride him even faster. Moby and Jaden then moved on to do multiple positions as Natalia started to try harder and harder, starting to move more little by little. They went from doggy style, holding her blue hair back to reverse cowgirl as Jaden twerked on his cock before ending up in missionary once more. Fuck yeah baby you're so fucking hot it's unreal, Moby said with a pleasure filled face, going turbo mode in the movement of his hips and the thrusts of his cock. Fuke. Do it. Do it now. Release it all inside me. I am about to come too. Let's do it together. Jaden cried out, rubbing her pussy as Moby's cock was still rushing in and out of it, Moby was indeed reaching his limit, he really wanted to come. He no longer cared about outlasting her. Plus, the thought of him coming inside her made him extremely horny so he decided to go along with Jaden's amazing proposal. You asked for it. Here I come. Moby cried out releasing his creamy white substance all inside Jaden's pussy that let out her wet cum, mixing them both together. Ah! <sighs> Jaden moaned louder than she had ever moaned before as she opened her pussy wide to see all the cum flowing out of her it like a river. She then took her finger, putting it in her pussy, grabbing a bunch of cum, playing around with it before eating it in one gulp. Mmm. Yum. She said, licking the residue off her lips before going in for another scoop of vanilla ice cream. My dick is big, it's really large, when you touch it supercharged, I will soon be stroking at a fast pace, so take this shot right in your face. Moby said with a smile on his face, releasing the rest of his bottled up cum straight on Jaden's face and tits as Natalia shrieked behind them like a wild hyena. I told you to stop rhyming like that. Your poetry is making me even hornier than before. And I just came. Give me that. Jaden said, licking the cum on her face and tits before grabbing Moby's still hard cock, quickly stroking it up and down. Oh no you don't I will make you feel good too. Moby said, pulling Jaden down with him on the bed as they landed in a 69 position. The first one to make the other come is the winner. You down? Jaden said with a smile, playing with Moby's balls. You're on. Bitch. Moby said with confidence, getting a head start as he started to eat her ass, and pussy out while fingering her faster than any vibrator using three fingers due to his high agility, making Jaden moan in pleasure leading her to wrap her tits around Moby's hard cock, sucking it and stroking it in super speed as a counterattack, I can't let them win. They both thought in unison as they even further increased their speed and aggressiveness. Natalia finally managed to crawl a single step forward, making her extremely happy yet at the same time literally about to explode from pain and anger from what she was seeing. She could not bear to watch her one and only love come so hard. One more time for another woman, she didn't believe that her heart and soul could take it if he did. So, it made her work even harder than ever, ignoring the extreme pain ravaging through her body every time she tried to even move, then, she heard the dreaded words she feared yet knew were coming. F fuck. 
I am close to coming. Moby moaned. Any no. Please have mercy daddy. Ah. Uh. Please slower and less aggressive. I can't lose to a virgin boy. Jaden moaned in pure euphoria. At the moment, every fiber of Natalia's soul was telling her to move and put a stop to it, but her body would not at all listen. She used every drop of her energy and even more, trying to sacrifice whatever she could just for the chance of moving a single step. Gggggrrr. She screamed, foaming from the mouth and clenching her teeth so hard to the point they exploded and broke out of her face. Her legs began to move as she crawled a few steps in front of her, her arms out trying her best to reach Moby who was still really far away. Then. All of a sudden. Asterisk crack asterisk asterisk crack asterisk asterisk crack asterisk asterisk crack asterisk the sound of multiple cracks, accompanied by many moans filled her ears as an insane, unbearable pain ravaged her system. She broke every last bone in her body all at once as she looked at her deformed arms with eyes of horror and defeat. She used every last drop of her energy leaving her with absolutely nothing left, her eyes became blurry as she dropped down on her face. There she saw the figure of two people laughing and giggling at her as her hearing began to become extremely muffled. The last thing she saw before she blacked out was Moby's white cum stain right in front of her, making her beg and long for it as her final wish before death. Calling upon every fiber of her being, she somehow managed to stick her tongue out for a chance to have a taste of the white demonic drink. But sadly, her tongue was only mere millimeters away from Moby's cum meaning that it was completely unreachable to her, making her cry tears of blood and curse her entire existence before going completely unconscious. Chapter 112. Asterisk asterisk important notice, the next two chapters are extremely dark and graphic more than should have been necessary. I promise that the story gets better and this mistake will never be repeated again, so please don't drop, sad face. I am currently in the process of rewriting them. I am so, extremely sorry, I know I messed up really bad on the next two chapters, I don't know what I was thinking at the time, loudly crying face. I went way too far because I was trying to show how ruthless and inhuman my MC became but it was badly executed. You can just skip the next two chapters and probably assume what went down in these ones. Only read them if you really want a sad smiley asterisk asterisk, Moby. Don't leave me. Just let me have one taste. Natalia's screams echoed and bounced off the walls of the small, dark, dirty, stone almost dungeon-like room she was in. W where am I? Am I dead? Where is Moby? Is he still with that slut? My heart can't take it anymore. Why can't I just kill myself? Natalia screamed at herself as she struggled to move a single muscle from the wooden chair she was sitting on, even though she was not tied up. Finally awake I see. Took you long enough. She heard an extremely familiar voice come from the door of the room. M. Moby, D. Did you come to save me? She managed to mutter in a low voice when she noticed that the love of her life was standing only a few meters away from her. Ha 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 ha. You can't be serious. Even after all that shit you went through you still think that he came here to save you. How pathetic can you be? Jaden mocked her, coming up from behind Moby with a smirk on her face. Why you? Eh, stay away. I can't take this anymore. Please. I beg of you to just kill me. If I weren't a demon now I would have definitely died from stress and rapid aging long ago, aren't you satisfied yet? How much longer do I have to bear this? My hope and will to live has faded away long ago. Me asking if my love was here to save me was nothing more than a rhetorical question. Natalia responded, delving deeper and deeper into her madness and depression. Well, I am glad you understand the position you're in. I just came here to give you a little present before we part ways for the next five days or so. You should be grateful that you even get to see my face before then. Like I promised, she is all yours. You can use her as your training dummy and test subject as long as you make sure to make her suffer extreme, unimaginable pain and make her constantly cry out in despair and agony. I wish you good luck, Dr. Abby. You are now in charge. Moby said with a devilish smile. D. Dr. Abby. Natalia managed to mumble before staring straight into Moby's beautiful shining purple eyes, that still somehow gave her butterflies in her stomach, then, as her slight moment of happiness started, it immediately ended once more. Suddenly, her mind became completely blank before she found herself on her knees in Jaden's bedroom just like before. And just like before, she was forced to relive the same living hell. The scene of Moby and Jaden fucking like crazy animals on the bed began to play over, and over, and over, and over again right in front of her eyes as she was powerless to do anything about it, his cum shots always missing her face by mere millimeters every time driving her absolutely crazy. The first time it happened it was soul crushing but the ones that followed were even more painful as she was being forced to watch the scene of Moby, and Jaden fucking over and over again in her head which grinded that crushed soul of hers into dust, until she was nothing more than an empty husk without a conscience as she tried, and failed to lick Moby's cum stain before going unconscious for the last time in the seemingly infinite loop of pain and agony, them, after what felt like many years. She was finally back into that same wooden chair as before, still unable to move. Well. Shall we get started then? I made an entire list of things that I wanted to test out, an enthusiastic voice came from beside her. Natalia slowly turned around to look for where the sound was coming from only to see a beautiful red-haired girl with a ponytail wearing a completely white lab coat, holding a folded piece of paper that reached the ground from its sheer length. Natalia did nothing other than stare straight at Abby's excited visit with completely dead eyes, and pale skin before finally letting out a few words that interrupted Abby's ramblings. Do whatever you want. I don't care anymore. Nothing will faze me at all. Not even any pain in the entire world. Do your worse, Natalia said in a monotone low voice. What? I didn't even get started and you're already like this. My lord must indeed be an expert. But, I will need you to show some sort of pain or emotions for my experiments. I can't disappoint my lord like this. So, let's test out the validity of your claims and fix the dead I don't care attitude of yours. Abby said with a smile, tightly holding Natalia's head who had absolutely no reactions before using her fire ability to burn off Natalia's entire face. The fire ravaged her entire skin turning them charcoal black before the scarlet flames immediately burned off every last strand of her hair, leaving her completely bald. 
The flames eventually reached down to her forehead, incinerating her eyes alongside her eyelids, before doing the same to her nose that began to smell the stench of her burning skin, her mouth that tasted her cooked skin cells, and ears that were hearing her skin sizzle to a crisp. However, even though all that pain, Natalia just sat there, seemingly completely unfazed by what was going on around her as she did not struggle to move, or scream during the entire process as her face became nothing. But a scared, black and pink ball, completely featureless. Shit. She's indeed one hard nut to crack. I need to make her scream in agony if I want to properly do my research. Assistant. Can you please heal her for me? Abby asked. Yes, of course. Dr. Abby. Jaden said with a chuckle, transforming into Ali, her team healer before completely healing Natalia's face only for them to once again see her completely dead eyes and pale skin. If burning her won't work then what about this? Abby said, pulling out her long, black and red side from her inventory that invoked zero emotions from Natalia. However, even after seeing Natalia's dead, unmovable face, she did not give up. Her lord had faith and trusted her, a complete rookie to conduct the torture all by herself and with Jaden's help, as he did not want to join them as he knew that Natalia would definitely get off at something like that, completely ruining everything. He only left her with the small gift of his nightmare skill before leaving her for the next five days, that he has control over her. The reason why he didn't use the skill earlier was that Natalia's mental fortitude was too strong for it to work at its full effect. Even if she was his servant, he still needed to put her in a vulnerable state of mind for the skill to fully work as intended, making it as painful as possible. Abby filled the blade of her side with her scarlet flames, before stabbing Natalia in several of her important and non-important internal organs with searing and piercing pain. However, even after stabbing her non-stop in virtually every spot of her body, even when he shoved it up her ass and vagina, she was still completely calm and detached, only coughing blood and bath when she needed to. Why is this so hard? Just scream and cry in agony. Is my technique really that bad? At this rate, I will never be able to properly torture my family. Abby screamed in anger, slashing off all of Natalia's limbs in a blink of an eye, as Natalia was still unfazed and gazed back at her with her hollow, dead eyes. Calm down Abby. It's not your fault. You're doing great in fact. It's just that she is a weird case. All that you need is a way to shock her back to reality and then you could go back on as normal, Jaden said, healing Natalia's wounds, comforting Abby with a smile on her face, Abby nodded at Jaden in understanding, calming her nerves before talking to Natalia once again in a somehow even harsher tone than before. Okay. Listen here you little slut. I've been saving this torture method towards the end of this torture session but you forced my hand. That's why I will be doing it now instead. Abby said in a cold voice, releasing stinky, rotted goblins, one white and four black out of her storage ring. Natalia did not care at all for what was going on in front of her. She was not at all worried, scared, or surprised at all, still looking at Abby with dead eyes which greatly irritated her. Get the hell up from the chair. Abby ordered, forcing Natalia to stand up as Moby gave authority onto Natalia's actions to Abby and Jaden as well. Without batting an eye or being surprised, Natalia stood up looking more like a zombie than the actual zombie goblin standing behind her. Go to the corner over then and lie on the ground, Abby ordered making Natalia comply in a zombie-like manner once again. Go get her. Penetrate her every hole. Make her beg and cry out for mercy. Go absolutely wild. Eat her if you want I don't care. Anything is allowed as long as you don't kill her. Abby ordered in a deadly cold tone making all five of her goblins pounce on Natalia and her sexy body with smiles on theirs and her face, and no hesitation, their penises glowing purple due to the demon energy Abby provided them with in order to have a proper erection in their undead state. Two goblins jumped and grabbed Natalia's arms as they began to nibble and eat her thumbs like they were chicken fingers, and two others went straight for her massive boobs, sucking and ripping them apart with their mouths, even through all of that, Natalia was still unfazed even when being eaten alive by a horde of undead, her eyes still completely devoid of color, then, grunk, the final goblin to join in spread Natalia's legs far apart before aggressively thrusting his large, undead cock into. Natalia sending a wave of immense mental and physical pain throughout her entire body, color returning to her previously dead eyes. Ah! No. This can't be happening. Anywhere but in there. Natalia screamed in absolute horror as the reality of everything began to sink in. The sudden feeling and realization that her virgin pussy, that she had been saving for Moby's cock the entire time was being penetrated by someone other than him, let alone an ugly and disgusting beast was enough to shock her back to her senses as the extreme pain of being raped, and eaten alive began to sink in. She tried her best to fight back or do anything to stop them. However, it was with no avail as she felt like she was being restrained by those same invisible chains as before. Ha 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 ha. It worked. Now the real fun can begin. Don't stop my little gremlins. Go even harder. Abby laughed enthusiastically as she was finally getting what she wanted. Great Abby. You finally made her crack. This shit is too hilarious. She definitely deserved this and even more. I really wish that Moby could have been here to witness it with his own eyes. Jaden laughed her ass off as she noticed the goblins eating and raping Natalia faster, and more vigorously than before as their little giggles of joy resounded around the room. Arf. Stop it. This can't be real. I need my Moby by my side. Just kill me please. Just have mercy. Natalia cried out in absolute pain and agony as she had already lost most of both of her hands, and tits as her previously virgin pussy was being stretched and pounded by Grunk, making it bleed profusely but not get wet at all. Then, after 15 minutes that felt like days or weeks of non-stop torture at the hands of the undead, they suddenly stopped as Natalia was almost dead. She lost all of her limbs except for the arm with her watch from being eaten by the goblins along with her ass and most of her face like her eyes, mouth, ears and nose, the moment they left her, Natalia stopped screaming and for some reason felt a huge sigh of relief before noticing a familiar looking green light on her body, healing most of her wounds, making her curse her entire existence and shudder in fear, not even trying to attack Jaden as she knew that it would be of no use as she counted. The seconds that felt like forever before Jaden finished healing all of her injuries. Are you ready for another round? Abby said with a devilish laugh that sent shivers down her very core. But this time, this guy is joining in on the fun. 
Abby said with a fiendish grin from ear to ear, releasing a massive, bearded, muscular, black goblin that nearly reached the roof of the decently tall room, his extremely large purple glowing sword on full display with a smile on his face. SS someone please save me. Natalia managed to mutter, peeing and shitting her pants at the same time in complete horror of the horny looking, gigantic undead goblin in front of her. Chapter 113. Asterisk important notice, author note, if you read my disclaimer in the last chapter please do the same with this one, I am really, really sorry and this will never happen again, sad smiley asterisk 5 days later, test 112, hydrochloric acid. Let's see how it goes. Abby said, as she started to slowly pour a liquid out of a large bucket onto Natalia's already beyond unrecognizable face, and body which made her entire system begin to melt and burn even more, revealing the bloody pink layers underneath the main layer of her skin, her face completely devoid of life. What the hell? She's been like this all day. Did I break her again? I still had a few more things to test. Goblins, get her. Abby ordered, making the goblins rape and eat Natalia's body from every hole for the fifth time that day. However, just like all the other times, Natalia kept that same reactionless and unmovable dead look in her eyes. Even when her face, organs, and every limb in her body was being eaten. And, when she was being penetrated by the goblin kings and his minions through literally every hole in her body, from her vagina, ears, mouth, and us all at once, she did not once shudder or make a sound. It was like they were torturing and raping a dead body that was not actually dead. Over the past five days, Abby had been testing out a bunch of her torture experiments on Natalia, which included testing out her succubus powers as well, just like her lord asked her to do. She did everything from her being raped and eaten alive by filthy undead, making her do extreme self-harm to herself, peeling her skin off with a rusty knife, cooking her in boiling oil, slowly breaking every bone and organ in her body, testing out various different chemicals, testing various torture contraptions such as the Iron Maiden, and many, many more painful experiences all the while taking notes on which method inflicted the most pain and suffering as to use them for when she finally does the same to her family. Abby was able to do this non-stop only due to the school break that they had for the next week as there were no more curfews, allowing students to have complete freedom to go and do whatever they wanted. It was absolutely perfect for what she was doing as it would be a massive inconvenience otherwise. As the days went by, Natalia began to lose her mind and sense of self, slipping back into the empty shell she was once again. However, this time, nothing that Abby tried to do helped Natalia regain her vigor and will to live. Even when she ordered her goblins, including the king to rape and torture her which worked the first time but not at all the second and third time. Keep going goblins. Harder. Harder. I want to see her crack. I want to see her cry out in pain. I want to see her have at least some emotions. Abby ordered in outrage before feeling a firm touch on her shoulder. Calm down Abby, you've done enough. There is nothing more that you could do. A person's soul could only bear so much before becoming unrestorable, turning to dust. Trust me, you did great. Moby would be proud. I am so happy too. Seeing her suffer so much after all the shit she's done to me puts me in a good place of mind. Don't worry, I have seen enough, I'm satisfied. Jaden said with a smile, calming Abby down making her slightly embarrassed. Yeah. You're probably right. I was just scared that this might not have been what my lord intended so I got a little carried away. Plus, I might have gotten a little too excited to test out all these torture methods, as I imagined my sister's face on top of Natalia's for most of the time I was experimenting on her. This has been a very good learning experience. I have learned a lot. I am extremely grateful to my lord for giving me the opportunity to do this. Abby said, facing Jaden with a bright smile that illuminated the otherwise dark room and atmosphere. Goblins. I order you to stop. You are about to kill her. Abby ordered her goblins off before storing her goblins and the rest of her long list of experiments into her inventory. We should tell Moby that our job is finished. I'll let Hi. Abby said, before being interrupted by the sound of clapping coming from the dungeon room's door. No need. I am already here. And from what I can see you guys did an amazing job. I just wish that I could have joined you but that would have just made your jobs even harder. I only have two hours left on my absolute control over her. After that, she would be able to be free once more, meaning that she must be dead in the next two hours or else we will have a big problem on our hands. Moby said with a smirk, entering the room before looking at the half-eaten, barely recognizable Natalia. T thank you for such high praise my lord. Expect my report about everything that transpired within the next few days. Abby said, kneeling on the ground, making Moby nod at her with a smile. Jaden, can you heal her? I need her to have the use of her hands for what I am about to do, Moby asked, leading her to smile and nod before healing Natalia's wounds by transforming into one of the weak healer maids in her house. Look at you. So pathetic. I am surprised you weren't excited to see me or something when I went in. Did you enjoy my present? How were the last few days? Do you still remember me? I am Moby Kane. The love of your life. Don't tell me you already forgot about me. Was your love really that shallow? Ah ha ha ha. Moby mocked and teased Natalia as she was being healed by Jaden, crouching down to meet her at eye level, staring into her pale face and completely dead eyes that were utterly devoid of color. Then, Moby used his mind link with Natalia to check what she was feeling at the moment, a skill he had nearly forgotten about, only for it to show up as nothing but a gray, static nothingness, something that Moby had never seen before, making him chuckle. That's totally amazing. Abby. You have far exceeded my expectations. I can finally touch this bitch without her getting turned on and becoming horny. Moby said, kicking her in the stomach before punching her in the face, making her fall face first on the ground, a single tear falling down her face that was not seen by anyone else as her face was facing and kissing the dirty and bloody dungeon floor. Now. I need you to write in your handwriting exactly what I tell you. Will you do that for me? Moby said with a devilish smile, pulling out a pen and paper from his inventory before ordering her to write. The sight of Natalia's empty husk of a body doing precisely as he willed her to do, exactly like a puppet was unlike anything he had ever seen before. He felt extremely happy that he got his revenge, and made her pay for her actions yet slightly sad at the same time as he couldn't keep her as his little puppet doll to do and follow his, every command. 
His time of absolute control only lasted for a week making it impossible. After a few minutes, Moby finished telling her exactly what to write before he gave it straight to Jaden, telling her to covertly deliver it to the Zane mansion in the most secret and anonymous way possible. Sure thing. This is pretty easy. It won't take long. You can count on me. Jaden said with a smile, taking the letter out of Moby's hands before walking out of the room, changing out of her bloody attire into something much cleaner. Abby, you have been working hard for the past five days, you should take a rest. Moby said to Abby with a smile, putting his hands on her shoulders. It's okay my lord. I am Compal. Abby said before getting cut off by Moby. That's an order. Overworking yourself has many downsides. Physically, and mentally. I bet you haven't had much sleep for the past few days. Why don't you go have one now? Moby said in a friendly voice. You are far too kind my lord. I will take a short nap then immediately start on my extremely detailed report. I am so lucky to serve such a fair, kind, and caring lord. Abby said, wiping the tears of joy off her face before leaving the room leaving the sighing Moby and the dead-looking Natalia, who was still blankly staring at him all alone. Now, I need you to make a call. Before you die, I need you to make yourself useful by giving me some XP and taking out that huge nuisance that fucked up my plans and nearly got me, and my demon family all killed. Moby said with a devilish smile from ear to ear. Chapter 114. Roristo Park, Country Z, 10.46pm OMG, Natalia is that you? I haven't seen you in forever. Where have you been? Becky said from the crowd on the sidewalk, at the sitting Natalia in the distance who looked completely dead and devoid of life. H hey, are you okay? Are you sad that you weren't able to kill Jaden Griffith and get the love of your life to like you back? Don't worry. I am sure he will like you eventually. Never give up. And, by the way, are you okay? You don't look so good. Do you need any help? Becky said with a concerned smile, taking a seat beside her. Oh oh me. Nah. I am okay. I am just really tired and half asleep that's all. Please don't mind my appearance. And, as for Moby Kane, I already got over him. And I don't really care about killing Jaden Griffith anymore either. She replied in a normal tone of voice that did not at all reflect her appearance. Oh okay. If you say so. You seem pretty obsessed from before. I am glad that you are all right now. She said with a smile. I heard that you were heavily poisoned from falling in a goblin trap. I hope that you are okay. Natalia said with clear concern in her voice. Oh. That? Don't bother. As you can see, I am completely fine. Fully healed. Becky said with a chuckle. By the way, where have you been for the past five days? I have tried contacting you only to receive nothing back. I even tried to call your house to no avail as well. Do you want to talk about something? Becky said with concern, looking straight in Natalia's dead grey eyes. Heh, well, it's a long story but my family abandoned me for going against their wishes until I learned my lesson. So, I have been roaming and living on the streets ever since. Natalia casually replied with an awkward chuckle. What? You have been living on the streets for five days. She stood up, screaming out loud, grabbing the attention of everyone passing by. Eh sorry, I didn't mean to blurt that out loud. Becky said, sitting back down in embarrassment. Asterisk I asterisk, yes, I have been living on the streets, getting involved in all kinds of shit to survive. It's a tough life. Natalia replied. What the hell? You know that I am always here for you. You could have asked me to help you and take you in. We are besties after all. I have been living with my family for the past week so I could take you there until the problem with your family is resolved. I am sure they would not mind. Becky said in clear outrage. Thank you for the offer but I will have to decline. I chose to do this on my own and not rely on others. I wanted to take responsibility for my actions and live all alone. I did not want to hide, run away or take the easy way out. That's not the kind of person I am and you know that. I regret nothing. Even when the worst of the worst happened to me by the hands of those gangs I still have no regrets. I have learned valuable lessons in life that I will never forget. Natalia said with an awkward smile. And Natalia. You have always been there for me in my times of need, always defending me at school. So please, let me help you in your time of need as well. I beg of you to listen to me and let me help you. Becky said, tears flowing down her face. At first, Becky started the conversation mostly concerned about her own safety. She thought that she was ignoring her because she was mad at her, putting their friendship in jeopardy which would make her a huge target at school once again. She was scared that she provided her with the wrong information about Jaden and that was why she was unable to kill her and get Moby Kane, making her extremely mad in the process. So, she tried to do her best to damage control, acting as nice as possible in order to maybe salvage their relationship. However, as she started to talk to Natalia more and more, she started to realize that she was not mad at her at all and was instead, having an extremely hard time in life as proved by her pale looking face, dead looking eyes and shabby looking attire. It made her realize that she had been acting really selfish, treating her best friend like nothing more than a tool than an actual person. Natalia had done so many things to help her survive at school while only asking so little in return. Plus, for as long as she had known her, she had been nothing but an honest and amazing friend, all up until she met and fell in love with that Moby Kane guy which didn't diminish all the good that she had done. She felt really stupid for her actions. It made her heart crack and fall in pieces to see that the person who had helped her so much was in such a bad state, full of pain and agony while she only thought of herself. Hey! Natalia! I am sorry for everything. You have been nothing but an amazing friend to me and I acted really selfishly and wasn't there for you in your time of need. I am really glad that you moved on from Moby Kane which I think was for the best. After all the rumors about him getting a really strong ability, his popularity has skyrocketed immensely, who knows, he might even have his own fan club by now, he's a no good troublemaking man whore. You don't need a guy like that. If he doesn't like you back then it was his loss. He didn't deserve your love. You have done so much for me and I have done so little back. So please, allow me to help you just this once, come live at my house. 
Just until you get the problem with your family resolved, my heart can't stand seeing you like this, in such a morbid state. Becky spoke in a shaky voice, tears still running down her face. Natalia in front of her who was previously dead looking had a slight change of expression as her eyes became wide open before she hugged, Becky with clear passion. You were indeed a great friend. A better friend than a filthy slut like me deserves. Sorry for using you during the exam. I now realize I shouldn't have done that. I was the one who planted that trap you fell in. Not goblins. It was my fault that any of this was even happening. I have no choice in what I am about to do. I am sorry, so, die. She whispered in her ear before Becky felt a piercing pain in her stomach, looking down only to see a knife firmly planted in her gut with blood dripping and gushing out of it like a river. W.Y. Why did you do this? After everything I've done for you, I thought we were supposed to be, friends. Becky said with blurry vision, looking at the face of the crying Natalia in front of her before everything went blank. Murder. This girl just killed someone, a passerby that witnessed everything that transpired screamed before running away as fast as possible, leading the crowd around him to move and follow his lead. Hey lady. Bold of you to just casually commit murder in front of me and such a large crowd. You're under arrest. If you try to resist I will take you down by force and increase the sentence and severity of your crimes. A police officer that was in the crowd said, slowly approaching Natalia. Hey. Well. Finally. This is the end. I can finally die. Oh sweet, sweet death. She said in the most bliss she had ever felt in her life, her mind and brain still completely broken before pulling out a button from her pockets, putting her hand over it about to press it. Hey. Lady. Are you even listening to me? Come quietly and I won't beat your ass to a pulp. You're lucky that I am one of the nicer police officers. Now get your ass. The police officer continued rambling as Natalia didn't listen or pay him any heed, as the entire world around her looked like a complete blur and sounded like nothing more than static. Goodbye, Moby Kane. I will never forget you. She said with a mellow smile on her face, tightly clenching her fists, tears running down her face, pressing the button that led to a huge explosion for the many bombs hidden on her, leaving absolutely nothing behind of her and Becky's corpse that was still laying on the ground next to her, completely dead with the knife still planted firmly in her gut. Chapter 115 Meanwhile, Jaden's mansion, dining hall. Jaden, is it true that the butler cooks most of your meals and is your head chef? Every time I come here I always have the best food in the world. Moby asked, using his mind link, taking a bite from a large chicken drumstick. Well yeah. Of course. He's been cooking for me for as long as I can remember. Turning him into a demon would be great, but I am not sure how he would react so I would not risk it. Jaden replied. By the way, is Alex still visiting his family home? Moby asked while still stuffing his face with food. Yeah, I think he should be coming back sometime today or tomorrow. And, speaking of family visits, do you want to join me on my visit to my main family mansion tomorrow? I want to introduce you to my family. I am sure that you would get along well. Jaden replied with a smile. Well. If you say so. I guess I'll go. I would rather have your family's blessing and approval for being with you rather than have them against me. Moby said with an awkward chuckle, leading to Jaden getting really excited. Abby, do you have any plans for the next two days? Moby asked Abby who had been acting more quietly than usual. Well. My family invited me to a dinner party to celebrate my new record-breaking performance. However, I declined their offer of course. I know that they must have some sort of plan to fuck with me. Or it might just be a trap by my sister who got angry that I broke her record. Or, it might be that now that they know that I am very strong and can achieve great things, they want to make up with me and pretend like nothing happened which I would no way in hell agree to. I would say that they could all die in a hole for all I care but such a death would be far too lenient and merciful. Abby said with clear disgust in her voice before becoming all wide-eyed. Oh. I am sorry for my tone my lord. I meant no disrespect. I just got carried away when I talk about my. Abby apologized before being interrupted by Moby. Shut up. He roared using his mind link, smashing his hand on the table, startling both Jaden and Abby as they had never seen him talk to them in such a tone. You don't need to apologize. I will not eat you alive or scold you for acting natural and revealing your true emotions to me. You don't need to hide it bottle it all up inside. However, I will scold you for constantly trying to put up an act in front of me. I care about you and I want to share in your burdens. Even if I am your superior, I want you to act natural around me and not hold anything back. We are friends and family now after all. Moby said in a serious voice. Yes my lord, I understand. I will try to act more natural around you. It is just really hard as I see you more as my hero, role model, and as a brilliant leader figure. I get really paranoid and afraid easily. I act like this because I am scared to be abandoned and scorned for being disrespectful or doing something bad or wrong. I don't want to be thrown out or forgotten about so I try my hardest to prove my worth and train extremely hard. I put too much pressure on myself. I guess I have just gotten all too used to it. Abby said with an awkward chuckle, small tears falling down her face. Please consider and take my advice to heart, don't misconstrue my words. I by no means hate you. Quite the opposite actually. I said what I said for your own good. This environment is different from your family house so treat it as such. Those fuckers who traumatized you will still pay. Moby said with a comically evil laugh, trying to bring up Abby's mood. Don't worry my lord. I am not sad or mad at you. I understand what your intentions were full well. I know that you care about me and have my best interests in mind. I am just sad that I did not come to such a realization sooner as old your truths and kind words hit me like a truck, as I started to feel a mixture of happiness and sadness about how much you guys really see me as a part of your family. Don't worry. I am okay now. And I will try my best to take your advice to heart. You don't have to worry about me. Abby said, wiping away her tears before giving a big, bright smile and a thumbs up to the rest of the group. Good. Anyhow. Moby said, before being interrupted by a barrage of notifications, system alert, your servant has killed a high E rank enemy. 
plus 5,000 XP, new quest complete, an angel's wish details, complete the dying wish of the former human and new angel, Naya Spud. Part 1, conditions to complete, kill Natalia Zane in the cruelest, most brutal, most humiliating way imaginable. Make her suffer a very slow, brutal, humiliating death and make her pay for all the pain and suffering she has inflicted on others. Time limit, 2 week reward, angel's blessing skill level 2 asterisk asterisk, angel's blessing, passive, level 2, a blessing bestowed upon a person by an angel with a completely pure heart of gold. Effects, holy energy resistance, plus 20% health plus 20% energy regeneration plus 20% asterisk asterisk ha ha ha. Exactly as planned. She blew herself up. Now the police and school can't salvage any remains of her body. I am not sure how a demon body differs from a human body but I am positive that there are many differences if they look in depth, so I can't risk it. They must not know about the existence of us demons. Plus, they have no major leads to us as no one saw Natalia when she entered and left the mansion other us, we made 100% sure of it. Even if they find a small lead somehow, we can always just get past the lie detector test easily. Moby thought with a smile. Ha ha ha. Well fam we did it. Natalia is no more. She got what she deserved for all the shit she's done. Now let us commence the celebrations. No tears or depression allowed here. Now let's have some fun. Moby said, addressing his family with a smile and cup in hand as they cheered in celebration as well. Asterisk asterisk a few minutes later. Zane family mansion. Asterisk knock asterisk asterisk knock asterisk asterisk knock asterisk. My lord. My lord. I have an urgent matter to discuss. It's from your daughter. A servant banged on the door in panic. Come in. Arthur Zane, Natalia's dad responded. My lord. It's a letter from your daughter. I think it's extremely important. Why else would she send a letter instead of a message on her phone? The servant said, holding a dirty white letter in his hand. Well. It's about time. Did she get bored staying at her friend's poor shabby house and now wants to beg me for her forgiveness to let her back? Or is she actually owning up to her actions? Time to find out. He said with a smile, swiping the letter from the hands of his servant before opening it up with no hesitation at first, which dissolved into extreme nervousness when the letter was finally in his hand. Dear father, you have been nothing more than a great guy to me. Although it was true that you did pamper me a little too much, it was all because you really cared about me. Or at least that was what I thought at first. You threw me out of the house with no hesitation at all just because I broke a pile of metal. It made me realize that that pile of metal was indeed more precious to you than me, your very own daughter. For the past five days, I have been living on the streets, with no money, no shelter, all cold and alone. I tried to contact my best friend, but when she found out that I had been kicked out and abandoned she just left and treated me like trash, not even batting an eye. It's funny, isn't it? All of my friends only liked and respected me due to my family's power and influence, not because they liked me for who I was. While I was on the street, I got involved with a lot of gangs that randomly found me and took me in due to my nice looking body. They tortured and raped me every day, taking away my phone as well so I couldn't contact you even if I hated your guts as my school watch was only able to call fellow students. After many days of non-stop rape and abuse, I somehow managed to escape. I am writing this letter now to tell you that I am going to kill myself. I can't take it anymore. Life is not worth living to me anymore. It's all filled with nothing more than pain and misery. I managed to steal some explosives from the gang that kidnapped me, and I will be using them to blow myself up so so you won't even have to see me, or my body again, just like you wanted. I will also be taking that bitch of a best friend that betrayed me in my time of need with me. If you are reading this right now it means that I am most likely dead. Goodbye. Forever. You sad excuse for a fucking father, hate. Your abandoned daughter. Natalia Zane. Arthur read, enthusiastic at all the praise at first, before his face twisted and turned into something much sadder and uglier, a river of tears falling down his face and on the piece of paper under him as he began to severely hyperventilate. I I didn't mean for any of this to happen. I never abandoned you. My poor little girl. My pretty little Natalia. All I said was that you were not allowed in the house for a little. I didn't disown you. Why did this all happen? My heart. Arthur mumbled to himself, shaking like crazy, tears still running down his face. My lord. What happened? Do you need any? One of the servants said before being interrupted. Hey. All you fuckers listen up. Go out and look for my daughter. If she is not found in the next 15 minutes it will be your head on a platter. He ordered, like a crazy person, looking at all the concerned looking servants behind him. Then, suddenly as the first group of servants left, another servant came rushing in the room at extreme speed with a pale face. What is it now? Why the fuck are you not out looking for my daughter with all those other useless, good-for-nothing idiots? He bellowed in extreme anger, tears still running down his face, still clenching Natalia's letter in his shaky right arm. You you um. And my lord. I am sorry to say this but. She. She. She is already dead. She blew herself up in the middle of Aristo Park leaving nothing behind, her and her classmate Becky. The servant nervously answered. As soon as he heard those words come out of his servant's mouth, he immediately felt weak in his knees, falling down abruptly on his ass with a beyond shocked expression on his ghost-like face. I lost everything. My wife. And now my daughter. I have nothing to live for. I am a failure. Why must I be so stupid? It was just a stupid hunk of metal. Why did I even care about it? To the point of kicking my daughter out, don't worry. Layla, Natalia. I will atone for my sins, with my life. I hope you forgive me. I will be meeting you in the afterlife. My family. He said, pulling out a pocket knife, as he went to stab himself before being restrained by his servants begging him not to do it. No my lord. Don't do it. It wasn't your fault. They all tried to comfort him and hold him back. Leave me be you fuckers. Just let me die and see my family again. He roared like a madman, pushing and shoving everyone that tried to stop him. Chapter 116. The next morning, breaking news. 
Arthur Zane, leader of the massive company, Exilus, one of the largest weapon and armor companies in the country, has sadly passed away. The reason according to his servants was suicide due to his only daughter, Natalia Zane, who killed herself. She had died by blowing herself up in the middle of Roristo Park along with one of her friends, Becky Rainier. The only lead given about the reason for such a suicide was by a letter that was confirmed to be Natalia's handwriting stating that it was due to the abuse of local gangs. A police investigation had already started about the matter yesterday and so far, nothing solid had been found. We will update you on everything relevant to the subject if anything new arises, the TV reporter said. What the fuck? Why did this happen? I just bought $10,000 worth of Exilus stock yesterday. They were reported to be one of the hottest and fastest growing companies. Why the fuck is this happening? A man said, spitting out his morning coffee that he was having in his local coffee shop. Fuck. I need to sell my stocks ASAP. Another man said, throwing money on the front desk before rushing out of the store, leaving his coffee on the table. Asterisk asterisk meanwhile at Jaden's mansion, Moby. Are you coming or not? We are leaving in the next 10 minutes. The butler is already in the car. Jaden screamed to Moby from far away who was still having his morning breakfast and watching TV. We will update you on everything relevant to the subject if anything. The news reporter said before Moby turned off the TV. As Moby was watching the TV report about Natalia's death, Avilia's words about how turning into a demon can distort the mind played once more in his head. However, he shoved those thoughts to the back of his head, completely ignoring them as he found them stupid and unnecessary. Coming. I just need a little bit of time to get ready. What should I wear? A suit or something? Moby screamed back. Yeah. That would probably be for the best. I got one ready for you already. It should be on the bed in my room. Me and the butler will be waiting for you in the car. Don't take too long. We don't want to show up late. Jaden yelled. Okay. I'll be there in a bit. Moby yelled, back, rushing over to Jaden's room through the long, wide hallways, startling the servants who saw him as he made a gust of wind as he passed them by, revealing the panties of the many female maids making them cover it up and scream in embarrassment. The servants have been looking a lot happier in recent days, I wonder if it is due to Jaden's change of attitude and less bossy nature. Moby thought with a smile as he passed them by. He entered Jadian's room, finding a fancy looking black suit and dress pants along with dress shoes as well. He quickly stored them in his inventory before removing his casual clothes, replacing them with the new fancy outfit. How? This fits me perfectly. I never told her my exact sizes and measurements. How did she? Moby thought before figuring it out, making him let out a small chuckle. Moby immediately left the room and sprinted towards the front door, finding it slightly harder due to the unconventional clothes and footwear. As he neared the door, he saw Abby, smiling, patiently waiting for his arrival. I wish you good luck on your trip, my lord. She said, with a smile, bowing. Are you sure you don't want to come? Moby asked. Don't worry about me. I have a lot of work to do with my report and research I did the other day. Plus, I am a little nervous to visit her family home. I have a bad experience with such places. It reminds me of my own home in some way. Abby responded. Hey. What did I tell you from before? You need to loosen up and try and get over your past. You should join us. It will be a really good learning experience. Moby said with a smile. If you insist my lord. Abby nervously replied. One second. Stay right there. Moby said, dashing away only to come back a few seconds later with a beautiful red dress in hand. This is Jaden's. I think it's a dress her parents gave her as a present a few weeks back, I'm sure she doesn't mind you using it. Try them on. There is no servant around here and you should be able to put them on fairly quickly using your inventory, Moby said, handing the long red dress over to Abby, my lord chose red again, so, he does indeed think it looks the best on me. Abby thought with a smile as she had started to loosen her thoughts and hatred on the color red over the past month. Abby grabbed the dress out of Moby's hand, waiting for him to turn around before swiftly switching outfits. So, how does it fit? Moby asked with a hint of excitement. Well. If I am being completely honest, it's a little short, loose in the chest and tight on the hips. But, I can work with it. It does not look too bad. You truly have a good fashion sense my lord. She said with a smile leading to Moby giving her a nod of approval, then, they both went out of the mansion together and ran straight to the limousine where Jaden was waiting. At first, she was confused about why Abby was there as she thought that she didn't want to come, but when Moby explained to her everything she was very enthusiastic about her coming along, for the first half of the ride, the group was just having a casual conversation using their mind link, confusing the butler like. Usual, however, when the radio came onto a channel that was talking about Natalia's death, his head started to hurt once more as Avilia's words rang in his conscience. My lord. Are you okay? Should we go see a doctor? Should we cancel the meeting? Abby asked with clear concern in her voice. Babe, if you're not feeling well just tell me. Jaden tried to comfort him, holding his hand that was clenching his head. Hey. Don't worry about me, it's nothing. Moby said, brushing it off like it was nothing, going back to his previous joyful self, after one hour more of driving, they finally reached the Griffith family mansion, from the windows of the limousine, they were able to see the entire outside of the mansion, leaving them looking at it in absolute astonishment. It had a big wide gate leading to a garden filled with many different plants and bush sculptors, a large, almost castle-like facade with a huge front door that had the Griffith family crest that looked like was worth billions on its own. It looked very similar to Jaden's personal mansion only at least five times larger. We're here. And, we brought two extra special guests with the young miss, the butler said, stopping at the front gates, talking to a microphone. Access granted, welcome to the Griffith family mansion, we hope you enjoy your stay. A robot-like voice said as the front gates immediately lifted up by themselves. Asterisk asterisk meanwhile, inside the mansion. Listen up you maggots. The young miss has come for a visit today so you better be prepared. I know a lot of you are newbies and don't know exactly what to do so I will repeat myself again. First. Do exactly as you are told with no hesitation at all. Expect a barrage of orders. Many might be completely unreasonable but do them anyway. 
Second, do not even show a hint of negativity in your voice or face whatsoever. If the young miss wants to beat Eurus then let her beat Eurus like you were the happiest goddamn person on earth. Third, whenever she comes near you, always bow and ask her if there is anything you could do, or offer her something. Fourth and last, but not least, never make direct eye contact with her unless she specifically asks you to. She finds it extremely annoying when you do. Speaking of annoying, I have sent you all the rules along with other extra rules to keep in mind to your special watches. If you have any questions now is your time to ask. The young miss should be here any second now. The head servant said, leading to absolute silence and nervous looks from the rest of the servants. You better be prepared. Many of you will lose your jobs, that is an inevitable fact. But, if you follow all the rules your chances will be extremely reduced so keep that in mind. Now, get to work. He added, making them nervously start cleaning around the large entrance of the mansion. Asterisk knock asterisk asterisk knock asterisk. Asterisk knock asterisk. Young Miss Jaden Griffith has arrived, Jaden's butler said from the other side of the door. Shit. She's here faster than I expected. Everyone, take your positions. The head servant screamed, making all the other servants panic, as they stopped what they were doing and lined up one next to the other making a large path in the hallway between them, sweat running down each and every one of their faces, the head servant took in a massive gulp, stealing his resolve before opening the door, he was new to the job and had only met Jaden once before where he was almost fired for accidentally putting milk in her tea. He had worked too hard to get to where he was at and he was not about to let some spoiled brat make him lose it all. Oh. Young miss. You have grown quite a lot since the last time I saw you. You look more dazzling than ever before. The head servant said with a bow, not daring to even look at her face. Oh. Alfred. It's been a while since I've last seen you too. Jaden responded with a smile. Um. Young miss. My name is Albert. He instinctively corrected her before cursing his entire existence as he expected himself to be scolded, and screamed at for talking back. A, hey, Albert, Alfred, same thing. Sorry, I forget. Anyways, can you lead me to my father? I have something extremely exciting to tell him about, Jaden said with a smile. D did she just apologize to me or am I imagining things? Albert thought in confusion. Ah. Uh, yes. But of course. I will lead you to him right away. He is with the other guests in the main dining hall. And, speaking of guests, are those your friends behind you? He nervously asked. Yes, of course they are. I brought them with me today for them to get to better know my family. Treat them like you would treat me, Jaden said, looking back at Moby and Abby who casually waved towards him. Well, follow me and I will lead you to your father, young miss, Albert said, showing the group in as they followed right behind him. There they found two long lines of maids and servants that spanned almost farther than the eye could see, bowing in unison all at once to Jaden's arrival. The group walked by the long line of servants as they began to admire the many decorations and art on the wall, it was almost like they were in a museum, the attention to detail was absolutely impeccable, Jaden. And the group could not see the faces of the servants, but all of them were nervous and scared shitless, begging for dear lord for them not to be chosen by Jaden, after a few minutes of walking, they finally reached the end of the line of servants making them all sigh in relief. When, suddenly, Jaden stopped in place making them all tense up once more. Hey, you. Jaden said, pointing at a female maid towards the end of the line, making the other servants sigh in relief, that it wasn't them that was chosen, fuck. Why did it have to be me? I just got this job. I have kids to feed. Fuck. What will she ask me to do? Lick her dirty shoes clean? Maybe become her footstool? Or, maybe, God forbid, becoming her personal servant for the day? That would 100% get me fired. The maid inwardly panicked and cursed her existence. Hey, can you please get me a drink of water? We forgot to bring water in the limousine and I am quite thirsty, Jaden said, making all the other servants' eyes almost pop out of their heads in shock, including Albert, DD did she just say, please, they all thought in unison as they were unable to believe their ears. Yes. Of course young miss. Right away. The maid sprinted away as fast as she could, why the hell are they all so scared of you? Moby asked Jaden in confusion, using their mind link, well, remember how I used to act before we met and got to know each other? Jaden asked, ye, kinda. Moby replied, remembering their first encounter, well, that's why. But you taught me how to be a good leader, I don't need to be an asshole all the time like I was before. I kinda cringe at my old self looking back now. Back when I was a bossy dickhead, all alone, she said with an awkward chuckle, eh, forget about it. That's now all in the past. What matters most is right now. And I would be lying if I said that you were not my ideal kind of girl at this moment, Moby enthusiasm, trying his best to comfort her, heh, thanks for that but I promise you I am completely fine. She replied with a cute chuckle, for the next few minutes, the group continued walking down many halls, passing many flights of stairs until they saw a huge, luxurious door in the distance that was almost the same size as the front door. H here is your water young miss. The clearly panting and exhausted servant said as she found them midway to the room, handing Jaden a large cup of water. Thanks a lot. You can go back to your job now. Jaden said with a smile, quickly drinking the water in one gulp before handing it back to the maid. Thank you very much. You are far too kind young miss, the maid said with a bow, taking the cup and walking away, when the group finally reached the door, Moby noticed that Jaden had an excited look on her face which made him also happy. Even from the other side of the door, they could clearly hear the many loud sounds of people talking and eating on the other side. Albert then immediately opened the fancy door, revealing the inside of the huge dining hall. The large room was lit by a massive chandelier hanging from the high ceiling, the walls were a golden color, clean smooth and elegant while the floor was made out of gold and white marble that had patterns that included the Griffith family crest. In the middle of the room was a very long and large, white dining table surrounded by many old, and young people that were eating the many mouth-watering meals found on top of it. At the end of the table was a handsome middle-aged man that looked like he was in around his mid-thirties. He wore extremely fancy clothes and had a well-kempt blue beard along with long hair that reached down to his shoulder. In his hand was a large cup that he held while talking cheerfully to the other guests around the table. 
Next to him was an equally beautiful lady that looked no older than twenty years old. Her smooth-looking black hair that reached down to her bosom shined the light from the chandelier making it extremely beautiful. Like the man beside her, she had an extremely happy face as well. Beside them was one empty seat, most likely reserved for another important guest. Well. Attention all guests. My daughter has finally arrived. Everyone give her a big round of applause and congratulate her on her second place rank on her first exam. The middle-aged blue-haired man stood up with his hands open before clapping with a proud look on his face, leading the rest of the guests to do the same, Jaden stared as the tens if not hundreds of guests stood up all at once, clapping at her achievement making her smile and feel slightly embarrassed. Then, from the middle of the crowd beside who Moby assumed was Jaden's father, he spotted an extremely familiar purple-haired young man. Alex! What are you doing here? Moby asked him using his mind link. Chapter 117 well, I was staying at my parents' mansion for the past five days and then only this morning, they told me that I was going to a party at the Griffith family mansion. I kinda expected you guys to come here so I didn't bother to tell you to make it more of a surprise, Alex responded using his mind link as he was still stood up clapping. Also, let us show a big round of applause to her teammate and team leader Alex Hart. Son of my good, might I even say best friend Joseph Hart. He led the team to victory. Jaden's dad announced, making everyone turn to look at Alex who nervously smiled and waved to the crowd. The filthy, greedy, Reed family might have gotten a new record with first place just like last year, but I am sure that the results will change for the future exams, Jaden's father added, making the crowd cheer even louder. Also, it seems that my sweet little daughter has brought two guests with her. Treat them with the utmost respect. They are the esteemed guests of my Griffith household. Any form of disrespect towards them would be like disrespecting me. Now, come here my sweet little daughter. I left a seat wide open for you. Jaden's father said with a smile, Jaden smiled and casually walked past all the important guests at the table, Moby and Abby walking behind her noticing all the mean looks hidden under the smiles of the many guests, until they finally reached the location of Jaden's parents. Hey, would it be possible for you two to move to another seat for my daughter's guests? I didn't expect her to bring people with her. Jaden's father whispered to the guest sitting directly to the left of him in a low voice, leaving Alex and his parents alone on his left side, not asking them to move. Why of course, there is no problem at all, an old man said, leaving the seat with his wife, looking at Moby and Abby with a hint of disdain. Thanks for letting me sit with my friends, father. And why did you say all that stuff? You are kinder embarrassing me. Jaden said like she was a child. Ha ha. Don't worry about it. You deserve this. Also, is it just me or you look even more dazzling than before? You've grown so so much. You really do take after your mother, her father said, patting her head. Darling. I haven't seen you in so long. How was school? Give mommy a big hug. Jaden's mom said, standing up and hugging Jaden so hard that she almost couldn't breathe. Thanks mom. But I think you are gonna kill me. She said, making her mom stop hugging her, taking a seat with a smile. Also, are those guests you brought in your friends or some kind of personal servants? Is that guy with the black and red hair your new pet or something? How many times do I have to tell you that everyone has feelings and you shouldn't treat them like your own personal objects and toys? Jaden's father nervously whispered in her ears loud enough for Moby and Abby to pick up on his voice with their enhanced hearing. Ha ha. Don't be silly dad. I'm not into stuff like that anymore. These two are my new best friends. I brought them here today because I hope to introduce you guys to each other. Jaden said with a smile. Wait. Really? My little girl is finally making friends. I am so very proud. This really does fill my heart with joy. He said, small tears running down his face, tightly grasping Jaden's hands, her mother behind him feeling the same emotions. Hello there. My name is Mason Griffith. Thank you so much for being friends with my daughter. I know that she could get a little feisty at times so please be patient with her. Between you and me, she's never had any actual friends in years so you guys are really doing me and her a great favor. Also, if I find out that you are only using my daughter for selfish gains or anything of the sort I promise you it won't end well for you. Mason said to Moby, whispering the last part. Dad. I heard that. Don't threaten my friends. They are really nice people that care and value me for who I am. I've known them for two months now and not once did they ever even attempt to use me for their personal gain. Jaden said in outrage. Sorry, sweetie. I am just concerned over you. There are many bad people in the world that would not hesitate to ruin your life. Take Arthur and his daughter. I was going to invite them to the party only for them to die yesterday. The Zane family was a great business partner to me and I really hoped you and Arthur's daughter could become friends. But, his daughter got mixed up with the wrong people like in gangs and ended up committing suicide which led to Arthur doing the same. I don't want such a thing to happen to you as well. I don't even want to imagine a reality such as that happening to you. Mason said, hugging Jaden tenderly with tears falling down his face. It's okay dad. Such a thing would never happen to me. And I promise you that my friends are nothing like that. They are very important people in my heart just like you and mom, Jaden said, hugging him back with an awkward chuckle and a slightly sad look in her eyes. Moby had absolutely no idea why, but when he hears the story about Natalia's death, his head starts hurting from Avilia's words, making him slightly angrier, pushing them aside as he viewed them as nothing more than stupid thoughts. And, luckily, this time he managed to keep his pain and emotions under his poker face as to not agitate anyone around him. Well. Sorry for my earlier harsh words or if I might have scared you. I was only being cautious for my daughter's safety. My name is Mason Griffith, it is nice to meet you, he said with a smile, reaching his hand out for a handshake. Hello, my name is Moby Kane. I understand the situation that you are in and I do not blame you at all for your words and actions. If I were in the position that you were in, I would have done the same. Your daughter is a very nice person and an amazing friend, I am so happy that I met her and I could not imagine my life without her, Moby said with a smile, firmly shaking Mason's hand. Moby deliberately chose to leave out the part where he and Jaden were dating as they have yet to go public with it and he thought it would be best, if Jaden was the one to announce it to her family instead of him which might have seemed a little out of place, Kane? I have heard of his family name before. 
I think he was on the same team as Arthur's daughter for the exam. Or was it from some other place? From his watch, he seems to be AB ranked this early on in the school year, so I assume that he is from. Some upcoming family I never heard of, Mason thought. So, you were on the same team as Arthur's daughter. How did she act like the week before she decided to commit suicide? Mason asked in a heavy voice. Ah uh, um. Well, until her death, she was extremely cheerful and full of hope, never giving up on her dreams and aspirations no matter what. I am not sure what made her want to choose to kill herself. Even in the toughest of situations when most of our teammates died, she always somehow found a way to stay completely positive and cheer the group up. She was a true inspiration to us all, Moby said with a sad voice. At first, Moby was talking completely out of his ass to bullshit his way out of the question. However, the more he talked the more he started to find some truths hidden in his words which made him really concerned and made his head hurt once more, causing his head to go into turmoil as he barely managed to keep it all hidden under his poker face, sweat running down his face. Oh, I see. That's very unfortunate, at least that gives me some sort of closure, the news of her son Arthur's death was truly devastating to me and my wife who just got to know Arthur only a few months ago, Mason said with a sad smile. Well, how about you young miss? That red dress looks lovely with your red hair. I can't help but feel like it looks familiar. And, is your hair dyed or natural? Asterisk ahem asterisk anyways, it's really nice to see that my daughter has another girl to talk to. Mason said with a smile, putting his hand out for a handshake. Yes sir. It is indeed natural. My name is Abby Reed. Your daughter and I have been good friends for a little over a month. I am honored that I got to know her. It honestly changed my life. Abby said in an extremely stiff and formal voice, bowing before shaking his hand. Hey Abby Reed. Like from T.H.E. Reed family? What are you doing here? There should have been another party at the Reed mansion to celebrate your first place win on the exam. And why would you be friends with my daughter? Mason said in astonishment. Sir. I declined their offer of course. She said with a deep bow. Well, if my daughter says that you are one of her best friends I see no reason that she would lie to me about it. I sincerely apologize for talking bad about your family in front of such a large group of people. It's just that my family and the Reeds have been rivals for many years now. I never in my life expected you two to be friends, I will be more careful with my words next time and I sincerely apologize, Mason said in a sincere tone of voice. No. Not at all sir. I found your words describing my family quite fitting, I encourage you to go on with the insults. That was my main reason for declining their invitation after all. Also, sir, if possible, keep what I told you a secret, Abby replied to Mason with a nervous smile. Oh. Okay, that is no problem at all. I never knew that even the Reed family's own youngest daughter despised them almost as much as I do. Mason said with a chuckle in a slightly confused tone, patting Abby on the back in a friendly way before they both sat down where they once were. Then, Jaden's mom stood up to go greet Moby and Abby as well. Hello, you too. It's nice to see that my daughter has such lovely friends, I will keep the introduction short as my husband has already said most if not all I wanted to say. My name is Rachel Griffith and it's really nice to meet you too. Rachel said with a smile, shaking both Moby's and Abby's hands before taking a seat. Now that the introductions are out of the way I have something extremely important to ask you. I am sorry, but your friends need to stay out of this discussion. Joseph, you and your son should come to join our conversation, it's time. Mason said with a smirk, motioning them to listen in, making Joseph and his wife extremely excited. Oh, hey Alex. How's it going? Jaden waved at Alex who just waved back at her in a friendly manner. So far so good. Mason and Joseph thought with an evil smile. Well, how did the exam go? I see that you two are a lot more friendly than before, Mason said, waiting for an answer in anticipation. It went really well. Me and Jaden worked pretty well together. She even managed to get to C plus rank of power from the intense fights on the planet. Alex said enthusiastically, leading to Jaden nodding in agreement. So, nothing else? Joseph added. Well, we did become friends again. Jaden said. Friends? And nothing more? Mason continued. Wait, where are you going with this? Alex asked in confusion. Wheel, we were thinking about you two maybe getting married. They whispered in a low voice, not letting anyone else hear. What? They both blurted out at once. Wait. It was you two. You were the reason that we were on the same team, wasn't it? Jaden blurted, pointing at the two smiling fathers. Huh, well, of course. What are the chances that you two who used to be former friends and potential lovers ended up together out of the many hundreds of groups? Mason said with a chuckle. What? Did you set us up for a date in the middle of an exam? Alex said in embarrassment. I wouldn't say, set you up, I would just say, we gave you a small push to see what happens, Joseph said with a chuckle. So. What will it be? Do you guys like each other? Do you want to get married? Don't be shy and let us know your true feelings. Joseph and Mason added, waiting in anticipation for an answer, clenching their sweaty fists together nervously. No. I refuse. They both blurted in unison without any hesitation at all, making the excited faces of their parents turn all sour. Well, we tried our best my friend, we tried our best, maybe someday, UIA, at least they became friends again and don't hate each other, that's a plus, right? They said, trying to comfort each other. Huh? Wait. Are you not going to force us into a marriage like all the other important and noble families? Jaden asked in confusion. Huh? Fuck no. Now why would I do that? Anyone that marries their children off against their will for political or financial reasons is just complete scum. I would never do such a thing. I think I am also speaking for Joseph as well. We both advocates of true love. Mason said in a serious tone, leading to Joseph nodding in agreement. Well, father, to tell you the truth. I already have a boyfriend and someone I love dearly, not as some stupid pet like all the other times. He was the person that changed my perspective on things and gave me fun in my life along with other things to live for and look forward to. Jaden said, her face as red as a tomato. What? Really? 
I am so happy for you. Why didn't you say so? Why didn't you bring him with you? I wanted to meet him. Mason said with a mix of happiness and disappointment. Huh? You've already met him. He's right there. Jaden said, secretly pointing at Moby who was enjoying a juicy steak, pretending like he was unable to hear their entire conversation. Him. Really? That's the guy. Well. He is strong for his age with decent manners and I guess he does look pretty handsome. But, I can't let you marry him just yet. Me, Alex and Joseph have known each other for many years and that was the reason I wanted the marriage between you two if you agreed to it. I wanted it to be with someone I really trust. I need to get to personally know him. I know I might sound bossy and unreasonable but I promise that it's for your own good. Mason whispered in her ear, expecting her to go on a tantrum. Yes, of course, I understand. That is completely reasonable, Jaden replied in a serious tone, completely startling and catching Mason off guard. Hey. Son. You need to find some kind of love or else you would grow up lonely and alone. You're making your handsome face go to waste. Why don't you ask that girl out over there, isn't she one of your friends? Joseph said, hinting towards Abby who was eating a pizza using a knife and fork in the most sophisticated way imaginable. Stop it dad. I'll find love when it finds me so don't worry about it. I won't grow up alone. Alex said with slight annoyance, making Joseph burst out in laughter, then, suddenly, out of nowhere, a loud smash was heard on the long table, startling everyone around that was whispering, what? That country bumpkin nobody is Mistress Jaden's boyfriend. That's outrageous. I am more worthy than a shitter like him. A young, chubby man around 16 years of age stood up and blurted in outrage before his father butted in, grabbing him by the head making him sit back down. I, I am sorry for my son's rude behavior Lord Griffith. I will give him a good beating when we get back home I promise you that. Oh or we can do it here in public to show what happens to people with no respect at all. So please have mercy on us. A chubby old man said with a deep bow, holding his son's head making him bow just as low. Fuck, it seems someone overheard our conversation and leaked it out to the whole room. Why am I so stupid as to not go into another room before discussing such an important topic? Mason muttered to himself as he felt a huge migraine growing in his head. Chapter 118. Spencer. You and your son, get out of my house. I made it very clear that if you disrespect any of my daughter's friends it would be like disrespecting me. So, kicking you out of my house and banning you from attending any future event is a rather light punishment for what you have done, including your spreading of rumors. Albert. Show them to the door. Mason ordered in an aggressive voice. Yes sir, Albert said with a bow before disappearing from the place, leaving dust in his wake before suddenly appearing behind the chubby old noble and his son, dragging them by the hand towards the exit of the room. No. Please have mercy my lord. It was an honest mistake. Please have mercy. He screamed with tears in his eyes as he was aggressively dragged on the floor along with his son. Why are you so stupid? I should have never brought you here. You ruined my life. You will be disowned as soon as we get home. The chubby old man said, punching his son's scared face so hard that he lost multiple teeth. Hold up. Moby screamed, grabbing everyone's attention. I like how that kid was talking. I say you should be more lenient to him, future father-in-law. We should give him another chance, Moby announced with a smile. Huh? So, did you have something else in mind? Mason asked with clear curiosity and anticipation. Father-in-law? I will be the judge of that. Mason thought with a smile. I say we put his claims to the test. I propose we make a bet. If you can beat me in a fight I will forgive you and pretend like nothing happened. But, if I win, you will be kicked out of the house and give me half of your entire net worth. Moby announced in confidence, making the crowd go silent and wide-eyed as they were not at all expecting such a proposal. Half. Are you crazy? Now why would I do that? The old man replied in anger without any hesitation at all. Oh. I see that you are not willing to cooperate. Or are just too pussy to accept. Take him away and out of my sight. Moby ordered, making Albert drag them both away once more. W wait. Fine. I agree to your terms. However, I have only one condition. I get to choose what arena the fight will be fought in. The chubby old man said, making the entire crowd whisper amongst themselves with smirks on their faces. I also have another question, what is your power level? My son is at 15,160. It would not be a fair fight if one party is much stronger than the other now would it? The old man said with a smirk. I am at 12,240, Moby confidently replied. Ha 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 ha. Within the 3,000 power level range. It should be more or less a fair fight. I accept your offer. The old man said with an arrogant and amused smirk, getting up from the ground, him and his even more amused son, I am so lucky. I thought my life was ruined and now this happens. This is too good to be true. Spencer thought with an evil laugh. Heh. I see what that sly old fox is doing. Why eh? That's no fair. I almost feel bad for the little kid. So naive. Why don't we do a bet amongst ourselves? I can organize it. I'll put 50 grand on Leon, 20 grand on Leon. I like rooting for the underdog and I have a lot of extra money so I will do 100 grand on the new kid. Will this be okay, father-in-law? Will you allow this wager to go on? Moby said, turning to Joseph with a confident smile. Hey. Kid. Do you understand what you are doing? Spencer's kid Leon has been undefeated in the small ring arenas for the past five years. His ability is too good for the environment. You don't stand a chance. Even people with a power level higher than him still lost in the smaller arenas. I recommend that you retract your statement. It will be slightly embarrassing but trust me when I say that the embarrassment will multiply if you challenge him and lose after talking so big. Trust me, this is for your own good. Don't be a greedy and naive child. I expected better from my daughter's boyfriend, Mason whispered in his ears trying to convince him to stop the match. Ha ha ha. It's okay, father-in-law. I have confidence that I am going to win. 
Moby whispered back with a bold smirk. Fine. But it's your funeral. I wanted to test out your strength in battle and your personality and arrogance so this is a good way for me to do it. Mason replied back with slight annoyance that his advice was being ignored. Attention everyone. I, Mason Griffith will authorize this wager. Mason announced to the crowd making them roar in excitement. I will now announce the rules. This will be a 1 vs 1 fight, that will take place in one of the many arenas I have in my estate that will be chosen by Spencer and his son according to the, agreed upon bet. Each fighter will be given standard non-magical equipment from my personal armory as to make the fight as fair as possible. The fight will have no time limit and have no ring outs. The victor will be decided when the opposite party is unable to fight. I will personally be the referee of this match so don't try cheating or any underhanded tactics or else I will shove. Sorry, I meant I will show you the door and never allow you to enter my mansion again and I will make it a promise, and a mission to myself to ruin you for the rest of your life. Does anyone have any questions? Mason announced in a serious voice, making the entire room go silent. Also, as for those setting up bets, I have no gripes with that. That's always how things have functioned in my house. But, and that's a big but. If something goes wrong or you lose all your money, don't come crying to me. Mason said, making the crowd nervous before making them really happy and excited once again. Spencer, which arena do you choose? Mason asked with a serious look in his eyes. Arena E2, Spencer replied with confidence. Ha 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 ha. Of course. As expected. You guys betting on the underdog are stupid. Leon has never lost in that arena. Hey. Don't call me stupid. I'm just betting for the underdog for fun. The crowd started to whisper amongst themselves. The match will start in 30 minutes. Please follow Ryan, he will lead you to arena E2 where you will patiently wait for the match to start, Mason said, pointing at Jaden's butler who was standing straight as an arrow beside the main door. As for our two competitors, follow Albert who will lead you to the armory to choose your preferred weapons and armor. That will be all. Mason said before sitting back down at his seat to take a breather. You too. Follow closely behind me. Albert said to Moby and Leon as he exited through one of the side doors of the dining hall. Hey. Moby. Are you really sure this? Jaden asked Moby with concern in her voice, using Mindlink. Ha. Ah. Please have no fear. It might seem like I have a clear disadvantage, but trust me when I say that I know what I am doing. I did my research. Moby replied with confidence. Oh. Also. Bet all your money on me. Ask your dad for one year in allowance extra or something and put it all on me. You too Abby and Alex. Bet as much as you can on me. Trust me when I say that we will be filthy rich. Moby said with a comically evil laugh. Okay, we'll do it. But you better win or else I will make you owe me all the money I am betting and more. Alex said in a playful tone. Same here. Jaden agreed. I am sorry my lord but I only have $500, will that be enough? Abby nervously asked, everything was going exactly as planned, his entire family agreed to bet on him, the underdog. At this rate, he might be able to win $500,000 to $1 million from one fight alone which made him really excited. The entire way to the armory, Leon, Moby's opponent kept on talking shit about him, and about how much he was going to beat the shit out of him which started to really get on his nerves. Hey. Whatever your name is stop ignoring me. Am I really that intimidating? Why won't you even tell me your name? Don't think that by hiding it, it will save you some face when you lose. Just watch me. I am going to beat the shit out of you in front of everyone, including Jaden making her see how much better I am than you. Then, I will pipe her from the back so hard while making you watch as my little new pet dog. Giving me another chance was the worst, can you please be quiet? Moby said, interrupting him with an ominous smile, a vein bulging out from his forehead, his eyes glowing purple and staring straight into Leon's soul, sending shivers down his spine for a split second as his body was telling him that whatever he planned to do was a bad idea only for it to fade away in the next moment, I don't get paid enough to babysit people like this. Albert thought with a long sigh. Heh. You don't scare me. Leon kept following Albert like nothing happened until they finally reached the armory, the room was gigantic, filled with many different weapons, and armor lined up in rows and shelves for as far as the eye could see. As Moby looked around at the various armor and weapons, he noticed that a lot of them looked really strong and cool which really existed Moby. However, when he used his energy sense to check if there was any special or magical armor, it came back with zero results which slightly disappointed him, damn, all of this armor is standard armor. I am scared to find out how the actual magical armory looks like. Moby thought, slowly inspecting all of the weapons and armor to see what he would choose. Listen up you two. You will only have 20 minutes to choose and try on any armor you want. If the time is up and you didn't find anything I'll find one myself and make you wear it. Albert told the two who were still inspecting the armor, making them nod in understanding. 25 minutes later, Arena E2, last call to make a bet. Leon or the new kid. Place your bets now before it's too late. The person collecting all the bets screamed to the masses who were all having a cheerful conversation before Mason started talking, making everyone go silent. Attention everyone. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. The fighters have finally arrived. Mason announced making the entire crowd cheer, sitting in an upper stand with his and Alex's family, along with Abby, and Spencer who had an evil smirk on his face. On the left we have the undefeated champion of the small E2 arena. Leon Dave. The crowd roared cheering as he entered the small arena, hands in the air in celebration like he already won. Hey. Kid. You better win. I bet good money on you. Ha 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 ha. What are you even worried about? This is a guaranteed victory. Kick his ass, Leon. And. On the right side, we have my sweet little daughter's boyfriend, Moby Kane. Mason announced, making the crowd go silent and whisper. W wait. Come to think of it it's my first time hearing his name. What family does he come from? Kane? Have you ever heard of that? Nope, never have. Maybe it's some sort of new upcoming family, wait. I recognize his name. Moby Kane. 
one of the most hated guys in military school Z7. I heard rumors say that he was an orphan F rank that was taken by Jaden Griffith as a pet, not a boyfriend. Also, I heard rumors say that he got a new ability from the exam and that's how he got to B rank. That man is a fake. A lucky, filthy F rank orphan and nothing more. A young man in the audience said, making the rest of the crowd roar in outrage. However, before the crowd got too riled up, Jaden interrupted, standing up and addressing the crowd bellow with extreme rage in her voice. Who the fuck said that? You are lucky that I don't have your tongue chopped and fed to the dogs. He's not a fake. He is my boyfriend. If anyone dares to talk shit like this again be prepared for me to make your worst nightmare become your reality. That's all. You may now continue. Jaden screamed, making the entire crowd go silent. Chapter 119. Thank you for listening to that passionate display by my daughter. For your own safety, please take her words to heart because I can guarantee you that she is not joking. Mason announced to the still silent crowd. She's growing up so fast, asterisk sniffle asterisk, he muttered to himself. I will be explaining the rules once again so listen up. There will, after a few minutes of explaining the rules, the two combatants were ready to start the match, the short, blonde-haired, fat, Leon was wearing spiky heavy armor and seemingly no weapon at all was staring daggers at Moby who at this point, was still ignoring him as he felt extremely happy listening to Jaden's speech. Moby wore a standard set of light armor to prioritize mobility over defense like his build entailed. However, his choice of weapon was a little odd to say the least. Instead of using his usual preferred weapon of choice the katana, he used a metal shield instead. Now. If the combatants are all ready, I will count down to start the match, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, match begin. Ha. Ah. It finally started. Do you really think that shield can save you from me? Don't hold your breath. When I am done with you, Jaden would notice how much of a cooler guy I am than a puny orphan like you and dump you for me. Her pussy must be so sweet. I bet you never even got a taste of it. Leon mocked with clear arrogance. You sure have balls of steel, don't you? Moby retorted, his eyes staring daggers into Leon's soul. Yes, I do, Leon replied with a smirk, inflating his body and armor into the shape of a ball of spiky steel that towered almost 10 meters in height. Heh, I expected this, but it looks even stupider than what I read about. Moby thought with a smirk. Of course, Moby did not go into this match completely blind, he did his research. Over the five days when Natalia was being non-stop tortured, he was not sitting on his ass doing nothing. Instead, he was training and doing research on abilities he found on the marketplace. One of those abilities was called Ball of Steel, an ability that transforms the user into a gigantic ball of steel that is still as flexible and bouncy as rubber. It still allowed the user complete movement while in the form, but it lacked the ability of proper vision while in the form, opting the user to sense energy signals instead, which was very impractical in many situations. However, in such a small and compact arena, Leon would be able to quickly bounce at the walls at random and in quick succession, aiming to hit Moby every time with him definitely not being able to dodge or predict the direction of the ball's bounce as he would have complete. Movement control also, while in his ball form, his defense increased by an astronomical amount, making him almost indestructible by anything around his power level range. However, there was a catch, he was only able to stay in his ball form for 5 minutes before it becomes too straining on his body, forcing him to rest for 10 seconds, making him completely vulnerable and defenseless. However, for every match he had partaken in, it almost always needed much less than 5 minutes as most matches ended in 30 seconds to 1 minute. That was he was so confident and why he chose such an arena for the fight to take place. Of course, Moby did not find this information all on the internet as most people like to keep the powers of their abilities a secret from the public. However, there existed a secret, exclusive site that listed many abilities and their weaknesses that Moby found all thanks to Ryan, Jaden's butler. Before Moby even proposed the fight, he used his, inspect, skill on Leon to see who he was going up against and if he wanted to challenge him. That was why he was so confident. Asterisk 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 name, Leon White Race, human ability, level 6 ball of steel power level, 15, 160 HP, 150 or 150 mana, 230 or 230 strength, 355 agility, 410 endurance, 521 intelligence, 230 mind, 0 asterisk asterisk asterisk. The weird thing that Moby noticed about his stats was that he had 150 HP instead of the standard 100, that he had seen on every other human prior which made him think that there had to be some exceptions for humans HP stats, depending on either their power level, abilities or another factor that he had yet to consider. I in comparison, Moby's new base stats were as follows. Asterisk asterisk name, Moby Kane race, draconic demon of sin level, 50 XP to next level, 10, 450, 000, 000, 000 power level, 12,240 HP, 180 or 180 demon. Energy, 339 and 339 demon energy regeneration, 212 demon energy hour strength, 291 agility, 372 endurance, 222 intelligence, 339 mind, 100 available points to distribute, 0 asterisk asterisk avilia. Set a mental timer in my head for 1 minute and 30 seconds, Moby ordered her to do, huh? What the hell do you think I am? Siri? I am the first demon lord, Avilia Greymore. Avilia retorted with slight annoyance. Just do it. It's hard for me to fight and keep track of time all at once. Moby quickly replied as he saw his opponent begin to prepare his attack, fine. But you owe me one. Avilia replied with a smile as she sat back in her metaphorical comfy chair to enjoy the fight, popcorn in her hands. Leon began rolling straight at Moby like a bowling ball only for Moby to easily dodge like he was nothing. Ha! Huh. I see that you did your research. My first attack is always slow so I can build up momentum. Most people attack me blindly thinking they have a free attack only for them to be crushed or blown away by my indestructible shield. Leon taunted, surprising Moby who was shocked to see that he could still talk in his ball form. But! Even if you know how my ability works, it still won't save you from the rest of my attacks. Leon screamed, jumping up with incredible force, heading straight for the still cheering crowd that was not at all startled by such a move, only to be blocked by the force field around the arena, bouncing him back to Moby like he was a rubber ball. Leon was still going incredibly slow in Moby's eyes which still allowed him to dodge and react in such a small and compact area. 
When Leon missed Moby once again, he used the momentum from his bounce to the ground to boost himself to the audience once again only to be bounced back to Moby at almost twice the speed, Moby still managing to easily dodge due to his high speed and better senses. I am impressed that you could last this long. But, sooner or later you would be crushed by my mighty ball. Leon screamed like a lunatic as he continued bouncing continuously, the more that he bounced, the more speed he got, and the more speed he got, the closer he got to finally landing an attack Moby which seemed like only a matter of time. When, suddenly, one of Leon's attacks finally connected, hitting Moby in the shield as he barely managed to dodge, cracking it, which made him inwardly curse while at the same time making Leon and the crowd celebrate. Ha 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 ha. This is what I've been waiting for. Get his ass, Leon. Grind his bones to dust. I paid good money to see you whoop his ass. That shield can't last for long, it's only a matter of time. Poor kid never stood a chance. I almost feel bad for him. Ha ha ha. Come on new kid. I want an upset. I would be even more filthy rich if you win. The onslaught of attack continued as Moby used his shield to barely manage to block and dodge the attacks, his shield becoming more and more damaged until it was finally destroyed, fuck. Avilia. Is time almost up? Moby asked in panic as he did not at all expect what happened. He he, almost. Avilia playfully replied making Moby inwardly curse, as he tried to dodge Leon's attack only for him to be deeply slashed right across the chest by one of the spikes protruding from the ball, making him grunt in pain and spit out a mouthful of blood. Yes. End it my son. Show this arrogant prick who he was messing with. Spencer screamed from the crowd, only to receive a deadly stare from Mason who was standing right next to him. Heh, heh, I, I am sorry my lord, I just got a little carried away. You know how parents are when they want to support their own children right? Spencer said with an awkward chuckle, swallowing a mouthful of saliva. Shit. I told the kid it was a bad idea. But he didn't listen. My daughter even convinced me to pay her some of her allowances in advance to bet on him. Arrogant people like that should not come near my daughter. They will only bring her trouble, Mason muttered to himself as he prepared to call the match. Jaden, Abby, and Alex who were sitting right behind him were all waiting with bated breaths, hope still in their eyes as they had faith in Moby to turn things around. Especially Jaden who had the urge to tell her father to call off the match but decided not to as to respect her boyfriend's wishes. For the next two attacks, Moby managed to completely dodge them by mere millimeters of him being hit, his heart racing and his face sweating as he used every fiber of his being to dodge. I got you now. There is no place for you to dodge hide. Leon screamed, bouncing off the wall, rocketing straight for Moby much faster than ever before, the crowd screaming and getting even more excited as they knew in their heart that the match was completely over, fuck. Avilia. Is it time yet? Moby inwardly screamed, ah. Yes. It's time. Avilia excitedly replied, getting caught up in the moment, finally. Moby replied with a smirk on his face, looking at the hurling spiky ball in front of him with a glow in his eyes. Asterisk crash asterisk, Moby. No. Jaden screamed with tears in her eyes. Ha ha. That's my boy. Spencer celebrated from the stands, fuck. That was a heavy impact. I hope he's not too injured or else my daughter is gonna kill me, Mason thought to himself, looking at the large dust cloud where the impact was. I am hereby declaring the winner as. Mason said, before biting his tongue mid-sentence. Chapter 120. Out of the debris of dust surrounding the impact of where Leon's attack landed, emerged Moby, completely unscathed, his eyes glowing a dark purple glow, the entire crowd stared at what happened in astonishment, some even with their mouths wide open in shock. They did not want to believe their eyes. From their angle, there was no way in hell Moby could have predicted and reacted in time to dodge Leon's attack that was speeding right towards him faster than it had ever done before. However, there he was, standing right in front of them, completely unharmed and ready to fight. Hey! Jaden look! Abby said, nudging Jaden who had her hands covering her face. No. I don't want to. She said, being stubborn. No, Jaden. Actually look. He's okay. Abby said, nudging her once more. Ha. Huh. Ha ha ha. Of course, he's okay. I wasn't worried at all. Jaden said with a nervous laugh. You should have more faith in your boyfriend. Unlike you, I knew that he was going to be okay 100%. No way my law, I mean. M. Moby went into this fight blind and unprepared. Abby said with confidence. Hey. Don't mock me. I, I had full faith in him too. Jaden nervously replied. That was very impressive. Did you guys see the way he dodged that attack at the last second? Alex said, leaning forward in excitement. And no, it all looked pretty blurry to me, especially with all the dust. Abby replied in confusion. Huh? What dust? There was barely anything there, looked pretty clear to me. Alex said with a chuckle, making Abby look at him with wide eyes filled with skepticism, instead of going for consecutive attacks, Leon chose to bounce all by himself in the corner of the arena as to not kill Moby by continuously attacking which would have gotten him disqualified and maybe even killed by the head of the Griffith family and his daughter. However, he kept bouncing to keep his momentum and speed until the match was called, just in case of the small chance that he missed. So, when he heard the head of the Griffith family stop mid-sentence as he was declaring his victory, he felt a slight feeling of fear before it faded away into a sense of relief, shit. I am so glad I didn't stop bouncing. That would have been really bad. I can't believe I missed him. I'll just end it quick. I only have three minutes and a half or so time left in my ball form, Leon thought. Consider yourself lucky you little shitter. God has blessed you with another chance. I somehow missed my finishing move. But, trust me when I say that my next attacks will not be missing. Leon screamed like a lunatic rushing straight at Moby once again. Heh, that could never be true. I have been condemned by the gods. Moby said, dodging his high-speed attack like it was nothing at all, a wide smirk on his face. Leon was very surprised to see that his attack did not connect once more as he bounced on the ground hitting nothing, then, he bounced off the walls once more, attacking Moby from his blind spot only for him to dodge again, almost like he fully predicted the trajectory of his attack and knew where it was coming from. Why the fuck can't I hit you anymore? 
Stand still you little bug. What the fuck is going on? Leon screamed with immense frustration, continuing his onslaught of attacks only for every single one of them to be effortlessly and gracefully dodged by Moby who kept a visible smirk on his face. Of course, this was all part of Moby's plan. He knew that once he activated his Eyes of Sin, he would be able to completely dodge and predict all of Leon's attacks due to a combination of the extra power boost, sense boost, and future sight that it provided him. The big problem with using his Eyes of Sin was the extremely high demon energy cost at 2 demon energy a second. According to his calculations, if he used no other skill that needed demon energy, he would only be able to sustain his Eyes of Sin for around 3 minutes and 30 seconds which was much lower than the 5 minutes that Leon could sustain his ball form. So, in order to win, he needed to survive Leon's onslaught of attacks for the first 1 minute and 30 seconds in order to make him run out of his ball form before he ran out of his Eyes of Sin. That was the reason for the timer that he told Avilia to set. And, it was the reason why he chose a mixture of a shield and light armor as to have good mobility with the ability to block when things got bad, which he did not at all expect to happen as he thought that Leon needed more time to reach his maximum speed, which was the reason he almost lost. So, he was extremely glad he chose to bring it anyway. He also opted to choose to hold off on using his eyes of sin first, and surviving the rest naturally as he accounted for the time that Leon needed to reach his full speed in the beginning, giving him maximum survivability instead of trying to withstand the last 1 minute and 30 seconds, which Leon would have been at full speed, giving Moby a virtually 0% chance to survive. Moby could have also tried to brute force his way into beating Leon. However, that strategy was not completely foolproof as he had read about how incredibly tough the ability Ball of Steel truly was. Even if it worked, he did not want to risk it. He did not want to use his demon energy on something he was not even sure of, which would have made him definitely lose if it didn't work, fuck. How is that little bug still standing? No way he could have dodged that last attack. Spencer inwardly cursed, clenching his teeth in anger and anticipation. Chapter 121. Damnin. Your daughter's boyfriend has got some serious moves. I am not sure why he didn't do this from the start, but he turned it around so quickly. Those purple eyes of his must be some part of his ability or something. I am so glad I bet on him now. Joseph said with a hearty laugh. Why yeah, he really does. Mason replied, still unable to believe his eyes. For the next few minutes, the crowd stared at the fight in awe and complete silence, at how the tides of the fight suddenly shifted with the introduction of one skill, how graceful and effortless Moby's moves looked, sweat running down their face with a bad feeling running down their spines and in their wallets. What the fuck are you doing Leon? Do you know how much I bet on you? You better not lose. Stop playing around and crush him already. Your power level is so much higher. What the fuck is your stupidest you doing? If you lose, I swear I will take my money back by force from the other half of your net worth that you are not betting. This is insane. Fuck. What the hell is going on? At the start of the fight I was playing and tossing him around like he was a ragdoll but now I can't even seem to touch him. Shit. I only have 30 seconds left. My life is ruined. Leon inwardly cursed, sensing that his impending defeat is near. Spencer, Leon's dad, was watching everything from the stands almost ready to shit himself as his expression had changed by a complete 180 when Moby started using his glowing eyes. Not only will he lose half his net worth, but he would also lose his relationship with the entire Griffith family, and he would be hated by the many rich and nobles who had bet good money on his son to win and would spite him for losing, f fuck. I am done for. Spencer inwardly cried as he saw the entire world crumble in front of his face, Mason, who was towering over him staring at him with a smile, then, suddenly, as 30 seconds passed and Moby had dodged Leon's final barrage of attacks, he had finally transformed back into his human-sized state, holding his knees, heavily panting with buckets of sweat running down his entire body. Ha, ha. I. Give. You. Leon said, trying to resign before he saw the face and glowing eyes of an absolute demon, like he was taking a peek into the depths of hell itself when he looked into them, making him stop his words mid-sentence out of absolute horror, before simultaneously shitting and pissing himself. He stared at the demon's spiky metal fists, that lifted up and bolted towards his face like it was a blur with him not able to do anything about it as it made contact with, his face at incredible speed, the metal. Spikes of the glove went straight into Leon's eyes, nose, and mouth, blinding him, and, piercing and ripping off his tongue that he used to talk shit with, making him bleed profusely. Next, he tightly held onto his head, pushing down to his accelerating knee, breaking his nose before making him lose most if not all of his teeth, leaving him almost completely unconscious. Then, he kicked him straight in the balls so hard that it launched him straight to the farthest wall, making him crash onto the defensive barrier with a loud bang, knocking him unconscious, making the crowd go silent before going absolutely wild. I am hereby declaring the winner as my daughter's boyfriend, Moby Kane. Mason announced, not being able to even believe his own words, what? Fuck. I lost 100 grand on this shit. Ha ha. Losers. I am so lucky and glad I bet on the underdog. No way this is real. Leon has never lost. And now he lost to an orphan nobody that had a much lower power level? I am having a hard time believing this. Yeah. That's it. This match must have been rigged from the start. I should have expected as much. I want my money back. The fight was totally rigged. Maybe it was just a plan by the head of the Griffith family to make his daughter's boyfriend look good in front of everyone. A young, brave soul screamed, what followed was a display of strength and authority, unlike anything Moby had ever seen before. All of a sudden, a loud rumbling noise was heard from the upper stands where Mason Griffith was spectating the fight. An aura and tentacles of shadow flowed, and surrounded the arena making it hard to see and even properly breathe making many of the frightened, pale-faced spectators try their best to grasp for air, piss and shit themselves, and become unconscious, then. On top of the stands, a man surrounded in a full set of raging shadow armor, daggers in hand, with ominous glowing white eyes announced, making his voice echo into the souls of all the frightened, ghost-like spectators that dared not to talk or even take a step. How many times did I tell you this you sorry excuses for nobles? If your bet goes wrong don't come crying to me, or blame me right out of your ass. If you have any gripes with the results of the match then blame it on yourselves for betting on the wrong person. Does anyone have any questions or want to object? I would be glad to hear them out. 
Mason's almost otherworldly voice resounded around the room making the entire crowd go silent. Good. Mason said, transforming back into his previous state, removing his aura from around the arena before taking a seat back in his chair. Abby and Alex who were standing right behind Mason's display of his authority felt power like they never felt before, making their faces sweat profusely, even if the shadowy aura was not affecting them most likely due to the fact that Mason did not have the intent of using it on them. T that sure is some power. Just like all the other powerful people I try to inspect, it shows up with nothing but question marks. Moby thought, cold sweat running down his face, swallowing a mouthful of saliva. Yeah. I guess he is pretty strong, Avilia nonchalantly commented making Moby even more frightened of Mason's power than before. Seeing his strength up close was frightening. However listening to Avilia describe him as, pretty strong, when she disregarded Professor Leo's strength like he was a bug was a true testament to how powerful the head of one of the most powerful, families in the country if not world truly was. Chapter 122. After a few minutes of the crowd being silent, it went back into absolute chaos. Okay. Spencer, you lost the bet. You know what that means. Now pay up and leave. Mason said to the ghost-like Spencer who was on his knees next to him. Be please my lord. Have mercy. It will never happen again. I promise you. This was all one big misunderstanding. Spencer said, a river of tears falling down his face, crawling over and kissing Mason's shoes like he was a dog. Get the fuck away from me you dirty pig. I don't want your germs on my shoes. Mason said in disgust, kicking him in his fat stomach with such immense force that it broke several bones and made him feel like his soul left his body. Take him away men. The sorry sight of this pig disgusts me. Mason ordered, looking down at the unconscious Spencer in disgust. Hey, Brandon. Would it be possible to call off the bet? I really need that money. Were you the one that rigged it? Scammer. Just call it off man. People started complaining left and right to Brandon Nyer, a tall, black-haired middle-aged man, the person who set up the bets. Everyone calm down. I'll think of something. Brandon nervously said, trying to appease the masses. Father. That kid down there disgusts me. He's so weak yet he thinks of himself so big. Not to mention that he is an orphan nobody. Such a man does not deserve to be with the beautiful young mistress of the esteemed Griffith household. It should have been me. Said a young man with an uncanny resemblance to his father, with clear disgust in his voice, walking down the steps of the stands. Wait. Damien. Don't do anything rash. I beg you. Don't be stupid or else I'll make you regret it. Brandon screamed at his son who seemed to be not listening to him at all, trying his best to stop him by force only to be blocked by the massive amount of people trying to ask for their money back. Hey. New kid. My name is Damien Nyer, part of the esteemed Nyer family. That was some match. I commend you for it. But how about we make another bet? It seems like you were hiding your powers and have taken us for fools. You had the perfect counter to Leon's ability. So, how about you challenge me instead to prove your worth? If you win, me and my family will double whatever money you made. But, if I win, you will return all the money you won with an extra 50% to all the people that bet, and, you would be kicked out of the mansion to never be seen again. So, what will it be? Damien screamed at Moby from the crowd, clear arrogance and confidence in his voice, making the crowd go wild in excitement. Yeah. Challenge him. Prove yourself new kid. Do it or you're just a pussy who only takes fights he knows that he was guaranteed to win. Okay, Damien, before I accept your proposal, I would like to ask your power level. Moby asked a rhetorical question as he already knew what the answer was, 20 0, 10. He replied, puffing his chest out in confidence. Your power level is almost 8,000 more than mine. How the hell would that be a fair fight? I have no reason to accept your challenge. I am not retarded enough to do it. Moby confidently replied. Ha. Huh. Well, it's not my fault you're so weak. That's how life is, nothing is fair. How can someone like you be strong enough to protect young Miss Jaden in her time of need? Pathetic. Damien replied. Stop your yappering. I'm under no obligation at all to accept your challenge. Now, pay me my bet money and leave me alone. Moby said in a slightly annoyed tone. Pussy. Just challenge him. What's wrong with that? No balls at all. And you call yourself a man. Everyone shut up. Mason shouted, making everyone in the stand stop talking. If that was your own son being challenged by a person a whole 8,000 power level stronger than him, would you let him participate? Would you scold them for not wanting to fight when they know they are walking into a losing battle? A true warrior chooses their fights wisely. They are no coward for avoiding fights they clearly know they are going to lose. If anyone has any objections. I would love to hear them. Mason shouted to the still silent crowd before sitting down, what the hell? Fight him pussy. Moby heard Avilia's voice ring in his head, something he did not at all expect to hear, what? Are you crazy? I am 100% going to lose if I do. Even if I use my sin mode, I think I would only be equal or maybe slightly better than him. And there is no way in hell I am revealing my sin mode in front of such a large audience under any circumstances. Moby replied with no hesitation at all, those are just petty excuses. What kind of demon lord runs away from a fight? Especially when the opponent is talking such mad shit about you. Avilia said in an angry tone, well. How do you expect me to win this bet? Can you give me some special power? Pull something overpowered out my ass? Because if not then I don't see how I can do this. Moby replied with clear annoyance, I don't know. You figure it out. I am not giving you shit. Avilia replied, then I am not fucking doing it. I would rather be a pussy than a dead and broke demon lord. Moby retorted, ugh. Fine. I will give you some incentive to do it. Avilia said in frustration, system alert. Squinting eyes face, new quest received, stop being a pussy, asterisk details, stop being a pussy and start thinking and acting like a true demon lord. Win the bet against Damien Nyer and become even richer, conditions to complete, accept and win the bet with Damien Nyer time limit, 5 hours rewards, plus 300 stat points to the user. 
plus 150 stat points to the user servant skill, air steps, plus one level skill, drain, plus one level asterisk. Chapter 123. As soon as Moby saw the quest appear before his eyes, they almost popped out of their socket. Damn you, Avilia. What have you done? You are making my brain hurt on what to do. Moby inwardly cursed only for Avilia to reply with a comically evil laugh. He tried his best to stay calm and collected, from the outside, but from the inside, his head was spinning in circles trying to process everything. Luckily, the quest was completely optional, leaving no downsides to not doing it. However, the temptation was getting to his head, making him think of ways that he could possibly complete it without revealing his sin mode. From before, Moby had already given up on the bet with Damien, as he was already satisfied with his original bet. However, the temptation of the new quest was getting to him, making him think in ways he didn't know he could, all for the sake of completing it. 300 stat points and two level ups on his skills that he knew take forever to level up was too good to pass up on dot on the outside, he looked very calm with a blank expression on his face. However, on the inside, there was an entire war zone going on as he tried to squeeze his brain out of as many ideas as he could. For what felt like an eternity but was only a few seconds, Moby thought long and hard about what to do to the point where he felt his brain was malfunctioning, not paying attention to anything that was going on in the outside world. When, suddenly, an evil, genius plan popped up in his head, making a devilish smile appear on his face. It something that involved the new freedoms and rules from the school break, and a new skill that Jaden gained from her evolution. Hey! Kane! Why are you ignoring me with that look in your eyes? Will you not change your mind and prove yourself to me? Damien screamed at the blank-faced Moby, waiting for an answer only to be ignored for the third time in a row. Ugh! Fine! Be like that! Damien screamed, giving up and walking away in embarrassment and anger. Fuck! What a pussy! Grow a backbone! Damien muttered to himself. Hey! Damien! Where do you think you're walking off to? Moby screamed at Damien with a visible smirk on his face, making the entire crowd stop talking shit to listen. Huh? What do you want now? Are you gonna mock me or something? Damien said, turning around. No. Not at all. I changed my mind. I accept your challenge. Moby announced with clear confidence, shocking the entire crowd as they were not able to believe their own ears, their jaws dropping to the ground in shock. PFFFFFF. What? Mason screamed, almost falling off his seat, spitting out the drink in his mouth. Ha ha ha. Moby Kane. I have truly misjudged you. You are a true honorable warrior through and through. Let us have a good fair match. Damien said with a smile on his face. So do we have ourselves a bet? Moby asked with an innocent smile. Yes. We have ourselves a bet. Damien replied, also with an innocent smile on his face, heh. Sucker. They both inwardly thought with a devilish smirk. Yes. It's actually happening. You sure have some balls kid. I commend you for not running away. Hey. Can we reopen bets? I want to add on to my original bet. This is gonna be good. Wow. I was not at all expecting that. Should we maybe propose a nerf or a restriction on Damien as to make the fight more fair? Joseph suggested to Mason as he too was still in a state of immense shock. No. I will not make any restrictions. They already agreed to the bet and Moby did not propose any. This will be a good lesson to him. A lesson in what happens when one gets too arrogant. I thought that he was smart and cool-headed after he effortlessly beat Leon but now I take that back. I am sorry sweetie but it seems like you have chosen the wrong boyfriend, people like him will only bring you trouble. Mason said to the extremely wide eyes and shocked Jaden behind him, who was completely not paying attention to his words as she was in a mind-link conversation with Moby. Moby! What the fuck are you thinking? You know that there is no way in hell that you win so why did you challenge him and change your mind so suddenly and quickly? Alex screamed at Moby using the mind link. Yeah. This is bad. Why are you acting so rashly? Now you will be banished from the house and be in heavy debt. You could have just walked away with all the money. So, why didn't you? Why do you want even more? Is there something on your mind? Jaden asked, still unable to process what just happened. Everyone calm down. I am sure my lord had a well-thought plan in mind when he did this. He would never go blindly into such a thing. Abby said with clear confidence, trying her best to calm Jaden and Alex. Yes. Abby is indeed correct. I have a plan to win. So hear me out. Jaden, this might be a little hard on you but trust me when I say that the result will be well worth it. Moby said, unable to contain his excitement. Asterisk 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 ha 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 ha. That's so evil, cruel, and fun. How the fuck do you always come up with this shit? Jaden said, laughing her ass off as her expression completely changed from her prior worried and serious self. Truly genius. As expected of the amazing mind of my lord and future king of all demons. Abby said with a devilish smile. Good. I never liked the Naya family, they were always a deceptive, greedy family filled with nothing but scum. They deserve what's coming to them. Alex commented. This will be easy, hard, and tough at the same time. But, in the end, it will be all worth it. Moby said with a distorted smile. Attention all spectators. A new match and bet has been officially declared between Moby Kane and Damian Naya. The rules will be the same as the last fight and it will be taking place in the same arena in the next 35 minutes so all spectators, please wait patiently in your seat. Now, will both fighters please follow Albert to choose your new weapons and armor. He will be waiting for you at the main exit of the arena. That will be all. Mason announced to the crowd, making them go absolutely wild in excitement. Moby walked through the almost completely destroyed arena that was being reconstructed on its own as he could not help but admire the power and utility of the mana crystals in the arena before he finally reached the exit of the arena, Albert patiently waiting for his arrival. I am extremely impressed by your victory over Leon but I will give you one word of advice. Back out now and save yourself the humiliation. It's for your own good. Albert said, looking at Moby with a serious expression, and for my own good. 
When he loses, the young miss will be furious and throw a tantrum. A and, knowing my luck, I would be one of the many casualties and end up losing the job that I worked so hard for. Albert inwardly continued his thought with little to no hope in his eyes. Don't worry sir. I know exactly what I am doing. Moby replied with a confident smile. I better hope so for your sake, he snarkily retorted. And for mine. He thought with a bad feeling in his stomach. Damien should be down here shortly. In the meantime, let this servant heal your wounds. We can't let you fight in an injured and drained state now, can we? Emily. Come here and heal his wounds, and share your mana with him as well. Albert ordered as a tall blue-haired girl wearing a maid outfit who was only a little shorter than Moby emerged from behind the exit door. Yes sir. She replied in a serious tone. Okay. Now stand still. My ability allows me to heal and share my mana at the same time. Emily said, going to heal Moby only for him to nervously and almost instinctively back off, making her extremely confused. Chapter 124. Calm down kid. Her ability may not be able to restore your demon energy but she won't be able to detect your lack of mana flow either. So stand still and stop acting suspicious. You can always regain your demon energy later. Avilia said, trying to calm him down, huh? Why are you trying to help me? You were never really the type to do that. Moby asked in confusion, well, I am purposely trying my best not to read your mind regarding your plan. I want you to surprise me and show me what you're made of. So, I'll be damned if you get stopped by such a stupid reason as this. Avilia replied, wow. Thanks a lot. That's so sweet of you. Moby responded with a smile only to be ignored by Avilia. Heh, sorry. I just get really nervous when I get healed. Moby said to Emily who was trying to heal him, rubbing the back of his head with an awkward chuckle. Um. Okay. Emily awkwardly said, quickly healing his wounds faster than he had seen anyone heal, before slowly walking away to heal Leon who was still in a pile of rubble behind him, his face completely unrecognizable and even more disgusting to look at than before. A few minutes later, Damien finally arrived, respectfully bowing to Albert before looking at Moby with a friendly smile. Took you long enough. Now, both of you follow me. Albert said, turning around, leading them to the armory to choose their standard equipment. Hey. Kane. I am really glad you took up my challenge. When I first challenged you I had no idea that you would actually accept it. I was just trying my best to shoot my shot since my father was in deep shit because of your bet. Yet you proved me wrong. But, sadly, you should be prepared to lose everything. Your life will be completely ruined. However, at least you won't be known as a coward. Damien said with an amused, loud laugh. Heh. We'll see about that. Don't grow too confident. Moby replied with a confident smirk, making Damien laugh even harder, why am I getting this weird feeling of deja vu? Albert thought, looking at the two kids talking behind him, after the group was halfway to the armory, Damien felt a weird tug on his leg that really startled him and almost made him trip over and fall. Who was that? Was it you? Don't fuck with me or I'll beat the shit out of you even harder when we fight. Damien bellowed, making Albert and Moby turn around and look at him in confusion. Calm down. I didn't do anything. Moby replied, raising an eyebrow before turning around and walking away. Kid, stop your ink and screaming and follow me or else I'll have to drag you by force. Albert said in a menacing tone before turning around and walking away as well. Don't fuck with me. I know it wa. Damien screamed before feeling a small tug on his leg one more, which startled him even more as now he knew that it wasn't Moby that did it, then, when he looked down, he saw a hand made out of shadows tugging on his leg, huh? What the fuck is that? Wait, there is only one family I know that has a shadow ability. Could it really be? Damien inwardly thought, trying his best not to alert the other two in front of him, then, suddenly, the hand let go of his leg, motioning him to follow its lead in an alluring manner before slowly disappearing past a corner. Hey! Mr. Albert! I am extremely sorry but I really need to go to the washroom. No way I can fight like this. Damien said to Albert, trying to look as convincing as he could. Asterisks I asterisk fine. But don't take too long. The armory is just up ahead of us in this same hallway. You can't miss it. We will wait for you there, Albert calmly replied. Thank you so much sir. I promise I won't take too long. Damien said with a respectful bow before bolting away past the next corner, the same place where he saw the hand. As soon as he turned the corner, he saw the same shadowy hand as before that motioned him to follow it once more before disappearing again, making Damien pursue it one more. The same scene continued playing over and over again, Damien following the shadowy hand through many hallways until he reached the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. There he saw exactly what he thought. He saw the girl of his dreams, the most beautiful girl in the world in his eyes that only seemed to get even prettier. And, not only was she beautiful, she was powerful and filthy rich as well. In fact, she was the only reason that he even wanted to attend the Griffith family party, and the only reason he decided to challenge Moby Kane in order to show her how much better than him he was. That same girl was standing right in front of him like she was a damsel in distress, waiting for her knight in shining armor to come and save her from her boredom. Oh. Damie. You finally came. Jaden said with a cheerful smile, waving at Damien who just stood there with a flushed red face, slowly walking towards her. Sue. Were you the one that called me here? Damien asked with a nervous look. He he. Of course, it was me silly. Who else would it be? Jaden said with a cute chuckle that sent butterflies down his stomach before he shook it off. Wait. Is this some sort of trap? Are you trying to pull something on me to stop me from beating your little boyfriend? Well, it's not going to work on me. I am not that stupid. Damien said, regaining his composure and walking away, making Jaden pout with disappointment. Phew. I actually almost fell for such a simple trick. I'll get her later, but now is not the time. Damien thought, walking away, trying to calm himself down, then, suddenly, as he was halfway across the hallway, a few meters away from where the sad-looking Jaden stood, he felt something super soft hit his back before he saw two arms wrap around his chest, catching him by complete surprise as it was something he did not at all expect. No. It's not what you think. 
I am not trying to trick you. I actually really, really like you. That Moby Kane guy is no more than a sex toy for me. I feel absolutely nothing towards him. You are the only person that I ever liked. You are everything I ever wanted in a man. Strong, handsome, funny, and with a good family background. I have been observing you from afar for many years and now I have finally grown the courage to finally talk to you and let you know my feelings. But you just walked away instead. Hey, are you trying to break my heart? Jaden screamed letting her heart out with clear passion in her voice, tightly hugging Damien like her life depended on it. Damien's face instantly became redder than a tomato, as he could not believe what was happening. Everything that he heard sounded too real and from the heart to be faked even though he still had a hard time, believing his own ears as his mini lad began to grow really excited as Jaden's huge breasts pressed against his back, and her soft arms held him tighter. He immediately disregarded all those thoughts of doubt that he had only a few seconds prior as they were replaced with two thoughts, wow, her breasts feel so good. And, D does she really like me back? Why am I so stupid? I almost ruined it all, J Jaden dear. Did you really mean all of that? Damien nervously managed to mutter. Yes. Of course. I really meant all that. I would never joke about something like this. Jaden replied, hugging him even tighter making him go completely rock hard. I, I like you too. I also had my eyes on you for a really long time. You are honestly the most beautiful and R.I. Dash, kind girl I've ever seen. Damien nervously confessed his love back. Ah really? That's great. I, I am so happy to hear that Damien dear. Since you accepted my love for you, I wanted to ask you for a favor. Jaden said with a smile, still hugging and not letting go of Damien. Go right ahead. I'll do anything for baby. Damien replied with no hesitation at all. I want you to beat up that little sex slave of mine in front of everyone in the arena. Once you beat him, you would no doubt gain the respect of my father and the respect of all the spectators. Then and there I will denounce Moby Kane as my boyfriend and announce you as my new one right after. Maybe even ask you to be my husband if things go really well. Jaden said in a cheerful tone. Ha 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 ha. Is that all? That's too easy. I'll gladly do that. I now understand that you truly never even liked that kid. Today is the best day ever. Damien laughed with joy, Jaden joining his laughter later just as enthusiastic or maybe even more, then, suddenly, Jaden stopped hugging him and tightly grabbed his hand, starting to run forcing him to follow. He he, follow me. I have a present to give you before your match. Some little motivation from me to you, Jaden said with a cute chuckle. As soon as Damien heard Jaden's words about a present and motivation, his mind started to go wild thinking about what it could be making him even more excited than before. As he followed Jaden's lead with no questions or hesitation, they ran through the empty hallways until they reached the universal washroom, Jaden dragging him inside with a smile on her face, making Damien really want his predictions and thoughts to be true. In here. She flirtatiously said, dragging him into one of the larger luxurious looking stalls, letting go of his hand. So. Honey. What kind of present did you have in mind? Damien said with a lustful smirk. He he. Don't act stupid silly. You know full well what the present is. Now, unbutton your pants and show me what kind of trooper is hiding underneath. I can clearly see that it's already gotten really excited. Jaden said with a lustful gaze in her eyes which made Damien go absolutely crazy. It was almost exactly like how he imagined it in his mind only somehow was even better. I thought you would never ask. Damien said with a smile, removing his belt and unbuttoning his pants, not even stopping to ask why Jaden didn't offer to do it for him, then, he pulled everything down in one fell swoop to reveal everything that laid underneath. Wow. T that's, um, nice. Jaden said, trying her best to act excited at what seemed like a big fat mushroom. Well. If you like it so much why don't you have a taste? I'll be the judge of how good your present is when you are finished. Damien said with a smile, pointing at his mushroom-shaped mini spear. Mmm. -hmm. Don't mind if I do. Jaden said with a cute chuckle, putting her hands out ready to grab his dick, wow, this can't be real. I am actually doing it with Jaden Griffith. This is the best day of my life. Damien thought, closing his eyes as he prepared himself to feel the time of his life as his dick was about to be sucked by a literal goddess. However, when he thought he was going to feel heaven from his dick, he felt absolute hell instead as an intense pain ravaged his entire body completely out of nowhere. He let out a scream of pain, as he immediately opened his eyes only to look at the stump of where his dick once was, gushing out liters of blood, spraying it everywhere. Then, his attention focused on Jaden Griffith who had two bloody daggers in her hand, a smile that looked like it was ripped out of the depths of hell on her face. Crouching down on the ground laughing like a demon, then, before Damien got the chance to react and take in everything that happened, he felt an intense pain in his guts as both of Jaden's daggers stabbed right into him, making him cough up a mouthful of blood on Jaden's face before falling down on the ground as he felt like he was losing consciousness. Why why did you do this? I thought you really liked me. Damien said tears in his eyes, still not believing everything that just happened as he felt his life slowly slip away. Huh? You still don't get it. Are you retarded? I tricked you. Why the hell would I like your stupid ugliest and pathetic shrimp dick? Moby is infinitely better than you, comparing you to him is like the worst of insults. Taking someone by complete surprise is such an easy way to kill. Even if they are stronger than you they can't fight back if they never see it coming. You should have seen the look on your face when you thought that I was actually gonna suck your disgusting cock only for it to be chopped off. Jaden said with a devilish laugh. Why you bitch? I bet you're doing this so you can help your boyfriend win the bet. But, I can't tell if you're stupid or retarded but you seem like both to me. If I am not there to fight there will be no bet. Also. Don't think you can get away with this. I know that most of our watch features are disabled because of the break so the death alarm wouldn't work and that there are no cameras in the washroom but there are definitely cameras on the outside. They will see you and me walking with only you coming out. Even if you made sure that there was no one in the area around us and you shove my body in a storage ring to hide it, you're busted. This will be the end of the Griffith family. Not even your father could get out of such a scandal. His own daughter committing murder on a guest in his house. So, laugh while you still can you filthy whore. Damien screamed with the last ounce of strength he got left. Ha ha ha. 
Are you sure about that? Jaden said with a devilish smile, bending, turning, and transforming, doing something so unpredictably scary that it made Damien die early from absolute shock and despair. Chapter 125. Thirty minutes later, Arena E2, hey, Jaden, what took you so long? The match is about to start. Alex said to Jaden who just entered the stands above and took her seat. Hee hee, sorry, that bathroom break took a little longer than I expected, Jaden replied back with a nervous chuckle, looking at the arena below her where Moby and Damien stood, ready to fight. I am still really worried about the fight. I really hope Moby will be okay. Jaden added, turning more serious. I agree. I really hope he had a plan in mind or knew what he was getting himself into. Fighting someone so much stronger than him is so reckless. I have no idea how he plans to win but I will be cheering for him all the way. Abby said with clear worry in her voice. Yes, I agree. Jaden said, putting her hand on her heart, looking down at Moby who was stretching before his fight, HMPH. Good. She made it back in time for the fight. Now she will see her boyfriend lose and find out that he is a bad influence on her. What kind of idiot accepts a challenge from someone who has almost 8,000 power levels higher than them? He will have to learn his lesson the hard way. Mason thought, just about ready to declare the start of the match. Damien and Moby stood face to face, staring daggers at each other with a fearless smirk that made Damien laugh at how confident Moby looked. Damien wore a standard set of light armor that lacked a weapon as he did not need one for the type of ability he was using. Moby on the other hand wore the exact same set of armor that he wore last time. However, instead of a shield he now had his trusty katana back, his preferred weapon of choice. Listen here all you people. I will win and give you your money back. This arrogant prick doesn't stand a chance. Damien announced to the crowd, putting his hands up in the air like he was already declaring victory, making them cheer for him enthusiastically. Put on a good show. Don't make it too boring. Teach him a lesson. I want my money back. I bet extra money on you. You better win. Ha ha ha. Good luck new kid. You're really gonna need it. You are truly my savior son. Go beat his ass and boost the honor of the family. Damien's dad screamed from the crowd, making his son look back at him with a confident yet almost ominous smile. Moby did not care for all the cheers that praised Damien while insulting him as he already knew that the outcome of the match had already been decided before it even started, it was only a matter of time. So, Moby just confidently stood in his place with a certain yet slightly heavy smile on his face, waiting for the match to start. Attention everyone. The match is about to start. Since I had already explained the rules of the fight during the prior match so I will not be repeating myself. The unexpected match between Moby Kane and Damien Nia will be taking place any second now so be prepared. Now, if both fighters are ready, I will count you in. Mason announced, looking at Moby and Damien who just simply nodded back. So, without further ado. I will count you in. Mason said, making the crowd lean forward in their seat in anticipation. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, match start. Mason screamed, announcing the start of the match before taking a seat back in his chair. As soon as the start of the match was announced, Damien did not hesitate to reveal his ability and take the offensive. Out of his back grew six sharp spider-like legs made out of red energy as he began to move them around like they were alive, and like they were an extension of his own body, his ability was called, Insectus. It allowed the user to manipulate many sharp insect-like limbs to attack and maneuver around as the limbs were more like an extension of, his own body. The number of maximum limbs depended completely on the ability level. And, since Damien's ability was only at a level 7, he was only able to use and manipulate six limbs which was still very strong. At his level, the insect-like mana limbs only had a maximum range of around 2.5 meters. However, they were very strong, fast and durable which more than made up for it. Damien dashed straight at Moby, boosting himself with his limbs with incredible speed, attacking him with all six limbs forcing Moby to immediately activate his, eyes of sin, in order to dodge. That move again. It was very impressive the first time I saw it but, it won't be as effective on me. Damien said with a smile, dashing towards Moby who had a serious look on his face. Damien who looked like he was having too much fun unleashed a barrage of attacks at Moby who was forced to block them with his sword or dodge. However, despite his efforts, a few attacks still hit him as Damien was simply too fast for him to react to, even with his eyes of sin, making him slightly bloodied and battered. The energy drain of his eyes of sin was immense and if he wanted to use any other skill it would lower its duration. However, to win, he had to use everything in his arsenal and try his best to end it quickly. As a fatal looking attack swooped down towards Moby's chest, it was suddenly blocked by some mysterious, almost mystical looking purple energy, making Damien almost instinctively back away, then, out of Moby's back emerged six insect-like limbs that were made out of the exact same energy that he used to block Damien's attack, which made the crowd gasp in astonishment. Is that his true ability? Does he have the same one as Damien? Was he holding back in his fight with Leon? What kind of ability is that? I think it might be slightly different. That purple mystical energy is that a newly discovered ability. First, it was the eyes now this as well. Who the hell is this kid? This kid keeps impressing me more and more, I might have to ask him more about that unique ability of his. But, sadly, such a technique changes nothing. The power level difference is still too much for him to win, Mason inwardly thought. I in reality, what Moby did was not an ability at all. Moby's control over his pure demon energy had grown to such an extent that he was now able to almost perfectly mimic Damien's, Insectus, ability. With it, he planned to counter Damien's tentacles in order to go in for a closer range approach as Damien was completely weaponless. Ha ha ha. Do you think mimicking my ability would do you any good? Don't make me laugh. Damien screamed, rushing towards Moby, thrusting his insect limbs towards him only to be blocked by Moby's pure demon energy that began to form cracks. This gave Moby a massive opportunity to strike. He used the momentary clash to demon flash into an extremely close range of Damien, making him unable to bring his limbs back in time to block as they were tangled up in Moby's pure demon energy. Finally got you. Now get fucked you arrogant bitch. Moby screamed, infusing his sword with pure demon energy, slashing straight at Damien's chest with all of his strength, clenching his teeth with a smile on his face, making the entire crowd go wide-eyed as what happened was something they did not at all expect. Ha ha. 
I don't think so. Damien screamed with a devilish laugh as Moby felt his attack being suddenly and abruptly stopped by two daggers that Damien pulled, out when Moby was not paying attention, making Moby's face turn into complete anger and disappointment. Damien then lifted and pushed up with his two daggers, startling Moby and putting him off balance, revealing his chest that he proceeded to slash with both of his daggers, making deep wounds before kicking Moby away with incredible force towards the arena walls, causing him to grunt in pain and cough up a mouthful of blood. The sudden and abrupt turnaround of the situation made the crowd laugh and cheer with amusement while Jaden, Alex, and Abby gasped and had extremely worried faces in the stands above. So, after talking so big that's all you've got. You disappoint me. This is even easier than I anticipated. I almost feel bad. Ha ha ha. This is going to so much fun. Damien said with an amused laugh, looking straight at the dust and pile of rubble that showed Moby's piercing purple glowing eyes, the dust hiding the wide devilish smile on his face. Chapter 126. Moby's demon energy was already drained halfway so, he had no time to waste to catch his breath. Eyes of Sin was a very draining skill and he needed to end the fight before his demon energy ran out. Despite his injuries, Moby dashed out of the dust cloud to go on the offensive, using his demon energy claws to combat Damien's ability. Heh heh, come on. That's it. That's the face of anger and desperation I was looking for. Damien screamed with an amused laugh, blocking all the incoming attacks from Moby's claws before countering with an attack of his own that Moby barely managed to dodge before, another energy limb came up and punched him in the stomach forcing him to grunt in pain, but not give up his attacks as Damien chuckled maliciously at him, Moby and Damien continued clashing over and over again, Moby always on the losing side, taking damage little by little each time. A slash on the knee, a wound on the shoulder, a scar on the cheek, and many other minor wounds littered his body that eventually built up into an immense pain, making him heavily pant and grunt in frustration as he was getting absolutely nowhere with his attacks, falling on one knee due to all the accumulated injuries. It was almost like Damien was just playing around and toying with Moby, not even bothering to use his full strength as he seemed to be having too much fun playing around with him. Like he was a toy. Ha ha ha. Yes, Damien. You put on a nice show. Now end it. You showed him who's boss. Finish him off. Yes. That's my son. That's the way to do it. Ah ha ha ha, Damien's dad cheered for him enthusiastically from the stands. You wanted me to put on a show. I gave you a show. And I will now end it. This little arrogant weakling will finally be put in his place and be ruined for life. Domain screamed, addressing the crowd, punching the air above him declaring his victory before focusing his attention on the clearly tired and injured Moby. Moby. I know that you can do it. Never give up. Jaden screamed at him from the stand above, making Moby look up at her with his glowing purple eyes only to see a clear worried expression and tears in her eyes, along with Alex and Abby who were sitting beside her just as worried, it's okay my daughter, it's for your own good, this is the last time that you will be seeing him. You don't need a troublemaker like him in your life my dear. He will only drag you into unwanted trouble due to his arrogance. Mason thought, looking at Jaden with a heavy heart, when Moby saw the faces of his distressed friends, he immediately regained his lost vigor, tightly gripping his sword, slowly limping towards Damien with an angry look on his face. Ha ha ha. What do you think you're going to do to me in that sorry state of yours? That's right. Nothing. It's over. Now taste defeat you arrogant prick. Know your place. Damien said, thrusting his sharp spider limbs towards the heavily injured and panting Moby, however, when the attack was about to hit him, he immediately disappeared from his place which greatly startled Damien, as he did not expect such a thing due to Moby's heavily injured state, when he looked down in front of him, he saw something he did not expect at all, before he knew it, Moby had already been standing in front of him, his sword glowing with an astounding amount of mystical purple aura. Slashing towards his chest with immense force and a look of tremendous resolve on his face. Damien's calm and collected facial expression immediately shifted into something much fiercer and uglier than before, as he tried his best to block Moby's attack. However, he was already too late as Moby caught him completely off guard, which didn't give him enough time to react. This is what you get by toying with me and taking me lightly. Which arrogant prick will be put in his place now? Moby screamed loud enough for every in the arena to hear as his demon energy enhanced sword pierced through all of Damien's armor and flesh, creating a deep, almost fatal slash mark across his chest, completely knocking him out. What the fuck just happened? How the fuck did he lose? Where the thoughts of everyone in the crowd, Mason and Joseph included. This is bullshit. What the hell? This is completely rigged. How the fuck did he lose? Brandon. You sly little bitch. You told your son to lose on purpose didn't you? Yeah. Are you trying to scam us? Give us our money back. Ha ha ha. Losers. You should have bet on the underdog. I never actually thought he was going to win but I am so glad I bet on him anyway. Ha ha. I am going to be even richer. Wa 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 what? Please calm down. This wasn't supposed to happen. I had no intentions of making him lose or rig the fight. Use a lie detector on me I don't care. I swear I am telling the truth. Brandon Nyer nervously said, trying to appease the angry mob as even he still could not believe what was happening. What did I just see, did that stupid little prick really just lose by holding back and toying with his enemy? How lucky is this Moby guy? What the hell? Mason inwardly thought, his mind malfunctioning from what he just witnessed. He won. Ha ha ha. I knew he could do it. Jaden celebrated, jumping up and down in excitement with Abby while Alex was still sat in his chair with a smile on his face, trying his best not to burst out in laughter. Hey. Dad. Are you not going to announce the winner of the fight? Jaden asked Mason who had a completely dumbfounded look on his face, making him snap out of his thoughts and back into reality. Oh yeah, I still need to do that don't I, the match is over. Moby Kane has defeated Damian Nia with a powerful and unexpected deep slash to the chest that caught him by surprise. Mason announced to the crowd, making them go even crazier than before, however, unlike last time, no one dared to object or voice their opinion towards Mason Griffith, as they did not want a repeat of what happened to them the last time they did so. However, they still could not hide the discontent and angry looks on their faces. 
Asterisk I asterisk I know you all have many thoughts running through your mind at this moment. First things first. No, Moby Kane did not cheat or use any underhanded tactic, I made sure of it myself, he won fair and square. Second, Damien only lost because he toyed too much with his enemy and let his guard down. Take this as a lesson in why not to be arrogant. I will make sure that all bets are 100% upheld. I hate when people make claims and talk big, making bets only to not follow through on their promises. This was indeed a very intense and entertaining fight. If you have any concerns regarding anything, please don't be shy and ask away. Mason announced to the crowd with a smile on his face, making them go absolutely silent, holding in all their bottled up emotions. Son. What the fuck are you doing? You had him where you wanted him, but you threw it all away. You fucking disgrace. You ruined everything. Brandon screamed like a lunatic at his clearly unconscious son, tears falling down his face, Moby stood on the battlefield, completely battered and heavily panting. He used almost every last drop of his demon energy to do his final attack. Of course, he pretended to be unable to fight in front of his opponent in order to give him a false impression, only for him to speed up last second and go in for a finishing move when his opponent least expected it, however, in this case, his opponent fully expected it. Even though Moby just won and put his hands up in victory with a smile on his face, he could not help but inwardly feel extremely sad as he stared at Damien's unconscious body on the ground. However, for his plan to work it had to be done, no matter how much it pained his heart to do what he did. It was the only path to victory, system alert. Squinting eyes face, quest complete. Stop being a pussy, asterisk details, stop being a pussy and start thinking and acting like a true demon lord. Win the bet against Damien Nia and become even richer, conditions to complete, accept and win the bet with Damien Nia time limit, 5 hours rewards, plus 300 stat points to the user, plus 150 stat points to the user servant skill, air steps, plus 1 level skill, drain, plus 1 level asterisk. Chapter 127. The match was finally over and it was a result that absolutely no one expected or even dreamed would happen. Healers were immediately sent down to tend the wounds of both of the injured fighters, one of whom was celebrating while the other laid on the ground completely unconscious. Damien was quickly healed and soon regained consciousness, making him look around with extreme confusion. Then, when he was told about the results of the match by the healers, it was like he could not believe his ears as he looked around him in shock and disbelief, and at all the spectators that were cursing and threatening his name. When he looked around, even more, he noticed the already healed Moby celebrating his victory which made his anger boil even more immensely. What the fuck did you do? You must have cheated. I'll fucking kill you. I refuse to accept that I lost. Damien roared, rushing to attack Moby in a state of complete rage, only to be stopped and held back by his own father who had walked down to the arena. What the hell are you even doing, s son? Are you trying to disgrace me and the family more than you already had? Brandon yelled, slapping Damien's face really hard making him lose a few teeth, calming him down slightly, making Moby shudder at the sight, but, he held himself back as to not intervene. Brandon then turned over to look at Moby with an intense murderous gaze, that he just brushed off before dragging his son out of the arena by force in order to save face. As soon as he dragged Damien out, of the arena, and out of sight of everyone, he was ready to teach him a proper lesson, lifting his hands to hit his still angry yet frustrated son before he felt a small touch on his shoulder. What the hell do you dash, Brandon said, biting his tongue when he noticed who he was talking to. Master Griffith has ordered me to escort you to his chambers in order for you to uphold your promised bet. Now follow me. Albert said in a calm voice, turning around, walking in front of them. Why yes. Of course sir. Brandon said with an awkward smile, following quietly behind Albert, him and his still angered and annoyed son. Brandon tried his best to suppress his nervousness anger, and distress as he slowly and patiently walked down the long and luxurious hallways of the mansion behind Albert until they reached a large, blue and gold door. In here, Lord Griffith is expecting you. Albert said, opening the door before walking away, making Brandon gulp a large amount of saliva. However, when he came into the room he noticed it was not Mason Griffith who was waiting for him. It was someone just as bad or even worse, someone, he did not expect at all. On the large, luxurious chair in the middle of the room sat a tall, old yet fit man with a well-maintained simple hairstyle hair and beard, wearing a black suit, a menacing look on his face with a lit cigarette in his right hand. It was none other than Ryan Warrand, one of the most feared hitmen in the entire country. Directly in front of him laid the figures of two fat men, kneelings and shivering which he recognized as Spencer White and his son Leon upon closer inspection. L. Lord Warrand. I was told I was meeting with Lord Griffith instead, I am here as requested, Brandon said in a scared, nervous voice, kneeling down on the ground, bowing down, however, unlike his father, Damien just stared at Ryan's annoyed, menacing and imposing demeanor and looks with absolute shock, so much so that he forgot that he needed to bow down. What the hell are you doing? Kneel. Brandon whispered to Damien in panic, pulling him down on his knees with one tug. Well, Mr. Nyer and Mr. White. I am sure that you are well aware of how bets work in the Griffith household. They will all be upheld. I am sure you were not expecting to see me. Lucky for you Lord Griffith is too busy celebrating with his daughter to bother with scum like you so that's what I am here for, Ryan casually said, taking a puff of his cigarette before blowing it back in the air. Why yes of course sir. Ah right away. Spencer said in a clearly scarred voice, pulling out a check and writing down the exact amount of money he owed before handing it straight to Ryan who inspected the check. Seems real enough. You can now get the hell out of this mansion. As per the bet, you are now completely banned from ever setting foot into this mansion or associating yourself with the Griffith family ever again. Now scram. Ryan ordered in a cold voice, pointing at the door. Ah right away sir. Spencer said, kneeling once more before awkwardly walking out the door only to be escorted away by two servants. Now. Mr. Nia, it's your turn to pay up. And, you may not be banished from the mansion like that other guy. But, I would recommend you to leave as soon as you can. A lot of people here really hate your guts and want you dead. Ryan said with a smile, making Brandon sweat profusely, gulping down a mouthful of saliva. Brandon walked out of the room extremely relieved that nothing too bad happened. He had heard stories of how terrifying the great hitman Ryan Walden and B. So, in his opinion, he got out of it relatively okay. 
However, he still ended up paying over $50 million over to Moby and all the people that had bet for him, all out of his own pockets which made him extremely furious once again as it was almost all of his remaining money. He held back the urge to beat the shit out of his own son and disown him on the spot, but he decided against it as to not ruin the reputation and image of his family more than it already did, as he and his still shocked looking son were both being escorted out of the mansion by two servants. Thank you for escorting us all the way to our car, Brandon said with an awkward smile, making the servants look at each other weird before turning around and bowing, before walking back towards the mansion doors. Brandon kept on smiling towards the servants who were walking away until he could no longer see them, making sure they didn't hear a thing. Now. Damien, my son. Get in the damn car. Brandon mumbled in a low yet angry voice. Father. It was just one unlucky mistake. I'll surely key dash, Damien said before being interrupted by his father's almost demon-like scream. Small mistake. That small mistake just ruined my fucking life. There are no retakes. It's too late for that now. And don't you ever call me father again. From today on you are no longer mine. Now don't make me repeat myself. Get in the damn car before I shove you in the trunk and force you in. Brandon screamed like a complete lunatic, his face turning red, bullets of high speed spit coming out of his mouth like a machine gun. Chapter 128. Why yes FA, I mean sir. Damien nervously said, opening and entering the door to the back seats of the car as Brandon went in the driver's seat and began driving towards his house. When we get back home, I'll teach you a lesson you will never forget before I throw you out on the streets where you belong. I held back the urge to beat the shit out of you at the Griffith Mansion as there were probably cameras outside, and if they see me hitting you like that it would embarrass and make me look even more stupid in front of everyone. Just you wait until you see what will happen to you when we get back home. Brandon said with a completely crazy laugh, almost like he had already lost his mind, making Damien sweat profusely before a face of pure horror appeared on his face, not even saying a word as he knew it would only make it worse. After an extremely quiet and ominous 30-minute car ride that felt more like forever, they finally reached the small Naya family mansion. Get the fuck out of my car and go wait for me in your room. I need to go get some shit ready before I beat the fuck out of you. So, count the last seconds of your pathetic existence while you still can. Oh, also, don't you dare tell any of this to your mother. If you do I will not only kill you but also her as well. Brandon said like a complete psychopath as soon as they arrived, making Damien get out of the car before punching him in the side so hard that it broke his side ribs, forcing him to cough up blood and stumble, letting out a cry of pain as he struggled to move inside the small mansion. Oh honey. You're back already. I thought the party was going to last a little longer. I hope you and my little cutie had fun. Me and the chefs cooked some pasta in anticipation of your return, but it's still not ready yet. I am not sure if you're still hungry as I think you ate a lot during the party so I can save it for later. Brandon's milf-like wife said from the kitchen when she noticed that her husband had come back home. Not now honey. I have many things to do first. Save it for dinner okay? Brandon said with an ominous voice and an extremely disturbing look on his face that his wife didn't pay attention to. Oh no. Sweetie. Are you okay? Should I call the healer over? Damien's mother said, looking at Damien who was limping past the entrance of the kitchen, making Brandon look back at him with a murderous gaze. Ha ha ha. What are you talking about mother? I am completely fine. I just got a few scratches from a practice match I did at the Griffith family mansion. Damien said with a genuine sounding laugh and a bright smile on his face, making his father's murderous gaze go away as he went to the basement of the house. Wow. It sounds like you really had a lot of fun. If you change your mind about the healer all you need to do is ask. His mother said with a warm smile, making him nod back and casually head straight to his room upstairs, trying to look as normal as possible to not further alarm his mom, trying his best to ignore and handle the pain coming from his side. When he entered his fairly large room, he slammed the door behind him and took a deep breath before inspecting the room for any possible cameras or things of the such, finding absolutely nothing. However, during his search, he found a few pictures of Jaden Griffith that made him inwardly cringe, resisting the urge to crumple them up and throw them in the trash, phew. Finally, I can take a breather. The coast is all clear. That strike to the side he did hurt like a bitch. And I am sure that he held back a lot in his punch. I never expected him to get so crazy and lose his mind as much as he did. He's completely lost it. He's far beyond saving at this point. It's absolutely great. He deserves it. I can't wait to see tomorrow's news. Ha ha ha. Jaden thought, transforming into one of her healer maids to heal the immense pain in her side. Acting for so long sure is tiresome and straining. But, at least it all worked out fine. Fine for the most part. Jaden thought, thinking back to when she saw her butler earlier in the day when Brandon had to pay off the bet and her fight with Moby. I don't have time to waste. I need to do this quick. Jaden thought, pulling out Damien's dead body from her inventory that she had completely healed prior. Then, she proceeded to punch his dead body in the side with a tremendous amount of force, exactly where Brandon punched her in the side to make it seem as real as she could. She then transformed back into Damien, before pulling out a standard dagger from her inventory to put his fingerprints on it before slitting the throat of Damien's dead body, in front of her, letting out a loud grunt and scream using Damien's voice making echo throughout the entire house before transforming into a whispered. Flying away. As soon as the scream was heard around the house, Damien's mother immediately got a bad feeling in her stomach, dropping the pot of hot pasta that she was holding all over the ground before rushing up the stairs as fast as she could. Damien dear. Are you okay? I came as soon as I hear dash, a h h h h h h h h h h Damien's mother said, entering the room with a completely worried look that quickly turned into absolute horror as she screamed aloud, piercing shriek that echoed throughout the entire house and area around, then, out of nowhere, from behind her, the figure of a tall, black-haired man with an amused look on his face entered the room, looking like a complete maniac, ha 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 ha. What a lucky bastard. I didn't expect him to actually have the balls to kill himself. He deserved so much worse. I was almost ready to show him my surprise and he went ahead and done that. What a shame. Brandon said from behind his crying wife like a deranged lunatic, making her look at his demon-like smiling face with somehow, even more fear and horror than she had before, making her let out another terror-filled scream at the top of her lungs, damn. 
That's a really loud scream. It's safe to assume that they found the body. My job here is done. The wisp-like Jaden thought in a somewhat cheerful and relieved mood, flying in the air back towards her mansion to meet up with Moby and the rest of her friends, Moby. It's done. But promise me you will not pull anything like this anytime soon. Even if we were only pretend fighting, I felt like I literally lost a part of my soul every time I insulted you or hit you. Jaden reported to Moby with a serious voice, good job dear. You did great. Even much earlier than we needed. Your other self should expire in around 22 hours so you still had plenty of time. And, your acting skills were absolutely flawless. And yes. I also felt the same way every time I was forced to hit or insult you, even if you were in the skin of that arrogant prick. However, it was the only way that I could think of to win that bet. I promise that I'll try not to do this again and save it only when we really have to. But, on the plus side, we are now filthy rich without needing to beg your father for a shit ton of money which he would have probably not agreed to. I should now definitely be able to buy a good ability now. Moby replied with a smile, hee hee, yes, that is very true. I'll help you search for some good ones when we get back home after the party. Jaden said with a cute chuckle, sounds like a plan. Moby replied with a laugh, looking forward to future events. Chapter 129 At the time, Moby thought long and hard about how he was supposed to complete the quest that Avilia gave him. To him, at first, it seemed impossible, but after thinking long and hard he noticed many things that he could use to his advantage in order to complete the quest. The first was what the quest itself was asking from him. It did not ask him to win the fight but to instead win the bet which was much more doable in his eyes and gave him hope that it could be completed. After that, Moby thought long and hard thinking of many different factors in order to make sure that there was the lowest chance of failure. The major factor was the ability to kill without the schools being notified due to the break. Many students went home to visit family during the break or sometimes went to certain locations in order to train. Many of those locations were top secret to the families, something that they did not want the military to know about. The watch's tracking feature is only said to work after curfew or when a student died, but the families don't want the military to know the locations of their secret places, even if their son were to die which was why the military was pressured into completely disabling the tracking feature on the watch for the entire week of the break, even upon a student's death. That main idea was the basis of Moby's plan. And, with the introduction of Jaden's new skill that she discovered from her new evolution during the break, Moby's plan was starting to form and come together. Her skill was that she was able to create a clone of herself that was only 10% of her strength, and the skill could only last for 24 hours. Moby's plan went as follows, first, he needed Jaden to seduce Damien, luring him somewhere in the house that had no cameras before killing and healing his dead body, storing it in her inventory where it would not age. Abby would use her wisps to scout out the area around, keeping towards the ceiling in order to avoid any cameras, to make sure that no one was coming. So, in the case of such an occurrence, she would go and distract them and notify Jaden to finish faster which luckily did not happen. Jaden would then transform her original body into Damien, and, make a clone of herself. After that, she would clean up all the blood from the bathroom using her inventory, making sure not to miss a single drop before walking out of the washroom talking to herself with Damien extremely mad like he got a prank pulled on him as to not look suspicious on the cameras. As for the fight, it had already been completely planned out from before. However, Moby and Jaden still communicated with each other using MindLink the entire way, the fight was the hardest part of the plan. They needed to make it as believable as possible. Also, Jaden was not fully adept at using Damien's ability, and had a lower power level than him which she masked on her watch using her doppelganger powers. So, Moby decided to kill two birds with one stone. If the entire fight looked like Damien was toying with Moby, nobody would ask or be suspicious about why Damien wasn't going all out which was a good way to mask Jaden not having full power, and control over her new ability. Also, it resolved the problem of how to make the fight believable that he won against someone that had a power level, over 1.5 times higher than him as it is very plausible that Damien grew too arrogant and took him lightly, allowing him to take him out when his guard was down and when he least expected. I in the end, everything worked out fine and nobody thought anything suspicious of the fight. However, the truly hard part was that Moby and Jaden were forced to hit each other with the intent to inflict pain in order to make the fight as authentic as possible which was very tough on their souls. However, in the end, they decided to do it anyway. The final part of the plan was seemingly the easiest, but proved to be more dangerous than anticipated as Moby did not expect Damien's father, Brandon, to go as crazy as he did, to the point of wanting to kill or torture his own son. The plan was when Jaden got home, she would fake a suicide using Damien's body before running away, leaving zero evidence or leads of her involvement. To her fortune, she was lucky enough to receive just enough time to complete the plan before Brandon showed up in the room to give her a beating, and possibly even kill her. Now, Jaden had already flown back to the Griffith family mansion, making her clone go to the bathroom where she would transform out of her wisp form, dispelling her clone before going back to the party to meet up with her friends. When she entered the wide, luxurious ballroom where all the guests were, she noticed that Moby was being surrounded by a horde of rich nobles, something that her clone had communicated to her from before so, it was something that she fully expected to see. Mr. Kane. That was an exceptional performance. I completely misjudged you, you are indeed a man of absolute honor. Thank you so much for giving 10 million dollars back to us, you did not have to do that but that was very generous of you. You are a very kind soul indeed. Not like all those other greedy gremlins of your generation, I second that opinion. Your ability was out of this world. It was not like anything I have ever seen before. If you allow me to store it in an ability crystal, I'll be willing to pay you a few billion dollars. Don't listen to him. Whatever he wanted to pay you I'll do double. The crowd kept bombarding Moby with many questions and praises, something Moby did not at all expect. He expected to be scorned and make enemies out of the many rich and noble families for making them lose a lot of their money. That was the reason why he decided to give 10 million dollars of his winnings back to guests that lost the bet as a gesture of goodwill. He now slightly regrets his decision but he did not want to take any chances. He absolutely did not want to make enemies out of so many rich noble families. Especially in his current state, even with the protection of the Griffith family, however, it seemed like the nobles immediately jumped at the chance of monopolizing on a new, potentially overpowered ability that they had witnessed twice during both of his matches. Moby guessed that most of them had probably planned to do the same thing even if he had lost the bet. 
If anything, they would have much preferred it if he had lost which would allow them to offer him the deal while he was down, poor, and depressed which would have increased their chances of success exponentially. No, sorry guys, I do not plan to sell anyone my ability no matter what the offered price is. I plan to make this ability my signature, something exclusive to me and my future family, Moby said, rubbing the back of his head trying to calm down the crowd in front of him. Abby and Alex were both on the balcony discussing various things including how relieved they were that the plan worked out well, with Joseph, Alex's father, taking a quick peek at them every now, and then with a proud smile on his face to make sure that all was going well for his son.as for Jaden and Alex's mothers, they were having a seemingly simple conversation in the corner of the ballroom on a two-person table. The other guests were all having casual conversations with each other, taking up a large portion of the gigantic ballroom, Jaden walked through the crowded room, trying her best to reach Moby, completely ignoring or rejecting all the people that tried their best shot at hitting on her even though they knew full well that she had a boyfriend, Jaden my little honey bun, you're back. Mason said, greeting Jaden as soon as he noticed that she had returned from her washroom break. Hi dad. Did I miss anything important while I was out? Jaden asked Mason with a smile. No, you miss nothing important. However, I have a very important thing to discuss with you about. In private. I always try my best to be honest with you and I do not plan to stop doing so anytime soon. Mason said in a serious tone, looking into Jaden's slightly confused eyes. Sure dad, I know that you always want the best for me. Talk to me about anything, Jaden responded with a smile, making him nod back to her before leading her to one of the empty balconies. So. I have been thinking about this new boyfriend of yours. I really tried my best to like him but I just can't seem to do it. He is far too arrogant and reckless. At first, I thought that he was not that bad. I liked his fight against Leon as he outsmarted him and bested him with his powers while at the same time getting a lot of money in the process, I respect that. To be honest, if I were in his place, I would have done the same. However, his fight with Damien was completely reckless and made his arrogance come to the spotlight. It was such a stupid move to do. However, he still won due to sheer luck because his opponent made the grave mistake of greatly underestimating him, allowing him to take him out while his guard was down. The fight could have ended very differently if that were not the case. This leads me to believe that he will be a bad influence on you and only drag you into unneeded trouble due to such arrogance and recklessness, even if he does truly love you. Mason said in a very serious tone, looking straight into Jaden's eyes, with a heavy look. Jaden listened to her father's entire monologue with a blank expression on her face before letting out a casual chuckle. There are no accidents, it was not luck at all. I know Moby better than anyone else and I can assure you he had a plan. He never goes into anything completely blind. That's just the type of man he is, and part of what I really like about him. Jaden responded with a bright smile, looking up at the calm, yellow, slightly cloudy sky. I, I am going to take your word and trust you on this. Even if I still find it hard to believe, I will trust your judgment. I was just really worried about you as your father, that is all. I might just be going a little too hard on him. Maybe he did have a plan and I just did not pick up on it. He might not be such a bad influence after all. For the entire day so far, you have not been acting normal at all. Normally you would have voiced hundreds of complaints and had many servants fired for even looking at you the wrong way. In my opinion, the change is surely for the best. Mason said with a cheerful chuckle, making Jaden join him as well. I wonder, was he the one that caused that change in you? The dates add up. It can't be a coincidence right? Mason said, looking at the expansive garden under him. As I said before, there are no accidents. Jaden said with a laugh, making her father laugh as well. Anyways, you should enjoy the party while it's still going on. It was supposed to be a party to celebrate your great achievements after all. The dance part will start very soon. Why don't you go back in and dance with your boyfriend before the party ends? It would definitely be a fun romantic experience. Also, I'll be sure to talk to him before the party ends. Don't worry. I won't threaten him or anything. I just want to better know what kind of person he is. Mason said, looking at Jaden with a smile. Thanks a lot dad. You're the best. I love you. Well, I'll go do that now. Thank you so much for trusting and having faith in my words. Jaden said with a smile before running out of the balcony to go find Moby. I know that I spoiled her way too much which made her think she owns the entire world. I just couldn't get myself to punish her at all. But, I am glad that my little girl is not like that anymore, she sure has grown up quite a bit in such a short amount of time. I am so happy to see that, Moby Kane, was it really you that inspired such a change in my sweet little Jaden? Mason thought with a calm smile, staring at the clam sky from the balcony. Chapter 130. The rest of the party went by without a hitch as the many couples danced the evening away. Jaden managed to drag Moby out of the crowd surrounding him as they began to dance for close to an hour before taking a break. Jaden was an expert dancer who had memorized many dances while Moby had near zero experience at all. So, Jaden tried her best to help Moby get used to dancing as she guided him through all the steps in a way that would not embarrass him in front of everyone. They definitely noticed the jealous and expectant eyes directed at them, but they completely ignored them as they only focused on each other instead as it was supposed to be something romantic. Alex and Abby who were on the balcony disregarded the dance and decided to continue their conversation, ignoring all the people that tried to ask them for a dance. Especially Alex who people 100% knew as a very important person. While they were still in the middle of their conversation, Alex was called over by Joseph who asked him if he was interested in Abby, telling him to make his move before it was too late which made him promptly ask his father to leave him alone before walking away from him, and back to the balcony, making Joseph chuckle in the process. As the dance and party ended, and the families were preparing to once again go back home, Moby was Surrounded by the same crowd asking him to sell him his ability which made him decline all of their offers once again, no matter how much they offered. He even received many compliments and thanks from the very few people that bet on him to win, as he made them a decent chunk of money due to his seemingly 0% chance of winning and their large gamble. Some were even willing to sponsor him and give him financial support if he agreed to sign a contract with them which he also declined even though it was a very tempting offer. In the end, he knew that most if not all the rich nobles just wanted to get their hands on his ability for their own personal gain. 
and, to maybe suck up to the new potential husband of Jaden Griffith and possibly even the next head of the entire Griffith family. Hey. Moby. My dad just said that we could stay here for a bit longer in order to spend more quality time together without the hassle of all the guests. He also wanted me to tell you that he will be waiting for you in Arena 2E, the same one that you fought in earlier in the day, Jaden said to Moby, dragging him out the crowd that was leaving and into somewhere more open. All right, sounds good I don't mind staying here for a little longer. But why is your father calling for me? And, do I need to bring anything with me? Moby asked Jaden with slight confusion. I am not sure. He never specified, but he did tell me that he wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you so I assume that is what it will be. Don't be nervous. My dad is a really nice guy. I just hope you guys can get along, he was not too fond of your move to challenge Damien while he was so much stronger than you, so I hope that you can clear that up and show him that you are actually a good person. I will be going to the living room with Alex and Abby. I wish you good luck. Jaden said, informing Moby with a slightly nervous smile before running away as Moby thanked her for letting him know. As Moby walked to the arena all alone, he was thinking about why exactly he was being called to an arena before the answer hit him straight in the face, making him slightly nervous. As Moby entered the arena, he saw Mason Griffith wearing his normal suit standing in the middle with a smile like he was expecting him to come. Moby Kane. You finally arrived. You really impressed me during your last two fights. You managed to win against two people that had a much higher power level than you with immense confidence. Even if one of them seemed like extreme luck. I am well aware that you had only just received your ability around two or so weeks ago, and that you have yet to use it to even a fraction of its full potential which means that you will only grow exponentially from now on. Abilities take many years in order to master and properly use and the amount of mastery that you showed for the use of your ability was exceptional, so, I decided to test out your strength for myself and challenge you for a small spa. You know what they say, fists speak louder than words. Mason said to Moby with a gentle smile. What Mason said was exactly what Moby expected to hear. Although he was a little nervous about sparring with him, he could not help but feel very excited. This was the first time he had ever fought someone so far out of his league so he wanted to see how he compared to him in his current state. And, he wanted to see what a potential world-class power was like. He also noticed something in his speech that did not add up in his mind, if it takes so long to learn and get used to a new ability, how is Jaden able to casually copy people and their ability with a moderate amount of control in only a few seconds? Moby thought, before realizing that the answer must have been that it was just part of her doppelganger powers to have a certain degree of mastery over, the ability she was copying. I will gladly spar with you, future father-in-law. I am well aware that you are not very fond of me because of my recklessness, but I will prove to you that I am not that kind of guy. I never go into anything headfirst as I always have a plan in mind when approaching everything in life. I learned that the hard way, Moby said with a smile, taking off his formal clothing, storing them in his inventory before putting on his school uniform instead. Aren't you going to change clothes too? Moby asked in confusion as he did not expect Mason to fight with his suit on. Now why would I need to change my clothes if you will not be able to hit me anyway? Mason asked, looking at Moby in clear confusion. Now, let me explain the rules of the match, if you are able to land one punch on me I will do you one favor. But, if you can't hit me by the end of 30 minutes you will do me a favor instead. You will have full control and use of your ability while I will only use my physical prowess instead, which means that I will not have any use of my ability. How does that sound? Mason asked with a smile. As soon as Moby heard Mason's proposal, he hid the urge to smile really widely and laugh really hard as he already thought of a seemingly flawless plan in mind. I agree to those rules. But, I would like to propose a few adjustments. I would like to change it so I have to hit you once in the next 60 seconds instead of 30 minutes and, that I will then instead get three favors instead of one. How does that sound? Moby said with a confident smirk that made Mason's eye sockets almost pop out of his head when he heard it, what the fuck? Jaden I am sorry for doubting you but this new boyfriend of yours is literally far beyond retarded and reckless. This just proved it. I can't support him being with you. Does he think that this is a joke? Arrogant pricks like this that think they are hot shit even in front of someone hundreds of times stronger than them are absolutely ridiculous, there is no other way to look about it. Mason thought as he could not believe his own ears. You sure sound confident. For your own good, I hope you can back up those words of yours. All you are doing now is the same arrogance and recklessness that you displayed during your fight with Damien. How do you expect to convince me that you are not what I think you are with what you just said? Are you just trying to piss me off? Do you understand who I am kid? Mason said to Moby, staring deadly daggers into his eyes with a hint of killing intent that made Moby shudder but not flinch, as he was 100% confident in his words. We will see about that future father-in-law. Moby replied with a confident smirk. HMPH, well, I will start the countdown for the match right now with a one minute timer just like you requested. Be prepared because this will be the last time you are going to be calling me future father-in-law. Mason said in a cold tone and a deadly stare, sending shivers down Moby's spine, making cold sweat run down his face that kept a confident smirk on it, Mason then brought out a remote from his storage ring, setting a countdown and timer on the screen above before putting it back, not even bothering to take up a fighting stance like Moby in front of him, this kid is pissing me off. He still keeps that smirk on his face. He actually thinks he can win. I will make sure that he doesn't. That smirk will be wiped out of existence when he loses in the next minute. I am sorry Jaden but this guy is not it. Mason with clear annoyance, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, asterisk beep asterisk the match had officially begun and both parties still stood exactly where they were, no one moving even a single inch, Mason was just waiting with his hands behind his back, staring daggers at the still smiling Moby waiting for him to make a move. When, suddenly, not even 10 seconds into the fight, Mason felt a fist-like bump, and scratch on his face that tickled more than it hurt which made him really confused for a few seconds before he realized what had just happened, making him completely speechless as his face went blank while his mind spun in circles like it was about to malfunction. W what the fuck just happened? D did I lose? Chapter 131. I won. Moby celebrated with a laugh. W wait what? How? Mason blurted in surprise, still unable to believe what just transpired. 
I just did this, Moby responded with a smirk, using his devil's hand before surrounding it in a shroud of purple demon energy, as he made it slowly become more visible in order to sell his story, making Mason even more shocked than before. So, the attack was just my energy, but I made it so weak that it became pretty much invisible to the naked eye. I figured this attack out earlier in the day and found out that it was pretty useless seeing how weak it was. So, I never actually expected to use it. And when you set up the rules of the spa, I knew that I could use this new skill to win, so I upped that bet because I was certain of victory. So, what do you think? Not bad, right? Moby explained with a smile. PFFFFF. Ha 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 ha. You know what, kid, I completely misjudged you. It seems that you're actually pretty smart and you don't go in everything head first. You kinda remind me of myself back when I was your age. Twisting things more in your favor when you know what you're doing is in your favor. I apologize for all earlier rude comments. We started off on the wrong foot. I think my daughter has chosen well. Mason said with a smile and bow that really startled Moby, the head of the Griffith family was bowing to him for an apology, it was something he could not imagine in a million years. No no no, please raise your head future father-in-law, I do not deserve such praise, Moby said in a panic, making Mason lift his head and chuckle in a friendly manner. Anyways, you won the fight fair and square. So, I now owe you three favors, ask anything that your heart desires and it shall be done. Mason said in a cheerful tone but I in truth, Mason was not actually going to give Moby any favors from the start as he had no plans of losing and just wanted to gauge his strength and determination in a fight. But, since he lost and was so impressed by Moby's performance, he decided to go along with the wager. Okay, for my first favor, I would like to ask if there exists a black market for abilities. Moby asked in anticipation. Huh? Why would you want to know such information? Mason asked in surprise as Moby's question completely threw him off guard. I just want to know if it exists so I can browse it to see if there were any abilities that look or act close to mine, Moby explained. Kid, the black market is an extremely filthy yet lucrative business. There are many abilities available for the public to purchase while there are a few abilities that are not. This includes my shadow ability, the reed's fire, and the heart's lightning, even the zane's blink ability although that one has multiple families that own it. All of these abilities have a license that a person must have to use them in order to stop people from stealing exclusive abilities. If you are caught using an exclusive ability with no license or verification, you would be arrested and sentenced to life in prison, it's that bad of a crime. The black market is full of exclusive abilities that have been stolen and duplicated without the use of a proper license. When someone buys from there, they do give them a fake license that looks real on a glance but fake much upon closer inspection. Plus, there would be a named list of people of all the licensed owners of an exclusive ability, and if you have one and your name was not on the list you would be completely fucked. You're a nice kid, I don't want you to end up arrested because of such things, Mason explained to Moby. Moby listened intently to every word that Mason spoke as it was all completely new to him. However, he did not stop pushing for his favor. The more he learned about the black market the more interested he became. I understand the dangers of such a thing but I promise you that I do not plan on using it for anything other than to just browse. I already have a good unique ability so I have no use in buying any, Moby said with a chuckle. Okay, I will tell you the website. I will trust you with this. In your case, checking it out and just browsing will be fine. The website has some insane security that doesn't allow even the government to break through it to see all the buyers and sellers, or to just shut down the site, Mason nodded. Thank you so much, future father, in-law. For my next favor, I would like you to bless and accept my relationship with your daughter. I do not ask you for marriage as I believe that it is ultimately up to you to decide such things. I truly really love your daughter and could not imagine my life without her, Moby said with a respectful deep bow. Ha 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 ha. That's it? Don't worry about it kid. I already accepted your relationship with my daughter. You kinda wasted a favor on it. Well, too late to take it back now. Mason said with a chuckle. In my eyes, I do not see it as a waste at all, I am just trying to show you how much I deeply care for your daughter. She and I have gone through many hardships and good times together and I wish for us to stay together for as long as possible, Moby said in a calm tone without hesitation. I understand. Thank you for caring so much for my daughter, it makes me happier than you can even imagine. She has been alone because she had pushed away everyone else in her life and now she has so many good friends and even a proper lover. I was just scared that maybe she chose the wrong person as she lacked a lot of social skills and experiences, but it would seem like I was the wrong person all along, anyways, what is your final favor? Mason asked with expectant eyes. My final favor is that I want to see a glimpse of your true power. I have never met anyone as strong as you and I want to gauge how far away I am from catching up. Moby said in a serious tone. Huh. Are you really sure about this? Mason asked in absolute bewilderment. Yes, I am 100% sure. And, I would also like to know what power level you are if possible, Moby asked with clear excitement. Heh, I have no power level, Mason said, seemingly teleporting in front of Moby, causing a massive crater in the wake of his step before punching towards Moby with such immense force and speed that his fists looked like a blur. His white eyes had shadows leaking out of them that made death feel like it was in the air with a smile on his face. He looked like the true shadow of death. Moby stared at the blurry fist ripping through the air and blotting towards his face completely unable to react from its sheer speed alone. No matter how he looked at it, Moby was staring straight at his death. However, he still did not give up as his will to live and instinct screamed at him to dodge. To his luck, he was unable to dodge but Mason's fist stopped mere millimeters away from his face, sending him flying away towards the nearest wall at unbelievable speed. From the force of his punch, the wind pressure managed to even pop the defensive bubble around the arena and break many things in its path, even though he did not touch anything. I know you can't hear me but I am really sorry kid, but you asked for it, I'll call a healer to heal your wounds and help bring back your consciousness. And dash, Mason said before being unexpectedly interrupted. Old man. Who are you calling unconscious? I I am completely fine, just a few minor scratches that's all, Moby said, limping out of the dust cloud with a bloody face, holding his right arm that broke from the impact, just so you know he was holding back quite a bit, if he wasn't you would have been dead or might have even exploded on the spot, Avilia explained to Moby in a calm tone. Well fuck me sideways, I have a really long way to go if I even dream to catch up to him. 
That was absolutely insane. Now I really wonder how strong you were when you were a demon lord. Moby responded, still in a state of shock trying to endure all the pain ravaging his body, stronger than you can imagine. Avilia responded with an ominous yet confident smirk, this kid keeps impressing me more and more. I thought for sure no one at his strength level and age would be able to stay conscious from that attack. Not from the pain, but from the extreme horror and fear of facing absolute death in the face. Also, his three favors were not that bad. I fully expected much worse like asking for a large sum of money or asking for Jaden's hand in marriage. The more I talk to this kid the more I like him more and see part of him in my younger self. You have chosen very well my sweet little honey bun, I should have never doubted your words, asterisk 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 Moby, who was now fully healed, and Mason entered the living room where everyone else was, laughing at each other jokes that leaned a little on the darker side. So, why did the guy with no arms and no legs fall off his bike? Moby asked with a smile, trying to hold in his laughter. I don't know. Why? Mason asked in confusion. Because he got hit by a refrigerator. Moby responded, making Mason spit out his coffee. Pfffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffff
Cost, dollar one seventy zero 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 asterisk 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 radiant solder ability to manipulate and create light of the users while using mana. The ability also allows light to be formed into strong beams and to even be created into energy based objects. And weapon that have some solid properties, cost, dollar one eighty five zero 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 asterisk 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 dimensional shifter ability to teleport to any marked location. The farther it is the more mana it will cost. The maximum amount of marks the user can have at the start is five and will grow more as the ability is progressed. Once the amount of marks exceeds the maximum, the oldest mark will be removed to make room for the new one. Cost dollar one ninety five zero 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 asterisk asterisk asterisk. Chapter one thirty two. Moby stared long and hard at all the abilities in front of him, reading them over and over again to decide which one to choose as he was extremely torn between all of them. Then, he decided to go on Firewatch, the leading video sharing site at the time in order to see some real life examples of each skill in action. From the many videos he found and watched about each ability, he was very impressed by all of them. However, he found that two of them were more versatile than the other. However, it made his choices that much easier to narrow. The light ability, Radiant Soul, seemed to possess the most destructive power out of all of the abilities due to the powerful light lasers, but it lacked the versatility of the other two abilities. The only versatility he saw in the light ability was enhanced speed and the capability to blind targets. And, from what he saw, the ability was mainly offensive and severely lacked in the defense department. At first, Moby was interested in the light ability, as he thought that it might help him unlock something with his angel's blessing as light and holy sound very similar. However, Avilia explained to him that light and holy have nothing to do with each other as light was nothing more than an element like the rest. However, there was indeed a class of holy magic that was light holy magic that Avilia doubted would have anything to do with the radiant soul ability. As for the dimensional shift ability, he was thoroughly impressed more than he expected to be. Users of the ability had daggers and throwing knives that they had imprinted with their abilities prior to the fight, as they threw them everywhere on the battlefield allowing them to teleport to any point they desired making it extremely unpredictable and versatile in the right hand. Some even opted to throw their daggers at their enemy before teleporting to their daggers when their opponent dodged allowing them to perform surprise attacks that worked almost every time. They also used the ability to dodge attacks, tactical retreats, as well as to disorient the enemy. ATA glance. The ability was just a worse version of Blink but, Moby saw potential in it more than Blink ability ever could. Unlike Blink, Dimensional Shift enables the user to cover a much larger distance instead of short bursts of small teleports which makes it even more unpredictable as they would not see it coming. This can also apply to things Moby might have to do in the future. If he killed someone, he could always teleport far away as soon as he confirms the kill in order to have a much lower chance of being caught in the act. Of course, the school would be aware of his ability and most likely interrogate him as a suspect every time a murder is committed, as had a very convenient ability to avoid being caught. However, after being interrogated a few times, and showing up as truthful for all of them they would no longer have any reasons of suspecting him which would make the school go absolutely crazy trying to figure out what was happening. The ability would also be good for infiltration and setting up traps. If the user sets a mark on someone they would be able to teleport to them at will as long as they have enough mana, and as long as the mark is still active. For trapping, all that he needed to do was lure an enemy to an area where he had a mark placed allowing him to teleport and sneak attack them without suspecting a thing before quickly storing the body and teleporting out. As for infiltration, he would be able to send a dummy into a building before teleporting inside for easy access. The one thing Moby was unsure of and did not know was if the ability allowed the user to teleport other people and objects with him, or have the ability to teleport objects or people without him. No matter how much he looked, he could not find anything that gave him a concrete answer. Heart of Ice, the final and cheapest ability was one that Moby really liked and found very versatile. When he was watching videos, he saw people employ many techniques such as creating ice weapons sending them towards their opponent, a trail of ice spikes, balls of ice, using ice steps for more verticality, ice shields for defense, and many, many more. From what he had seen, the users of the ability were not able to control the water inside a person's body to freeze them from the inside out. But, they were still able to freeze them from the outside if they get stuck in an attack or if the user made direct physical contact with their body, or stabbed right into them with their blade. Some even froze the area around them to give them the terrain advantage against their opponents who were sometimes helpless against it. Also, no matter how hard he looked he was not able to find a single video showing someone with the heart of ice, ability be able to control or create water in a state that was not ice. This made Moby think that either that use of the ability was super weak and not very viable on battle, or that it is so rare and hard to do that only one or two people in the world could do it. Or, it might have been that the families that own the ability do not want many videos spreading around that might help show weaknesses in their abilities. For Moby, it was extremely hard to choose between the heart of ice and dimensional shift abilities as they both definitely had their uses, strengths, and weaknesses. Abby suggested heart of ice for its more well-rounded and destructive nature while Jaden suggested to go with dimensional shift for its versatility in and out of battle. However, in the end, Moby went with heart of ice for its greater destructive power, potential, and versatility in battle. He also wondered that if with enough practice, he would be able to fly by creating ice wings or by surfing on a block of ice that he controlled to float with his ability. Plus, it had many less glaring weaknesses than the other abilities, including dimensional shift. With only five teleportation markers to start out with, it would be extremely easy to predict exactly where the user would teleport making the ability its user's worst nightmare if they have no idea what they were doing. Also, dimensional shift did not seem suited for a sword user like Moby, and required a more fast and agile weapon like a dagger in order to better catch their enemy off guard. Although Moby is proficient in almost every type of weapon, his true skills and mastery laid in the sword which was something he continued wanting to use. Add to cart, and purchase. Moby said with a smile, leaning back on his chair to wait for his order to arrive on the teleport pad. I still think that you should have gone with the other ability, but in the end, they were all good choices so you could not go wrong with any of them, Jaden explained. Yes, you are right. To be honest, I am still extremely conflicted. I wish I could have chosen both of them, but that is sadly not possible. But, I just feel like I am choosing the best thing that would fit with my fighting style as I feel like, dimensional shift, is more suited for people who use daggers, just like you. Plus, I now have an extra 30 million dollars that I did not spend out of my budget like I would have with the other two abilities so that's a, big positive right? 
Moby answered with a light-hearted chuckle. Yes, my lord. I believe that you have chosen well. Abby cheered with a smile on her face as her lord followed one of the first suggestions that she had ever provided him, then, all of a sudden, the teleport pad began glowing a bright white glow before a medium-sized glowing icy blue crystal appeared on top of it with a paper to its side which was probably the fake license that comes provided with it. Just looking at the ability crystal made Moby more excited than ever before. He had been waiting for a very long time for this. No longer would he be the only person in his group that lacked an ability. Plus, now he would have a completely new pool of energy that would help him dish out more attacks and from what he knew and seen, abilities provide an immense power boost to the user, not just in the form of a superpower but with a physically stronger body as well. Moby focused his attention on the magnificent icy blue crystal, slowly picking it up before closing his eyes trying to absorb it into his body. Not even ten seconds later, the ability crystal completely disappeared from his hand, and vanished into thin air as it was completely absorbed by Moby who was once holding IT.AS the ability was being absorbed, into Moby's body, he felt a rush of immense power slowly enter his system making him feel like he was a person high on a mountain of sugar that felt like, he could obliterate mountains in a single punch. He felt the mana from the crystal enter his veins and infuse into his blood, which felt very soothing as he became one with the essence of cold, damn, that was much easier than I expected. Definitely one million times better than demon evolution that's for sure. Moby thought, waiting for the inevitable barrage of notifications to appear. System alert. The user has gained the ability Heart of Ice, new skill unlocked. Asterisk asterisk, body of ice, level 1, due to the user's ice ability, their body is now enhanced and more powerful. Effects, plus 120 strength, plus 85 agility, plus 110 intelligence, plus 90 endurance, asterisk asterisk, system alert. The user's ability has mixed with their draconic blood and has unlocked the ice dragon skill tree. New skill unlocked. Asterisk asterisk, freezing time, level 1, the ability to make time go slower in the eyes of the user allowing for faster reaction times and opportunities to attack, dodge, analyze and counter, effects, time slows down by 10% cost, 5 demon energy a second plus 5 mana, second asterisk asterisk, skill upgrade. Asterisk asterisk, angel's blessing, passive, level 2.5, a blessing bestowed upon a person by an angel with a completely pure heart of gold. Effects, holy energy resistance, plus 25% health plus 25% energy regeneration plus 25% asterisk asterisk. Chapter 133. My lord. How do you feel? Did the ability crystal work? Does it hurt anywhere on your body? Hey, baby, are you okay? Answer me. Moby did not hear or pay attention to what his family members were saying as he stared at the barrage of notifications in front of him, his mind running around in circles while his face was completely blank trying to take everything in. Some of the notifications were things he completely expected like the body of ice ability that raised his stats. But everything else was entirely unexpected. Like, how his ability mixed with his draconic blood unlocking an entire skill tree, that already had its first skill unlocked which allowed him to slow down time. He did not know what the skill did exactly, or how it would function, but he was very excited to find out as it could be extremely useful, despite its ridiculously high mana, and demon energy consumption at 5 mana, and 5 demon energy every second. The skill, freezing time, was the first ever skill he saw that consumed a mixture of demon energy and mana, which made him come to the conclusion that it was because the ability got mixed with his blood. This also made him wonder if he had chosen the dimensional shift ability, would it have given him a dimensional dragon skill tree, or a light dragon skill tree if he had chosen radiant heart. However, it was now too late for him to change his mind and he would be lying if he said that he wasn't happy, or satisfied with what he had he had seen so far of the ice dragon skill tree. This also made him think about if he was able to unlock more elements and dragon powers in the future by possibly learning other elements or things of the sort. Moby's dragon powers were shaping to be more powerful and useful than he expected if his new skill tree was anything to go by. It made him more intrigued about their origins and other powers but he knew that Avilia did not have the answers. However, this added more onto the surprise and unknown element that slightly excited him to delve deeper into his dragon powers. He also remembered that Avilia promised him that she would reveal more about her past to him if he did well on the exam, which he believed that he had well accomplished. This would allow him to better understand how the other realms functioned and how she rose to power. And, the story might contain some hints and clues about his dragon powers and possibly maybe his parents, which made him really anxious to hear her out. For the past week, he had been too busy to ask Avilia to tell him about her story and give him his reward, but he planned to do it today right before he went to bed as he would be extremely busy once more as school would start again, however, out of everything that had just transpired, there was one thing above all that shocked and confused him more than anything else, out of nowhere, his angel's blessing leveled up from level 2 to level 2.5 which was something that he had never seen before. Plus, he wondered why would his angel's blessing skill gain half a level out of nowhere. He also wondered what did gaining an ability have to do with angel powers. None of it made any sense to him so he turned to Avilia in order to find an explanation, hey, Avilia, can you help a fellow demon out? Do you have any idea what just happened? Moby asked in confusion, nope, no idea, I am not even surprised at this point. My mind had been blown too many times in the past two weeks than my entire lifespan, which is really fucking long so I am convinced that nothing can faze me at this point. My knowledge of draconic demons is very limited just like I said before. They are an extremely rare species of demons that don't really like to show themselves too often. I have only ever seen and met a few of them and I was not able to find out anything important about them. Many of them were just disguised as regular civilians and lived their lives like normal while others were symbols of terror that hid, or lurked in the shadows, as for these ability things, I never heard of them until I came to this world and became conscious. It is all new to me. I have no clue in hell about what they might be. All I knew was that a demon body was compatible with one. So, from what I've seen from you just leveling up that angel skill by half a level, I am inclined to believe that they might be angel related but at this point, I am not completely sure as it is just purely speculation. The world has changed so much in the past million or so years. I am not the most reliable source, all I can tell you is how it was for me back in my heyday as demon lord which kinda annoys me at times at how stupid and useless, I have become. 
Hell, I can't even move and, you are the only means of company and entertainment I have, I, the once great and all-powerful demon lord, am pretty much nothing more than a source of power, a nagging voice and an ancient demon encyclopedia in your head that has some pages missing. I would be lying if I said that I wasn't jealous of you. Every time you hang out with your friends, and come up with your silly little plots it reminded me of how I used to act like with all my friends who turned into my clothes, loyal subordinates later on once I became the demon lord. Living inside your head with only you to talk to is a pretty lonely existence. At first, I found it all entertaining watching you kill little insects and did not care much if at all, and focused solely on molding you into a proper demon lord but now I have started to grow more jealous. I am starting to miss my old life. I guess those feelings were just buried deep within me and I only realized them as I watched you and your character evolve more and more. I am a pathetic demon lord, aren't I? I wish I knew your true emotions towards me but for some reason, that is the only thing in your surface mind that I can't read no matter how hard I try. Avilia said, getting sadder and sadder as she spoke, something that Moby thought came out of nowhere as it was the first ever time he heard her have such emotions. In Moby's head, Avilia had always been the most cheerful, outgoing person that he knew and he had no idea that she was feeling the way she did as it did not even cross his mind. He thought of her as some sort of deity that was above everything but it seemed like she too had proper emotions as well. He should have expected as much, if he was in her position, sealed for thousands if not millions of years away from the people he knew and loved in the mind of a stranger, unable to move, he would have felt the same way if not much, much worse. Moby cared very much for Avilia and was very appreciative of everything that she had done for him and he wanted a way that he could properly express his feelings to so he took his time to think before formulating a response, no. That is not true. You are a lot more than a nagging encyclopedia in my head and a source of power. I won't lie to you, sometimes I did use you that way when I needed to know something demon specific, and I did sometimes find you annoying when you reserved some information to yourself on purpose. But, in the end, I understand that you only did that because you wanted me to use more of my brain and not rely on you for everything which has turned me into a smarter thinker overall. I knew that you were trying your best to train me into becoming a demon lord and I always enjoyed your company. Even though it might be awkward knowing that you are always looming over my shoulder no matter what I do, I could not imagine my life without you and your help. If you were not there for me I would have definitely lost my way and ended up either dead or crazy at this point, even if I still had the system. So, in the end, I am extremely grateful to you. Thank you so much for everything you have done for me thus far and probably in the future, First Demon Lord of Ilya Greymore, your soul still exists and alive so, there must be a way for me to give you another body for you to live in right? Seems easy enough. I promise that I'll do my best to do that for you. It's the least I could do to pay you back for all that you have done for me. Moby said to her with a smile, I really appreciate the sentiment and kind words, I really do. But, trust me when I say that it's completely impossible to do. I bound my soul to that necklace and it is now in turns bound to you instead. I am now part of you and my only purpose is to pass down my powers before my consciousness completely fades away. This is how the item was designed. No matter what you do there is nothing to change that. At first, it was meant to be for demons who had already gotten an unbelievably immense amount of power, which would have allowed me to easily transfer my powers to them in a shorter span of time before fading away. But, in your case, a person who was only a weak human when we first met, it would take a far, far, longer time for me to finish transferring my full power to you, Avilia explained in a still sad tone, impossible? Ha! Huh. I laugh in the face of impossible. You thought that demons could not be blessed by an angel, but I proved you wrong. You thought that a sin demon and a draconic demon hybrid was something never before seen and impossible, but I proved you wrong. I have already broken the impossible two times in the short span of two weeks. Plus, like you said, a lot has changed in the time when you were dormant. I am sure I can find a way to give you a proper body before you fade away. Believe it. Moby said in an overly enthusiastic tone that made Avilia chuckle, ha ha ha. Yes, that is true. Prove me wrong then little boy. I will be patiently waiting for you to complete your promise. Avilia said with a chuckle. I am sorry about all of that, you caught me in a very rare moment of weakness, but I am all better now. I will continue to judge you on your path to becoming demon lord, so don't think that I will be going easier on you from now on just because of what happened. Choosing a worthy successor is still my top priority. But, thanks a lot, mister, I laugh in the face of impossible, your corniness has yet to disappoint and not make me laugh. Avilia continued with a loud laugh, hey. I was just trying to he. Moby said before being interrupted, oh, and I didn't forget about your reward for doing well on the exam. I will give you my final evaluation and reward later on today. I was just waiting for the most opportune moment to share it which I feel like is right now before you go back to school. Oh, and by the way, you should really snap back to reality. I think your family members are going to go crazy, especially the redhead who is crying, shaking you really hard and about to dump an entire bucket of ice cold water on you to wake you up, Avilia said with a chuckle before fading away. Wait what the fuck? Moby inwardly cursed in surprise before snapping back to the real world, as he was too focused on everything else going on with his new ability in Avilia. No. Abby. It's okay. I am completely. Moby yelled out in panic as soon as he snapped back. However, by the time he did, it was already too late as his face got blasted by a bucket of freezing water that got him all wet. Though, surprisingly, he felt almost no cold at all like he would usually expect when he gets hit by a large bucket of freezing water, system alert. New skill unlocked. Asterisk asterisk, ice resistance, level 1, passive, due to the user's ice ability, they are now more resistant to the cold. Effects, plus 40% cold resistance. Asterisk asterisk, damn, I really should have expected such a skill, it does make a lot of sense. Moby thought, looking at the notification before focusing his full attention on the crying Abby in front of him. Am my lord. You are okay. I am so happy. I was so worried about you. Your face had stayed completely blank for over three minutes and did not move no matter what I did and I got extremely worried. I am sorry about the splash. I just did what I thought was right, I will accept any punishment you see fit. Abby said, tears still running down her face which made Moby feel extremely bad. I tried to tell her that you were having another one of those long thinking moments of your, but she wouldn't listen. Jaden said with a sigh, making Moby read her emotions only to find out that she too was also worried. It's okay Abby. 
I know you did what you did because you were worried and not out of malicious intent so it's completely fine and even encouraged. Good job Abby. I like the initiative. Moby said, putting his wet hands on her shoulder with a smile. Th thank you my lord. I do not deserve such praise. I will try my best to continue to meet and exceed your expectations. Abby answered nervously at first, but turning more seriously towards the end. Allow me to dry you off my lord, you are completely wet. It's the least I can do, Abby continued, creating heat in her hands before reaching out towards Moby. No. Wait. Don't dry me off. I have an idea I want to test. Moby said with a smile, putting his hands out to motion Abby to stop before trying to control the water on him using his ability. He focused long and hard, trying his best to do a combination of different hand movements in order to move the water. However, in the end, he made himself look like a fool doing so, making Jaden and Abby look at him in confusion. Fuck. Why can't I control the water? This is much harder than I thought. But, I guess they did say that only top experts could do it so I really should have expected as much. Moby inwardly cursed, struggling to move even a single drop of water from his wet body. Um. My lord are you okay? Do you need help with something? Abby asked in confusion. If you are constipated and need to take a shit go right ahead, the washroom is down the hall and directly to the right. You should know where it is. Jaden said in a serious tone, pointing at the door before bursting out into laughter. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Very funny. I am just trying to see if I can move water with my ability but it seems like that is way too advanced for me at the moment, Moby replied to Jaden, giving up on moving the water. I'll just try and do this instead then. Moby said, focusing on the water, trying his best to freeze it. Ha ha ha. It's working. It's working. Look guys it's really dash. Moby celebrated, as he saw that the water was slowly turning into ice to the point that it completely froze him in place in a small sheet of ice, making him unable to talk as his teammates stared at him with a blank expression. Abby super worried while Jaden was trying her best to hold back her laughter. Chapter 134 Jaden and Abby stared at the completely frozen and motionless Moby as Abby was ready to melt the ice to bust him out of his ice prison, as he looked like Squidward when he was frozen in a block of ice from that one ancient cartoon that started over 100 years ago, that was still somehow being aired today with nearly 40,000 episodes, however, when she heated her hand about to touch Moby, the ice surrounding him suddenly began to crack before it completely shattered off into many tiny and big chunks. And shards. Heh, don't worry about me I am completely fine. Moby said with a nervous chuckle, making all the shattered pieces of ice float around him with seemingly minimal effort. W wow. That's amazing my lord. When I first received my ability, it took me almost an entire week to even be able to get to use any of it as it was way too hard. And, you are already proficient at it from the start. Abby exclaimed in surprise. First things first, you must have been like five when you got your ability so it is a much greater age gap so it is natural that I would get the hang of it better than your younger self. And, second, calling me proficient is a very big stretch, even what you see now is very draining on me and requires my full concentration. None of my demon powers were this hard to learn. If anything those came to me very naturally. Moby said, cold sweat running down his face as he forced himself to keep the ice shards afloat. That is true. I did find it very odd that I got the hang of my necromancer powers so quickly with little to no training. Abby pondered. Yes. I agree, even though it was a little harder on me because I needed to better be able to adapt to other people's bodies. But, after a little practice, I got the hang of most of it. Especially after my evolution, it just made things so much easier. Jaden added, also deep in her own thoughts. The reason for all of that is because a demon's specialization is easy to pick up on with the basics, and they are held back in order to better suit the user's strength. It is pretty much ingrained in your DNA and very being. That is why transforming into a demon greatly helped your demon energy manipulation and uses. That is why demons receive such a big, instant power boost to their strength and their skills whenever they evolve. These abilities are very different, it's like you are training your body to use a power that it was not designed or meant to have, Avilia explained, making Moby thank her with a smile before explaining what Avilia had just told him to the rest of his group. Hum. I see. That does make a lot of sense actually. Jaden said, putting her fingers on her chin. Um. My lord. How long will you keep carrying those ice shards around you? Abby asked with concern as she noticed Moby's extremely sweaty and tired face. Yeah. It's only been a few minutes and my mana is about to run out from just holding a few small ice cubes. I was just testing out how long I could last and from what I see the answer is not very long. Damn I'm useless right now. This is going to take a very long time to train I can already tell. Moby inwardly cursed before he waved his hands in a swing motion, trying his best to shoot the ice shards onto the nearby wall only for it to crash like they were small pebbles being thrown by a ten-year-old child. It's okay, don't be frustrated, it takes many years for people to get accustomed to their abilities so what you did just now was not that bad. Personally, at the age of three, it took me only three days to finally use my ability for the first time which was extremely fast for my age. However, I never really bothered to get stronger as I thought that if I was ever in trouble, my family would protect me. The only thing I did training-wise was a few lessons with my father and butler every week which included the basic uses for my ability and how to properly use a dagger. So, other than that little training that I was forced to do, I lacked any kind of effort to get stronger and improve myself. That was why I was only AD rank when we first met. If I had trained properly and cared about getting stronger, I would have no doubt gotten to at least B- dash, maybe even B plus rank in strength as I was seen as a shadow ability prodigy. So, anyway, I got a little sidetracked, but what I am trying to say is that you are already doing pretty decent compared to a prodigy, and it will take time for your ability to fully develop and allow you to tap into your full potential, Jaden explained. Ha ha ha. Well, good thing that you didn't train and stayed relatively weak. Because if not, then I would have still been your pet, under your leash since you would be so much stronger than me. And, we would have not gotten to where we are today. Moby said with a chuckle. Yeah. I guess you're right. Jaden giggled back. Anyways, I need more time to experiment with my ability. 
So, I'll be heading to your arena for more space and as to not mess up your room, Moby said, heading towards the door of the bedroom. I doubt that you could do damage with that ability of yours even if you wanted to. And even if you could, it would rebuild a split second later anyways, Jaden teased him. Yeah, yeah I get it. But, one question, do you have any living thing that I can experiment on? Moby asked with a serious yet devilish face. I don't have any on hand and I don't really want to use any of the servants so the next best option is to order an animal online with the extra 30 million we still have, Jaden proposed. Well, I want to save that money for emergency situations and to buy new materials so I can craft us some new sets of armor. If you can buy a huge, ugly, magical beast for cheap then I might consider it, Moby replied. Okay then. That's not a problem at all. I am going to go off to search for pet rats or something for you to test on. I'll let you know when I got it. Have fun training at the arena. Jaden said with a laugh, walking off to her computer. My lord, I can always give you a few of my undead, would that suffice? Abby asked Moby with her usual serious stare. I would preferably want something with blood. Maybe if you had something like a vampire summon it would work. But even if you did I would not use such a valuable vampire summon just for some measly experiment such as this, Moby explained making Abby bow. Yes my lord, I understand. Abby said, looking straight at Moby's face, something she had sometimes been too ashamed or shy to do which made Moby feel a hint of extra happiness. Abby, come with me, I need your help if anything goes wrong and as a helper, Moby said to her with a smile, motioning her to follow him as he headed straight for the door once again. It would be an honor, my lord. I will not let you down. Abby said extremely cheerful and full of joy, running behind Moby as he went straight for the empty arena. After a few minutes of walking across the large hallways of Jaden's mansion, passing by a few servants that were doing their chores greeting a few of them with a simple hello, they finally reached the large blue arena with the Griffith family crest engraved in the middle which was a black raven with a dark, shadowy aura coming out of it in a cryptic yet elegant way. Okay. Time to test this shit out. I am almost certain that this will work. But, if it doesn't work then I am completely fucked, Moby said to Abby using his mind link as he began to stretch his body about to begin his training experimenting. Abby, stand right there and watch a master do his job. Moby said with clear confidence in his voice and a smile on his face. Why yes. Of course my lord. I will be watching very carefully. Abby said, leaning forward with stars in her eyes and excitement on her face, before Moby tested out what he wanted to test out, he still needed to assign the 300 stat points that he gained from completing Avilia's quest. He decided against assigning his stats as soon as he completed the quest in order to see the power boost that he gained from his ability so he could better assign his stat points to his needs depending on what stats he gained from it. Asterisk asterisk name, Moby Kane Race, Draconic Demon of Sin Ability, Level 7 Ice Level, 50 XP to Next Level 39, 450 000 power level, 19,290 HP, 188, 188 Demon Energy, 529, 529 Mana, 279, 529 Demon Energy Amana Regeneration, 353 Energy Hour Strength, 471 Agility, 557 Endurance, 372. Intelligence, 529 mind, 100 available points to distribute, 0 asterisk asterisk the first thing that Moby noticed about his stats was that his ice ability was a level 7, something that he still did not know what it exactly meant other than how it is weaker than 8 and stronger than 6. He also noticed that instead of specifying the full ability name as, heart of ice, the system only showed it as, ice. So, it made Moby want to believe that the system was not able to differentiate different variations of the same element or type of ability, and only put them under one name. This confirmed to him that the ability shown on a person's stat sheet was not 100% exact, and was more of a general description of the ability's overall skill set and other things of the such. As for his stat distribution, Moby ended up spending 60 points in strength, 100 points in agility, 60 points in endurance, and 80 points in intelligence bringing his power level all the way up to a mouthwatering 19,290, even without any gear to speak of. He managed to boost his power level up by almost 8,000 in the span of only one night, something that he had never expected to happen when he first decided to go with Jaden to visit her family. He was confident that he could have defeated Damien with little to no difficulty with the amount of power he gained, as he felt on top of the entire world when the rush of energy just rushed throughout his body. Agility was still a top priority for him even with his new ability as it was the perfect fit for his fighting style. From what he had seen and heard, ice was a very defensive ability. However, Moby planned to use it very offensively and slightly defensively at the same time by using it with his own style of fast, and unpredictable movements meaning that endurance was still the least of his priorities compared to strength. However, what did suddenly become more important in his eyes was the intelligence stat. Now, instead of it only being used for demon energy, it was now also used for mana as well. By raising his intelligence, he was raising two very important stats making it worth almost twice as much as before if not more. His energy reserves had pretty much doubled which would in theory allow him to last longer and spam more of his moves. However, in his current state, using mana would only slow him down in battle, as he was still not used to it at all which was exactly what he planned to train for right now. Moby closed his eyes and focused long and hard trying to visualize a large shard of ice being formed in a dark void. He visualized the ice crystals slowly expanding from the edges until it finally reached Moby's desired shape. Then, he imagined his demon energy slowly enveloping all of it as it raged on until it combined with the ice giving it a dark purple color, an aura surrounding it. This was what Moby wanted to test out. If his ice was purple unlike how his ability was supposed to be, nobody would suspect him of buying it off the black market and classify it instead as part of his own ability with little to no suspicion. However, if it was the same color of blue ice like the original ability, then it would have been extremely suspicious, and would have warranted a large investigation that Moby definitely did not want to deal with. So, if his technique worked, then he would not have anything to worry about. However, if it was not the case and it failed, then he would be forced to hide it like his sin mode, and would have to only use it when he really needs to which he might do anyway as to keep the element of surprise on his enemies. I, T was now the moment of truth, although Moby was confident that it would work he was still not completely sure. So, Moby opened his eyes to see if his visualization worked, damn. That's R. A lot smaller than the one in my head, but at least it's purple like I wanted. 
Moby thought, trying his best to stay positive and excited about an ice shard that was barely even the size of a toothpick. Whoa! You did amazing my lord. Purple ice. As expected of the great Moby Kane, future king of all demons. Abby said with even bigger stars in her eyes, staring at the purple toothpick-like ice shard floating in the air one meter above Moby's head. But it's just a small toothpick, there is nothing impressive about it. Moby thought in confusion, looking at Abby's clearly exited figure in the distance, then, suddenly, Moby felt a huge sneeze coming his way, something that had started to happen much less often ever since he became a demon, shit, there still must be some water or ice in my nostrils or something, ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Achoo. Moby sneezed out loud making a small beam of pure demon energy emerge out of the small ice shard, hitting the side of the arena with little force that caused virtually zero damage, making Moby so shocked that his mouth almost dropped on the ground and his eyes almost popped out of their sockets. Curse you my lord. Abby said in response to Moby's sneeze as she had learned the hard way what would happen if she said it the other way. And, what was that? You shot out an energy blast out of your ice shard. Truly a minor cut above the rest. I don't think anyone else could have come up with such a technique. Truly genius. As expected of my one and only lord. Abby said in excitement, clenching her fists together, fighting the urge to start jumping up and down like a child, H. Her. What the fuck did I just do? Moby thought in absolute astonishment. Chapter 135. Moby could not believe his own eyes. What Abby was non-stop showering him with praise with was nothing but something that he discovered completely on accident. But, as to not disappoint his subordinate and friend, he decided to play along saying it was all part of his strategic thinking and experimenting. In the right hands, what Moby had just discovered could be extremely deadly and versatile. It allowed him to shoot out pure demon energy from his ice shards by focusing it on the tip, charging it up before releasing it out as a blast. If he could sneak an ice shard behind an enemy and shoot it out, he could easily take them out by a surprise attack. And, if he is able to surround his opponent with many ice shards, he could aim it directly at them with a near 100% accuracy as it would be extremely hard for them to dodge. Also, if an opponent dodged an attack he could follow it up with a demon energy blast in the direction of their dodge, catching them off guard, making it a much harder time for them to survive. Those were only some of the few use cases that he had thought of off the top of his head which made him extremely excited for the future, when he would have better mastery over his still young and maturing ability. However, those would only work depending on a few criteria. How many ice shards he could shoot from at once, how much was the cost of such an attack, and how far he could control the ice and how far he was able to blast his demon energy out of them. So, he tried his best to form another shard of purple ice just like before, closing his eyes imagining its creation before opening them to find out that he had created another one. Now he had two ice shards floating in front of him which was extremely draining on him both mentally and physically. He then focused his demon energy into both of the ice shards, shooting out weak blasts of demon energy that did little to no damage due to how small they were and how inexperienced Moby still was, at handling his new powers. Asterisk clap asterisk asterisk clap asterisk asterisk clap asterisk. That was excellent my lord. You are improving so quickly. Abby cheered at him from the side which sounded more like she was mocking him, yet, knowing her for as long as he did, he knew that it was definitely not her intentions to do that as she 100% believed in her own words. The next thing Moby did was try to move the ice away from his body to see the distance of control he had over them. He put his hands in front of him and tried his best to guide and float both of the ice shards away, a task more grueling and straining than any other thing he had tested so far. Then, after what felt like an eternity, he managed to move both pieces of ice six meters away from his body before it got too painful for him to move any further. If Moby was being honest, six meters was already much better than he first expected which was by no means bad at all for his first ever attempt. He was sure that with practice, he would be able to reach much farther than six meters with ease as seen on the many Firewatch videos that he watched. Next, was the moment of truth if he was able to shoot out his demon energy from the ice shards at such a distance. He tried his best to focus his demon energy into the tips of the ice shards before firing them out like before. However, when he tried to do it, it did not work at all which slightly worried him. So, with the last drops of his remaining mana, he brought the ice shards closer to him, testing it out at certain intervals until he found his maximum firing range, 3 meters. At least it still works at such a range. It's still a work in progress, it will get better over time, Moby thought, trying his best to stay positive. Moby checked up on his mana and demon energy to see how much he used. From what he felt, his mana should be pretty much completely depleted and his demon energy should have a decent chunk taken out of it. 7 of 529 mana and 377, 529 demon energy. Moby thought, inspecting his energy reserves. The chunk of consumed demon energy was far greater than he expected at 152. And, it was only for 3 small blasts of pure demon energy. If the blasts were any bigger, he was certain that his energy reserves would be emptied in a heartbeat. Along with the decently long charge up time and Moby's inexperience with his ability, it was one of the major drawbacks of his new technique. Moby assumed that it was the cost of transferring and infusing his demon energy into the ice shards instead of just firing it out, of his own body like he usually did. However, unlike other things in his ability, he was not sure if and how he would improve the transfer process in order to make it as efficient as possible as his demon energy was, not as young and immature as his ice ability. All that Moby could do was try his best to train and hope it works out in his favor, which he had faith in as he has the power of the first demon lord at his disposal. The next thing that Moby wanted to test out was the new skill that he gained from the ice dragon skill tree, freezing time. The effect says that time slows down by 10%. However, other than that brief description, he still had no idea what it exactly meant and would translate in a combat-related scenario. Hey! Baby! Will this thing do? A familiar voice came from the entrance of the arena. It was of course none other than Jaden. And, what was beside her could only ever be described as absolutely hideous. It was a massive, muscular, black rat that stood at around 3 meters in height. Around its mouth was a muzzle and a leash, and its entire body was restrained in chains that did not allow him to fight back even if he wanted to. Its stench made the entire arena reek of the smell of shit, but somehow even worse as Moby's enhanced senses were quick to pick up on it. When Moby used his inspect skill on it, he found it to only be a D-rank beast which did not pose a threat at all. It seems like you're back already. How much did that thing cost you? 
Moby asked Jaden, hoping that she did not spend too much as he planned to craft and buy new sets of armor for his entire family. It was only around $1,000, rat men don't really give any valuable material so it was pretty cheap. I just ordered him and went to pick him up from the nearest teleporter that supported living creatures before I came here. Even if it smells like ass, it was pretty funny having him around. You should have seen the looks on everyone's faces as I casually walked with this thing, it was hilarious, Jaden replied. Dollar one thousand, that's not that bad, Moby nodded as he was happy that not much money was spent, for now, to get rid of the awful smell, Moby decided to do what he wanted to test out with the rat first instead of his, freezing time, skill. Graw, the beast roared in a muffled voice, trying its best to get out of its restraint. He's all yours. Jaden said with a smile, kicking the rat man all the way to Moby's location. Looking, at the ugly three meter tall beast in front of him, Moby was not at all scared or intimidated. If anything, he just wanted to get it over with so he could get rid of the awful odor attacking his nose, currently, Moby was still out of mana and somewhat low on demon energy so he used nature's stimulation to regain them, completely ignoring the roaring crazy beast in front of him for four minutes straight before opening his eyes, ready to start his testing. The first thing that Moby wanted to try out was if he was able to freeze people or beasts from the inside out, something that he saw. Nobody in the Firewatch video do. But, something that he decided to test anyways just in case as every living creature had water in their blood. So, Moby tried it out from a close distance, not touching the still struggling beast at all, failure. He thought with a hint of disappointment before moving on to the next experiment. Moby tried to do the same thing, but this time, he made direct physical contact with the ugly, disgusting beast, something that he did not want to do but did anyways for research purposes. For this attempt, Moby saw a small sheet of purple ice slowly begin to engulf the ratman until after around 30 seconds, it completely covered its stomach area in a sheet of purple ice. However, the ice was only on the outside and had no effect on it from the inside and from its inner bloodstream, something that Moby fully expected. For now, what he did was way too slow to be used in actual combat and it was way too costly, using up almost half of his mana to do so. The next thing he wanted to test out was what would happen if he stabbed right into the Ratman before injecting his sword into it with his icy, demon energy infused mana to see if it would end up any better, out of his inventory, Moby pulled out his trusty black and purple novice demon katana before stabbing right through the Ratman's chest making it cry out in pain with a muffled voice as it began to struggle even more, then, out of the wound in the Ratman's chest, a thin, purple sheet of ice began to form and expand until it covered half of his entire chest and neck in the span of only 20 seconds, much faster than when he was just touching it with his bare hands. Also, from around the wound, he did notice some internal damage to the ratman's innards around the area of the stab which was a very promising sign in Moby's opinion, Moby only had one more thing to test out before he could finally kill the ratman, however, he needed to once again use his nature stimulation to restore his lost mana as his ability was way too inefficient and mana consuming in its current state. Hey, Abby, do you still have that bucket that you used to dump water on me a few minutes ago? Moby asked Abby who was spectating his movements with clear focus. Why yes my lord. I put it in my inventory. Here you go, Abby replied, pulling out a red bucket from her inventory before handing it to Moby with a bow. Thank you, Moby casually replied with a smile before going to the nearest of the many water fountains in the arena, filling it up all the way with water before slashing it all over the Ratman, then, without even touching it, he lifted his hands up and focused on freezing the water on the Ratman which turned out to be a huge success. In the end, he was able to completely freeze its entire body in a thin sheet of ice in a short span of 20 seconds. And if it was only 20 seconds to fully freeze it without any contact, he would have undoubtedly frozen it much faster if he actually touched it. And, not only did it freeze faster, but it also consumed less mana. This made Moby come to the conclusion that freezing water was much faster and more efficient than creating ice out of nothing like he did before, which did make sense in his head and from a theoretical standpoint. So, in a more moist environment and, if he got his opponent wet, he would definitely have an advantage which was a good thing to know. I am done with you. You serve my purpose, now die, Moby said, in a casual tone, punching the frozen beast so hard that his ice body shattered into a million pieces, you have defeated a high D rank, Ratman, plus 500 XP, now that Moby finished what he was doing, wiping his hands before putting the icy, shattered remains of the Ratman in his inventory, telling himself that he would throw it out later, he focused his attention on the original thing he wanted to test out, his new, freezing time, skill. Hey, Abby, can you spar with me for a little bit? I need to test something out. Also, Jaden, I need you to stand a little farther back and spectate the little spa for me, Moby said with a smile, looking at his two family members that were casually talking to each other while they spectated Moby experimenting and killing the Ratman. Chapter 136 Moby decided to check up on Abby's stats before the match to see how strong she was after he completed the Stop Being a Pussy quest that increased the stats of all of his family members, not only him. Asterisk asterisk name, Abby Rid Race, Demon, Necromancer, Ability, Level 7 Fire Level, 57 XP, 30, 240 or 56, 000 Power Level, 18, 720 HP, 150 or 150 Mana, 514, 514 Demon Energy, 514 or 514 Strength, 541 Agility, 451 Endurance, 366 Intelligence, 514 Mind, 90 Asterisk Asterisk What he saw did not surprise him even in the slightest. Abby was a whole six levels above Moby because of the sheer amount of goblins she had killed during the exam, receiving all the XP from them while Moby only received half. However, even still, her power level was lower than Moby's due to all the extra stat points he received from the quest compared to his family members. But, it was still in the range to make her extremely competitive and give him a big run for his money. So, Abby, do you agree to spar with me? Moby asked his question once again, patently waiting for a response from her. Yes. Of course my lord. Do you want me to use a weapon? And, should I go all out? Abby asked in a serious and stiff demeanor. Yes, I want you to go all out, just don't use your ability or demon powers, it will a pure clash of blades, Moby explained with a smile. Of course my lord. Even if I am fighting you, I promise to not hold anything back. Abby said, pulling out her long black and red side from her inventory, walking up to the arena, taking a fighting stance waiting for the start of the spa. Hey, baby, you said that you wanted me to spectate the fight, do you have something specific that you want me to look out for? 
Jaden asked, a little confused as she was going to be spectating the spa whether he asked her or not. Oh, nothing in particular, I just wanted to make sure that you watch closely, Moby replied with a smile, taking up a fighting stance with his katana still in its sheath, his hand hovering over the hilt. Okay, I, I was going to do that anyways but okay. Jaden casually replied with a shrug of her shoulder. Okay Abby, we keep going until we have a clear winner, don't be afraid to hurt me, Moby explained to her once more, making sure that she does not hold anything back, making her nod really hard as a response, a serious almost predator-like expression on her face. Okay, Jaden counters in. Moby told Jaden as he still was in his fighting stance. He he, don't worry, I got you fam, 3, 2, 1, start. Jaden yelled, signaling the beginning of the match. To Moby's surprise, Abby was the one who took the initiative, bolting straight at him at her top speed, slashing straight down at him who did not move at all with all her force making a bright smile appear on his face seeing that she was indeed not, holding anything back. As her blade quickly accelerated towards his face, he unsheathed his sword in one quick motion, sliding across the side of Abby's side redirecting her attack making her hit the ground beside him, leaving her wide open for an attack, Moby went for a kick straight to Abby's exposed side. However, to his surprise, she used her side that was still stuck on the ground to dodge and boost herself over Moby like she was pole vaulting, catching him completely off guard as she went for another attack, lifting her side up in the air above her before smashing it down at Moby once again but from directly above him. Holy shit! Jaden exclaimed from the side as she did not at all expect Abby to take the upper hand against a martial arts expert like Moby. Moby did not expect what Abby did at all. Without his ability and demon powers, he doubted that he would be able to dodge her attack completely unscathed. So, it was the perfect time to test out his new skill, Moby activated his first ever ice dragon skill, freezing time. As soon as he did, his vision suddenly became shaded a hint of dark purple and everything around him instantly began to slow down, including Abby's incoming attack which gave him just enough time to dodge. As he sidestepped to dodge Abby's attack, he noticed that unlike everything around him, his movements were completely unhindered, as he still remained at his full speed allowing him to completely dodge Abby's attack however only barely, from Abby's perspective, as she smashed her side towards Moby, he suddenly moved unnaturally faster than what she expected, even at his slightly higher power level, before she knew it, Moby was already behind her with his katana pointed straight at her heart. I I surrender. Abby slowly said in shock, dropping her weapon in defeat. The match is over. Moby Kane won. Jaden announced, still unable to believe what she had just witnessed. Moby's movements had all of a sudden unnaturally gotten much faster and sharper, as he was able to do things much more meticulously than before. That. That was so amazing my lord. I knew that you would be able to easily defeat me but I tried my best anyway just like you asked. You are truly an inspiration and proof that I have a lot to work on. Abby said with stars in her eyes, praising Moby just like usual. You actually really surprised me. That move of yours was absolutely crazy good, something I did not at all expect. I also noticed that you are now a lot better at using the scythe than the last time I saw you. I am really proud of you. You nearly mastered such a hard and complex weapon like the scythe in such a short span of time is truly astounding. Your hard work has paid off well. Moby told her with a bright smile. No no no. It was all because I had an amazing teacher. Also, I practice all the techniques and styles you showed me every day. Plus, I had a lot of time to practice in real world scenarios during the exam which had greatly improved my skills as well. This was all thanks to your teachings, thank you so much. Abby said with a deep bow and passion in her voice. No. No. Don't be like that. You are giving me too much credit. Like I said, this was all because of your hard work, all I did was show you the basics and you evolved and incorporated it into your own style of fighting, Moby responded in a serious tone. Thank you for all your kind words. I do not deserve such a kind-hearted lord and a friend like you. Abby said, still in a bow, mumbling the word, friend, as she was not used to seeing her lord and saviour as one of her friends. What kind of conversation is this? They should both learn how to properly take a compliment, Jaden thought, hearing the conversation in front of her that she had heard many times before. However, it never failed to make her think about how silly they sounded arguing about such things. Hey. Moby, what was that thing you did? Were you holding back the entire time or did you just cheat because I am really confused, Jaden asked, determined to find an answer. He he. Well, about that. The only reason I wanted to spar was to test out a new skill I gained from getting my ability, Moby explained, slightly embarrassed, rubbing the back of his head. Suiyuu, what you are telling me is that you cheated correct? Jaden asked, trying to get a better grasp of the situation. Well, yeah, kinda. Moby awkwardly responded. That's pretty cruel of you to do. How do you think Abby feels that you robbed her out of her dash? Jaden said before being abruptly cut off. That's amazing my lord. What new skill was it? I really want to know. Also, Jaden, don't be rude. I am sure that Lord Moby would have been able to dodge that attack even without the help of the skill, and he just wanted to test it out in that scenario because he thought it was ideal. Abby said in excitement. Ha ha. I am glad that you saw through me. You truly understand me very well. Moby said with a laugh, phew. I just dodged a massive bullet. I really should have thought that through more. Moby thought, feeling immense relief. Of course my lord. Like I said. I take a mental note of everything you do and say in order for me to learn and maybe one day be worthy of being your right-hand woman. Abby said with a bright smile that immediately turned flushed red only a split second afterwards. And no. I am sorry. That came out wrong. By right-hand women, I meant like right-hand man, but with woman instead of man or something. I don't know what I was thinking. I am extremely sorry for the misunderstanding. Abby nervously apologized making both Moby and Jaden die of laughter. Ha ha ha. You worry too much. Of course, we knew what you meant, Jaden explained, slowing down a bit as she saw Abby let out a small chuckle of relief to her response. Anyways, what is this new skill of yours? Jaden asked, calming down almost completely as she focused her attention on Moby's new skill once more. Well, the new skill is called, Freezing Time. 
From the name you can probably assume what it does. The skill allows me to slow down time by around 10% for a heavy cost of both mana and demon energy. I had no idea what that exactly meant so I wanted to test it out in battle. I had a few theories of my own. The first was that it slowed down time in a bubble around me and that people from the outside spectating would be able to notice. The second was that it just slowed down time for me and my opponent but I kept my thinking and perception. And third and what I think is more possible is that it slows down time for the entire world around me, allowing me to have the ability to move freely and unhindered by the slowing of time. So, did you notice that anything like that happened? Moby asked Jaden and Abby. When I was spectating, all that I noticed was that you had suddenly become faster and your movements much sharper and more precise than before. I noticed no slowing of time at all. It is probably all in your perception of things or it only applies to your body. I don't know. Something like that. I am just spewing random shit out my ass at this point, Jaden explained. I agree with Jaden. I noticed nothing weird about time other than your movement suddenly becoming faster. It is a good subtle ability that not many people would notice or see coming. It is truly an amazing skill. Abby added. Hum. I see. Thanks for the info guys. I think that should be enough training for today, it has all been really tiring, even with my demon anatomy. We should probably get some rest. School starts again tomorrow after all, Moby said with a yawn. True. I barely had any sleep this week due to all that shit with Natalia. Sleeping right now sounds like a dream, Jaden said, yawning as a result of Moby's contagious yawn, walking towards the exit of the arena. I wanted to craft some new sets of armor with the extra money we got, but I guess I will save that for tomorrow since we have plenty of time before school starts. Moby said in a tired tone, storing his katana inside his inventory before slowly walking towards the exit of the arena with Jaden, then, as he reached the exit, he noticed that someone was still missing. Um. Abby, are you not coming too? Jaden did get a guest room for you and you barely even used it. You've been working really hard this week and you could really use a rest. Trust me, good rest is just as important as training, and you really need it. I am very worried. The makeup that you wore hid the bags under your eyes pretty well but now I see them clear as day. I am only saying this because I care about you. Sleep is good for you both physically and mentally, Moby explained with clear worry and concern in his voice, watching Abby who was training with her side and doing push-ups in the middle of the arena. Abby listened intently to Moby's every advice as she held back her initial words and reaction of saying, I promise that it's fine my lord. Don't worry, I will sleep very soon, right after a little bit of training. Instead, she accepted Moby's words and let aside her fears of being too weak and useless for him, being left behind by future, possibly stronger subordinates as she knew that he indeed really cared about her. She still could not completely get past her fears of scorn and abandonment but she was slowly heading in the right direction, to heal her mental scars, just like how her physical scars had also healed by Moby. Yes. You are of course right my lord. I will come right away. Abby said with a cheerful chuckle, hopping off the arena to join her family, making Moby smile brightly as they all walked to their rooms. Then all walked down the long, expansive hallways, passing by the many servants who were also headed to their rooms to sleep until they reached the big guest room, where Abby was staying. They said their goodbyes and goodnights as she entered her room with a happy yet nervous smile, holding the urge to cry at how happy she had been feeling for the past two. Months, Moby and Jaden then headed straight for Jaden's bedroom as they both shared the same room and slept together, they both entered the room, slamming the door behind them before brushing their teeth, taking a shower before changing their clothes to go to sleep. As they both laid in bed, Jaden decided to make one suggestion that Moby would have been completely crazy to decline. To remember the last night, that they would sleep with each other for a long time because the curfew was being once. Again reinstated once school started, Jaden suggested to have one quick round of rough, hardcore sex until they collapsed of fatigue. Moby of course accepted. And, that, quick round of sex ended up lasting an hour as they both collapsed on the bed heavily panting with flushed red faces. Sex was something they had not done ever since their first time with Natalia spectating which made it feel really different. Better in its own ways and worse in others. But, all in all, they did not complain as each other's company was all that mattered in their eyes. After cleaning up the mess that was made on the bedsheets that was caused by both parties, they both decided to finally go to sleep. Good night baby. See you again in the morning. Jaden said with a cute chuckle, looking at Moby that was sleeping directly to her right, still sending butterflies down his stomach. Good night to you too babe. Moby replied back with a smile as they both closed their eyes and went to sleep. Hey. Dickhead. Wake your ass up. This is not the time to sleep now fool. You fool. Moby Kane, future king of all demons. It is now time I reveal my reward to you and explain my backstory and a decent amount of what I know about the nether, mortal, and celestial realms, Avilia screamed in his mind with immense enthusiasm, holy shit Avilia. I was awake. I was about to ask you about it before you just scared the fuck out of me. Moby replied, still in a state of shock, shut up. Stop complaining. I can easily keep it to myself if I really wanted to. So, do you want to receive your reward or not? Avilia immediately retorted in a serious yet snarky manner, yes. Yes, I do. Moby immediately replied in a serious yet desperate tone of voice as he was really, really wanted to know more about the truths and realities of the world around him. Chapter 137 Okay, I am glad you seem so passionate and excited about all of this so, I will be starting from the origin. Avilia said with a smile. In the beginning, there existed the three realms, the nether world, celestial world, and the great void in between that is now known as the mortal world. Avilia continued before being unexpectedly interrupted by the still really excited Moby. Wait, why was the great void's name later changed to the mortal world? Moby interrupted Avilia with great interest in his voice because everything that lived here was weak as shit and easily crushed with minimal effort. Now, stop interrupting and let me finish my goddamn story. Avilia immediately retorted with a slight hint of annoyance, as she was starting to really get into what she was saying. Asterisk, asterisk, anyways, as I was saying, the netherworld is very similar to your own with many different planets and such. 
the only difference is that it is much smaller and far denser in demon energy, and that it existed on a completely different plane than this one, it was a world much more toxic, darker, and gloomier than your own with demon beasts, bugs, and regular demons such as me and you that look pretty similar to humans were the living creatures that existed and littered the entire realm. It was also a more, magic, based kind of world than this technological world that you live in today. For almost as long as history could remember, demons fought against the angels and gods in a battle to be able to control the great void that lied between both realms. That fight later evolved into something much more. Into complete hate and animosity between demons and gods that felt almost instinctual, the Great Void was a very large and expansive land, mostly filled with useless space and rock. However, there were some planets with living life forms and very strong and useful ores, and materials giving both demons and angels a good reason to invade. Demons because they wanted to expand their territory and have more to kill to get stronger. And, angels and gods, also to expand their territory and to convert the many races into worshipping them, in turns giving them power. Unlike the celestial realm with a high concentration of holy energy and the nether realm that had a high concentration of demon energy, the mortal realm had an equal balance of demon, and holy energy not giving each side any advantages like they would have if they fought in their own respective territory. Demons were a selfish, heartless group of barbarians that, like you know, feed off negative energy and grow stronger the more they killed. They used to travel in tribes, killing everyone and everything that was not a part of them in order to gain strength to rule other tribes and not be crushed. It was a very dog-eat-dog -dog world, far worse than the one you live in right now. The stronger and higher level demons were the ones that had killed the most and were usually the leaders of each tribe. Different planets housed many different tribes and clans, some really small, weak, and insignificant like the one I was in and ones that were big enough to have their own cities, and sometimes kingdoms where all types of shenanigans went down, although the tribes hated each other's guts and fought for supremacy, they both shared a big common hatred for angels and gods. Setting their hostility aside in order to fight them before turning on each other whenever they had the chance, demons travel between planets and long distances using special dimensional magic very similar to the teleporters you have in your world. This type of magic was only known by select few demons and certain ones that spent the time to learn it as it was not a race-specific skill, just like your inventory. However, some races did have a higher affinity for it making it much easier to learn and faster and more powerful when used, usually. Each tribe had at least one demon that knew dimensional magic in order for them to better navigate. On the other hand, the celestial world was not filled with many planets like the nether and mortal worlds, and was instead one large plane that housed everything on it. I have only ever visited the celestial world once and it was a very light-filled, cloudy, cheerful place with many islands just floating in mid-air of a cloudy pink void where the many cities and civilizations lived. They had a much more structured and orderly way of life unlike the purely barbarian-like behaviors of the demons at the time. The normal angels were ruled by the many gods, ones that owned their own territories and the many archangels that were under them. Although there were a few on their same level like Duma, the strongest archangel during my time, to my knowledge, the gods were mostly on good terms with each other and agreed to join forces in order to take down the demons that wanted to kill all of their worshippers, and invade the lands that they had already established in the mortal realm, at least that was how. It appeared like to me, I could still be completely wrong. Also, they agreed to have a more or less equal split of worshippers, all but one. Zione, god of war, was also the strongest god at the time and ruler of all the gods. He was the one that kept balance and everything under control between all the gods. He was also the one that received the most worshippers, and faith out of all of them as he was the one who discovered the existence of the mortal realm in the first place, giving him a head start compared to all the gods that followed him later on. Luckily for the angels and the rest of the lower gods, again, only to my limited knowledge about the subject, Zione was a righteous ruler that barely overused his powers and used it mostly to keep balance between some of the gods, and the animosity between each other. The angels were the first ones to have discovered the mortal realm and the demons only came to it around thousands or so years later, possibly more than that but nobody really knew. When the demons found and wiped out their first ever civilization in the mortal world, it triggered a reaction from all angels and gods, marking the start of the seemingly never-ending Great Seraphodemon War, by the time that demons had reached them, the angels and gods had already accumulated a very good amount of faith and holy energy from their many worshippers, making them almost on par with the average demon, the keywords were, almost on par. The average demon was still stronger than the average angel and the average high-level greater demon, was still stronger than the average god or archangel. However, the war was even and stood at a standstill as the angel army was much, much more organized than that of the demons that worked all alone or in tribes making them easier to fight. Eventually, the tides of the war would shift in favor of the angels and their growing strength, planning, and organization while the demons only grew more dysfunctional and less in numbers due to all of their infighting. Plus, the angels had a slight number advantage as they, once again, had much less infighting, both during the war and before it. The war was in a dire state and the demons were all on the verge of being wiped out losing control of the mortal realm, which would give the angels a power boost, most likely also giving them enough power to be able to invade the netherworld despite the power nerf that they would receive. This event made the legendary dragons, one of the strongest, if not the strongest demon at the time, feared all around the netherworld to come out of hiding to join the war in order to help the demon race survive. Also that was what the average demon perceived. Not much was known about the dragons as they lived hidden amongst the tribes and cities disguised in their regular, non-transformed demon form, while some, along with other dangerously strong demons lived on very exterior planets that nobody dared come near due to the immensely dense, amount of demon energy surrounding it and the aura of absolute terror, death and mystery. Dragons were able to do this as they were rumored to not only gain power from killing and negative energy but also from age, making them one of the calmest and least aggressive type of demon by far. So, making them come out of hiding to join the war efforts and save the entire race was a very big yet unexpected deal, many rumors surfaced about why the dragons joined the war but nobody knew. Nobody knew until I asked them when I went to them to invite them to join my new demon nation that would unite the entire race under one banner, and ruler which they swiftly declined, Avilia said before getting cut off. So. What did they say? Why did they join the war? I really want to know. Moby interrupted her once again as he got really excited about her talking about dragons. Stop interrupting my train of thought. I'll get to that part when I go more into personal detail about my life. So shut up. Avilia bellowed making Moby go quiet once again. Asterisk ahem asterisk. So, as I was saying, although there had been other strong races of demons that participated in the war, the arrival of the dragons was the thing that completely changed it. 
They were more than able to push back the angel army. They were able to give the demons the upper hand in the war for the first time in possibly millions or maybe even billions of years. Many gods, archangels, and dragons were slain from battles and exchanges between each other, until the dragons backed off due to them losing too many of their numbers as they already fulfilled their part and more, once again going back to hiding, giving the demons the upper hand but not as much as before, around that time was the first time that young, little weak peasant me ever witnessed a real dragon while I was walking back to my tribe with buckets full of water from the Sea of Ghana, as it was flying above in the crimson sky, its scaly red glory glowing on full display, roaring loudly in the sky as it went back to its own den on a faraway planet. At that time and even still, I consider it to be the most amazing and most memorable thing that I ever witnessed in my short yet, long life. It really lifted my spirits during a very dark and depressing time, after the dragons left the battle, the demons discovered something that completely broke the fundamentals of the world and shifted the tides as well. The discovery that certain types of really strong demons could turn living creatures in the mortal realm into their demon servants, this was more important than you might imagine. Demons live for thousands to millions of years and have a really low rate of pregnancy meaning that birthing new demons was a fairly rare occasion. So, being able to suddenly create a large amount of seemingly loyal servants out of nowhere was a big game changer, and was something completely unexpected by the angels that could not do the same unless the mortal had a pure heart of gold, like that near friend of yours, oh? About that, I have always wondered how old you were. Moby asked, interrupting Avilia one more time. Don't you think it's rude to ask a lady for her age? And if you really want to know, I was only at the ripe young age of 2,823 years old when I died which I guess is fairly long for a fetus like you, Avilia replied with plain conviction. What the fuck? You are 2,800 years old. You call that young? You are just a shriveled up old hag. Moby said, trying his best to hold in his laughter only to end up in absolute failure. Yes. That is still very young for a demon. Plus, many demons don't even live long enough to hit that age due to all the fighting and killing so I actually consider myself really lucky. Avilia replied with a hint of anger and annoyance, trying her best to defend herself. I now imagine you as a short, grey-haired old hag masking her voice with demon energy to make you sound young and sexy. Moby added, still laughing. True, come to think of it, I never really showed you how I look like did I? If you allow me to use 1000 of your XP I would be able to project to you an image of how I used to look like when I was still, in my prime, right before I died, Avilia said with clear confidence in her voice. How do I know that you aren't going to scam me and show me a younger picture of yourself or, maybe even a hotter demon, like one of your friends or something? Moby said in a joking manner. I swear it will be me so give me your fucking XP to let me show you my young, hot, image before I continue my story. Oh, and before you do, I'll have you know that I was known to be hotter than even many succubi and was hailed as not only the demon queen, but also the beauty queen so you better prepare yourself. Maybe you would even simp for me instead of that girlfriend of yours? Avilia said with a loud, bold laugh. First things first, even if you were the most beautiful existence in all of the three realms, which I highly doubt, I would not simp for you or fall in love for that matter at all. I am a 100% faithful man. Take that measly 1000 XP and show me how you look you old bag of bones. Moby said with a smile on his face and no hesitation at all. Ha ha ha. Well. You asked for it. Here it is. Now simp for me. Chapter 138. Moby had his eyes closed, sleeping as he was listening to Avilia's story with evident engagement. Now, something was happening that he did not at all expect to occur when going into it. After many months of knowing each other, Moby was finally going to find out how Avilia looked like. Unlike his words, he did not expect to find an old hag as he knew that the demon aging process was very different from that of humans. However, he was lying if he said that he expected what he saw. From the black darkness of his closed eyelids emerged a flash of blinding purple light. Out of it appeared a beautiful and fair young lady. Her hair was a silky smooth purple that had an ominous glow and fell down to her bosom. Out of the top of her head emerged two, sharp devil-like purple horns that looked similar to his own only much longer with some demonic runic writing written on them. She had bright purple eyes that had nearly exactly the same look as his eyes of sin, only with a much more complex structure and a brighter glow, including the red pupils in her eyes. Her luscious red lips, long eyelashes, and relatively thick eyebrows emphasized the beauty of her face and the rest of her features such as her clear, slightly pale skin. From underneath her face laid a golden necklace around her neck that looked identical to the one that he used to wear before it was crushed. The only difference was that it did not have his family motto engraved on it like he remembered. Even further below she wore a magnificent set of tight, slightly revealing armor, more intimidating than any set of armor he had ever laid eyes upon before in his life. It was a mostly black and purple set of heavy metal looking armor that had demonic engraving, and patterns all over it with skull-like shoulder pads. Due to it being so tight, it was very clear to see and admire her hourglass figure with a narrow waist and wide hips, it also made it easier to see how big and voluptuous her breasts were that were nearly bursting out of her armor. From her back, were a pair of purple and black demon wings that spanned over two meters in length that looked dangerous yet still had a level of elegance and beauty to them. From what he saw, he estimated her to be around five foot ten inches in height, only two inches shorter than him which not bad at all. For her pose, she just stood there in a casual manner with a snarky smirk, exactly like how he imagined her facial expression to be most of the time that he talked to her. What was in front of him was clearly a fake projection, but the level of realism and detail made it look extremely real and lifelike. Moby just stared at the woman in front of him in absolute awe. He would be lying to himself if he said that she was not the most beautiful person he had ever seen in his entire life, Avilia clearly was not kidding when she said that. He wondered if he would look just like her after his next evolution. He could also not deny that if he had not known about Jaden, he would have definitely simped for her to some degree yet not to the point of bending to her complete will like a cuck, the keywords were, if he had never met Jaden. Moby was a loyal man and would never waver no matter the odds and challenges thrown his way and that was no different. Looks might be important but personality was even more important and he was not about to leave Jaden for any other girl in the world, no matter how beautiful. Jaden was already more than beautiful enough for him with a good personality to boot. Especially leaving her for a girl such as Avilia. A girl that has no body and lives in his head as a system to judge and help get him stronger, although he did promise her to be able to eventually find her a suitable body and a safe way of transferring her into it. 
Damn. I know that you can read my mind so I won't lie or hold anything back. You are indeed the most beautiful person I have ever laid my eyes upon. But. I will definitely not sin for you as I already have a beautiful girlfriend of my own. Moby replied with confidence as Avilia's projection suddenly and abruptly disappeared. Ha ha ha. I knew it. No one can resist my charms. I'll take it. It seems like you are a very loyal man indeed. I respect that but at least you are honest in saying who looks better. Avilia said with a cheerful laugh. Okay. I get it Mrs. Beautiful Demon Milf, just get back to the story. Moby replied with no hesitation at all. Hey. Who are you calling a milf? Like I said, I am still very young for a demon so I, eh, fuck it, whatever, I am not even gonna bother, back to the story. Avilia said with a long sigh. I was part of the Greymore tribe as you could probably assume from my last name. The tribe lived on an extremely small planet called Planet Etna that not only housed my tribe but multiple other ones as well. In comparison to most other tribes and clans across the netherworld, mine was definitely amongst some of the weakest and was one of the tribes that never dared set foot in the Great Void to fight the angels and maybe find some extra mortals to kill. My home planet, Planet Etna was a very red, rocky, desert-like planet with very little plants and vegetation. Luckily, my tribe later managed to find a river of red liquid that was not blood that we later named, the Sea of Gehenna. Out of my entire tribe, I was both the youngest and weakest out of all of them as I was born rather, special, to say the least. I was the only one in the entire tribe that was born very weak, without any specialization, or anything unique to me. It was almost like I was completely raceless compared to the many different races that existed in my tribe that ranged from Quinces, all the way to Warlocks. This was due to me being a demon of sin, something that no one knew even existed at the time, that only received their powers and skills only once they evolved from a lesser demon to a normal demon. The only reason you ever even had any skill to speak of before your first evolution was because I was nice enough and generous enough to gift you with them out of my own powers. This includes your mind skills, eyes of sin, nightmare, and devil's hand skills. Anyways, I am getting kinder off topic, like I was saying, every day without any exceptions, I was mocked, made fun of as weak and disabled by my entire tribe. At times they even contemplated outright killing me for power, as I was seen as nothing more than a waste of space that leached off the power gains of the rest of the tribe, if it weren't for my parents who were considered one of the strongest demons in the entire tribe, I would have been dead long ago. Although they were not allowed to do it very often, they were nice enough to let me have a few kills on demon beasts as they got it down to one strike for me to finish the job. This gave me a little bit of power but nowhere near as much as all the other kids in the tribe. Nevertheless, I was so glad that I had been gifted with such caring, kind souls such as then, I was truly fortunate as they were definitely not like the average demon, just like you I was beaten and tortured every day by all the demon children only on a much, much, larger and more painful scale. Avilia Greymore, the disabled, useless waste of air that did nothing but leech off others and their power gains. They mostly did it in secret, but sometimes in public where the adults would join in the mockery and beatings, until my parents came to save my life, unlike you, I did not have my negative emotions absorbed as I spiraled down into deep sadness and depression, even contemplating killing myself. However, I would always stop myself from doing so every time as to not upset my kind-hearted and hard-working parents, the day when I was saw that crimson dragon flying over me in the sky, as I was carrying water from the Sea of Gehenna all the way back to my tribe, I was suddenly filled with hopes and motivations of one day being just as strong as that dragon, and burn down all that opposed me in one fell swoop. It was like it saw me struggling so it flew down close to me to give me motivation. I swore I was even able to see a smirk on its face, and a nod towards me before it flew away at unbelievable speed. I could no longer just sit alone, accepting my name and fate as a disabled demon. I decided to fight my fate and take revenge on all those who had wronged me, so, during the few nights that my tribe went to sleep, I would always sneak out to go hunting the much stronger and really dangerous wild demon beasts all on my own, trying my best to isolate them out of their pack before sneak attacking them with a rock, the only weapon that I had access to, for a seemingly easy kill. Then, after each kill, I would hide and bury the corpses underground as to hide them, trying my best to leave no trace or leads at all. As for my empty bed, I did not worry much about it as my tribe rarely ever woke up or patrolled during the night. My little dirty hut where I slept all alone in the cold was somewhere that even fewer people visited, but I decided to fill my sleeping bag with a bunch of rocks to make it seem like I was still there just in case of the off chance that someone actually took a peek inside, little young me was scared shitless for more reasons than one. The first, and most worrying reason was that if I was somehow caught hunting without permission of her tribe, it would be seen as no more than treason and I would be no doubt executed for my crimes, even my parents would be useless in doing anything about it despite their high status in the clan. And, second, was that the beasts were far, far stronger than me and every time I went hunting I would have an extremely high chance of death, even when fighting one with sneak attacks as who knows what could go wrong. Plus, it sometimes took more than one sneaky strike to kill even the weakest of beasts making it even more dangerous than I first anticipated. However, luckily for me, I only ever had problems killing beasts a few times but out of all of them, I still came out extremely battered and barely alive which was well worth it in the end, I kept on doing this secret hunting for many years, slowly feeling myself get stronger with every session, ignoring all the anger and pain that was bottled up. Within me as the kids of the tribe still beat the shit out of me as I did not want to reveal my true powers, until I was sure that I was able to kill every last one of them. The tribe did notice the sudden slight decrease in demon beasts, but it was not noticeable enough for them to assume that anything extremely unnatural was going on so they just went on with their lives. If anything, they just assumed that it was probably an opposing tribe that was lurking nearby. Then, one day, as I was training and killing beasts during the night, much more casually and more easily than before as I was much stronger than I was when I first started, not feeling the need to sneak attack anymore, my luck had suddenly run out. I was caught by one of the tribe kids who had woken up to take a piss, only to randomly stumble on me fighting a good few miles away from the main camp, he saw and spectated me from a distance, hiding behind a rock watching me easily kill all of the demon beasts with nothing other than my bare feet and arms, a devilish smile on my face as I smashed and destroyed everything in my path pure vigor, he could not believe his eyes. Me, the disabled leech was somehow able to casually defeat all of those low class demon beasts, that he or even the strongest kid in the tribe who was at the time hundreds of years older than me could not kill. It was absolutely mind blowing, so, he tried his best to escape and get back to the tribe to inform them about what he had just witnessed, however, I was able to spot him as he carelessly fled out in the open, not suspecting me to see or catch him from such a distance. 
However, due to the use of my energy sense, which was very similar to the one you have, but only my own creation that I had developed to determine the energy signature, and strength of magical beasts so that I did not attack anything too out of my league, I was easily able to spot him and gauge his power, giving me the okay to attack him as he was much weaker than I was due to the training and hunting I did during the past few years, anyway. Long story short, I ended up catching up to him. Before he was able to reach the tribe, beating the shit out of him despite him being a lava demon and me having no such specialization. At that point, my base strength and speed was already more than enough to outmatch him in every way to the point that he never even stood a chance. As I picked up his nearly unconscious body by the head with one hand like it was a basketball, I was ready to deliver the final blow to end it. I had planned to kill him and bury him, making it seem like he strayed too far away from the tribe's camp and ended up being eaten up by the many demon beasts that were lurking in the area. However, for some strange reason that I can't for the life of me remember, I injected him with my demon energy. That was undoubtedly one of the best decisions of my life, by doing so, I was able to override his mind and demon energy stream with my own, allowing me to have complete control over his every move like he was my own puppet, exactly the same as your control over your servants. I then finally found my power that was seemingly not there at all. I was able to override another demon's demon energy flow and force them to follow my every will and command. Chapter 139 With that power, I felt almost unstoppable, like I could take over the world and get revenge on all of those that wronged me. Which was exactly what I did, I ordered the boy I got under my control to invite the other kids over to have turns, beating me up, one by one in private until I grovel on the ground and beg for mercy. At first, they found the idea a little odd. But, in the end, they decided to go with it anyway as they were convinced it would be a fun time, every time one of them would come, I would beat the shit out of them before injecting them with my demon energy to take full control over them. I would also beat myself up heavily to make it seem like it was working, and to encourage more kids to join only for them to be defeated as well, in the short span of one day, I was able to take full control over every single kid in the tribe, beating the shit out of all of them one by one, telling them to act like they had won and destroyed me before sending them back to tell the next person to go and meet their doom. At that moment, I felt more alive than ever before, seeing the once arrogant and proud faces of all those kids that used to beat me up and torture me every day turn into a face filled with despair, crying and groveling on the ground, was indeed a pleasant sight and filled me with immense satisfaction. However, that happiness and satisfaction had its limit and could not last forever, while me and the kids were having our little game, the adults had went hunting and came across another tribe of demons. They both fought very vigorously causing many casualties on both sides before they backed off, out of the many casualties, my parents were one of them and my good mood was absolutely ruined and took a complete 180 degree turn. Even though I had full control of every last kid in the tribe, what was the point of victory and revenge if my parents would not be there to share in the glory? The only people that ever helped me out when I was in need, during the funeral, I noticed the many deadly glares of all of the adults, looking at me like I was nothing more than a dead slab of meat. I knew my parents were the only reason that I was even alive and that I did not have long to live after the funeral. So, I did not have time to properly sob and grieve for their deaths as I myself was at risk of joining them very soon, so, I had to act quick, later that night, I ordered the son of the tribe leader to lure his father out to a cave as he claimed to have found a rare looking item. There, all the kids that I had under my control, including his own son, sneak attacked the leader, who was barely even above the rank of a lesser demon, when they least expected, stabbing them over 50 times before they knew what even happened despite the immense strength difference, allowing me to have the chance to turn him into one of my loyal servants as well, even if he was dozens of times stronger than me, he was still powerless under my control, it made me believe that my powers had no limits, as long as I knocked them out and injected my demon energy, I would have an army of unlimited loyal demon servants that would bend to my every will, that night, I had blast torturing the tribe leader for fun, watching his face of disbelief as I beat the shit out of him with him having no idea why he could not move, or even speak as all the tribe children stared at the spectacle in absolute horror, once again, including the tribe leader son who could not stop screaming and begging me to let his father be which I found pretty hilarious as even when I used to beg and plead, he would do absolutely nothing, I managed to get a lot of vital information out of the elder, the first of which was that they had planned to kill me the next morning in front of the entire tribe as a demonstration of what happens to weak and useless leeches like me. He also admitted that although he did not want my parents to die as they were strong warriors and important to the tribe, he was not entirely sad as he was finally going to get rid of scum like me, which led to me torturing him even harder. The next day, according to my will, the clan leader decided to overturn my death sentence and leave me be for a little longer as to respect the death of my parents who were strong, proud warriors that fought for the tribe's survival and even if it would be beneficial for me to die, it would have been extremely disrespectful to them and their legacy. That idea received an immense amount of scorn and ridicule from the rest of the tribe as most of them opposed to the decision. But, in the end, they agreed to it as their children seemed to have been happier than usual, probably from beating me up, the tribe's useless trash and so they decided to let me live for a few more weeks to a month at most, next, over the next four days, with the help of the tribe elder, I was able to lure out and take down all of the adults in the tribe with minimal trouble due to the leader's strength and authority, I was then officially the leader of the entire tribe, me, the new leader, Avilia Graymore. The looks on their faces were priceless when I gathered them all up and ordered them to prostrate before me with looks of anguish and defeat on their faces. If I was being honest, I wanted nothing more than to kill all of them on the spot for all that they have done to me, but I fought the urge to do so in favor of ruling over them as I noticed that every time they killed something, I would receive half of all the negative power they got from killing as a bonus, making me gain strength at an incredible amount of speed with the only catch being that every time I would kill, all of them would receive an extra half of my negative power gain which was not a big deal at all, and could be used to my advantage if I played my cards right, later that day, as my entire tribe was still fighting beasts while I sat back and got free XP, I noticed that my grasp on one of my subordinates was starting to slip away that one being the lava demon kid that was the first person that I made into my servant, I waited patiently until I completely lost my grip of him only to find out that I had also lost my control of him as well. When he noticed that he had his own free will again, he could not believe it as he tried his best to blend in and act naturally like he was still under my control, that sneaky bastard thought he could trick me but I was well aware of his antics, so, naturally, I caught him and beat the shit out of him once more in front of the entire tribe before trying to inject him with my demon energy once again, however, to my surprise, no matter how many times I injected him, he would not bend to my will like all the other times, like he had complete immunity which was exactly the case. 
So, I ended up executing him swiftly to gain power for myself, this made me figure out a crucial weakness in my power, I was only able to have full control over a demon for an entire week before my control period ran out. And, once a demon is injected with my demon energy once, he would grow completely immune to it if I tried it again, this meant that my control over all the other kids would run out the next day, which would be extremely bad, as I doubted to be able to take all of them out at once. And, the day after that would be even worse as the former clan leader would snap out of my control and no doubt tear me to shreds, so, I needed to kill and get rid of every single person in my entire tribe in a way that would be the most beneficial to me, and give me the most power. So, after a little bit of thinking, I decided to do the best thing I could think of, later that same day, I ordered my tribe to go searching the entire area around until they spotted that same tribe that they had fought the other day only for them to, find them after a few hours of searching. I then ordered my tribe to go on a full-on attack, going to war with the other tribe when they least expected it, the battle was very bloody and gory, guts and organs flying everywhere as the screams of kids and adults dying in agony resounded around in the air. I of course was just waiting on the exterior of the tribe's village, spectating the entire fight from afar just enjoying the XP shower as my presence in the fight would be too risky, and would not even change the final outcome by that much in the first place. I did however enjoy picking up a few rocks, chucking them at the opposing tribes in order to distract them and give my army the advantage, I even managed to get a few kill steals. Ha ha ha. It was the perfect plan. I would be able to kill my entire tribe while at the same time killing the other one that was responsible for killing my parents, in the end, they had almost completely wiped each other out, there were only three people left alive in my tribe, including the elder and only four remaining from the other. All seven of the remaining warriors were extremely tired and injured, allowing me to go and take them out with minimal effort, which was exactly what I did, the last two warriors remaining alive were me, and the clan elder that was dying and bleeding out on the ground. So, I did him a favor by grabbing his heart and ripping it out of his body, killing him in one fell swoop as I smiled in his face like a true demon, I remembered his final words clear as day, as they had only just happened yesterday, w what the fuck are you? You are a demon amongst demons. How could a little weak, useless bitch like you do all of this? If only I had the ability to move, I would squeeze your brains and tear you to shreds if I had the strength to. What kind of power do you even have? A villier grey dash. Those were his last words before I ripped his heart out and separated his skull from the rest of his body using only one hand. After I killed him, I felt an empty feeling inside my head, something I knew the exact meaning of, but did not expect to happen at such a young age. Most demons would sometimes take one hundreds to even thousands of years to reach that point and I managed to do it in a fraction of that time. Due to my ability to make many servants, it was my evolution. Like you would assume, it was the most physically painful thing that I ever experienced. It was pretty much the same thing that you went through so I won't go into detail, when I evolved, I unlocked a multitude of skills including the devil's hand, pure demon energy manipulation, eyes of sin, nightmare, air steps, drain, and many more that I do not want to tell you as to not spoil the fun. I want you to find them out by yourself and be able to experience their strength first hand. Plus, it's fun to see your reaction to all the fun new skills you will unlock in the future. I sure get pretty excited whenever you unlock one of your new ability skills or dragon skills. Dragons have always fascinated me. Asterisk ahem asterisk anyways, I am getting a little off topic, back to the story, after everyone had died, I was the only one left, so I scavenged all the houses and dead corpses, managing to find the strongest sets of armors and weapons, which in the end, what I ended up choosing was a katana, the same weapon as you and a light set of Noga scale armor, that was my beginning, my origin, and the start of my journey as demon lord. Chapter 140. After that, I did not stop my goal, I wanted to grow even stronger. Kill more. Prove my worth to the world. And that was exactly what I did, in that same month, I was able to conquer my entire home planet, planet Etna, I tested out my ability on demon beasts only to find out that it also worked without a problem. And, with a horde of demon beasts by my side, I was able to easily take out every last tribe on the planet with minimal difficulty. Out of everyone, I left a few of them alive as my loyal servants, making them bend and submit their will to me as I ruled them with an iron fist, keeping them even after my one week control over them was over. I needed a few normal subordinates, not just a few beasts that I control for one week before killing them off. One of those subordinates later became my best friend, Jahira, a succubus and future sin of lust. I don't want to go into detail on how we met as I will save the stories of how I met all the sins for another time. Anyways, when every last demon on the planet had died, I noticed that there was a big problem. My dumbass forgot to keep a person that knew dimensional magic alive, which meant that we were completely stranded on planet Etna with no way to escape from it, however, that did not make me give up or lose hope of my dreams and ambitions, if anything, it made me work even harder. For the next few days preceding that, I trained long and hard with Jahira's help to try my best to learn dimensional warping magic to travel from planet to planet, which ended in failure. But not in complete failure, in fact, it was one of the most revolutionary moments in demon history. Instead of learning warping dimensional magic, I discovered how to make a dimensional pocket space that allowed me to store whatever I wanted which made my life much easier in so many ways. And, not long after that, right before I was about to lose control of all my servants and beasts, I had finally been able to learn dimensional warping magic, even though I was never the best at it. Question. Since you had dimensional warping magic and I am your successor, it is only natural for me to be also able to learn such magic as well, correct? Moby asked with excitement, stars in his eyes as he interrupted Avilia once again. Well duh. Obviously. Stop asking stupid questions and let me continue my story. Asterisk ahem asterisk, so, after I learned warping magic, I traveled from planet to planet, easily conquering all of them one by one, my demon army growing stronger the more planets I conquered to the point that I had many loyal servants that bent to my every will, even without my powers of injecting my demon energy into them, I was starting to form a new tribe, later known as the Greymore tribe that later evolved into a clan before lastly turning into a household, I even managed to evolve into a greater demon during my conquest, a feat that was definitely not easy at all to say the least, especially at my age. From the fact that I killed all that opposed me and left rubble everywhere I went, I was given the title of Ilya Greymore, the Demon Scourge. My name slowly became the most feared name in all of the netherworld. Even uttering my name sent waves of fear to everyone that heard it, on my journey of conquest, I learned many things, to know who your true friends are. Out of all of my servants, I only had eight that I was able to soften up to and become friends with. 
However, when it came time to choose the sins, it turned out that I chose the wrong sin of pride as that man betrayed me and mounted a full-on revolution against me, all because I was the reason that his entire clan was wiped out and he never forgot the grudge against me. It was a very tough fight as he managed to rally most of my troops against me due to their hatred, however, in the end, I still managed to come out victorious, but only barely and at the cost of a lot of my military power which was pretty devastating. You must choose your friends wisely, trust me, I learned that the hard way, pay attention to everything. Although me and Pride seemed like really good friends, it was not at all the case because I was too blind to pick up on it and it cost me dearly. The second lesson is that you must actually be a good ruler, not ruling with an iron fist, forcing people to do whatever you want, that is how you start a revolution against you. If I had just acted just and normal to my subordinates, the revolution would have probably never even happened as I would have had the public support. Of course, that does not mean that you can't flex your authority but be mindful of your actions. And that was what that incident made me do and realize, anyways, enough of the sappy life lessons, you probably knew all of that, so, eventually, one day as I was sleeping in my small palace on one of the biggest planets in the netherworld, Sebers, I received a call from Estelle, the sin of envy that there was a huge army right outside of the castle, and, when I looked outside my window, what I saw was indeed an entire demon army that spanned for even longer than the eye could see. The army seemed to be led by many greater demon generals that had the banners of their own respective clan and tribes, which I found really perplexing as rarely do clans ever team up together, however, even with their extreme numbers advantage, I was still confident I could beat them as I told Estelle to not worry at all, as I approached their army expecting to be attacked, everyone in the entire army ended up prostrating themselves to me instead, something that greatly startled me beyond. What you could even imagine, they all asked me if they could join my clan and if I, one of the strongest demons at the time, could lead the newly formed demon alliance, that was by the way formed out of complete desperation because the dragons would not come to save their asses this time, into battle against the angel and god forces that were dominating in the mortal world and are knocking on the door to the nether world, from before, I decided to steer clear of the mortal realm as I heard, that it was a losing battle and had a near zero chance of survival as the angels were immensely powerful and outnumbered us greatly. It was only a place for the stupid and foolishly brave to go to meet their doom, however, with this new army, I was finally able to go to the mortal realm and push the angel forces back, gaining more strength in the process, which was exactly what I did, me and my new army marched into the mortal realm like we owned the place and fought the angel and god forces to a standstill. I even managed to tie Zione, god of war, the strongest god at the time in a fight after I evolved even further beyond a greater demon from all of the angel killing, the first ever demon, at least to my knowledge, to be able to do so. And before you ask, no, I will not reveal what this evolution was, it was something pretty unique and you will get it when you get it. So, anyway, due to my new immense power boost, we started to push back the angel forces. Also, this made more random, weak and strong demons decide to come out of hiding and join the fight. It was the first and only time in history that we demons fought together as one united force to destroy a common enemy. We only had a few cases of demons killing other demons for XP, which was very good to say the least as there are always expectations to everything and having so few people do it was an absolute win. For many many long, long years of fighting, I became the general and leader of the entire demon army that I unified under my clan and name, making everyone behave despite all the arrogant demons that had objections which was no doubt a great achievement by me. At the moment in history, I was the only demon that was followed by a large majority of the race with near full consensus and low opposition. And with my leadership and expertise, we managed to force the angels and gods into a standstill, no race winning over the other. So, in the end, me and Zione, god of war, decided to sign a treaty and deal. Other than a few expectations, the rules were that no demon was allowed to set foot in the mortal realm, and also no angel was allowed to step into the mortal realm making each realm just keep to their own as to not give the other race a clear advantage. I looked back to my army and noticed how all if not most of them were in shambles and have nearly reached their limit for how much they could fight. So, I decided to sign the treaty as I thought that I was doing the right thing, at first, I thought that I was going to be cursed and betrayed by my own army and followers, but instead, I was hailed as a hero. The hero that single-handedly ended the seemingly never-ending Great Seraphodemon War, and with that, I was crowned as the first ever demon lord of the netherworld at the young, young age of 1928. I would be lying if I said that I was not extremely happy, and felt really accomplished and determined to rule over the entire realm as well as I could with my immense amount of strength. On planet Sebers, one of the biggest found planets in the netherworld is where I built the great country of Greymoor, the first, and most important country of my many that will soon to come as it was known as the royal country, soon, the entire planet was filled with countries, kingdoms, and cities making it. The central and most important planet in the entire netherworld, where all the major shit happened. It also happened to be the most populated planet with around 60% of the race, excluding beasts, living on it. I made new rules and reform to make things fairer to all, making police and things of the such enforce the rules, something that the public did not like at first, but, they eventually grew accustomed to it. We needed to abandon our pure barbaric roots. It would make it easier to rule and control the population while at the same time reducing the chances of revolts or revolutions. However, it was always in a demon's nature to grow stronger, and if killing was not legal and is very punishable, how would they be able to get stronger? So, I formed something called an Adventurer's Guild, where they form groups and explore the many, many unexplored planets in the realm, reporting to us what was going on there while killing the beasts for XP. It was a win-win situation. And, just like I thought, it became a big hit with the demons who wanted to grow stronger. My goal as Demon Lord was to unite and rule over all of the demon tribes. As for there to be zero to no outliers for me to worry about as I conquered and destroyed all the ones that refused to submit under my will. All but the dragons who were an exception, when I went to the dragon planet, as I was invited, to ask them for their cooperation, I was very surprised to say the least. The amount of gold and treasure on that blue planet was actually insane. It was like they were hoarding it all for no reason which felt extremely weird. When I asked them to join my demon nation where I would protect and give them many benefits, they immediately declined without any hesitation saying that they are fine alone and want to keep to themselves which I thought was pretty respectable. And, when I asked them about why they joined the fight against the angels back in the day, they responded kinda weirdly like they did not want to tell me the answer. But, from what I was able to piece together, it had something to do with an egg and their new king being born or something along those lines. And, when I asked to go see the baby, my request was immediately rejected without a second thought as they did not trust me around him at all, so, I left the dragon planet completely empty handed other than that they won't participate in my affairs from the outside, and keep to themselves which was I guess better than nothing, now you understand why I. 
Know so little about the dragon race, anyways, I ruled over the nether world for the next 1000 years or so, only having major problems a few times with groups of terrorists, cultists, and traitors constantly popping up frequently around the nation which was easily resolved by even me personally sometimes. However, what came next was something I did not at all expect, out of nowhere, many angels and gods descended from the skies above, raining magic on all the civilians below. They had broken our treaty of non-aggression and to leave the mortal realm alone. They managed to do it before I could as I had planned to attack them in the next 10 to 50 years which was really unlucky. I had a few spies patrolmen always in the mortal world, constantly patrolling just in case and to report to me if anything suspicious was going on. I would always receive feedback and reports daily using mind link and nothing seemed to be out of place so, I had no idea what was going on and how as I was not notified any time before the attack, I could only assume that my patrolmen were traitors or threatened. Either way, I knew that I was fucked, in the short span of two hours, almost one third of planet Cebus's population had been completely wiped out, despite the fact that we demons were supposed to hold a major advantage in the netherworld, the angels were for some reason on par or even in some cases stronger, I later found out that it was because they had been gaining an immense amount of faith energy the entire time from all of the mortals that had, not forgotten about the man from there. Breaking of the treaty making me realize how dumb or manipulated my patrolmen were, and how stupid I was for allowing it as I did not pay enough attention to it because I focused on other things like politics and training, not to mention my hobby for crafting and many other things, I had no idea and could not fathom at the time but the seemingly righteous, pure and innocent angels and gods would pull such a thing on me and break our treaty, even before I got the chance to, long story short. Me and the seven deadly sins fought back the angels and gods as they were still beating us due to their strength, and numbers advantage this time around, not forgetting their sneak attack. And this time, I was somehow losing to Zione, god of war, on my own turf despite me being equal to him on an equal playing field only 1000 years prior, as I turned back and looked at the struggling and nearly dead bodies of my still struggling friends, and the faces of all of my servants and civilians trying their best to run away. I could not just wait idly by as I watched everything I had built up and created crumble and being burned down to the ground, so. I chose to do the ultimate sacrifice for the survival of my nation and people, I flew recklessly straight into the heart of the enemy army, taking out everyone and everything in my path only to be stopped by Zione and his dual wielded swords, that was when I executed my final trump card. I overloaded my body with all the surrounding demon energy, including my inner energy, until I exploded in a big magnificent explosion of demon energy. The blast was so large and powerful that it immediately killed Zione in an instant along with many, many, other gods and angels that were around him in the vicinity which was over half their army, allowing my troops to finally come out victorious. And, before my soul was completely destroyed, I managed to use a personal secret technique to seal it, and all my powers away into my necklace that I saved from being vaporized in the blast, the same one that ended up in your possession. And before you ask, yes. I blew myself up for the sake of my people. I am kinda weird right? He he. I guess things change about you when you start feeling a ruler's responsibilities, plus, a lot of my friends made me loosen up a little and act more casual and open-minded. Trust me, I was not always like this. In fact, I was always really serious back in the day. I am not the same person that I was when I first started my journey but I would like to argue that I am just as cruel. Avilia said with a loud hearty laugh. So, there you go kid, that is a general summary of my life story just like I promised. If you have any questions don't be afraid to shoot them my way. Avilia said in a sad yet cheerful tone as she began to think back on the days that she was still alive. Chapter 141 Okay, before I ask anything I must say that you had it pretty tough. Thank you for sharing all of that with me, it made me understand more how the world functioned. Thanks for that but it's all in the past now, all I can do now is keep those memories precious and look forward to the future. Anyways, just ask me your questions and I will answer depending on what you asked, Avilia said in a calm, yet sad tone. Um, okay, so? Is there a limit to the number of people in your household that you can share XP with? Moby asked, trying to make the best of the opportunity and squeeze as much information from Avilia as he could. Ha ha ha. Just like many other things, I am not answering that. You should just wait and find out. Avilia replied with a laugh. Okay, second, you said that the sin of pride betrayed you. Does that mean that you killed him? Moby asked. Well, no shit I killed him, tortured the fuck out of him too, all in public to show people what happened when you fuck with me, Avilia replied with no hesitation at all. So, does that mean that you no longer had a sin of pride? Were you down one sin? Can you reassign a sin if one of them died? Moby continued with the second half of his question. Well, of course, you can replace a sin but there is a specific procedure you go through like all the other ones. I of course replaced the old sin of pride with a new, much better and more loyal one. Anything else? Yes, you mentioned that you had visited the celestial realm once, when was that? I don't remember you. Mentioning it, Moby asked. Oh. That, the demons and gods signed two separate treaties, one was signed in the nether world and the other was signed in the celestial world. As you can assume, I was there to sign the treaty in the celestial world so I managed to see a few glimpses of what laid there but not very much. Also, I did indeed feel like my powers were weakened in the celestial realm, so the treaty was signed just at the entrance of the realms as to avoid sneak or underhanded attacks while the other was weakened. I just didn't mention it in my story because I did not find it important, and did not think you would really need that information but I guess I was wrong, Avilia responded with a casual chuckle. Also, you never mentioned how one travels between the three realms. You made it sound really easy. And if that was the case then wouldn't the humans have already discovered the existence of the three realms? Moby asked. I was conscious for a few years after my death, until I completely ran out of negative energy, and went dormant before I woke up around you at the time you began supplying me with negative energy. For some reason that was still beyond me to this day, Zerka, the sin of wrath, the strongest out of all the sins, felt pressure to sign another treaty as the netherworld fell into shambles due to my death, going back to almost what it was prior to my rule. So, he decided to sign the treaty as he did not feel confident of victory if the angels attacked once more. This time, both angels and demons had set it up so that the portal between the dimensions would notify the other party when someone enters, or exits through them while they both kept in close communication in order for what happened to never repeat. 
The angels also agreed to give us major compensation with angel slaves and powerful treasures that they agreed upon. Anyone caught entering or exiting a portal without authorization would be deemed as heretics and be immediately hunted down and executed. And, around that time was when I went into my deep slumber in my necklace, stored in a high security vault in the middle of the demon lord's castle according to my wishes, waiting for the day that I will train and mentor the future demon lord and pass down my strength to whom I deem worthy. The next thing I knew I woke up around the neck of a little crybaby human, trying to kill himself. I found it weird that I was stuck around the neck of a human as I was in the mortal realm where it was supposed to be illegal. It made me wonder how I even got there and if someone had stolen my necklace. That's why it was weird for your parents to have it. There are still many questions that I wanted to be solved but I decided to ignore those for now and focus on seeing if you would make a good demon lord and things of that sort. Even if I wanted to find the answers now, it would be completely impossible. First, I have no idea where the current portal to the netherworld is as they have probably changed the locations. Second, even if I did, I have no idea of what the netherworld state is and I would not tell you where it is or make you go there as you are still far too weak to do anything against many of the demons. Plus, once you enter, even if you are not killed by the many demons, the angels would be notified of your entry and hunt you down instead. It is far too risky right now. Also, both portals are usually really hidden, maybe behind some spells, crystals or arrays to hide it further or to deter intruders, on remote and far away places, making it nearly impossible to find unless they were unimaginably lucky. That's why the humans don't know where they are and probably never will, Avilia explained. I see, okay, last four questions. Do you think that the angels have gotten to earth and are getting faith energy from humans? Am I related to any of the dragons that you have met in the past? Have you ever met an ice dragon? And, do you think that mana-related powers are the powers native to the mortal world, just like how demon energy is native to the nether world and holy energy is native to the celestial world? As for mana, I don't know its origin. I really did found it very obscure. I don't know if you are related to any of the dragons I met and no, I don't think that I have not met an ice dragon before. As for if the angels and gods are getting powers from humans I am also not sure about. The way they gain power is very hard to spot unless you really look at it very closely. Only a few certain religions and faiths have connections to them and the few ones that do are very hard to tell unless you are standing in the middle of them. That was why we demons just outright killed anyone and anything that had any faith or religion as we did not trust anything related to the subject just to be sure. I am not sure if any of your earthly religions are angel related so I just told you to stay clear of all of them just in case. Do you have any other questions? Avilia asked like she was starting to feel tired. No, thanks a lot for everything, you must have had it pretty tough. All of that information will prove useful to me the day that I finally enter the nether world. I am really glad that I have you in my life, I am not sure what I would do without you. Moby said with a smile as he felt like he squeezed her for as much information as he could, plus, he did indeed feel bad for her and her unfortunate past, including her waking up in a completely different era and an unknown world not knowing how her people or even close friends are doing, or if they were even alive. Moby liked Avilia and thought that she was a funny, a nice person to be around. So, he promised to do his best to not let her down. Both in keeping her good company so she doesn't get bored, and to finally go to the netherworld to see how it is, not to forget about him also promising to find her a new body. He he he. Look who finally decided to simp for me. I knew that I was impossible to resist. Avilia said with a cute chuckle. Ha ha ha. Yeah, dream on. Even if you are pretty hot for an old bag of bones, I would never simp for you. Moby responded in a playful manner making Avilia reply by saying, Sui ri, as she laughed even harder. So, anyway, I have got to go to sleep, I need the rest from all the work I have been doing for the past week. Plus, I need to wake up early to do my daily quest and make new armor and weapons with the 30 mil extra I have, all before school once again starts, Moby said with a yawn. Yeah, sleep would be nice. I have not yet slept once since we first met because I had too much on my mind. But now I feel much better. So, good night. Avilia said in a tired voice, before going completely silent. Good night to you too. Moby said with a smile, closing his eyes as he was slowly becoming more excited for the future as today, was by far one of the most eventful days in his entire life. Chapter 142 5 a.m., the next morning, Moby woke up from his deep sleep feeling more refreshed than he had ever been in the past three weeks. He looked over to his side, looking at Jaden's beautiful face who was wearing a nearly see-through nightgown as she slept like an angel. At least that's what he tried to tell himself. In reality, she was sleeping on one hand that was extended outwards, drooling on her arm and pillow making Moby chuckle at her less than pleasant sight, she must have had it pretty tough for the past few days, this must be her first good nap in a while, I can't really blame her, Moby thought, looking at Jaden with a smile before standing up to stretch his relatively stiff and tired muscles before leaving the room. He decided to do his daily quest before anything else in the morning. And, he of course did not decide to do it inside the bedroom as to not wake up Jaden so he headed to the arena where he could complete it, in peace dot on his way there, he surprisingly found a decent amount of servants already up and about, greeting him with a bright smile and a deep bow, as he passed the hallway making him admire their immense dedication for their jobs dot he also thought about what weapons and armor, he should buy with his remaining 30 million dollars that he did not spend on his ability. A part of him wanted to save the money for an emergency or to save up for even better equipment as when he buys them, they would become completely useless as he would not be able to resell them as they would only work on demons. I in the end, he decided to go for a mixture of both, saving a chunk of his money and spending the rest, all depending on the armor's effectiveness for the price. He opened up his crafting menu and began to browse through the large selection of weapons and armor, most costing in the hundreds of millions which were way out of his budget and a few even in the trillions or undefined, which really boggled Moby making him ask about the ludicrous pricing and the lack of many cheap armors, well, the ones in the trillions and undefined most likely require a one-of-a-kind material that is almost impossible to find in the mortal realm or that they just don't exist in this realm and are exclusive to the nether world. I learned crafting and got my skills from the nether world after all so it is only natural. Some of the ingredients that are used can be found in both of the nether and mortal worlds, although the ones in the nether world are usually, at least from my experience, much easier to find and obtain which would in turns make them much more expensive. Also, the main reason is that this crafting menu only comprises of crafting recipes that I have known and mastered. 
and, when I picked up crafting as a hobby, I was already pretty strong and rich. So, I never spent any time learning many of the weaker and cheaper crafting recipes as I thought they were a waste of time. Does that explain it well enough for you? Avilia answered, feeling more tired than usual even though she had also just woken up, yeah. That makes a lot of sense, I was actually thinking the same thing, but I just wanted to be sure, Moby said with a smile, you're welcome. Avilia replied with an audible yawn. As Moby entered through the front door of the arena, eyes casually closed, while still chatting with Avilia, he suddenly heard a loud scream. And why lord watch out, a voice screamed towards Moby, making him open his eyes only to see a large, crimson fireball blasting in his direction, making him inwardly panic as he flexed his neck to the side as wide as he could, making him barely dodge it, shit, that was too close, Moby thought, sweat running down his face as his face was almost burned hard. When he looked up, he noticed that it was none other than Abby who had woken up even before him to do her training. L Lord. I sincerely apologize, I had no idea you were coming. Abby said, running down from the stage to apologize and greet Moby with a deep bow. A, don't worry about it. All's well that ends well. Plus, it wouldn't have hurt that much anyway so put your head up. Moby said with a smile. Yes. Of course. Abby said, immediately following orders in a stiff manner. So, how long have you been training here for? Moby asked with curiosity. I have only just arrived here around 15 minutes ago. I of course took your advice and decided to sleep early to get a good night's sleep. And I have to say, it did wonders for my overall image and energy. I have been a workaholic for so long and ever since I became a demon, I only worked harder as I had hope of finally becoming stronger again and as I had more stamina and suffered less sleep-related health problems. Thank you so much for looking out for me my lord. I will try my best to rest every now and then as per your advice and suggestions. Abby said with a heartfelt smile. I am glad to hear. Continue working hard. I expect great things from you. Moby replied, putting his hands on her shoulder, making her feel extremely happy and proud of herself. Why yes my lord. I promise I will not disappoint. Abby firmly replied, looking into Moby's eyes with clear resolve. Moby then told Abby that he was going to work out for a bit before leaving the arena, and she should just continue what she was doing like he was never there which she of course agreed to. Moby quickly finished his daily quest, assigning his three stat points into intelligence in order to better use his new ability, bringing it from 529 to 532. Then, as he had extra time, he trained his new ability by testing out a few things, finding minimal success on some parts while completely failing others. All in all, he felt like he had a very long way to go. And, he felt that he was very slowly getting the hang of his ability as he got a little better, and more comfortable with it the more that he practiced. He also decided to have another training session with Abby for her to show him, her new skills with the side and for him to teach her a few new things that she may or may not have known. Teaching her only did confirm once more that Abby really did improve, both in her own style and in the fundamentals. How she beat him when she caught him by surprise was a result of that improvement, after Moby felt like he had done enough training, he left the arena, leaving Abby alone in there to train as she insisted that she wanted to stay and practice the new side techniques that he taught her. After leaving the arena, choosing to wait a while longer to have his morning breakfast, Moby decided to take a quick shower before returning to Jaden's room, only to find out that she was still fast asleep. Despite all that time, it was now the perfect time for him to upgrade and buy new equipment from what he had seen earlier in his browsing session. He also wanted to do it alone as he understood each of his teammates' builds better than themselves due to his inspect skill, meaning that his teammates would not do him that much help in choosing a certain set of armor. Plus, he wanted to keep it as a secret, for now, to surprise his teammates with a brand new set of weapons and armor the next time they met. The main weapons that caught his attention and considered buying so far were the following. Ice stick and icy forged katana that is so weak that you might as well just whack them with a stick. Plus 80 strength plus 10 mind special effect, plus 15% ice cold damage special effect, plus 5% slowness for every connecting attack, effect lasts for 0.2 second cost, 2 ice lilas, 500,000. Dollars, 1 ice giant nail, $10,000, 1 large ice beetle horn, $600,000. Rookie illusion daggers daggers usually used by beginner demons that specialize in shape shifting or illusion based magic. Plus 70 strength plus 20 agility special effect, daggers that are thrown can be immediately teleported back to their owner's hands, special effect, boosts the strength of illusions, and allows the user to duplicate the daggers at will to create imaginary daggers to distract and confuse the enemy, cost, 2. Griffin claws, $750,000, 1 black crutony or, $400,000, newbie necromancer side the bare minimum weapon a necromancer can have without being clowned on and bullied. Plus 90 strength special effect, 10% of total damage per hit dealt to an enemy will be healed back to the user, 10% life steal, special effect, buffing spells on undead are 15% more effective, cost, 1 large great orc horn, 1 million dollars, 1 kilogram ju obsidian, 200,000 dollars, the pokey back scratch ray spear that is mostly used by knights and warriors, or anything that requires close combat. Plus 70 strength plus 10 agility plus 10 intelligence special effect, plus 20% piercing damage, shields and tough armor, special effect, plus 10% attack speed cost, 1 large troll tooth, 400,000 dollars, 0.5 kilogram rayru iron, 700,100 dollars. Chapter 143. Although Moby found that the names were a little odd like Ice Stick and Pokey Back Scratcher, the stats told a different story. Those weapons might have been useless in Avilia's eyes, but they were more than strong enough for his purposes, especially with his current strength. The weapons also had many useful and interesting abilities that well matched and aided the strengths of their respective race. In his case, his sword increased his cold, ice damage by 15% as well as another extremely powerful effect that allowed him to slow down his enemy's movements, which can be extremely overpowered and abused under the right circumstances. The best part was that even though their costs might have seemed really high, they were actually much cheaper than other weapons identical to it in strength found on the web, and, from what he saw from the armor sets, he felt like the trend of good, cheap equipment would continue. 
Novice Frostborn gear a set of armor usually worn by young or really weak demons that specialize in cold or ice-related magic and abilities. Novice Frostborn cloak plus 30 strength plus 30 endurance cost. One medium ice beetle shell, $250,000. Novice Frostborn shirt plus 30 endurance plus 15 strength plus 15 agility cost. One medium ice beetle shell, $250,000. Novice Frostborn gloves plus 30 strength plus 30 endurance cost. One medium ice beetle shell, $250,000. Novice Frostborn pants plus 30 endurance plus 30 agility cost. One. Medium Ice Beetle Shell, $250,000. Novice Frostborn Shoes plus 30 Endurance plus 30 Agility Cost, 1 Medium Ice Beetle Shell, $250,000. Novice Frostborn Ring plus 30 Mind plus 90 Intelligence Cost, 1 Snow Sapphire, $300,000. Full Set Bonus, Demon Based Skills and Abilities are 5% more potent. All Ice Based Magic Cost Reduced by 15% All Ice Based Magic are 5% more potent. The Novice Frostborn Armor was the only set of Ice Cold related armor he could find that fit in his budget. The effect that reduced the cost of Ice Magic and the effect that made his Ice Magic more powerful were really strong and useful indeed. However, he had no idea if it would also extend to his ice ability which was mana based instead of demon energy based. When he asked Avilia about it, she just told him that she had no idea and that there is a possibility that it might work. However, Moby was willing to take the risk as he believed that the effect would extend to him as well due to how his ability mixed, and combined with his demon dragon powers, Moby slowly walked over to Jaden's PC that was in the corner of the room, booting it up, logging in, before navigating to Kubei to look for the materials to craft his sword and armor. From before Moby was a complete amateur on how to use and navigate on a PC, but over the past few days when he was doing his ability research, he had gotten more used to it and became a lot more comfortable. Not to his surprise, he found that none of the materials that he was looking for were being sold on Cubay. Probably since it was mostly used for more casual and cheaper items to buy.so, he navigated to the official online market where individual people and guilds would be able to sell their own magical equipment, crystals, and materials. It was the ultimate shopping hub for anything magic related, except for ability orbs or crystals. At first, other than the ice giant nail, he was not able to find any of the materials that he wanted, making him extremely disappointed, telling himself that he would need to wait and be patient for them to come back in stock. However, he persevered and looked even further, making himself glad that he did .to his surprise. All of the materials that he wanted were listed in the luxury decorations section of the website that, like the name suggested, had many items and materials that were meant to be used as purely cosmetic, or only provided minimal power boosts for their cost and rarity. This really confused Moby, making him question why these materials and ingredients that he needed were listed as useless cosmetics. That provided no benefit before he came to the best conclusion that he could come up with. Humans must not have found the benefits of these materials as their effects only work on demons or that they could not find the right recipe, or crafting technique, Moby thought, I think that both of those statements hold some truth. Anyways, this is pretty beneficial to you, if humans were able to use the full extent of these materials there would be no way that they would be worth so cheap, the price would have no doubt skyrocketed, Avilia commented, yeah, you're right, I am really glad. I want to spend as least as I could, Moby replied, rubbing the back of his head with a chuckle. Moby took his time trying to find and buy from the lowest sellers, making a few materials and ingredients sell out as he was probably their only customers in potentially weeks or even months, making him feel pretty lucky that he found enough in stock, to craft his full set of novice frostborn armor. He added all the materials to his cart, as he took a good look at the total price for his full set of armor and weapon. Less than $2,895,000, a full dollar two thirty five zero zero above the estimated price that was provided by his system which he ultimately did not care about. The set of armor and weapon was way too good even for the increased price and was still well within his budget, as he had a total of $30 million saved up. If he spent $3 million on each of his family members sets it would only be a total of $12 million, giving him $18 million left over for other purposes that might arise in the future which was perfect for him. Plus, the stronger armors that Moby found in his crafting menu were a lot more expensive and would exceed his budget by a sizable amount. So, he did the best he could for a balance of power and extra funds. Moby immediately clicked the proceed to check out button and logged onto Jaden's PayPal account that she had encrypted for more secretive buying, the same one that had all of his bet money and the same one that Jaden had shared her password with because she trusted him. Then, he paid for all of the materials as he looked over to the teleport pad beside the computer, waiting for his order to appear. Not even a second later, a blinding flash of light appeared on the teleport pad beside him, making him greatly panic as Jaden was still sleeping not too far away from him and the light was bigger and brighter than he remembered. He was afraid that he would wake her up early due to his carelessness, so he used every ounce of strength in his body to erect a thin ice wall in front of Jaden's bed to block the light from reaching her, and to cast a shadow on her, that small, thin ice wall used up over a third of Moby's mana and took him incredible mental and physical strength, as it was the biggest chunk of ice that he had created to date, making him extremely proud of himself as it was the panic and pressure that pushed him. Over the edge, when he noticed that the light had faded away, he melted and removed his wall before looking at the materials on the teleport pad, the many shiny, light blue hard looking beetle shells, the shimmering and memorizing snow sapphire, the long, large, sharp, light blue snow beetle horns, and, last but not least, the ice giant nail that looked bigger and more disgusting up close than in the pictures. He looked at all of the materials with a smile, putting his arms out towards them as he closed his eyes and began to imagine the design of his armor set before he confirmed what he wanted to craft. I in the next second, all of the materials suddenly disappeared as they had completely transformed and molded into a new set of armor that was already worn and equipped by Moby. It was a set of luxurious looking metallic armor that felt really light stretchy and flexible at the same time, making him feel like he was wearing light cloth armor instead. Just like he expected, as soon as he donned the armor, he felt an immense rush of energy flow throughout his entire body making him feel more energized and powerful than before. He wore a slightly gold embroidered mostly black with a small purple patterned and engraved chest plate. Decently large and somewhat spiky black and purple shoulder pads that did not at all hinder his movements due to how flexible and light. There were sharp, metallic gauntlets that matched the same color scheme and had small spikes coming out of the elbow pads, a fancy looking, black on the outside and purple on the inside, cloak that had a cape and hood for better stealth and for extra defense, metal leggings that nicely matched the aesthetic of his chest plate, and metallic boots that had 
Small spikes coming from the top and matched the same color scheme as the rest of his armor. For his weapon, it looked like a standard black katana that looked like it was forged with high-quality material. However, what made it unique was that the blade had a runic purple pattern on it that gave off an ice ominous glow, that literally sent shivers down his spine. The sheath was a sleek all-black that blended very well with his cloak, just like he wanted. For his ring, it was a slim, sleek light blue ring that wrapped around his left index finger. The ring also turned purple with no glow every time he used any of his demon energy which Moby thought looked really cool. All in all, Moby was happy with the look he went for and the power boost he received. At first, he was skeptical about crafting a set of metallic armor, as he thought that it would be extremely heavy and hard to move in which would have greatly restricted his movements. However, Avilia convinced him that it was not the case as she was an expert crafter that had the methods and skills to be able to create heavy, defensive armor that felt the same as light armor. He was glad he decided to trust in her words as he was beyond impressed with what she was able to do. Plus, in his opinion, heavy armor looked far better and more intimidating on him than light armor and a lot more fitting for his position as the future demon lord. Also, this time, he decided to design his armor much fancier as he had much more money and was not required to hide his power and look poor to sell his lie. He needed to dress according to his new status that had probably been spread everywhere ever since his visit to the Griffith family. The other day, as a B rank, Jaden Griffith's boyfriend, and as someone who won a decent chunk of money, while his armor was equipped, Moby was slowly getting closer and closer to reaching the status of A rank, making him feel really excited even though he knew that he was still far weaker than the top ranking students, or even the top first years in the school. Moby's new stats with his armor on were now the followings, asterisk asterisk name, Moby Kane race, draconic demon of sin ability, level 7 ice level, 50 xp to next level 39, 450, 000, 000 power level, 23,990, 19,290 plus 4700, hp, 188, 188 demon energy, 619 and 619 mana, 619 and 619 demon energy amana regeneration, 413 energy hour strength, 626, 471 plus 155, agility, 632, 557 plus 75, endurance, 522, 372 plus 100, 150, intelligence, 619, 529 plus 90, mind, 140, 100 plus 40, available points to distribute, 0 asterisk asterisk. Chapter 144. With his new armor, Moby felt like his stats were starting to become uneven and not what he wanted them to be, as he prioritized his intelligence and agility over his strength and his strength over his endurance. However, with his current stats his strength, intelligence, and agility were almost the same so he now had to account for his armor's stats when he assigns his stat points. Now it was the time to purchase his teammates' equipment. Luckily, the choice was pretty easy to make as there were not many options to choose from due to the lack of cheap, lower level items in his crafting menu. Novice illusionist gear a set of armor usually worn by young, or really weak demons that specialize in illusion or shapeshifting magic. Novice illusionist cloak plus 20 strength plus 10 agility plus 30 endurance cost, 2 medium leshy horns, $256,000. Novice illusionist shirt plus 30 endurance plus 5 strength plus 25 agility cost, 2 medium leshy horns, $256,000. Novice illusionist gloves plus 30 strength plus 30 endurance cost, 2 medium leshy horns, $256,000. Novice illusionist pants plus 30 endurance plus 30 agility cost, 2 medium leshy horns, $256,000. Novice Illusionist Shoes plus 30 Endurance plus 30 Agility Cost, 2 Medium Leshy Horns, $256,000, Novice Illusionist Ring plus 30 Mind plus 90 Intelligence Cost, 1 Dream Stone, $300,000, Full Set Bonus, Demon Based Skills and Abilities are 5% more potent. All Illusion Based Magic Cost reduced by 15% Shapeshifting and Transformations are 15% more adaptable. This was what he had chosen for Jaden's armor as although it was listed as slightly more expensive than his own, it was clearly the obvious choice for her with his current budget. The only thing he was not sure about was the part about transformation adaptability, which he could only assume meant that Jaden would be able to get used to and adapt faster with the new body and abilities of her new transformations, which was extremely good and useful as it was the biggest downside to her demon powers, that she was in a foreign body with a foreign ability making it harder to fight well. Novice necromancer gear a set of armor usually worn by young or really weak demons that specialize in necromancy or undead related magic. Novice necromancer cloak plus 20 strength plus 10 intelligence plus 30 endurance cost, 2 medium orc bones, $249,000. Novice necromancer shirt plus 30 endurance plus 5 strength plus 25 agility cost, 2 medium orc bones, $249,000. Novice necromancer gloves plus 30 strength plus 30 endurance cost, 2 medium orc bones, $249,000. Novice necromancer pants plus 30 endurance plus 20 agility plus 10 intelligence cost, 2 medium orc bones, $249,000. Novice necromancer shoes plus 30 endurance plus 30 agility cost, 2 medium orc bones. $249,000, Novice Necromancer Ring plus 30 Mind plus 90 Intelligence Cost, 1 Dark Oracalchum or $300,000, Full Set Bonus, Demon Based Skills and Abilities are 5% more potent. All Necromancy and Undead Based Magic Cost reduced by 15% The range in which the user's undead are allowed to exist is, increased by 20% The armor that Moby chose for Abby was, of course, the only Necromancer related one that he could find that did not go over his budget and it was really good to say the least. Unlike Jaden's armor that had a bigger emphasis on agility and his armor that seemed more balanced and a little mind-oriented, Abby's had extra intelligence instead which was really good for her race as she would have to be constantly buffing and healing her undead, while she was in battle, consuming a large amount of demon energy in the process. The extra bonus was, just like the other armor, a cost reduction in its respective element and magic type plus another bonus, which a range boost to how far her summoned undead were allowed to be from her. It was something important for a necromancer as they would be allowed to spread their army farther and, in some cases, be used to stay farther back while they let all of their undead to do the heavy lifting. However, Moby felt like Abby would not use the range boost in such a way as she was a very upfront and aggressive fighter, despite her being a necromancer that would usually do the exact opposite. Novice Dark Knight gear a set of armor usually worn by young or really weak demons that specialize in knight-related magic. 
Novice Dark Knight Helmet plus Cloak plus 30 Strength plus 30 Endurance Cost, 1 Knight Steel or $314,000, Novice Dark Knight Shirt plus 30 Endurance plus 20 Strength plus 10 Agility Cost, 1 Knight Steel or $314,000, Novice Dark Knight Gloves plus 20 Strength plus 40 Endurance Cost, 1 Knight Steel or $314,000, Novice Dark Knight Pants plus 40 Endurance plus 20 Strength Cost, 1 Knight Steel or $314,000, Novice Dark Knight Shoes plus 20 Endurance plus 40 Agility Cost, 1 Knight Steel or $314,000, Novice Dark Knight Ring plus 30 Mind plus 90 Intelligence Cost, 1 Black Ruby, $300,000, Full Set Bonus, Demon Based Skills and Abilities are 5% more potent. All Knight Based Magic Cost reduced by 5% Vision and Perception plus 5% Recoil, Self Damage Reduction plus 15% Passive Health Regeneration plus 10% Maximum Health plus 10% and, as the final piece of equipment, he chose the Novice Dark Knight Gear Set for Alex. Alex had been practicing, trying to get a hang of his demon powers ever since he became a demon and, for some reason, he seemed to be having little success, only managing to use a few skills with less than optimal energy consumption and skillfulness, at least according to him. Moby was still not sure what the knight class had as skills and powers as Alex had yet to tell and show him, because he wanted to wait until he had full mastery over his powers, however, from the set of armor that he saw, he got a general idea of what the knight class was all about. He knew that it had something to do with self-harm and damaging oneself for power, but as for the specifics he was still unsure of. He also noticed that the set of armor was more defense and attack heavy, leaving there little to no room for extra stats in intelligence. And, the armor had many more extra stat bonuses than all of the other armor, although the boost was a little less for each one which still turned out to be a net positive. That was probably the reason the armor costed a decent chunk more than all the other armor. However, in Moby's opinion, it was still well worth the money and not that big of a deal for all the extra he is getting out of the armor. Now that Moby had all of his teammates' equipment chosen, he went back on the website to purchase all of the materials and ingredients, once again finding most of them in the decoration and cosmetic sections, buying all of them at once. The total cost for all of his teammates' armor and weapons turned out to be $10,922,014, which was a little more than he expected, but he, once again, did not at all mind, for all of the armor and weapons including his own, the cost turned out to be less than $13,817,014, over $1.8 million higher than he expected leaving him with $16,182,986 left over for future purposes, plenty enough in his opinion. When he clicked the, proceed to checkout, option on the website, he immediately used all of his powers to erect another ice wall in front of Jaden, to block out the light so she did not wake up, learning from his previous blunder, as he stared at the white light on the teleporter. A few seconds later, a massive pile of all kinds of materials appeared on the teleport pad, overflowing onto the ground due to the sheer amount, making a loud crashing sound, causing Moby to lightly panic as he quickly checked if Jaden was still asleep, damn, what would it take to wake her up? Is she in deep hibernation or something? Moby thought, looking at Jaden's unsightly sleeping position and precious smile. Moby then focused his attention back on the massive pile of ingredients and materials in front of him as he put his arms out wide, to finally create the equipment. He closed his eyes, as he confirmed what he wanted to be crafted. Then, he spent the time to design and adjust the equipment to suit his friend's needs as he could probably assume what kind of armor they would want. Moby also asked Avilia if she was able to create heavy armor that felt like light armor for his servant's gears as well, exactly like she did with his, making her reply by saying, no shit I can. Who do you think you're talking to? I am Avilia Greymore, the first demon lord and master crafter. Which were the exact words that he expected to hear from Avilia. When he finished designing the equipment, all of the materials abruptly disappeared, and in the next second, all of the armor he designed, which was a lot to say the least, suddenly popped up in the air in front of him, something that he fully expected so he had prepared himself to store them all in his inventory. However, something that he did not expect was that one of the armor pieces popped up above him, as there were so many things that he crafted, and dropped on his head with a heavy crash, startling him greatly as all of the armor pieces and weapons dropped on the ground making many extremely loud sounds that reverberated, around the room. Asterisk bang asterisk 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 where? Who's there? What was that sound? Jaden screamed in panic as she noticed a massive black wall in front of her, equipping her novice demon equipment, slashing the wall down with both of her daggers like it was butter. Then, she noticed an unknown hooded figure who was wearing a metallic set of armor that she did not at all recognize standing beside her PC, and teleport pad. With no hesitation, she immediately reacted by turning into her shadowy smoke form, quickly approaching the unknown enemy with the utmost stealth, popping up behind him with her daggers hovering around his neck. Talk now before I fucking kill you and feed you to the dogs, or, even worse, I'll suck your life energy dry, showing you your worst fucking nightmare before I kill you. Who sent you here, what were you doing and planning, and how the fuck did you get in? Jaden said in a cold, deadly voice, the look of absolute death in her eyes. W wait. Jaden. It's me. Moby. Calm down. This was all just a misunderstanding. Moby said, putting his hands up in panic. Chapter 145. Huh. Moby. What the fuck? It sure does sound like you. But, there is only one, quick, reliable way to find out if you are really him or if you are just a fake. Jaden said with a devilish smile, bringing her daggers away from Moby's neck before trying to stab him straight in the face only to be stopped mere inches away by those same, invisible chains that she had felt when they first met. Yep, that confirms it, it really is you. Jaden said with a cute chuckle, lightening up her tone, bringing her daggers away from Moby's face. What the fuck? Of course, it's me. My voice is pretty hard not to recognize. Moby said, cold sweat running down his face as he took off his hood, revealing his face as he was free to move once again. He he, well, I could not see your face and, if I moved my hands to take your hood off I would have put myself at risk as it would give the opponent a chance to counter and catch me off guard. So, what I did was the quickest surefire way to see if you were real or not as I knew that I would not be able to harm you even if I wanted to, Jaden said with a chuckle. Okay, fine, I guess it did make a lot of sense, you just shocked me a bit that's all, Moby said, his face still sweating, fuck. If only she knew that if she held enough hatred and killing intent towards me she would be able to attack me whenever she wanted. 
Moby thought, making Avilia chuckle at his misfortune from his head. Shock? You think you are the one that was shocked? I woke up to a loud crashing sound and the first thing I saw was a hooded man wearing unknown armor standing suspiciously beside my PC. How did you expect me to react? Jaden asked, a serious look in her eyes. Yeah, you're right, sorry, I know I fucked up, Moby said, rubbing the back of his head. So, anyway, what were you even doing? What was that sound? And, what is with that new set of armor? It looks dope. Jaden asked with stars in her eyes, feeling Moby's armor up and down with her fingers. He he, well, long story short, I was crafting new weapons and armors for everyone as a surprise. I tried my best to not wake you up but some of the stuff fell on the ground while I was working which woke you up, Moby replied with a slightly red smile as Jaden continued to feel up his new armor. Really? New equipment for everyone as a surprise? That's so sweet of you. Where is it? Gimme gimme gimme. Jaden said with clear excitement in her voice. I managed to store them all in my inventory just as you woke up, here is what I whipped up for you, Moby said, pulling out Jaden's equipment from his inventory, putting his hands out to give them to her. Wow wow. That's amazing. Jaden said, jumping up and down in excitement, grabbing the equipment out of Moby's hands before immediately putting them on using her inventory. Her equipment consisted of a dark blue and regular blue fancy looking cloth armor that had a black colored design on them. She had a large hood that covered most of her face, under it was a scarf that covered a portion of her showing cleavage and exposed shoulders. She wore a tight shirt that extenuated her thin waist and wide hips, the shirt did not have any sleeves which exposed the silky smooth skin on her arms that wore long, elegant gloves that covered most of her forearm. For legwear, she had thigh-high leggings that exposed a gap that showed the skin between her shirt and leggings, revealing her absolute territory. She also had some metallic armor around her knees and shins that connected to her elegant boots for extra protection. So, do you like it? Be honest. I spent a good amount of time designing it, don't hold back and sugarcoat your opinion, Moby said, looking at Jaden with a smile, already knowing what her answer would be just from the expression on her face. Like it. I love it. It fits me, and my style perfectly. You do sure know me quite well. But, you know that you did not have to go through all of that time and effort to design this, I could always just use my doppelganger powers to make it into whatever I want. Plus, I would probably be wearing this disguised as my school uniform 99% of the time anyway. But, I really do appreciate the thought and effort, Jaden said with a chuckle. Ha ha. Of course, I know that you would probably just wear the armor as your school uniform but I still wanted to give you something cool, and you need to wear when we require armor. What kind of boyfriend would I have been if I just gave you plain black clothing and told you to just make it into whatever you wanted? Moby asked with a confident expression on his face. Yeah, that is true. I really do appreciate the thought, thanks darling, Jaden said, hopping up to Moby, giving him a kiss on the cheek. No problem at all, it is the least I could do, Moby replied. So, anyway, the last armor set you gave me had a few special effects and bonuses, I assume this one is no different. I already feel like I am much stronger wearing it than the last one, Jaden asked with excitement. So, this armor, after Moby explained the special effects of the armor to Jaden, she somehow got even more excited than before. She explained to him how adapting to a new body was extremely hard and tiring both mentally and physically, and how his armor would be a big help and relieve a lot of the hardship from her, Moby also handed her the new daggers he had forged for her, they looked similar to the old ones that he gave her, black with blue, shadowy runic markings only this time, they looked more elegant and expensive, which was a result of Moby's increased proficiency at using the crafting menu, after Moby explained to her what her daggers did, she decided to test them out immediately by throwing them at her wall, causing a massive dent where they crashed before teleporting them back to her hands, showing that the teleport effect was the same as her old daggers. Then, she tried to imagine her daggers duplicating, making her be able to make a maximum of four fake daggers in her hands making her really excited. Then, she threw all six of her daggers at the wall all at once, seeing that the fake ones simply vanished as they made contact on the wall while the real ones did their intended jobs. Also, after a little bit of experimenting, she found out that she could somewhat control the trajectory of her fake daggers, making them swerve and change directions mid-air which made them extremely hard to dodge even though they were fake. After Jaden finished testing out her equipment, they both decided to head to the arena where they saw Abby still hard at work practicing her side skills, heavy sweat running down her face. She was surprised to see him and Jaden wearing a new set of armor when Moby suddenly pulled out her very own armor from his inventory, surprising her even more, making her bow deeply, trying to hold back the tears in her eyes, thanking Moby profusely for his kindness and generosity, a step up from her saying that she was unworthy, and did not deserve it which made Moby really happy to see that she was somewhat lightening up and moving away from her childhood trauma. She humbly accepted the set of armor that Moby handed to her and wore it using her inventory. She wore a scaly mostly black with red patterns half cloth and half metal armor that covered most of her body. Her equipment consisted of a red cloak and scarf covered that most of her face, a red ribbon used to tie her long hair into a ponytail, a hard, scaly chest piece that went into cloth pants that had various scaly and metal guards, elegant black and red metal shoes that went up almost to her knees, long, scaly gloves that went almost up to her elbows. And, just like Moby's armor, despite all the metallic and scaly materials, the armor was still fairly light and allowed her to be very nimble while wearing it. Also, although the armor did not show much skin like her previous ones, it still had a very tight fit that displayed all of her bountiful assets in a way that it was not in people's faces but they know they exist, making her look really elegant and attractive while wearing it. Moby also gave her the new side that he crafted, one that was slightly larger than the one that she had, boasting a cooler design and structure as it bent more and had more linings and fiery red runic patterns, it also had a better grip than her old one, leading it to be much easier to control, making her extremely excited, profusely thanking Moby once again, telling him that she absolutely loved the design to death and she how she would not have wanted it any other way, Moby then explained to her the effects of her armor and weapon, how she kept her life steel while she was at the same time, able to have her undead father away and how her buffing spells were now more potent and effective than before. After dealing with all of Abby's tears of joy and thankful nature, giving Moby a warm feeling on the inside, the group finally decided to have their breakfast before they had to go to school. 
After they finished their meal, they all went to have a shower and brushed their teeth before wearing their school uniform. Jaden just wearing her new armor before transforming and disguising it as her school uniform, taking advantage of her doppelganger powers just like usual. While Moby was getting ready, he asked Avilia if she was able to dismantle his currently existing armor back into materials so he could resell them to make some of his money back, making her reply by saying, Hell yeah I can, although you will definitely lose some of its value. Which was not a problem with Moby. So, he decided to ask his teammates for their old weapons and equipment, dismantling them before posting them back up on Cubay where he first found them in order to make some of his money back. However, he did decide to keep his novice demon Kartana, as its special effect of consecutive hits causing increasing damage could come in handy in the future, especially against slow and tanky opponents, just like that Lycan he fought back during the exam. After they all finished preparing, they all went to the limousine where the butler had already been waiting for them, Jaden giving him an awkward look before it faded away a few seconds later. Ever since she saw him being so aggressive and carefree when she was in Damien's body, she never really saw him the same way. He had been her personal butler ever since she was a baby and she never even saw a hint or glimpse of that side of him as she always assumed, that he was a cool-headed and well-mannered person at all times, it really came as a reality check to her. During the car ride, Moby, Jaden and Abby discussed and cracked jokes about how many fake girls would be trying to get Moby's attention and love, after they hear the rumors of his greatly increased strength and how he won a bunch of money from the bets. And they would all be those exact same girls that scorned and mocked him in the past. They also made bets about if General Riker was still in office or had been replaced, or even outright fired after the disaster that was the last exam, causing them to laugh even harder, making the butler sigh as he still had absolutely no idea what was going on. Alex was the only person that he did not give the new equipment to so, he decided he would do it at the end of the day when they go back to their dorms. And, speaking of his dorm, it has been over three weeks since he had seen his other roommate, Ray, the short blue hair kid that was in the tech division. He was someone that Moby really liked and admired, one of the very few people at school that can claim to be liked by Moby. It made him wonder how his exams went and how he was doing as neither he nor Alex had been in contact with him in so long. Chapter 146 After a few minutes of driving, Moby, Abby, and Jaden finally reached the road in front of the school, getting out of the car before walking together through the gates with clear confidence. As soon as the many students noticed him, they all instinctively backed off and stared, while whispering to each other in a low voice that was still well audible to Moby's demon ears. It was mostly guys that were whispering about how lucky he was while the girls were whispering about the exact opposite, looking at Moby with blushed faces wishing that they'd been with him instead even though they were the exact same girls that shunned, and mocked him only a few weeks ago. No one, not even the stronger C rank and B rank students dared to approach them for many obvious reasons, mostly due to the fact that Moby was now stronger than them. And, not to mention that it was a well-known fact that it was not a good idea to fuck with the Reed or Griffith family if they value any shred of their life. F fuck. It's him. The kid from all the rumors. Moby D.I. I mean, Moby Kane. So he wasn't Jaden Griffith's pet after all, they were really dating, look at his watch. Shit, the rumors are true. He's a B rank. And a high B rank at that, he had gotten even stronger than the rumors told, he must have done some intense training. His ability is also quite new, so he still has a lot of room to grow. It's scary to think about. He might actually be one of the strongest first years very soon at this rate, yeah, I heard that he was loaded from winning all of those bets. And with the backing of the Griffith family, he must be even richer than you can imagine, lucky son of a bitch, he suddenly stumbled on an overpowered ability and now he thinks he's hot shit. Look. He has already begun building his harem and it already consists of one of the two hottest girls in school. Not to mention that they are both part of really powerful families. You saw them walk out of the same car, didn't you? They probably just had a threesome right before coming here. Hey. Are you retarded? Shut the fuck up. Do you want to be beaten senseless in front of everyone? You are being too loud. Then, suddenly, out of nowhere, the temperature dropped a few degrees. The atmosphere felt extremely chilly as a wave and gust of cold wind and killing intent erupted and hit everyone in the area, making everyone shiver in fear. Their fear intensified even further when they noticed the source of all the cold and peered into the depths of Moby's cold, purple eyes and demonic smile that said, shut the fuck up or else, everyone was just standing in fear, either shivering or completely motionless with a bad feeling in their stomach and running down their back, some of the weaker F and E ranks even going as far as pissing themselves in front of everyone as they stared at Moby, Abby, and Jaden walked confidently through the white, metal path like they were demon spawns from the depths of hell until they reached the inside of the school, making the cold and killing intent fade away. It was almost like what Mason Griffith did the other day during the party only on a far, far, weaker and smaller scale. Fuck, that was stressful, I used all of my mana doing that. And, can't a man just be friends with two girls without people getting the wrong idea? Moby inwardly grumbled as it was the first time he and Abby were seen together in public. It only made sense he did as it was a well-known fact that she attended the Griffith party with her friends, and declined her own party held by her family which caused quite the stir. So, it would only be natural that he walked with her as well. Moby also fully expected this reaction, but he wanted to quickly establish that he and Abby knew each other, and it would not be weird for them to hang out, just so people don't ask questions in the future, my lord, I could have silenced them for you by burning off their tongues or chopping them off, Abby said with conviction, trying to control a blood vessel from popping on her head as she was also able to hear all the whispers, she could not stand to hear all that slander about her lord. It's okay, what I did was well enough and will shut up most of them. Just let them know that me and you are not dating and just friends and it would be fine, make it stick with them but don't go too overboard if you know what I mean. Plus, I don't want to be a menace and terrorize the school like all of those brain-dead idiots. I have a plan that will help us gain strength and it depends on keeping our image somewhat clean, or at least cleaner than most people. We are still far weaker than many of the students at school and we can't fall behind in strength. If I want to do something big with my future, I need to graduate with high grades and a good reputation after all, Moby said with a smile, oh. What plan is it? Another big target like Natalia? Do you have someone in mind? Tell me. Jaden asked with clear excitement in her voice, I would like to also know my lord, Abby added with the same amount of enthusiasm as Jaden, well, I am not sure about the details yet as there are still many unaccounted variables. It should be finalized by the end of the day. 
I'll call you tonight to discuss about it just like how we did during the exam. But this time, Alex, and potentially another member will join us. Moby explained with a devilish smile, making Jaden and Abby nod in excitement, who is this new potential member? Is it someone I know? Jaden asked with skepticism. You will find out soon enough, I am still not sure if it will work out like I want it to, but I am optimistic, Moby replied with a chuckle. The time was already 7.55 a.m. and class started in only five minutes. After walking with his friends for a bit, ignoring the constant stares and whispers that Abby shut up just using her death glare that would make any man shit his pants, Moby and Abby split up from Jaden to go to their own respective class. As Moby and Abby walked together, the many rumors and jealous looks intensified even more as people were trying to be slick with their whispering. Moby also noticed looks coming from some gang members, some well-known and some from much smaller gangs. With his level of strength, he had no doubt in his mind that he would be recruited to various gangs where declining could mean big trouble coming his way, especially from the bigger gangs. Chapter 147 Lucky, sly son of a bitch, he's already cheating on his girlfriend with another girl. If I were in his situation, I would be 100% loyal. Like, who the hell would cheat on Jaden Griffith? Or does she know about this and he is just building a harem of all of the hottest girls at school? Either way, someone needs to put him in his place, a tall, muscular brown-haired boy said, whispering to his friend a little louder than normal. Yo, pinhead, want to say that again? But this time, to my face? Moby said in a cold voice and a piercing stare. Hey! Who are you calling pinhead? The boy immediately retorted with no hesitation, pumping his chest out with confidence even though he was whispering only a few seconds ago. You, dips hit, or would you rather me call you dickhead? Because your head sure does look like one. So, can you care to repeat what you just said, this time to my face instead of being a little bitch talking behind my back? Moby said with a devilish grin, taking a few steps closer, seemingly not concerned by his opponent's bigger physique and clear confidence. Ha! Huh. Fine. I said that you were an extremely lucky son of a bitch that thinks they're hot shit just from gaining an ability, and that someone should put you in your place, the boy answered, holding Moby by the collar of his black school uniform. And who do you think's job that will be? Moby asked with confidence, completely unfazed by the boy in front of him. Mine. Who else do you think? The boy said, his fist turning into a drill as he went to punch Moby in the face. Then, without batting an eye, Moby infused and strengthened his fingers with a purple glow of pure demon energy, catching the drill before it hit his face using his thumb and index finger, making it stop spinning. Then, he broke the hand that was holding him from the shirt in one quick motion before kneeing him in the stomach, making him go on his knees with a cry of pain. Then, with the drill hand that Moby was still holding, he let go of it making it spin again before holding his opponent's spinning drilling hand by the elbow, shoving it right in his face, making his teeth and several other organs rain from the ceiling, like he was a bloody fountain, including his eyeballs, making him scream out in agony as his face was grinded to shreds, and became completely disfigured and unrecognizable from his own attack yet still barely alive, system alert. You gain 6,500 XP for defeating a low B rank enemy. The large crowd of students surrounding the exchange stared at him in complete shock, some with great interest, some with immense disgust as it was the first time ever seeing him fight. However, even with all that he had done, the girls could not stop thinking about how manly, attractive, and brutal he was, and, the weaker F, D rank students cursed their existence as they felt their stomach turning inside out with a bad feeling running down their spine, as they all thought that there would now be another, really strong and influential bully in the school that was just as brutal or if not more brutal than the ones they were used to. They imagined themselves in the place of the tall muscular boy only much worse and more brutal due to their immense strength difference. Everyone listen up because I am only going to repeat this once, if you have something to say, say it to my face and don't be a little bitch. If you spread false rumors about me like I am making my own harem or I am cheating be prepared to get what's coming to you. Don't try to fuck with me or get in my way if you know what's good for you, unless you want to end up like this guy. Moby announced to the crowd around him, pointing at the disfigured and unconscious body of Drill Boy that was surrounded by a pool of blood, making some of them nod while others just started in complete silence. Good. Let's go Abby, we will be late to class, Moby said, casually walking out of the crowd surrounding him, making them all part like how Moses parted the Red Sea. Oh, and can someone do me a favor? Get this guy to the nurse's office, he really needs it. And, if a teacher asked you what happened don't be afraid to tell them the exact situation, I am sure they won't give a shit anyway, Moby said with a warm smile, looking back at the crowd behind him. Hey. Baldsky, you heard the man. Get this guy to the hospital ASAP. An arrogant, tall, blue-haired boy said to a little bald kid under him, slapping him on his bald head making the sound reverberate before pushing him onto the disgusted, bloody body of the unconscious drill boy. Why yes sir. The boy nervously responded, trying to pick up drill boy's body with immense disgust, then, suddenly, that same blue-haired boy felt a tight grip on his right arm, the same arm that he used to slap and shove the kid only a few moments earlier. Then, before he even had the chance to react or say anything, his arm was snapped in half like it was a piece of dry spaghetti, making him cry out in pain. Oops. Sorry, didn't mean to do that. It was an accident. But look on the bright side now since you're injured, you're gonna have to go to the nurse's office anyway so why not bring him with you? How does that sound? If you don't do it I might be a little disappointed or possibly even angry if you know what I mean. Moby said, looking down at him with a devilish smile before slapping him on the head that was profusely nodding in fear with immense force before pushing him onto the bloody body of Drill Boy making the bald kid doge his incoming body during the last second before impact. Ah um. Thank you, Sir Kane. I really, really appreciate it. The bald kid said, tears of joy running down his face as it was the first ever time that anyone had ever been kind or helped him out at school, and he did not in a million years imagine it would be a high rank student like Moby. No problem at all, take care of yourself kid, Moby casually said, rubbing his hands on the boy's bald head before putting his hands in his pockets and walking away, wow. Maybe he's one of us? Now that I think about it, he was a weak non ability user only a few weeks ago, he probably has kindness in his heart and gets angry when he sees these bullies as he was in our situation not too long ago, he wants to fight back against the bullies for payback. Maybe I misjudged him. 
The boy thought, looking at Moby's back that was walking away in the distance with stars in his eyes like he was looking at the back of his hero, ignoring all the whispers and shocked faces around him, um. I am not sure if it is my place to speak my lord, but you insisted I always share my opinion with you and let you know what I am thinking with complete honesty. So, that is what I will do. Why did you save this, Baldski? It is not like you to go out of your way to save others like this. I see no benefit from doing this. But, of course, that is with my limited mind which pales in comparison to yours. I am sure that you, my lord had a plan that I just could not understand or predict, Abby said to Moby using their mind link as they walked towards their classroom together, ha ha. Don't worry, I did not save Baldski out of the pure kindness of my heart or something stupid like that, it is just my first step on my path of controlling this school and the future of the world. Moby said with an amused laugh, making Abby really excited at his words as she knew that Moby was not at all joking. Chapter 148 It was 7.59am when Moby and Abby finally reached their classroom, one minute before the bell rang. As they entered, they noticed that the class was smaller than usual as there were various empty seats. It was also unusually quiet compared to the mornings of most days, even without Professor Leo's presence making them behave and settle down. Only the sound of faint whispers was heard as many of the students had an extremely stiff expression with sweat running down their faces. Damn, it seems like the news spreads really fast, impressive. Moby thought, looking at his classmates' faces and listening in onto a few of their conversations. Moby's class was undeniably one of the weakest classes in the entire school, consisting of only E ranks, D ranks, a few C ranks, and two B ranks in Moby and Abby, who were leagues above everyone else. It was not exactly a place for them to fit in, making them outliers among everyone else. Many of the students that had insulted or attempted anything on Moby in the past cursed their entire existence and prayed that he had forgotten all the shit they made him go through. However, Moby never forgets such things and never forgives. But, he decided to leave things be for now and not go out of his way for stupid and petty revenge as they were not worth his time. Plus, he can't be too cruel to the lower ranks in order to enact his many future plans. As soon as he heard the bell ring, he walked to his usual seat at the bottom left corner of the room, making all the kids he passed by look down in shame and fear before sitting down on his chair with a sigh. Then, as not to waste any precious time, he closed his eyes to practice his new, freezing time, skill with his remaining mana and demon energy until Professor Leo arrived to teach the lesson, not even ten seconds later. The sound of the classroom door opening was heard and the familiar figure of the tall, muscular, dark orange spiky-haired Professor Leo wearing his usual attire of a white button-up shirt with his sleeves rolled and standard black pants. Damn, these kids are awfully quiet today. Even before I came. Are they still depressed about the deaths of their classmates during the exam? Leo thought, looking at the class that was usually loud and noisy that was now more quiet than a funeral home. Okay class, good morning. It has been a while since I have last seen you and I hope that you are doing well. Anyways, let me get straight to the point, I have noticed you guys have gotten much quieter since I last saw you. I understand that you must still be down and depressed about the deaths of your friends and classmates in that hellhole they called an exam. But, that is how life is, expect the unexpected. That is the life of a soldier, remember that. We have many, many important things to go through today and we have no time to be sad and depressed, it would only lower your concentration, this will be a good learning experience for you all so I hope you think of it that way. Does that sound like a plan? Does anyone have any objections? Leo asked in a cold, almost heartless voice, completely missing the mark on why his students were acting the way they were. No questions? Okay then good, let's get started with today's lesson, so, today we will be taking a more in-depth look at abilities, Leo said, making Moby listen intently to his every word as it was a great subject of interest to him as he did not have enough time to go, too in-depth in his research about them, looking at only the general skills and uses, making this lesson extremely beneficial and invaluable to him. I bet you guys have been wondering many things, why are some people stronger than others? How do I get stronger, etc., well, the answer is really complex yet really simple. I am sure that by now many of you have heard this before each ability has some sort of inner spirit or beast that resides within them. We simply call these, inner spirits. They are almost completely unseen spirits that reside inside a person's ability core that is found inside of their body. The only people that can see their inner spirit is when they grow such a tight connection and bond with the user that they become almost as one. But, all of you are far, far away from that level in your current state and probably will never reach that level in your short lifespans. The stronger your bond with your inner spirit the stronger your ability will be. Also, the stronger your physical body gets the stronger your ability will be as well. That is why it is important to do both physical and mental training in order to maximize your growth speed. All of these, and many other factors are what go into your ability levels and power, you now might be wondering how one even strengthens their ability core and grows stronger with their inner spirit. That is where the hard part comes in, it is different for each person and ability, making all training methods slightly different than others. Like, fighting in tough, near-death battles will unlock part of your hidden potential, making you grow a connection with your inner spirit completely unconsciously without you even noticing. This is just an example and of course, that does not work for everyone, but it works for many people. And, the level of growth is not at all the same from person to person, even if they have the same ability. For example in this class, Moby Kane and Abby Reed have exponentially grown stronger from the exam due to all their hard-fought encounters and body strengthening along the way, they are definitely people that benefit the most from that type of training. I am not saying that they were the only ones that have gotten stronger during the exam seeing that some of you went from D to C rank, from it but, they were the ones to definitely benefit the most from that type of method of training. And, that means, for the rest of the class, your true strengths lie in different areas, the thing is, although they may not be too effective, there usually are some pretty common training methods that help increase a person's mental strength with their inner spirit like meditation, and things of that sort. Also, there are common ones between abilities that families with exclusive abilities use to train their offsprings. That is part of the reason why the big families stay at the top, it is due to their secret training methods that are reserved for them and their families alone, and, don't worry, the military also has some secrets of their own that are reserved for high class personnel. So, feel free to enlist with us, we are in no way inferior to them, in future classes, we will be experimenting with what training methods suit each one of you the best. It will be one of your first steps on your long path of becoming your ability core strengthening journey and by far one of the most important, that will be the bare basic and general gist of things. Does anyone have any questions or was that all clear? 
Professor Leo asked, looking at the quiet class before smiling and saying, good. Moby had been listening keenly to every single word uttered out of Professor Leo's mouth, with his limited knowledge and usage of the internet, all of those facts were new to him and completely blew his mind, making his brain spin in circles as he had so many questions he wanted answered, Avilia. Did you know about this? And if so how long? Moby asked Avilia, his mind still in shock. I've known about this for a while now, I am not sure why you are surprised by all of this, it's pretty common knowledge. I am sure that all your servants know about it quite well. Like, look at Redhead, she seems completely calm and composed, Avilia said in a casual tone, referring to Abby who was sitting in her usual seat at the front of the class, wait, what do you mean by you thought I knew? Can't you read my mind? Moby asked in confusion. Do you really think I am reading your mind 24-7? That's too much work and would cause me a headache. I just do it when it's convenient for me and when I am bored, and I only look at your surface thoughts so, many things were hidden from me anyways, Avilia responded, shuddering at just the thought of her listening to Moby's thoughts at all time with no means of turning it off, well, anyway, I think I get all this in a spirit thing, you just form a connection with it and try to increase your bond by doing some mental stuff. I am not sure how hard this will be, but I can't imagine that it would be that hard right. Oh, and by the way, since I now have an ability, does that mean that I also have an inner spirit? Have you seen or sensed it before when it entered my body? Moby asked Avilia with clear excitement in his voice clenching his fists in anticipation, hey hey, um, well about that. I've been meaning to tell you this for a while now, but I didn't know when it would be the right moment to do so, well, um, how can I put this, your inner spirit is kinda, dead. Chapter 149. Dead. What the fuck? What do you mean dead? Can spirits even die? Moby exploded, going wide-eyed, almost breaking the calm expression that he had worn on his outside face from what he just heard. Yeah, you heard me, dead. Your inner spirit is for sure dead. Avilia said with an awkward chuckle, Avilia, I need answers. How do you know all of this? How did this happen? Why did this happen? What is going on? Moby continued, begging for an explanation as he was still in a state of pure madness and hysteria. Not even in a million years did he expect to hear what he heard, he went from a mood of extreme happiness and excitement when he found out about inner spirits to that of pure madness, as he felt a huge headache coming into his brain. Well. Let me start from the beginning, asterisk at the time that Moby absorbed and gotten his ability from his crystal, Avilia was just relaxing in a random subspace in his head, inspecting his actions like she usually did. However, this time, she was also trying to inspect how Moby's new ability was going to affect and combine with his body, making her really excited as it was something completely foreign to her and would help her further understand the nature of these so-called abilities. Yet, all of that examining only led her to become even more perplexed than she had already been, as Moby absorbed the crystal, making it disappear into thin air, Avilia sensed that a random intruder had entered Moby's body. Making her extremely surprised as it was not at all what she expected to happen. I in the next second, a flash of brilliant white light emerged within the same subspace in Moby's head that Avilia was residing in. Out of the light emerged a white wolf with an icy blue aura surrounding it, floating down from the sky in a slow yet elegant manner with its eyes closed, stretching its body and all four of its stiff paws when it reached the ground. From its demeanor, its entrance and from the look on its face, it wore a mixture of a look of pride, elegance, and arrogance all mixed together making it seem like it thought of itself as above everything else which slightly irritated Avilia. The wolf was around twice as large as a normal white wolf found on earth, it had beautiful and silky smooth looking white fur that looked magnificent as it glistened in the light that was created by its entrance, its eyes had a piercing blue glow that had a calm, somber yet magnificent aura to them. And, on its forehead, there was a symbol of a large blue snowflake that had an ominous glow to it.at the time, Avilia was still not completely sure about the identity of this random beast as she was not expecting it, or anything else to intrude on the sanctity of her subspace. She knew about inner spirits and how a person gets one when they get an ability. But, despite knowing that it was a really high probability, that the beast in front of her was indeed the inner spirit that Moby got from his ability crystal, she had no way of 100% confirming it without going out of her way to ask which was exactly what she chose to do. When she sensed the wolf's power, she noticed that it posed absolutely no threat to her whatsoever. So, despite the clear arrogant demeanor of the wolf, she decided to go with a casual approach and see how things went from there. She did not want to blow her chance. She just wanted answers, answers about if they were friend or foe, about what inner spirits were and about what abilities were in general. So, Avilia slowly and casually flew to the beast in front of her who had its back turned, licking the fur on one of its front legs. Hey! Wolf! Who are you and what are you doing in my domain? Answer me now if you know what's good for you, Avilia said with a smile and a casual tone, standing behind the wolf who did not even notice her there. If she was being honest, a part of her really wanted the beast to be an enemy so she could have fun once more as to relive her glory days. It has been a while since she had fun killing and squeezing the life out of something. She never actually thought that she would ever get the opportunity to do so again ever since she died. Then as soon as the beast heard her words, it got a little startled before immediately scoffing with arrogance and disgust, huh? Who is this? How did you get in here? What kind of fool are you? Are you seeking death? This is not your domain, it is mine. I should be the one asking you those questions. Such arrogance. Do you know who you are even speaking to with such a casual poor mannered tone? I am Harry, those were the words the wolf said before it literally bit its tongue, stopping the words it was saying as it turned around and peered at Avilia's devilish smile and glowing, deep purple eyes, feeling her suffocating strength and aura. However, in reality, Avilia had a friendly looking and welcoming smile. But, from its perspective, she was nothing more than the personification of death, an absolute power incarnate in a single entity looking at him like he was a dead slab of meat. The wolf immediately gasped and squealed for air with a shaky look of absolute terror and despair in its eyes, its teeth clacking together uncontrollably and its legs that had begun to grow tired started shaking faster than a vibrator, not even daring to utter a single word. He cursed its own luck, stupidity, an entire existence for talking down and talking rudely with such arrogance and pride to a supreme being like the monster standing in front of him, making its once majestic looking face and fur immediately shrivel up and become all wrinkly from all the stress and pressure, almost like it had lost several decades or even centuries of its life. Who are you calling fool? Are you calling me a fool and a liar? The real question is if you know who you are even speaking with. 
I am Avilia Grey Moor. Former queen of all demons. You got that? Ha ha ha. And, don't worry, as long as you cooperate with me I won't hurt you, Avilia said in a playful tone, laughing loudly at how the beast's demeanor had suddenly switched when it took a good look at her, but, once again, the spirit's perspective of reality was twisted and distorted, not allowing it to see the truth and reality of the situation. Instead of seeing Avilia's casual and playful laugh, it instead saw and heard the laugh of a bloodthirsty monster, getting itself ready to skin it alive, tear it limb from limb before eating it for breakfast. The wolf was just getting the consequences of its words and actions as it messed with the worst person that it could have ever messed with. The wolf felt a bad feeling in its stomach and down its spine, as it sensed that its slow yet inevitable death was very near, making its aging process grow much faster due to the increasing stress and pressure in its insane mind. Then, as Avilia was still laughing at the spirit's sorry looking state, her eyes closed holding her stomach from the pain of her own laughter when she heard the sound of flesh being pierced, followed by a loud scream filled with nothing but agony and pain as she felt a warm substance splash on her face, greatly startling her as it was something she did not at all expect. When she opened her eyes, she saw the body of the wolf with a large, bloody, ice spike protruding from the void-like ground underneath its feet, impaling it right through the chest and heart, making blood splatter everywhere, making it float suspended in the air, blood dripping from its body, with an empty look in its once mesmerizing blue glowing eyes. The icy wolf was dead. It had killed itself from its own fear and desperation, not wanting to live long enough to see where its fate lied. It thought that it would have been much better and more peaceful than dying by the hands of the evil, all-powerful entity laughing in front of it, Avilia simply just stared at the body of the dead wolf in absolute bewilderment, her mouth wide open as she was still not able to fathom what had just happened, in no way I scared it that much, I was holding back so much of my weakened power and I was being so nice to it. What the fuck? I still had so much shit to ask it about and now I may never again have the chance. Avilia inwardly cursed it with extreme frustration, still trying her best to take in what had just transpired, then, not even a second later, Avilia observed that the body of the wolf disintegrated out of thin air, leaking an unknown blue substance that served as its power. That power escaped out of the subspace and was absorbed and mixed into Moby's dragon bloodline, granting him his ice dragon skill tree. Which could have in the end been more of a benefit than a deficit. Asterisk. Chapter 150. Okay, okay, let me get this straight, so you saw that a random beast had invaded your subspace, you assumed that it was my inner spirit so you decided to give it a friendly greeting to judge its character, and see what kind of person it was. It responded rudely which led you to laugh and reveal your true identity which made it extremely stiffen up. Then, in the next second, you opened your eyes and it was dead, impaled by its own ice spike. You don't understand why that even happened and you are extremely mad and frustrated as you were not able to ask it any questions, and get some of the answers you were seeking. Did I miss any important details? Moby asked in a composed voice, calming down from his initial outburst as he listened to Avilia's retelling of the story. Yes, that is all correct. Avilia responded, still in disappointment. Well. The only reasons I could think of for why the beast killed itself was that it either knew about demons and knew about your true identity. Or, it just sensed your seemingly bottomless strength and reserve of demon energy and got scared shitless, as it thought it was going to die due to its previous rudeness, Moby said, trying to give his best explanation for the situation. But how? I was so nice and casual with it. And I hid and suppressed most of my power. No way it was that scared of me right? As for if he knew about the existence of us demons I have no idea as I did not get the opportunity to ask it anything, but I feel like the chances of him knowing were very unlikely, Avilia interjected. Well anyway, we will get nowhere by meaningless speculation about why the beast died and what it was, we would only confuse ourselves more and go farther away from the answer. The wolf is dead and we can't do anything about it, but even if we missed out on some very valuable information, which is a little frustrating, I feel like this was an overall win. By killing itself, the spirit's energy leaked and merged with my dragon bloodline giving me my ice dragon skill tree, which might be more beneficial than just having the spirit around. If the spirit had not killed itself we would have probably never figured that out. Although I can't strengthen myself by getting closer to the spirit, I can probably do it in some other way. Plus, I would say that the ice dragon skill tree well makes up for everything that happened. And, I am sure we will get the answers to all of our questions sometime in the future. It's probably not lost forever on us, Moby explained with a smile, looking at all the positives of the situation, wow. I never thought of it like that. I was too busy sulking about the information loss. You sure have some way of staying positive. Are you sure that your old self isn't rubbing off on you? Avilia said with a chuckle. Fuck no. This is just how I always am. I always try my best to stay positive when there is something positive to be happy about, not straight up retarded like before. Moby said, immediately refuting Avilia's claims, making her laugh out loud at how serious and passionate he sounded, well, anyway, this entire situation made me think, other than about why my dragon bloodline would want to absorb my inner spirit's powers, I thought that the reason a person was not able to hold two abilities is that the spirits would probably hate or clash against each other, not allowing a new one to enter. Or, because there was only space for one spirit in a person's body. So, I thought of two ideas. If I absorbed another ability crystal, would I be able to get another ability since there was not an inner spirit in me right now? And, if you killed this spirit, would it absorb into my dragon bloodline like the ice wolf, unlocking another skill tree for me? Moby asked with great excitement like he was a little kid who had just figured out an exploit to life that would bring him to the top of the world, I guess that might be possible. But, I am extremely doubtful. Even if it miraculously did work, there must be a limit or drawback to it as I can't imagine there being a way for you to wield all the powers of the world, making you virtually unstoppable. It also all depends on if your theory is even correct. And, even if it is not correct you would need to save up a lot of money once more to buy a good new ability. Think about it, if you bought a cheap ability right now and absorbed it only to turn out that your strategy only served to add a maximum of one more ability, you would be stuck with a shitty second ability for the rest of your life, something that I assume you don't want to happen. All that I am saying is that it's a smart strategy but don't get your hopes up too much. Avilia said, pondering over Moby's theory, of course, I am well aware that the theory has a near 0% chance of working so my hopes are not very high. But, it is worth a shot. I will save up for another ability crystal to test this out on. 
I wouldn't even lose much if at all by doing it as I could easily resell the crystal back on the market for the same price, and at the worst case a little lower, Moby said, nodding at Avilia's suggestion. Well, nevertheless, even if all ended on a somewhat good note, I still felt somewhat bad about what happened and I found out something cool, allowing me to give you good compensation for the trouble, Avilia said in a somewhat apologetic tone, what is it? A surprise? Moby asked with extreme excitement, knowing full well from experience that Avilia always had the best surprises. It will happen when you level up. I am sure that you would be pretty hyped for it, Avilia explained with the mental equivalent of a wink, ha ha. I can't wait. I really appreciate it. I am looking forward to it. I never really thought you were the apologetic type, Moby said with a chuckle, meh, don't look too deep into it. It aligns with my personal plans for the future so it works in my favor too. The stronger you get the faster you will be able to get back to the nether realm, and the faster you would be able to find me a new body like you promised, it's a win-win for everyone. Plus, I just absolutely hate being indebted to people as it gets really annoying and would end badly for me in the future. And don't ask why. I just know this from personal experience due to that damned sin of greed, Avilia casually explained, refuting Moby's claims. Ha ha. Don't worry, I won't ask, sounds like some pretty traumatic shit. I just hope that this surprise of yours will live up to how you are hyping it, Moby said with a chuckle and a cheerful and excited tone. Don't worry, I know it will, Avilia responded with the mental equivalent of a smirk, well, anyway, thanks for sharing all of this with me, this conversation has been very insightful, but I now need to focus back on the class. Our conversation was really long, and I think I lost a decent chunk of it, I'll probably just ask Abby to summarize it for me later in the day, so it's not even a big deal, Moby said, making Avilia nod back before he snapped himself back into reality. And that is exactly how the ability absorbing process goes according to the most recent findings in modern science. Does anyone have any questions before I move on to the next topic? You will be tested on this in the near future during your upcoming first test so be sure that you understood everything very well, and that you have studied hard, Leo said, finishing his explanation, Moby inwardly chuckled at the word, test, as he knew that he required little to no study. After all, he had Avilia in his head at all times who was able to provide him with all of the answers if need be, guaranteeing him full grades on every test. Plus, even if Avilia did not agree to help him out, he was always able to ask Abby using his mind link as the test was going. Or, he could ask any one of his servants who were not having the test to search it up and let him know the answer, well, seems like I didn't miss much if at all, Avilia already explained to me what happened to my body when I absorbed my ability in pretty good detail, so Leo's explanation would have been either unnecessary or inaccurate, Moby thought in relief. No questions? Okay then class, since we just finished our basic and initial ability lesson, I think that it is now certainly the time to go to the arena, and finally start your ability training to combine it with your prior knowledge of martial arts and weapon combat. Leo announced, making the entire class celebrate as it was for many, the moment they were waiting for an a chance to prove themselves as well as greatly improve and boost their strength. Chapter 151. PND no one oh as Leo finished his announcement, he motioned the class to move to him with a wave of his hand before he said, follow me, swiftly and confidently exiting the classroom from the front door. The class immediately followed him with no hesitation, trying their best to steer clear of Moby and Abby who were walking in front of them and behind Professor Leo, keeping a good distance of at least five meters between them at all times as they avoided them like they were the plague. No one dared speak to them, come close to them, or even breathe in their direction from the immense fear and pressure of being in their presence, especially in Moby's case, the same person who they had been looking down on and harassing for the past month. As Professor Leo turned back to see the sight of his entire class cowering in fear from just two of his students, one of whom had skyrocketed in the ranks so fast that it was not even funny, now being in the middle to upper class of all students. In the entire first year, he could not help but inwardly chuckle at the familiar sight. As he looked at them, he did not at all find the view odd or unrealistic, he had seen it happen many times. When a person of lower rank soared to that of a higher position and starts to act arrogant, and get back at all of those who wronged him in the past, however, usually, they only ended up being humbled by the stronger students, forcing them to bend the knee and join the more powerful gangs. Either that or they started their own gang which usually did not end too well for them. He had seen those exact two sights too many times to count on both hands with only a few people actually succeeding. If he was, being honest, even when he was still a weakling, he really liked Moby's character and personality. He thought that he was a smart guy who worked hard to achieve his goals, not like the majority of the nobles who had been spoon-fed power and money their whole lives. He could tell that Moby achieved everything he had today with his sheer willpower and determination. As for Abby, even though he knew that she was part of the Reed family, one of the richest and most notorious families in the entire country, he felt like she was different. She worked harder than every other student he had seen in many years, and, instead of flaunting her power and the power of her family like her sister, she was fairly quiet and kept to herself making Leo admire her as well, they were both the gems of his class, the strongest and most skilled out of all of his students. From only the few weeks he had taught them, he knew that they would grow up to do great things. So, he hoped he does not see history repeat itself for both of them once more, especially in Moby's case since he was not part of any important family, making him a huge target in the eyes of many. After a few minutes of the class walking behind Leo like they were a pack of sheep staying far away from the two walls at the front, they finally reached Arena Z7, a rather standard looking arena, one of the only ones that was not occupied by another class. Leo told everyone to line up one against each other, making a fairly long line of students. Moby and Abby were both at the edges of the line, Abby being the last one meaning that there was one unlucky person that was forced to stand beside Moby, making him sweat profusely out of every pore, cursing his luck, wishing and praying for the moment to end. Moby noticed how scared and agitated the kid beside him was, so, he decided to show him that he was friendly and meant him no harm, to push the persona of him being a nice person. However, this only ended in him scaring the kid, even more, seeing Moby's friendly smile as the smile of a predator ready to eat him for breakfast, making him close his eyes and stand up straighter than an arrow, trying his best to pretend that Moby was not there and think happy thoughts. Good grief, this will be much harder than I expected. Moby thought with a long sigh. Okay, class. We will now start our ability training. Other than helping your basics, this is what your last month of training has all built up to. Like you know, refining your ability core and strengthening your bond with your inner spirit, requires you to increase your physical strength to a certain threshold before attempting. 
If we had gone straight to ability training from the first day like several of you previously suggested, it would have not ended too well for you to say the least. Many of you would have failed miserably at improving your core and bonds, likely even injuring yourselves in the process. This is how every person's training usually is, a combination of physical training until they build enough strength to strengthen their cores and bonds, then rinse and repeat. The more you go the harder it will be, and every person will have a different level of strength increase depending on many factors, mostly coming down to ability and spirit type, talent, as well as luck. The many a ranked students in your grade definitely started their ability training from a young age, probably using a family secret technique or something of the sort to boost their strength. So, don't get discouraged or feel down thinking that you will never catch up. They just had a small head start. With enough hard work and determination, you will be able to catch up and surpass them. Leo announced, making the entire class look at him with smiles of nervous excitement and hopeful eyes. As Moby looked around him, he noticed all the somewhat bright and excited faces of his classmates. However, when he looked to his right where Abby was, her face told a completely different story, a look that Moby had never seen on her face other than the first day they had met, despair, something that he confirmed using his emotion sensing to make sure that he was not imagining things, hey. Abby, are you alright? Moby asked, trying to find out what was wrong with his friend and subordinate to better understand why she was feeling the way she was. Oh oh my lord. I am just. I am really nervous about this. I have not tried any ability training ever since before I became a demon, at that time, every time I had tried it, I would break nearly every bone in my body and be forced to go into immediate care. I tried it over, and over, and over again, constantly breaking my body just for the slight chance of it working. However, in the end there was virtually no success in sight. So, that led me to pursue other methods of gaining strength, it led me to train my body which did not help, which then led to me experimenting with many things until I met you. I, I am just scared for the same thing to happen to me again. It is not about the pain, far from that. I am just scared of failure and disappointment. I don't want to be left behind. Abby explained in a sad yet sincere voice, greatly surprising Moby and making him feel bad for her. He never expected Abby to let her heart out to him and explain her true feelings, he expected her to deny his claims as she would think of herself too lowly to bother Moby with her selfish problems, making him nag her until she finally admitted everything to him. However, what happened was not at all that case which made Moby really happy to see her self-confidence grow. Yet, he was still sad to see his dear friend in such a mood. Ha ha ha. Don't worry. That was the old you. This is the new you. You have grown so much since then. Your new and improved demon body is not at all like what it used to be. It is no longer frail and weak like before. So, it should be a different story when you try now. I have full faith in you. Moby said with a smile, being completely honest while at the same time trying his best to lift her spirits, why yes, my lord. Thank you so much for your words of confidence. I promise that I will absolutely not let you down. Abby said, her expression changing drastically into something more positive and serious than before, stealing her mind and resolve as the words of her lord and saviour had relit the spark in her fiery heart, vowing to try the method that had caused her so much pain and suffering, not just physically but also mentally once more. Moby just looked at Abby's face that was full of resolve with a smile and a nod, reaffirming his previous words before looking back at Professor Leo who was about to give. Everyone instructions on what to do. Okay class, we will be doing the most widely used and standard way of training, there are others, but this is the one we will be mostly using in class as almost everyone can benefit from it. Don't worry, we will be working with other ways much later on in the year. So, for now, we will all be doing meditation. You might be forced to see some images, maybe some test or tribulation. What a person sees and the difficulty of them all depend on the person's spirit, personality, mental state, ability type, and a few more that I don't have time to go into detail with and won't really change the outcome of anything. Leo explained, leading to every student giving him a serious nod in response. Everyone sit down in a cross-legged position, Leo ordered, making everyone immediately comply with no hesitation. Good. Now. All of you close your eyes and, calm and clear your mind. Leo ordered once more, making everyone do as ordered, including Moby who looked over at Abby with a smile before he too closed his eyes. Focus deeply on the mana flow in your veins. Now. Once you find it, follow the flow and trace it back to your blue ability core that should be around the center of your body mass. Once you have located it, try to communicate with what lays within, stare deeply into it, and let your mind drift. Leo said, making Moby listen intently and follow his words step by step, changing them slightly to fit more with his circumstances. In his ability core, he noticed that instead of the blue color that Leo described, it was a nearly perfect sphere that was colored a mixture of blue, black, red, and purple with all of the colors clashing inside of it like a raging storm, almost like all of the colors were fighting over supremacy, making it seem almost unstable. It was a very odd sight to say the least. Moby decided to ignore the obscure nature of his ability core and did as Professor Leo suggested, neglecting the part about communicating with his inner spirit for obvious reasons, and opted to instead do his other suggestion of staring deeply into his sporadic ability core, clearing his mind and letting it drift. After 30 seconds of nothing but staring, Moby felt like it wasn't working, making him slightly disappointed. But, he persevered and kept on doing it for a little longer, then not even a second later, he felt his vision grow extremely blurry as the orb became bigger, smaller, taller, wider, morphing into different shapes like he was extremely nauseated before he felt his consciousness slip away, eventually making his vision go completely blank. Chapter 152 Moby struggled to open his weary eyelids, blinking a few times with his really blurry vision, looking at the wooden desk that seemed all too familiar to him and his prepubescent hands that laid on top of it, most likely where he rested his head. He rubbed his eyelids, trying to wake himself up and clear his eyesight before letting out a deep long yawn that reverberated throughout the entire room, making the sound of many giggles enter his ears. He could not remember what he was doing and where he was as his mind and body still felt extremely hazy. All that he could recall was that he was in a soothing, deep sleep that felt serious yet almost heavenly at the same time. It seems like you are finally back with us Mr. Kane, not only did you miss half the class by sleeping, you also yawned so loud to distract every other student in the class. Keep your head out of the clouds and pay attention. Kids like you make me sick. 
The familiar voice of an angry old man entered his ears, making him look up to see who it was only for him to be hit by a pen that blasted straight to his face like a torpedo, hitting him directly in the forehead right above his nose which really hurt, rocking his head leaving a red spot on impact before dropping on the ground, making him wake right up. When he gazed up with his now crystal vision, looking past all of the laughing students sitting in front of him, he noticed exactly who it was that had thrown the pen, making him feel extremely bad for what he had done. It was none other than his one and only homeroom teacher, Rolf Hemingwood. A man of average height, towering over all the young children sitting beneath with an ugly scowl on his pale, old, wrinkly face. His green eyes were like fiery slits, daggers aimed straight at Moby's face. His hair seemed slightly greasy yet fairly maintained, tied into a bun at the back of his head making him look like a person's grandmother. For his attire, he wore a standard yet elegant white button-up shirt with his sleeves rolled up revealing his skinny, twig-like arms, an expensive-looking golden watch wrapped around his right wrist. The bottom half of his body that was covered by the metal podium where he rested his utensils on sported suave black denim pants, that were tight yet not tight enough to outline what laid underneath, while matching his black dress shoes, with a swift wave of his hand, the marker that had hit Moby, and once laid on the ground suddenly floated up before being quickly returned to his hand once more as he used his telekinesis, ability to retrieve it. Moby then immediately and suddenly shot out of his seat, standing up with his hands to his hips, straighter than an arrow which did not come as a surprise to anyone in the class as they were fully expecting it. I am extremely sorry for the disrespect sir. I promise you that I meant no such thing. Your classes are truly amazing and I learned so much from them. Other than hanging out with my friends, it is what gets me so excited to come to school every day. It was just that I had an extra long training session last night and I felt extremely tired. I must have fallen asleep in your class by accident due to exhaustion, once again, I meant you no disrespect sir. I beg for your forgiveness. Moby said in a serious and apologetic tone, bowing deeply to his teacher, making the entire class gossip and chuckle once again. Yeah, yeah, whatever kid, just don't do it again. The teacher said in a clearly annoyed voice, turning around before writing on the virtual board with his pen, continuing where he left the lesson off. Why yes sir. Thank you so much for your forgiveness and kind words. I promise that it won't ever happen again. Moby said, his expression drastically changing, sitting back in his seat with a polished smile that shined brighter than the sun, making various students try their best to control themselves from dying of laughter that Moby saw as them simply having fun during, the class which could not have been farther from the truth. This kid keeps pissing me off more and more every day, my job is already hard enough without him. Rolf mumbled under his breath, not loud enough for anyone else to hear as he continued writing his math lesson on the board. Moby immediately opened up his old notebook and brought out his pen, one of the only people in the class not using an electronic device for note-taking, and began taking notes about everything his teacher said and wrote with clear diligence and interest in his eyes. Then, as he finished his first note, he looked around his entire class, admiring it with a calm yet cheerful expression and a deep breath, taking in the fresh air from the open window beside him that was blowing wind through his pure, deep black hair that went down to his eyes. He wished that times like these could last an eternity, Moby's desk was situated at the bottom left corner of the class, right behind the window that looked down on the schoolyard and displayed the grey, cloudy weather outside. Various drawings, diagrams and motivational posters hung from the side of the metal walls with other decorations and bookcases on the bottom. The class had a total of 28 young-looking students around 12 or 13 years of age, 16 male and 12 female. The students wore the standard white and blue-colored uniforms of Crawley Elementary School, a button-up shirt and long yet tight pants of the guys and a shirt and skirt for the girls. The quiet yet diligent students of the class sat at the front, taking notes, asking questions, trying their best to get the highest grades while the louder, more carefree, less intelligent students sat at the back, mostly either on their phones or socializing amongst each other, as they could not care less about elementary school as it was only military school that truly counted for their future. Of course, there were a few exceptions to that rule which included Moby who also sat at the back of the class with most of the delinquents. After 30 minutes had passed, the school bell sounded, marking the end of the school day, making many students celebrate and become excited, packing their belongings before bolting out of the class like a rocket as it was their last day of school before their week-long spring break. Hey! Everyone! Come back here. The bell doesn't dismiss you, I do. Rolf roared in annoyance, pulling every runaway student back to the class by force using his telekinesis ability, making the entire class sigh with vivid irritation as they sat back in their seat impatiently waiting to be dismissed by their teacher. Okay class, now that I have everyone's attention, make sure to study hard during the break as I will be assigning a test on the Pythagorean theorem, and properties of a triangle as soon as you get back, I will also be assigning a short, 1000 word essay about the benefits of being a country's Z citizen, just to keep you company during the break and keep your minds fresh. And, yes, before you ask, it will definitely be graded. You are now all dismissed, have a good spring break class, Rolf said with a devilish smirk and a serious voice, making the entire class grumble in annoyance, completely changing their once faces cheerful that were excited for the break, no one daring to voice their complaints as they knew it would not end too well for them. It was almost like he found joy in the misfortune of others. The only person that seemed unfazed was Moby who thought that the teacher truly did care about them and their future, assigning them extra homework to better prepare them for military school in the future. As Moby was packing his belongings, putting them all in his backpack, he was approached by a very familiar face, slamming down his hand on Moby's desk with a smirk on his face. A slightly tanned, skinny, average height kid with blue. Hair, black eyes, and a few handsome features. It was, of course, none other than one of his bestest, dearest, and closest friends, Eric Quinn. Hey! Moby, old buddy. That was quite some show you put on during class, it was hilarious. You never seemed to disappoint. Eric said with a laugh, remembering what had happened with Moby and Rolf 30 minutes ago. Thanks, but I was only being honest and trying my best to apologize for my disrespect, Moby nervously replied, not even looking Eric in the eyes as he continued to pack up his belongings. Hey, whatever you say, bro, it was still funny as hell either way. But that was not the reason I came here right now. I was thinking, since I will be going on a road trip with my family during the break, why don't we have another one of our training sessions? It would be a good way to spend our last time seeing each other before the break. I even brought a few friends with me. After I told them all about you, they said they couldn't wait to meet you and become your friends. Trust me, it will be more fun with more people. You know what they say, the more the merrier. So, are you in? 
Eric said with a bright friendly smile to Moby. Ah really? They want to be friends with me. I am so happy. I can't wait. Thank you so much for all of this. I always wanted more friends. I will gladly accept your invitation, Moby said with nervous excitement, smiling back to Eric with tears of joy running down his face, making Eric inwardly laugh and cringe even though he knew exactly what he should have expected from Moby Kane, the school's biggest anomaly, the boy so happy and positive at all times no matter the circumstance that nobody had a noteworthy explanation other than he was crazy, or mentally ill. Are you okay with doing it now? Same place as always, the yard right behind the school. I would like to ideally do it before it starts raining, I hate walking home in the rain. So, what do you say? Eric asked, already knowing the answer before he even spoke. Of course. I have no problems at all. Like, you know my katana is always on me, hung around my backpack so I am ready as I'll ever be. Moby responded nervously yet with no hesitation. Great. My friends will meet us there, they should probably get there before we do. So, follow me and let us walk there together, it is always safer that way, Eric said, just as Moby finished packing his belongings, standing up before nodding firmly in agreement. Good, Eric replied, walking towards the exit of the classroom, Moby walking behind seemingly unaware of all the amused and disgusted glares coming his way. As Moby walked through the classroom door, right behind Eric, he pulled out his family's golden necklace from his pocket, looking at it with a deep smile, Mom, Dad, are you seeing this? I am finally going to be making even more friends now. Aren't you proud of me? Moby thought, trying to hold back his tears of joy, then, seemingly out of nowhere, as he continued staring at the necklace in his hand, his heart rate suddenly skyrocketed, giving him an intense feeling in the chest unlike anything he had ever felt before in his life, it was like his heart was about to explode right out of it, creating boiling blood instead of the regular blood he was also used to. Then, that feeling of intense pain was followed up with more pain in the form of a massive headache, making him bend down on one knee holding his chest in anguish, as fuzzy familiar yet unfamiliar voices and images constantly popped in and out his head, making his entire body sweat, shudder and tremble, who are these people? What are those voices? Do I know them? What is going on? Where is all of this pain coming from and when will it end? Those were the only thoughts running through Moby's mind as his entire body and soul was ravaged with unimaginable pain and suffering, not being able to differentiate was fake or real, dream or reality. Then, as quickly as it started, it suddenly ended, almost like nothing had happened, all the pain. All of the voices and images, they all suddenly going away like a snap of the fingers, when Moby opened his eyes, he found that he was on his knees, staring at the marble ground of the school with his necklace still tightly in his right hand, sweating buckets and hyperventilating from what had just happened to him. When he checked and felt his body, he felt like there were no injuries on it despite all of the unimaginable pain he felt, it was too surreal, when he looked around, he saw all the worried faces of his classmates who surrounded him in a circle. This also included Eric who looked the most worried out of all of them, which made Moby smile before standing up, putting his necklace back in his pocket, trying his best to forget about what had just happened and look at the bright future ahead of him. He was not going to let such a thing get between him and making new friends. However, like usual, Moby got it all wrong. What he mistook as looks of worry were actually looks of pure shock and surprise. It was the first ever time anyone had ever seen Moby in actual pain, anguish or despair, even through the cruelest, and most brutal beatings and tortures he did not at all crack. But now, there he was, exhibiting all those emotions they previously thought to be impossible for him to feel, all right in front of their eyes which shocked them beyond belief with only one thought running through their minds, what the fuck just happened? Chapter 153 Moby immediately dusted off the dirt on his navy blue pants, trying his best to forget everything that had just occurred by wearing a chipper smile on his face. Then, he just stood up like nothing had ever happened, only to see the worried faces of all of his classmates making him chuckle, rubbing the back of his head. Sorry for worrying you guys, it was really nothing. It must just be the exhaustion getting to me. I am completely fine see. Moby said with a laugh, rubbing his entire body making everyone sigh before leaving. It must have just been a fluke, I got hyped over nothing, yeah. I really did think he had suddenly cracked out of nowhere, oh well, maybe he's ill or something, I don't want to get his germs, let's just get out of here, I want to get home before it rains. I absolutely don't want to get sick and ruin my entire break, that would be tragic, his classmates commented, walking out of the classroom, still harboring spite towards Moby. Have a good break guys. Moby waved to them with a smile, only for him to be spat on by several students that did not make him change his cheerful expression, as he wiped away all of the spit from his face with a tissue that he pulled out of his pocket, making everyone laugh before exiting the room which caused Moby immense joy that he had entertained them one last time before the break. Hey, Eric, are you alright? Moby said with clear worry in his voice, still looking at Eric's face that had been frozen for the past few seconds as he was still deep in thought about what had happened. In his mind, what had just happened was not at all a fluke, it was a sign. A sign telling him that it was possible to crack the uncrackable boy. Even after the strongest and cruelest students gave their best shot at getting him to crumble as a dare from one of their friends, they were far from making him remotely feel any negative emotions which made Moby very well known all around the school. Ever since then, Moby had turned into the school's doormat and punching bag, everyone using him like a tool for their own purposes. Like he was inhuman, almost like a robot or object. If he out of all people finally managed to break Moby Kane and film him on camera, he would become famous and well known around the school as he would have done something so one else could do. And from the sign he was just given, he felt like there was hope of it actually happening, making him look forward to what was about to occur. At first, he had just wanted to invite a few of his close friends to show them how good of a punching bag Moby was, taking out their immense anger on him from all the bullying they also went through for being one of the weaker students, beating him senseless without him even doing anything back other than beg for forgiveness like a foolish, broken doll. But now he had bigger plans, making a wide, cynical smile appear on his face as he stared at Moby's concerned expression that was aimed straight towards him. Yeah, don't worry about me, I was just really concerned about you, that's all. Anyway, my friends are probably already waiting for us at the back of the school, I would hate to keep them waiting. We should really hurry up. Eric said with a less than innocent smile, running out of the classroom. Why yes. Of course. Moby replied, running after him with no hesitation at all. Oh, brother, that kid is truly brainless. 
Professor Rolf, who was still packing his belongings at his desk, mumbled with a sigh as he saw the little Moby running to undoubtedly meet grave misfortune and troubles. Moby raced behind Eric through the nearly empty hallways due to everyone wishing to go back home for the break as soon as possible, struggling to keep up due to his lack of ability and Eric's enhanced physique. When suddenly, an immense pain ravaged his mind once more, making the blurry face of a beautiful red-haired girl appear in his subconscious, causing him to sweat profusely and breathe faster as he shook it off and continued following behind Eric, trying his best to forget that it even happened. What the hell are you doing my lord? I know this is not who you are. An all too familiar voice rang in his head, making him clutch his chest in pain and his eyes to become hazy as he struggled to keep up with Eric even more, hoping that he did not notice what had just happened to him, eh no. Get out of my head. I am who I am, and I am going to make new friends. Whoever is doing this please stop. Moby inwardly grumbled, a hint of negative emotion slipping through the cracks of his soul, luckily for him, he did not experience such a moment again for his entire run behind Eric as they both went down the stairs, and out the dirty back door of the building beside where the putrid school dumpster was, leading to their entire nose being filled with nothing but the smell of rotten cheese and feces, making them both cover their noses using the shirts of their school uniform, then, after running. For a minute more, reaching an area where the smell was barely noticeable, he saw the faces of two unknown boys he had never before seen during his time at school, making him tense up with nervousness and excitement at the same time the closer he drew near to them, once they reached them, both groups greeted each other with a friendly wave and a smile as Eric began to introduce Moby to both of his friends. Sorry we were so late, there was something that had suddenly come up, Eric said, apologizing to both of his friends. Don't worry about it, we only waited for two minutes or something, it was no big deal. Anyways, is this the kid you were hyping up so much? The skinnier of the two boys asked with an amused look. Yep. He is. I am surprised that you have never heard of him before, he is pretty famous all over the school. This is Moby Kane. He is abilityless, but one of my dearest and bestest friends. He has been a big help in paying for my sick sister's hospital expenses. He is truly a kind person. Eric said, patting Moby on the back with a little too much force which made him almost fall over, leaving a stinging feeling running down his back. He he, you are praising me too much. I am not that famous, Moby said in embarrassment, rubbing the back of his head. Ha ha ha. You would be surprised how truly popular you are. Eric said, with a loud, amused laugh. This guy right here is my old buddy Simon, his ability is iron fists, allows him to make his hands much stronger, in turns dramatically increases his punching power, Eric said, his hands on the shoulder of a brown-haired, fat, burly, yellow-eyed kid who stood at a tall and imposing 5 feet 3 inches, far taller than an average 12-year-old boy. It's nice to meet you. I hope we can become great friends, the boy said, putting his hands out in front of him to shake the hands of the tiny in comparison Moby who stood at a measly 4 feet 8 inches with, a friendly smile on his face. It it is nice to meet you too. S Simon. I hope we can get along well. Moby nervously responded, shaking his hand with a mellow smile before suddenly, asterisk crack asterisk the sound of a fracture abruptly rang through everyone's ears as Moby felt intense pain from his hand, making him grunt in pain, immediately holding his nearly broken right hand with his left as soon as they finished their handshake. Oh. Whoops. I am sorry, I always forget the strength of my hands. Simon said with a chuckle. Oh. Don't worry about it. It's okay. It was all an accident. I understand. Moby said, still holding his hurting hand with a bright smile, making all three kids around him break out into uncontrollable laughter as no matter how many times it happened, Moby's words never failed to entertain. Oh God. Eric bro. You were not at all lying. When you told me about this guy I thought you were just capping but he is actually the real deal. I am actually dying. I am sorry for ever doubting you. Simon said, holding his stomach in pain from all the excessive laughter as Moby just laughed with them, happy that they were having fun in his presence as he felt their friendship grow, what the fuck are you doing? Come on. Are you stupid? They are just fucking with you. I know you are better than this. Open your eyes and fight back against these dickheads. A soft yet manly voice reverberated in his head, a flash of the face of a blurry purple-haired man along with memories he never remembered having, yet, at the same time, somehow remembered experiencing. Memories of him and three other unknown faces smiling and laughing, having fun as they ate at a long, luxurious dinner table. What is this pain? What are these memories? Who are these people? Is that me? Is that true friendship? Moby thought, his heartbeat rapidly rising once again with sweat running down his face before finally snapping back to reality, looking at the laughing and mocking faces of Eric and his future friends with a somber yet confused look and an awkward and unsure smile. Chapter 154 for as long as he could remember, this was the first ever time that he felt true doubt in his heart, making him ask the questions he never bothered asking before, do they truly want to be my friends? Are they messing with me? Was that really an accident? Thoughts such as those rampaged wildly in his mind as the two sides of him began to clash against each other. One of his true self and one of his false self, he could not tell what was real or fake, they all seemed all too true to him, dream and reality merged together. A migraine bigger than any other one before it sprung out in his brain, making him crumble on the ground with red bulging eyes that felt like they were about to pop out of their sockets. His heart began pounding faster than ever before as he felt every fiber of his body shudder in pain, his heart feeling like it was about to explode at any instant as he rolled over on the ground in pure agony, pain from both mind and body, when he tried to send those thoughts to the back of his head once again like he did the last time it happened, he only managed to be half successful as many of those thoughts and doubts still lingered at the front of his mind like they were a cockroach. Refusing to die and go away. When will this end? What is real? What is fake? I am sure they are my friends. They must be. Right? Moby thought, with a great amount of doubt in his heart, trying his best to give his future friends the benefit of the doubt as his suspicions were slowly being sucked away by some unknown means that he could not see or even fathom. When he opened his eyes, he stared at the dirty gravel floor, his school uniform all muddy and wet from the rain that had begun to fall. 
He shook his head, regaining control of his body and mind before looking at the three boys standing, looking down on him from above with a devilish grin on their face that Moby could not tell was a smile of good or bad intention, as he looked at them with a mellow expression before standing up on his two feet dusting the mud and gravel from his clothes. During the time that Moby was still unconscious, rolling on the ground in anguish, Eric managed to relay to his friends the new change of plans he had devised, making them smile and agree with no hesitation. They were seeing big cracks in Moby's innocent, nice guy mask and they intended to make the cracks even bigger until it shattered completely into a million pieces, to break both his mind and body, making them feared, famous and renowned all around the school as it would no doubt be an astounding achievement point one of them had the idea to record Moby, while he was rolling on the ground as proof of their success which was quickly scrapped as it would have been a complete failure if he just showed up. To school the next day like nothing happened which would have made them look like fakers who just asked him to pretend. They had to scar him, leaving a lasting effect on him that would stick for the rest of his life. They must break the doll, making it completely impossible to fix by any means, sorry I made you guys so worried. I was just having some exhaustion issues again. Don't mind me. I promise it doesn't really happen often, Moby said with an unsure smile, looking at the less than innocent faces of the three boys. Don't worry about it. I am just glad you are still with us. Allow me to introduce myself to you. I am Raymond Klee. My ability is poison gas manipulation, we are both in the same grade so we should try to get along. Nice to meet you. Said a short, skinny, orange-haired boy who had a marginally larger nose than usual, his left hand out to shake Moby's hand as his right hand was still injured, an eerie smile on his face. It's nice to meet you too. Moby nervously replied, shaking his hand hoping that everything would be fine. They both shook each other's hand with a smile, nothing at all going bad or out of control as they both let go, making Moby breathe a sigh of genuine relief, I knew it. It must have all just been an accident that last time. What was I even thinking doubting their intentions? I should really learn to be more trusting of people. Humans are truly nice creatures. Moby thought before getting his views flipped upside down and spoon fed to him with a side of shit. What the fuck did you do kid? You got my hands all dirty. This is disgusting. Even my sleeves are now dirty from all this mud. How dare you? My mother works very hard to clean my clothes every day and you come along and make her work even harder. Raymond bellowed with immense anger. At that moment, the doubt crashed back into Moby's head like a meteorite as many thoughts flooded his mind. Fuck, it's all my fault. I should have wiped and cleaned my hands before I shook his. Poor mother, but it's raining, his clothes would need washing anyways, but his mother, but how could cleaning something require that much effort when it's so easy with current technologies? I even do it myself and it's a piece of cake, I am going to have to teach you a lesson for that. Raymond shouted with clear excitement, ignoring Moby's blank puzzled look, punching him in the stomach so hard that it made him kneel down and firmly clench where the blow had landed. Yeah. Actions have consequences you know. Simon screamed, punching Moby in the back with his enhanced fist, making him cry out in anguish as he felt his entire body shake from the blow. I, I am sorry. I promise to make it up to you as much as I can. Moby said, curled up into a ball to protect his body, fighting tears from flowing down his face. Sorry isn't good enough. Eric yelled, kicking Moby in the side of the ribs, making him grunt in agony but not stop apologizing. I am so sorry. It was all my fault. I'll clean it personally. Moby mumbled, still curled up into a ball. Fuck. You're so dense. Don't you get it? We were never your friends. You're just a punching bag. A doll. The school doormat and nothing more. We just wanted something to let out our anger on. No one ever liked you. And no one ever will. You are nothing but a tool only fit to be used by others. Get that through your thick skull. Eric bellowed with great amusement, an evil smile on his face as he kicked Moby's back once more, making him stop with his constant apologies. Ha ha. Come on guys it's working. Harder. Harder. Eric added as he repeatedly kicked Moby who was still on the ground trying to protect his vitals, surrounded by the three boys who repeatedly wailed on him with a mixture of light and heavy blows, showing no mercy in their attacks. Fuck, why is this happening? What did I do wrong? Do they hate me? Did they hate me this whole time? Moby thought, his mind running in circles, unable to believe what was going on in front of him as it contradicted his entire way of life. It was no longer all colorful with sunshine and rainbows, it was now grayer than it had ever been before in his life as the colors became blander, losing all of their energy and vibrance. That was when the unknown images and sounds he had previously experienced suddenly sprung. Back in his mind, seemingly at the most inopportune time as it was the last thing he needed at that moment was more pain and uncertainty. It was all their fault for making him feel the way he currently felt after all, suddenly, a somewhat familiar, stunning, blue-haired beauty with a soft, loving smile and teary eyes appeared in his mind. One of the most beautiful girls he had ever laid eyes on in his entire life making him think where he had seen her before. Babe. Where is that might, vigor and unbreakable will I love so much about you? Tear them to shreds. The girl said in a playful yet sad tone before immediately disappearing due to Raymond's powerful kick to his shoulder, making him groan in pain, the more he got hit, the more images and scenes began flashing in his head, events that he could recall but not recall. Scenes of a soft, female voice in his head and a game-like interface, scenes of an older Eric, armless and legless like a nugget, getting swiftly beheaded by a familiar-looking rusty sword. Of a boy pooping on the ground and acting like a monkey. Of a blonde teenager, choking on his own cock before eating his own feces. Of a crazy white-haired girl, expressing her love to him in one instance, and her exploding body in the next. Of a tall black-haired teenager's body dead on the ground, a knife right beside his corpse. A winged, beautiful demon with purple hair and glowing eyes appearing out of the sky like a goddess, with a smirk and chuckle on her face, a dinner table with three other people, two beautiful girls and one playful boy. A kiss with a gorgeous blue hair beauty under the starry, purple night sky, tears running down both of their faces, burning trees in the background along with soothing music, and, finally, his own face. Red streaks in his jet black hair, black horns growing from his head. Deep purple eyes that stared into his very soul, glowing, shadowy, black lines under his eyes that connected to the rest of his body. A serious expression on his face that did not look too pleased, wake the fuck out of your delusions and make these bitches pay. 
The demon-like version of himself screamed, sending shivers down to his very core, a glint of white light that gradually turned darker and more ominous flashing in his mind, making him remember who he was truly supposed to be. Hey! Eric! Look what I found! Why don't we make him eat this? It would be hilarious. This kid would do anything if we ask him. Raymond said with an amused laugh, pointing at a piece of dog shit on the gravelly, dirty floor. Ha 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 ha. Good idea. Hey! You heard that kid? It's dinner time. Simon said with a chuckle, picking up Moby like he was as light as a feather, throwing him towards the piece of dog shit as he skidded across the sharp, gravelly ground. That was the moment when Moby snapped back into reality, his mind clearer and freer than ever before, opening his eyes only to see a filthy, disgusting piece of dog shit in front of him with extreme hatred and contempt in his heart. His once scared, confused, and frightened eyes turning into deadly slits that he hid by looking at the ground, biding his time for the right moment to strike. He used this moment to do something he knew he needed to do to win against all three of them. It was his most sacred, most prized possession that had been gifted to him by his dead parents, but he was sure that was what they intended him to do with it in the first place, so it did not pain him in the slightest to break it. He sneakily reached into his pocket, making sure that no one around him noticed before tightly holding onto his golden family necklace, smashing it into many tiny pieces, the sound masked by the moderately heavy falling rain all around him. From all that happened to him today, and all the pain of those memories, he had no doubt in his mind that what he was going to do was going to work. And just like he thought, it did work as a familiar sound and blue notification screen appeared in his peripheral vision, just like the one he previously saw in his mind and memories. Making him smile as he waited calmly for the loading screen to finish, demon system activating, 1%, 14%, 23%, hey kid. Time to eat. Eat shit. Literally. Ha ha ha. Simon bellowed, vigorously laughing as he held Moby's head by the hair, pushing it straight towards the piece of shit in front of him, making Moby inwardly curse as he prepared himself to counterattack even though he knew he was not strong enough properly to escape, or deal any real damage. 44% stop. I want to do something before he finally eats. To make it juicier if you know what I mean. Plus I have to go anyway so I might as well. Eric said with a smirk, suddenly intervening, making Simon extremely annoyed before catching on to what Eric meant, making him completely on board with his suggestion. Ha ha. Great idea. Too bad I don't have to go right now too, Raymond commented with a chuckle, also catching Eric's drift. I feel the same. Too bad, we could have added double or even triple the flavor. Simon yelled as he let go of Moby's hair, throwing him headfirst onto the ground with an astounding thud, making him regain his balance as he went on his knees. In the next moment, he saw Eric, standing tall and proud in front of him, unzipping his pants before pissing on the piece of dog shit with a blissful look on his face that was showered by rain, Moby's hatred growing the more and more he stared at Eric's smug, disgusting face as he waited for the loading screen to end with bated breath point 69% 83% arf. All done. That should add a good taste to it. Now enjoy the meal and learn who is boss. Recognize that no one has ever liked you and nobody ever will. Now break. You useless doll. Eric screamed, laughing hysterically as Simon held onto Moby's head once more, shoving it to the ground as he struggled to fight the immense power of his hands, 100%. System activated, host has been recognized, greetings Moby Kane, I am your new demon system, and I will help you accompli. A familiar soothing, female voice appeared in his head before being abruptly cut off, Avilia. Quickly. Give me a little bit of your power. That's all I need to show these fuckers the true meaning of hell. Moby inwardly screamed his heart out, struggling to keep his head up from Simon's strong push, startling Avilia as she did not at all expect him to know her name. However, after reading a little into his mind, she understood everything, even to the point of her understanding the true nature of herself and the world around her that was not as real as she thought upon closer inspection, making her laugh her ass off, ha ha. Fine. Take some of my power. If you can't beat a few 12-year-olds with this much power then both me and my true self would be very disappointed in you. This should be just enough power for your body to handle, any more in your system would tear down and break. Worst case scenario would have been that you explode. I distributed it automatically to the stats you usually use. I also put notifications off to help you focus on your fight. Have fun. Avilia said with a smile, wow. So this is the kid I decided to place all my hopes in. I would have never imagined. I hope I had made the right choice. Avilia thought, spectating the upcoming events from Moby's head, then, all of a sudden, Moby felt a rush of immense power enter his body, making a large, devilish grin appear on his face, finally, they will now pay. Moby thought as he imagined everything he was about to do to those three kids standing around him with mocking and amused faces, with his enhanced strength and speed, he managed to move his healing, yet really injured body away from the big, chunky Simon, making him go wide-eyed as Moby had suddenly disappeared from his view, causing him to grow confused and wonder where he went. Moby had used his demon flash to instantly jump up above Simon while he was blinded from his own thick, flabby arms that he used to push down on Moby's head. You idiot. He's right above you. Raymond screamed to warn Simon, making him look up towards the rainy sky above him, when he did, he was only met with a burning, tight clasp on his face, squeezing it firmly before it was shoved down straight to the dogshit underneath with incredible speed causing a loud bang, along with small cracks to appear on the ground, the dogshit entering through Simon's eyes, mouth, and nose. Be careful what you wish for. Actions have consequences you know. Moby said, laughing cynically at Simon's unmoving body, all of a sudden. Eric and Raymond had a bad feeling in their heart with massive chills running down their spines like they had just done the worst mistake of their life, as they stared at the laughing, psychopath-like Moby who had just let go of Simon's less than pleasant, shit-covered, motionless face that had a disturbing expression. As he shifted his attention on Raymond and Eric who were standing not too far away from him, he threw his back to the side, pulling out his rusty katana with a deadly glint in his eyes, slowly walking towards the two shocked and motionless boys as they still could not believe their eyes. You're next. Moby spoke with pure, unadulterated hatred and anger in his eyes, pointing his blade towards Raymond and Eric's directions making them both inwardly curse as they prepared to fight back. Chapter 155 the pressure that Eric and Raymond were feeling from Moby was not like anything they had ever felt from him before. It was like he was a completely different person. 
The cheery, always positive Moby was now long gone. They had turned what used to be an innocent angel into a pure, cold-hearted demon, for an instant, their attention fell on Simon as they wondered if he, who was laying on the ground looking lifeless, was actually dead or not, if the out-of-control Moby had actually killed him. But that thought only lingered in their minds for a split second as it was the least of their concerns at the moment. They stared at Moby slowly walking towards them with weary eyes, an old rusty sword in his right hand, anger and hatred overflowing out of the deadly slits of his eyes, an ominous smile on his face. Fuck off you weak, abilitilous, piece of shit. Did you forget who you were dealing with? Know your place and submit before I make you. Eric ordered, attempting to keep his composure and act tough, trying his best to ignore the bad feeling deep down in his heart. Even though Moby was a very competent martial artist, in the end, he still had no ability. Abilities not only gave a person superpowers, but also greatly enhanced a person's physical attributes, allowing them to deal and take more physical damage. Without an ability, Moby would simply not be able to keep up no matter what he did, and, he would not be able to deal enough damage against Eric and Raymond's superior defenses. They thought what had happened to Simon was nothing but a fluke as he was unprepared and caught off guard. Eric and Raymond who were now fully prepared would not be confused by such simple tricks, all in all, they felt like they had a 100% chance of victory, even in sparring sessions when Eric told Moby to go all out, he still never stood a chance. So, why should it now suddenly be different? I warned you. Now die. Eric screamed towards Moby who had not heeded his warning, continuing to walk forward with a steady pace and an even more disturbing grin, making Eric shoot out various blades of visible green wind, continuously jumping back, trying to keep at a distance where he had the biggest advantage, unfortunately for Raymond who had yet to move, that only solidified him as Moby's first target, Moby infused his legs with demon energy, using two demon flashes in a quick burst to dodge the incoming wind blades. As he appeared a few meters in front of Raymond, making him smile and laugh. Ha ha ha. You fell for it, fool. Black haze. Attacking me head on like a bull was the worst decision you will ever make in your life. Observe. Raymond laughed hysterically as he knew his victory was definitely assured due to the stupidity of his opponent that was seemingly, completely blinded by rage. He then smiled, putting out his skinny, twig-like arms in front of him before opening his fist, releasing a dense cloud of black, poisonous gas out of his open palm that slowly covered and enveloped the entire area in front of him, Moby being too close to dodge the incoming attack as it wrapped around him as well, as soon as the black smoke hit Moby, he began to cough excessively and uncontrollably, giving off his location from inside the thick black gas surrounding him. Raymond's ability, at least of the stage he was in was not able to corrode the skin or cause any real or lasting damage, it instead only weakened the opponent's strength while making them nauseated and cough. The only person that was immune to the effect of the poison was Raymond himself, allowing him to enter his own gas cloud with no problems at all which was exactly what he did. With a sense of heavy relief and a confident smile on his face, he entered his own poison cloud, following the sound of coughing until he eventually reached Moby's location, a dagger in hand ready to stab and take him out. As Raymond did this, Eric had stopped his onslaught of wind blades as he could no longer see where Moby was, as he was hidden due to the thick poison cloud that Raymond had created. And, if he wanted to fire inside the dust cloud at random, just hoping to hit Moby, he risked the chance of also hitting Raymond, something that he definitely did not want to do. For now, all he could do was wait for Raymond to get the job done, something that he undoubtedly knew was going to happen. Although Raymond's poison gas was extremely slow and was only able to be used once or twice before he had to recharge his mana, once someone was actually caught in it, they were as good as dead. In his eyes, it was virtually unbeatable. Nobody that had been hit by the attack ever came out victorious let alone unscathed, and he had no reason to believe that it would be an exception in his current situation, not even five seconds later, Eric heard an unpleasant, high-pitched, almost woman-like scream come from the poison cloud in the distance, making him smirk as he knew that it was already over. As the poison cloud began to clear and become a little more see-through, the figure of the two boys appeared, one of them holding the other. One firmly by the face, squeezing hard as the other boy screamed, squirmed, and struggled to get out of his grasp, almost exactly like he had imagined it playing out in his mind, then, all of a sudden, the boy holding the other lifted his left hand, putting up a thumbs up, Eric recognizing it as a signal letting him know that it was now okay to attack once more, which he happily agreed to dot he opened his arms far out to his side, imbuing his open fists with mana that turned into wind blades before, throwing them out of his hands with incredible force and speed, launching a barrage of similar attacks at who he could only assume was Moby, dangling from Raymond's fists as he tried his best to break free, struggling to breathe, with each successful attack, a large, deep wound and splash of blood would appear on the boy's body that was accompanied by banshee-like screams from the sinking, immense pain. Eventually, the cuts on his arms, and legs became deep enough for him to slice right through as Eric repeatedly hit the exact same area over and over again until, asterisk snap asterisk the boy had all of a sudden lost both an arm and a leg, the limbs snapping and falling on the ground, making him squeal and squirm louder and faster than ever before as his screams pierced through the air, making Eric laugh maniacally and uncontrollably, ha ha ha. What was I even scared of? That was a piece of cake. This kid got totally fucked. If I attacked him anymore he would be dead and I would get in trouble, plus I wouldn't be able to prove my triumph against him. As long as he doesn't die I should be good, he should not bleed to death like this and limbs can be easily healed after all, Eric thought with a clear, confident smirk. Hey. Raymond. Toss him to me so I can take videos and pictures. Then we need to get this idiot Simon to the nurse's office. Hopefully, she did not leave already. I saw Simon move a bit a few seconds ago so he is still well alive, only unconscious and disgusting from all of that shit. So, come on. Throw the bitch here and let me see all the damage. Eric said with clear excitement and anticipation in his voice, still within the hazy poison cloud and without hesitation, the boy's figure let go of the head of the other who had lost an arm and a leg, holding him by his only remaining leg, twirling him around in a circle to generate speed before throwing him like a high-speed torpedo, his head at the front of the throw. Eric did not at all predict to receive a throw that hard, especially from Raymond who was known to be fairly weak, so he was not able to react in time to dodge as it was the least thing he was expecting. The throne boy crashed straight into Eric's stomach with a strong headbutt, almost like he was launched from a cannon, knocking the wind out of him as he clenched his stomach in pain, kneeling down on one knee as the body bounced off his stomach and crashed on the ground with an impressive bang. Hey! What the fuck was that Abu? 
Eric screamed with immense anger looking at the poison cloud that had already disappeared leaving no one there, greatly confusing him before looking down, noticing whose body it actually was underneath him. Chapter 156 Underneath him laid a heavily injured, barely breathing boy, grasping at the last threads of his life, deep cuts all over his pale looking skin, faint burn marks on his motionless face with a clear outline where the other boy's hand had been tightly grasping, blood slowly trickling out from where his lost limbs used to be. Eric shuddered in absolute horror as he stared at the dead looking body underneath him, his legs shaking faster than a vibrator as his previous thoughts and ideas got flipped on their heads, as he was unable to believe his weary eyes. That body did not belong to Moby like he was led to believe, far from it. It was none other than Raymond, looking skinnier than ever before, laying on the ground with a motionless, shocked expression on his face. The one who came out on top of that scuffle was not Raymond but Moby, and he was the one responsible for what happened to him. The thought that Moby was the winning figure never even crossed his mind as he thought victory was assured. So, he decided to attack the dangling body upon being given the signal to shoot. He was still not able to accept what was going on, he clearly saw Moby being swallowed by Raymond's poison cloud so he must have fallen under its effects. The only way that could explain this was if Moby closed his eyes and held his breath for that entire time. However, in his mind, that was completely impossible. Even without that poison, Raymond was physically superior to Moby in virtually every way, the only thing that Moby had the upper hand in was in martial arts which would make it a slightly closer fight, with Raymond still holding an advantage. So, if Moby was both blind and unable to breathe, there should have been absolutely no way for him to win. H how the fuck did this happen, thth there's no way this can be real. What kind of monster did I create, w where the fuck is he? Eric thought in panic, still flat on his ass, shifting his attention from Raymond's motionless face as it was currently the least of his worries. What followed baffled Eric somehow even more than he had already been, as he began to look up in order to see where Moby was, he saw a shadow appear from the edge of his peripheral vision before he felt a sudden, piercing uncontrollable pain coming from his stomach with an unexplainable burning sensation that burnt yet did not feel hot at all, the sound. A flesh being cut filling his ears as he let out an alarming scream of pain. When he looked down, he saw a bloody, rusty old katana stabbing right into his stomach, making his weary eyes grow even wider than they already were as he felt his body suddenly become weak, coughing up a mouthful of blood onto the sword stabbing him. When he looked up to see the face of his attacker with slightly blurry vision, he saw the shadow of Moby who looked nothing shy of a pure demon right from the depths of hell. His face wore a distorted, devilish grin from ear to ear, completely drenched in crimson blood, deadly slits in his eyes as he began to laugh hysterically at his pain. At that moment, Eric lost all hope. There was nothing more that he could do in his current state as he was completely out of mana due to his previous barrage of attacks, he was as good as dead, something that he felt like he would actually become in the next few minutes. Moby was simply too powerful, he had created a monster, making him unlock his hidden potential or maybe it was just that all those other times he was simply holding back. Either way, he knew that he was completely and utterly doomed. Why did I have to mess with this guy? Why is the world so cruel? I don't deserve any of this, I am too young to die. Eric thought, cursing his entire existence and stupidity, a waterfall of tears gushing down his face. However, Eric was once again completely wrong. Moby did not win by simply overpowering his opponents, he won with quick thinking and pure strategy alone. Moby did not know if those memories he saw were memories of the future, another reality, or just visions of who he must truly become, all he knew was that they were very real as proved by his working system and that the girl in the necklace was actually called Avilia, just like in his memories. He had many seemingly random facts litter his mind, ranging from useless facts like when military school Z started and ended to really useful ones like how to properly control and manipulate demon energy. One of those facts was that demons were completely immune to poisons of all kinds, however, it went deeper than that. According to his memories, a demon's anatomy was not the one responsible for neutralizing the poisons, it was the flow of demon energy that ran throughout their body that made a lot more sense to him. Throughout his entire childhood, he did not have a single case of food poisoning, and any poisonous substance he ever consumed had their effects still working yet severely reduced, something that he now attributed to his weak flow of demon energy. However, now with his memories and new system along with Avilia's power boost, his flow of demon energy was far stronger than before, allowing him to fully neutralize the poison with no trouble at all even in his enraged state, Moby knew that if he wanted to win and get his revenge, he was not able to rush in blindly so he formulated a plan of attack. He first forced Raymond into activating his poison cloud, pushing Eric to stop his endless barrage of wind blades that Moby was not confident in dodging, especially with his limited reserve of demon energy. He then suppressed his flow of demon energy, inhaling the poison to see its effects before unsurprising it again to only pretend to be having the symptoms of it to lure Raymond closer, and give him a false hope of victory. After Raymond found him seemingly in pain, coughing on the ground, he smiled wickedly, rushing towards Moby with a dagger in hand. However, he was the one stabbed instead, right through the chest by Moby who had caught him completely by surprise. Moby then released his sword from Raymond's weak body before grasping onto his with an iron grip, lifting him up to where his legs would not even be able to touch the ground as he struggled to break free due to his fear, panic, and injuries. As the dust began to clear, Moby gave a thumbs up Eric who of course interpreted it as a sign to attack, not wondering why he did not speak as smoke would have gotten in his mouth and lungs. This served as two things, the first was to deplete Eric's entire mana reserve, making him a more drastically easier target than before, and the second was to increase his shock factor and fear, causing him to become too scared to fight. Then, after throwing Raymond's body towards Eric like a torpedo, surprising and knocking the wind out of him, it gave him enough of a distraction to quickly close the distance between them without worrying about any wind blades coming his way, using his demon flash to do it even faster, now, Moby had Eric exactly where he wanted him, kneeling on the ground with a look of pure despair in his face as Moby's demon energy enhanced sword was dug deep into his stomach, although it was weaker than the visible, pure demon energy he saw his other self use, it was still strong enough to cause unimaginable pain onto his opponent with the added bonus of it being virtually invisible to the naked eye. As Moby looked at Eric's eyes and look of despair, he felt absolutely no pity, the only thought running through his mind was what the most painful, inhumane way of torture he could instill upon him before he finally dies. That was the reason he chose to leave the other boys alive for now as it was their turn later. 
And as he was thinking, he realized the answer in the form of a memory he had witnessed from his other or future self, making him laugh hysterically as he removed his sword from Eric's stomach, picking him up by the head before infusing a good portion of demon energy inside of him. Moby would have much preferred it if he could turn one of them into a demon, his personal slave for a week before disposing of them like they were nothing, but he was not even a lesser demon at that point and his reserve of demon energy was not enough. However, it was enough for the torture method he had seen in his memories, the one that sucked someone dry of their life essence before turning them into literal dust. As Eric felt Moby's tight, crushing iron grasp on his face, he began to inwardly panic, squirming around like a little child, trying his best to breathe let alone escape as he had no mana and was simply too weak to do anything in his current state. Then suddenly, he felt an unknown energy enter through his head, slowly spreading throughout his entire body. The feeling of calmness and peace that was instilled throughout his entire body made him stop his futile escape attempts as his entire body felt at peace, however, that peace did not last for long as it was replaced by the worst pain he had ever felt in his entire life. The light, heavenly blissful sensation disappeared and was instead replaced with pure darkness as he experienced his worst nightmares over, and over again in his head. However, they did not feel like nightmares. No, for him they were all too real, all the physical pain, all the mental anguish that came with them were both mostly replicated in his mind but also his actual body. His blood felt like it began boiling and bubbling with the heat and intensity of 1000 suns. He felt the bones in his body form cracks making it feel like it was about to crumble at any instance. Every organ in his body felt like they turned inside out, not all at once but slowly to make it as painful and excruciating as possible. His skin felt like it was churning as his previously black hair began to show strands of white and grey. His previously smooth skin began to wrinkle, making him look older than he actually was, even at his height of only 4 foot 10. In his mind what was only one or two minutes felt like many weeks, or even months straight of the worst torture he could even imagine. Moby stared at this entire painful process with a wide smile on his face as he was glad it was working even better than he expected. He could see all of the pain and suffering in real time as he began to witness his body agonize, break, shift and transform in weird ways. In a few seconds, he would undoubtedly be dead and he could have him out of his hair forever, getting what he deserved for all that he had put him through, when, suddenly, he felt an intense pain in his head akin to a slap that snapped him back into reality, making him come to his senses as he felt extremely stupid beyond belief for what he was about to do. He immediately let go of Eric's body, making it fall on the ground with a thud, small wrinkles on his skin with a few strands of grey on his head, his nose still breathing as he was just barely alive. Moby almost just messed up his entire life, almost killed and doomed himself over revenge due to his furious, blinding rage and hatred. He needed to stop and think about what he was about to do, something that he luckily managed at the last second before it was too late. Getting revenge did not mean throwing logic out the window, what was even the point if he would not stay alive for long right after? He needed to think calmly, logically, and intelligently, if he had killed Eric just now, everyone would know that it was him, leading him to get arrested and even sentenced to death in many cases, it was just not worth it. Even if he also killed the other two boys, there were many witnesses that saw him go with them to the back of the school, and if they formed an investigation or just asked him with a lie detector test, there would be no way he could get out of it. He had already scarred all of the three boys for life, and if he wanted to kill them, he needed to do it at a better time when there would be no witnesses and no way of them leading the murder back to him, for now, he needed to leave Eric alone as anything. More would just straight up kill him. He could wait for Simon and Raymond to wake up from their unconscious state to do the same thing he had done to Eric as it only worked when they were awake, but that risked him being seen by other people that could have been in the area. It risked his new torture technique being discovered and it risked him going into another fight with potentially stronger students, something that he was not confident in as his demon energy reserves were almost depleted. His best course of action would be to leave for now and strike later when the time was right, building his strength using his system in secret until the time was right, which was exactly what he decided to do. Moby sheathed his sword, looking at Eric's shriveled body, rain falling down on his face with pure contempt, before walking away towards his bag in the distance, to grab it before planning to search the three boys' belongings for any valuables before he left the area. As he was walking towards his bag, a sudden flash of white light appeared all around him as his vision was completely consumed by it, making him panic and put his arms to his face to protect his eyes, in the next second when he opened his eyes, he saw himself naked, floating in a void of mystical golden space, greatly shocking him as all he did was stare at its beauty in awe, not even taking the time to question where he was or what he was doing. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, he heard a loud, deep, majestic voice that echoed throughout the entire space and shook him down to his very core. Congratulations Moby Kane, you have passed your first trial. You have demonstrated exceptional strength, willpower, intellect, strategy, and last, but not least, rational thinking. I am thoroughly impressed. I look forward to your next trial to see what you will do then. In the meantime this will be my farewell, I wish you the best of luck on your path to becoming the Demon Lord. The voice resounded before fading away like it was getting farther and farther away from him and, before he even had the chance to talk or ask any of his possibly thousands of questions, another abrupt flash of blinding light consumed his entire being, blinding him once more, then, suddenly, still, in the witness of the flash, all of his true memories and knowledge began coming back to him all at once as he knew exactly what had just happened to him with the trial. I and the next second when he opened his eyes, he saw that was once again back to the familiar looking blue gym of his military school, back in his actual, non-prepubescent body, heavy sweat running down his face from all the mental strain he experiences he had just gone through. I, I am back. I passed. Moby thought with immense relief and celebration as he felt extremely proud of himself, but still, many questions and thoughts running in his mind making him ponder deeply about what he had just seen and experienced, then, all of a sudden, he heard the familiar sound of one of his system's notifications, interrupting his train of thought, making him really excited to see what his rewards were going to be for successfully passing the trial he had just gone through. Chapter 157 System Alert Hidden Quest Complete Asterisk Asterisk Trial of the Past Details The user has chosen to partake in a trial to test out how he could deal with and overcome their past without losing sense of oneself in the process. Conditions to complete Complete the trial by surviving it under the set requirements of the trial master. Time limit None rewards plus 100 XP to Dragon Skill Tree Asterisk Asterisk System Alert Dragon Skill Tree Level Up Ability Level Up Skill Body of Ice Level Up Skill Draconic Blood Level Up 
Skill, Draconic Scales level up. Skill, Emperor's Rule level up. System alert. New skill unlocked. Basic ice manipulation, level 1, passive, the user has a very basic over control ice, making it easier and more efficient to use and manipulate using the user's mana, cost, it depends. Strength plus 50 asterisk body of ice, level 2, passive, due to the user's ice ability, their body is now enhanced and more powerful, effects, plus 150 strength plus 135 agility plus 150 intelligence, plus 105 endurance asterisk draconic blood, level 2, passive, the host's power is strengthened due to his draconic blood, all stats except for mind plus 120 asterisk. Asterisk draconic scales, level 2, passive, the host's skin is hardened due to his new draconic skin. Endurance plus 100 asterisk, Emperor's Roar, level 2, the user lets out a mighty dragon roar that causes strong shockwaves to ring throughout the air. Side effects may include fear and ear damage, cost, 100 demon energy asterisk 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 name, Moby Cane Race, Draconic Demon of Sin ability, level 8 ice level, 50 XP to next level 45, 900, 50, 000, 000, 000, dragon skill tree level, 2 dragon skill tree XP to next level, 0, 500 power level, 23,470 HP, 188, 188 demon energy, 612 or 612 mana, 612 or 612 demon energy or mana regeneration, 383 energy hour strength, 591 agility, 647 endurance, 497 intelligence, 612 mind, 100 available points to distribute. 0 asterisk asterisk Moby stared in absolute awe. An astonishment at the bombardment of constant notifications coming his way, when he had finished reading one, another one always came to take its place, greatly increasing excitement as he scrolled and read through the entire notification wall, checking all the changes to the skills affected. The skills that leveled up were all of his dragon and ice related skills, all except for freezing time, which was still at level 1. He attributed this to the fact that his ice ability and dragon blood were now mixed into one entity so, if he trained one it would also train the other at the same time, making them connected. However, that was still just a theory but the only plausible explanation he could think of with his current knowledge. When he checked his stats, he noticed that the stat change was astronomical. 120 points to strength, 92 agility, 82 intelligence, and finally, 122 endurance with no increase in mind, totaling up to 410 stats. This pushed him well over the threshold of high B rank as he was now a low A rank instead. Although the point distribution was not at all ideal for the build Moby wanted, as he wanted to go for a high agility utility build, he would be lying to say that he wasn't satisfied. At the end of the day, 410 stats are still 410 stats no matter where they go as he could easily optimize his stat distribution at a later time. The biggest thing he had noticed was that he now gained a new basic ice manipulation, skill that allowed him to control ice in basic ways, something that he didn't even notice that he lacked from before. Either that Avilia had forgotten to give him that skill upon his ability gain or that was an actual new skill. If the latter was the case, something that he was strongly leaning to, that was probably the reason why his old ice manipulation felt so weak, ineffective, and inefficient. Now, with that new skill, he hoped that he would now have a better, stronger, more efficient use of his ice powers, making him really excited to test it out. The stat point and skill increases were so generous and outstanding, that it felt almost like he had gone through an evolution without all of the new skills and system boosts that came along with it, it was almost too good to be true, however, he knew that he would not be able to do it very often as trials and power boosts like these would. Most likely be very rare. He also noticed that there was now an extra XP bar, and level for his dragon skill tree located under where his normal level and XP bar were situated. From completing the trial, he gained a total of 100 XP towards his dragon skill tree which was exactly enough to level it up. For his next level up, he needed 500 XP, 400 more than the previous level. Those are like 5 of the trials he had just taken which were already extremely difficult. If he had to face a trial 5 times harder than the one he just had, he was not fully confident in his ability to complete it successfully. This also matched with what Professor Leo said about how the father one trains, and refines their ability the harder and less often a person would be able to strengthen it. Then, eventually, a person would reach their limit, a certain threshold where they would not be able to continue anymore, and that some families had secret techniques and strategies to overcome most of those thresholds, keeping them always on top. That was what separated the normal people from the powerful and elites, those are the people that could break past their limits and continue to grow stronger. The experience he had gone through was very similar to what Professor Leo described. About how a person might have to undergo a test or certain conditions depending on the type and ability of their certain inner spirit. Yet, in his case, he did not have an inner spirit to strengthen his bond with like all the others, all he had was his dragon blood that had absorbed his ability, and unlike them, he was a demon and not a human. So, he assumed that he could have gone through a different experience, something unique to him which might have not been the case in actuality, the only way he would know and find out was if he asked others for their experiences, but for now, that was the least of his worries, his true concern was that majestic voice he heard in that golden space in his mind. I wonder what that golden space and whose sound that was. And, I wonder if that was a fragment of my own past memories or was just made up for the purposes of the trial. I went through so much shit when I was younger and I can't remember all of it. If the former is correct, that meant that I actually ate a piece of. Moby thought, stopping himself in the middle of his thoughts as he felt a bad feeling in his stomach before forgetting all about it, hoping that it was the latter that was true, as he continued his previous train of thought. He wondered how was it even possible to be given a test by something that was, supposed to be dead. Was it somehow still alive? Or was it something else, in his mind, there were only three plausible explanations, the first, and the one he thought was most probable, was that the voice belonged to Avilia who had changed her speech using magic to make her sound like a deep, majestic voiced creature to either prank him or try and sound as cool as possible to impress him, making her the one who had set up that trial. The second was that the wolf pulled the biggest brain move by killing itself to infuse its essence with his dragon. Powers, in turns hijacking it to make itself more powerful, something that he really wished was not the case as it was the worst scenario in his mind, and, last, but not least, he thought that it might have been some sort of unknown entity, other than Avilia who was also residing in his body, something or someone that had laid dormant for his entire life and only decided to show themselves at that moment to administer that trial, maybe some sort of dragon inside his mind which seemed extremely far-fetched yet still not impossible in Moby's mind. 
For now, he was able to debunk or confirm his first theory by directly asking Avilia herself if she was the one responsible. Hey, Avilia W.A. Moby said, before being cut off by Avilia, as she had already surmised what his question was going to be before he even asked it, no, that was not me that did that, I have no idea what even happened. I spectated your entire test and I have to say I was thoroughly impressed with your actions, when you had finished your trial, for a split second, I sensed the existence of another being or entity inside your head. And, just like you, I was able to hear their sound. It sounded almost familiar yet I can't remember where or if I was just imagining things, but I know that it definitely did not belong to that ice wall from earlier, unless it had changed how it sounded if it's still alive in your dragon blood. I tried my best to investigate the source, but as soon as it arrived it suddenly vanished, I was not able to locate it or even find anything about it. It was very elusive. And once it vanished it was almost like it no longer even existed which still baffles me to this moment. There are mysteries in your own body that even I can't find out about, and I live here for fuck's sake. I can't even do such a simple task in my meager state. It's pure torture knowing that I, once the most powerful being in all the three realms, has been reduced to such a useless nagging voice. Until you find me a new body and a transfer method, it is up to you to figure out these mysteries and help me out until then, I really want to find out about what that was and how the three realms had changed before you finally become the demon lord. And in turns I will give you my full support and assistance in anything and everything you need, I am pretty much committed to you at this point, I guess you wouldn't make a bad demon lord. Unless you fuck up big time, I don't see that changing, Avilia said, going on a huge rant that took Moby aback as he listened to everything she said with an immense concentration on her every word dot. He now knew that it wasn't Avilia that administered that trial which made him inwardly panic, as it must have been one of the other two theories he gave, not leaning to either side as he thought both ideas were equally possible. The main problem was that he did not know if that voice was on his side or not. Even though they sounded very kind and gentle, the reality could be very different. He could easily be trying to sway or manipulate Moby into trusting him before trying to take over his body, something that he felt Avilia would also do before he actually got to know her and who she was, nevertheless, all that he could do now was baseless speculation as he had no conclusive lead to follow to where he could find any information. All he knew was that he gained a great deal of power from the trial, and if he ever wanted to have a chance at communicating with that unknown entity again, he would have to partake in a second trial, something that he was not sure when it would happen or be eligible for. All he could do now was train and wait until then to hopefully find his answer, don't worry about it Avilia, I will definitely find out about this during my next trial. Trust me, I am even more curious than you when it comes to that matter, an unknown entity in my body is not something I take too kindly to. Thank you for trusting me and for why dash, Moby said, responding to Avilia before a sudden gasp and screech enter his ears, making him stop what he was saying to see what happened, the sound had come directly from his right, exactly where Abby was Saturday. When he looked to see her, he saw something that he did not at all expect. Abby's entire body was sweating in liters, much more than his own when he finished his trial, her face was as pale as a ghost, panting profusely with her eyes wide open in what looked like shock, a mixture of a twitching smile and frown on her face making her look crazy, her right hand tightly clenching her heart. It looked like she had just come out of her worst nightmare. Chapter 158 As Moby looked at the weary, sweating Abby, many thoughts started running through his head, when he used his emotion sensing on her to confirm that he was not imagining things, the result only led to confirm his suspicions as it read, fear other than when they first met at that coffee shop that day, he had never seen her in such a state, making him extremely worried about her. She had an unbreakable will of steel and she was more hardworking than anyone else all to accomplish her goals, usually, nothing would be able to face her in the slightest dot I in his mind, there were only a few plausible explanations for what happened. If she also went through a trial, and if it was anything similar to his own, that might have been where the problem stemmed from. The test that Moby took was about overcoming his past and thinking rationally, something that he knew Abby had many, many problems and traumas from. Moby did not even know if she did take a trial or if the trial was any similar to his own, but in the case that it was, he knew that if she indeed did take a trial, she must have failed it. Either she outright slaughtered her family in cold blood, leaving evidence behind of her association. Or, she had tried to fight back in a less than optimal way, leading to her getting tortured and killed in the process. And, finally, his last theory was that in her circumstances as a weak little child, she was too traumatized, weak and fragile minded to fight back or even regain a sense of her true self and find a way out. Moby was leaning towards his first two theories as his last one would have contradicted Abby's entire character. However, there was only one way to find out, Abby, are you alright? Speak to me, what happened? Did you take a mind trial? Please tell me. Moby asked in a gentle voice, opening a mind link between him and her. However, this only led to her not responding at all, not because she didn't want to listen, but because her mind was too foggy and cluttered with thoughts and emotions that everything in the outside world seemed like it was but a big blur, as she was stuck circling back and forth between her own emotions. Moby was able to pick up on this, as no matter how many times he asked or shouted, Abby would not respond at all which was not like her who had looked up to and idolized him for so long. This led to Moby using something that he had not used ever since the first day, he turned Jaden into a demon when she was being extremely misbehaving and troublesome. Moby ran demon energy through his veins and into his eyes, activating his glowing eyes of sin, not even startling the rest of his classmates as most of them were still meditating quietly with a few grunts of struggle being heard, every now and then. Leo was the only other person in the arena that noticed Moby's actions, but he paid them no heed as he had already seen videos of Moby's fight at the Griffith Mansion, and he knew that was part of his special skills that pertained to his ability. So, he simply thought that he was training it up to be more effective in the future and didn't know that it was Abby who he was targeting. Moby knew that his eyes of sin could be used to tame and instill fear in a servant's heart to make them better behave. However, that was not the case for why Moby was using it now, he just needed a way to grab Abby's attention without making physical contact with her like a slap, to snap her out of her mind, attracting unwanted attention. So, using his eyes of sin was the best thing he could do in his predicament. As Moby stared deeply into Abby's open yet extremely dull, shaky eyes, she suddenly snapped out of her delusions, making him turn of his eyes off sin, the fiery red color of her pupils returning from their previous, dull, almost gray state, her body still shaking quickly as she spoke in a jittery voice, M my lord, is that why you? Abby said using mind link, trying to hold back a waterfall of tears, holding the urge to hug him tightly like he was her true father and bawl her eyes out in his tight embrace. 
Those emotions did not stem from love, at least not romantic love. She just wanted some warmth in her current dark state, however, sadly, she knew that she could not do it in such a public area, in front of all these people, so she managed to just barely hold herself back, yes, it's me, Moby. Abby, don't worry, it's okay, everything is going to be fine. Moby replied, also holding in the urge to hug and pet her on the head as he felt a bad feeling in his heart seeing one of his closest, strongest friend in such pain. No. It's not okay. I failed. Even with all of your kind words and motivations, even with all my training, effort and motivations, I still failed. I just couldn't do it. I am a disgrace to your household. I have brought too much shame. I will fall behind in strength just like I feared and I will eventually become too weak, useless in your eyes and the eyes of others, thrown to the side like a pile of trash like it has happened every other time in my life. Abby screamed using her mind link, small tears falling down her face, despite all of her efforts to hold theme back, taking Moby by immense surprise. As soon as Moby heard what Abby said, he reactivated his eyes of sin, making Abby shudder and quake before he said. No. How many times do I have to tell you this? You have it all wrong. No matter how weak you get or how far you fall behind, you will never be useless or be mistreated by me because you are more than just a tool, a servant or subordinate, you are my friend. I don't like you just because you are strong, I like you for your personality and who you are. You think I am an inspiration to you? What a joke. You are the biggest inspiration I have ever seen. With your work ethic, determination, and resolve, you are unparalleled. So keep your head up high and think of the future. I am sure you will get past this eventually, I know you will. All you need is a better state of mind, so please, just tell me what happened so we could work this out. Moby said with clear care and passion in his voice. For as long as he could remember, this was the first ever time he had ever seen Abby scream or raise her voice at him. This of course did not make Moby mad, that only reinforced the severity of the situation as he knew that Abby would usually never scream at him under any circumstance, th thank you so much for your words of kindness. Words could not express how happy I am. I am so glad that you are my lord. I am so glad I met you. You are the shining hope in my life. Every time I am down, insecure, or doubting myself, no matter how many times I do it, there you always are to prove me wrong and cheer me up, if it weren't for you I would have been long dead by now. I promise I will work harder and serve you even better from now on. I will try my best to think more positively, keep my head up high, and think of a better future. This will be the first time I truly disagree with you, my lord. Your words are truly inspiring and heartwarming beyond what you could even imagine. Abby said, trying her best to hold in a waterfall of tears from breaking out and overflowing through the dam known as her eyes, as she felt so much better knowing that despite all her failures and constant sobbing, her lord still cared deeply for her and didn't want to abandon her because he liked her for who she was, not from her strength and achievements like everyone else in her life. This only even further cemented in her head that her lord was truly the kindest, wisest person in the entire universe which only made her loyalty and determination grow even further as she wanted to devote her life to serve him, and his every will, I am so glad to hear that you are feeling better. Moby said, a bright smile shining on his face as he noticed Abby's depressed expression take a 180 degree turn. So. I know this might be tough to talk about but I need to know what happened in your mind that made you feel the way you did. That is the only way we could figure this out and improve for the next time, so things like this hopefully don't repeat. Was it some sort of trial? Moby asked with immense skepticism, if I am being honest my lord. I think that it was some sort of trial, I don't remember what happened at all. Everything was just a blur like my memory was erased completely. However, despite that fact, all the pain, suffering, mental stress still transferred and filled my body. The only thing I could remember was my big cunt of a sister holding a fiery sword with a cynical, psychotic smile on her face from repeatedly stabbing my body over, and over, and over again, turning my entire corpse into charcoal with bloody wounds littered all over my back and red skin. Only then was the only thing I remember. The memory of when she decided to finally take me out of my misery by stabbing me right through my brain, cracking my skull open like a watermelon. Everything that happened before that I have absolutely no memory of. Chapter 159 Huh. Really? You can't remember anything? Like at all? Do you at least remember the setting of where you were? Moby asked with immense confusion, trying his best to get out as much information from Abby as possible, as there was a small chance that his questions would make her remember something that she had forgotten. No, my lord. I have no recollection of anything other than the stabbing sensation and pain, and the look on my sister's face. Even the background around her was a blur, I couldn't make out anything about it. Abby explained in a nervous yet firm voice, reconfirming her previous statement. Abby's words made Moby think hard as his mind started spinning in circles. Was that supposed to happen? Are a person's memories supposed to be wiped after a trial? But if that was the case it should have also happened to him. Was he a special case? Then, as he was thinking, the answer hit him like a speeding jet, crashing straight into his brain, making him realize the most probable answer. The conclusion he came up with was that a memory wipe was only initiated if a person failed a trial in order for them not to be able to take it easier the next time, or, be able to just succeed on simple and consistent trial and error. If a person could just bring their previous experiences with them on a trial, that would just defeat the purpose of it, allowing them to prepare as it would not be the same as going in blind, not knowing what to expect. So, since Moby passed the test, the memory wipe never happened to him as he would probably never retake the same trial again, making it redundant to wipe his memories. Yet, Moby found this phenomenon fascinating as he had a big theory of his own. If he failed the test and his memories were wiped, Avilia, who would always be spectating should definitely be able to let him know what happened right after he failed the trial. The only way that he could see this not working would be if the trial master had power over Avilia too, allowing him to wipe her memories of the trial as well, something that he had immense doubts about. Moby really wanted to test out his theory but, he had no plans of failing and he was not able to undergo another trial in his current state. If it happens it happens, but, he will not go out of his way to test it out, I understand Abby, thank you for sharing, your information has been truly insightful, Moby said to her with a smile, making her smile back and firmly nod in response before he turned his attention to Professor Leo who had been sitting cross-legged, his bulging thighs really exemplified, as he spectated all of the other students still trying to strengthen their abilities, patiently waiting for everyone to finish and 
Wake up. His arms crossed with a tired look in his eyes like he was about to go to sleep. He wanted to confirm if Abby's situation was special, or if a person's memories were actually supposed to be wiped upon failure. This was his fastest surefire way of doing so without looking suspicious. Excuse me, Professor. I have a question. Moby asked in a loud voice to catch Leo's attention. Sure. Ask away. Leo said with a yawn, putting his hands on his mouth with a slightly less boring expression than before. If a person takes on a trial to strengthen their ability and fails, does that mean their memories of the trial will also be wiped upon failure? Moby asked with interest in his eyes, like a model student making Leo, inwardly smile but not show it on his face. Yes, that is correct. The person's memories will be wiped, but the pain of what they experienced would linger past the trial despite them having no memory of it. That is the reason why people get forever stuck at a certain level as they don't know what to fix, and why a lot of those people give up and stay where they are as they are afraid to be hurt once again when they fail. Like I said in class, the way of gaining strength is a very dangerous one and only a few would be qualified to reach the upper echelon of power. But don't worry, my job is to assist all of you with all my strength to become as strong as possible, trained, powerful soldiers and nothing less. Leo explained, with a yawn and another tired expression when in reality, he was really happy and excited. Leo was thoroughly impressed with Moby's performance during this exercise. He had fully expected him to fail as he thought that with his power level, he had already completed a few trials on his own so this one would have been his limit until he trained more. However, he was fully proven wrong as he not only passed and increased his power, but he was also the first to finish out of every student, making him like Moby even more than he already did before, something that he wished he could say about Abby as well, in his opinion, Moby and Abby were the perfect students with a good blend of talent and hard work, and he intended to mold them into the best soldiers that he could, they were the two shining lights in an otherwise weak, dull, uninteresting class of weaklings and arrogant students. It would not be a stretch to say that they were his favorite, but he had to keep up the act that he saw everyone as equal, so he could not give them any special treatment. Moby took in the information that Leo gave him, which lined up with his own, before inwardly nodding to himself. It seems like Abby has gotten her vigor back, the next time she takes the trial she should be able to pass it. If not then we might have to pay a visit to her sister to get her over her traumas. The only problem is that her sister is a far more experienced second year that is about to enter the S rank. It might take a while until we could take her down. Moby thought, before being suddenly and abruptly interrupted by a clap that resounded from Leo's direction. Perfect. It finally seems like all of you have finished, and it's right before lunch. From what I see from your faces, most of the class failed, but that is to be expected for your first time, so don't worry. We will be doing this exercise two times a month. Don't expect to pass every time. Only through hard work and perseverance would you be able to improve. You can always practice this at your dorms or when you are alone so don't worry about always doing it in class, I am just giving you the tools for now. Does anyone have any questions? Leo asked, and just as he expected, he was given no response from the class that still feared him like their life depended on it despite all of their months of being together, making him let out a loud, audible sigh. Asterisk ring asterisk asterisk ring asterisk asterisk ring asterisk then suddenly, the sound of the school bell ringing resounded and echoed throughout the entire arena, marking the start of lunch. Class dismissed. You may go back to the classroom to retrieve anything you may have forgotten, have a great lunch, Leo said in a still tired tone as he had stayed awake doing nothing for the last two hours as he stared at his class doing the exercise. Moby had not checked the time after he had reawoke and had no idea that it was so late, the exercise must have lasted longer than he expected. In his mind, he thought that it was only around 10 minutes in length, but he now knew that it was not the case at all as it took upwards of two hours to complete for most students. Moby had assumed that he still had class time to test out his new and improved ice powers on actual human beings other than his, servants which turned out to be not possible. However, it was not a big deal as he could always do it the next time. Moby looked up and noticed his entire class sprinting out of the arena at full speed like they were a crazy mob, probably trying their best to get away from him as they were no longer in class, throwing the normal rules out the window. To strengthen and motivate students, at lunch, anything went as long as there is no killing or excessive violence, the last part not even being enforced by most teachers as they would not care or bat an eye even when seeing it right in front of their eyes, as they thought of it as natural behavior. It was a truly toxic environment to be in. Moby let out a big sigh of disappointment seeing the sight before him as he knew that he had to change their perspectives eventually, but now was not eventually and he had other, more important things to do, seeing that it was now lunch, Moby would usually go onto the school roof to eat with his friends and practice his skills in secrecy, including his now enhanced ice ability that he really wanted to test out, however, today he had another priority, he wanted to check up on Ray, someone who he was starting to grow more and more worried about. No matter how many times he called or texted him, he would receive no response at all, there could only be three plausible explanations, either he was playing video games with headphones in, not allowing him to hear the notification sound, he had notifications turned off, or there was something deeper at work. And of course, Moby was leaning towards the last part as he had a bad feeling in his heart. Chapter 160. Moby took a deep breath, looking around the arena only to notice that Professor Leo was not there, slightly startling him before shaking the thought away, focusing most of his attention on Abby who was patiently standing beside him as they were the only two people remaining in the arena. Moby then opened a mind link not just between him and her, but also with every other household member at the same time, guys, let's cancel the roof meet, I have a bad feeling. I know that some of you guys would not care but, ever since the exam ended, I was not able to contact my other roommate, Ray, no matter what I did or what I tried. I am worried that something happened to him, which I think is highly likely. I called you to ask if you could help me search for him during lunch. He is a short, tired-looking, long blue-haired boy that is only at the bottom to the middle of D rank. Your assistance would be greatly appreciated. Moby announced to the rest of his group, yeah, I know. What do you think I've been doing for the last two minutes? I've been busting my ass off trying to find Ray. I can't get to him either. I have only checked hallway C right beside one of the staircases that led to where all the second-year classes are, and I am on my way to the library right now. Someone checked the cafeteria, someone else checks the forest, and last person, who I think should be Abby, checks the yard and the dorm areas. Use your wisp to scout from high in the sky, don't bring it close to the ground under any circumstance or else you would have a high chance of getting caught. Jaden, if you want you. 
can use your doppelganger clone to help speed up the search, but that is not required if you think that it would lead to unnecessary trouble. I need to know if he's safe. Moby. Is that plan okay with you? Alex asked in a firm yet worried voice. Yes, of course, that plan sounds perfect. Moby said, nodding his head as he took in and analyzed Alex's words, if my lord wills it then it shall be done. I will check the surrounding area of the school with my wisps, I can even help scout the forest if needed, Abby said, holding the urge to go on one knee in front of Moby but instead bowed just in case someone took a peek inside the arena. I will check the forest, I should be able to sneak and blend in well with my shadow and doppelganger powers, Jaden added, not knowing who exactly this ray guy they were referring to was, but choosing to find him as she knew that he served some sort of significance to Moby which was more than a good enough reason for her to agree. Okay, this leaves me and Alex to search the insides of the school. The library and cafeteria are on different ends so you search the library half and I'll search the cafeteria half. If worst comes to worst and we don't find him we might have to go up to the second year classes to check, but right now, I really don't want to attract the attention or get on the bad side of any of the second years, at least not yet. I still have to get much stronger to do that, something that I have a plan for but, I will explain it to you later on, Moby announced in a serious tone, understood. All of his servants said in unison, some saying it in their own unique way before ending the mind link. I will be going to the roof to scout and release my wisp. I wish you the best of luck on your search my lord and I hope that your roommate is okay, Abby said with a bow before swiftly exiting the arena, now, instead of focusing his attention on following Abby to do his part of the search, he focused it on the foot tapping sound and grumbling of either anger or annoyance, maybe even a mixture of both, coming from his head ever since he had started his conversation with his servants like something was patiently waiting for him to, finish, okay, listen up. Keat. I am tired of seeing this and I just have to speak out. Why are you being so soft and gentle all the time when giving out orders? Why are you asking them so politely? You are so heartless and ruthless in front of others but in front of your servants, you are just a harmless puppy. You were so harsh towards your servants at first, treating them like actual slaves, but then I told you that it was not the way. But, now you took it far off to the other end. What? If they declined you would just let them do whatever they want? I hope not. And if you never planned for them to have an option to decline, what was the point of even asking them instead of giving them an order? You are being way too nice. A perfect example of this was when you let Jaden hold you at a dagger's edge this morning, you should have asserted your dominance and ordered her away. Even Alex just now acted more like a leader than you and took the spotlight of giving everyone orders. You are the leader. Not him. Act like one. You have authority. Use it. Avilia scolded him with a hint of disgust and clear annoyance in her voice. As soon as Moby heard Avilia's words, his eyes opened wide as he immediately knew that they were true, something that he only just realized. It was like he was totally unaware of his previous actions, as they felt totally natural to him as everything was most likely happening in his subconscious, making many thoughts run through his mind such as, am I too scared to lose them? And, is my old self rubbing off on me? It almost reminded him of when he first met Alex and Ray, back when he brainlessly walked into his dorm drenched head to toe in blood. At that time he also acted uncharacteristically nice, not just pretending as he had previously done at every other instance before that. And, even at that time, Avilia had asked him if he was feeling alright. Maybe it was something deeply hidden and ingrained in his subconscious, the urge to have something that he never had before, true friends. And, the soft side of him emerged out of that desire and out of the fear of losing them for acting too harshly which would lead to him having to kill them, if they left his group so they would not disclose his secrets, something that he wanted to avoid at all costs. Moby's eyes were now more open than ever before, both literally and metaphorically, as he was now more self-aware all due to Avilia's words. Indeed, if he wanted to become the demon lord, he needed to use his authority more and let go of his subconscious fears. There was a time to act casual and polite and there was a time where one must use and demonstrate his authority and leadership. Something that Moby understood far more than before. I know I sounded really harsh, but this is for your own good. You need to stop acting like that. There might come a time where a servant thinks that you are a soft pushover and not respect you. Or, even worse, if the servant is extremely smart they might gain your trust and abuse your kindness to make you do things you would have usually never done before, maybe even using you as a puppet. I am not saying that any of your servants are like that, but there might come a time, maybe with a current or future servant where that situation might arise if you keep acting like this. Avilia explained in a passionate, yet still kind-sounding voice, reaching deep into Moby's soul, thank you for that wake-up call, I really needed it more than you could imagine. And, don't worry, not once did I ever think you were doing any of this from malice. I know that you have my best interest at heart. After all, you need me, and I need you, we have a mutual bond and synergy. If you want to mess with me now you would only be messing with yourself. Moby said with a chuckle, lightening his mood the more he spoke, ha. Huh. You think of yourself too highly. Just do your job properly and I wouldn't have to scold you like that. Like I said, I would rather die than let some unworthy schmuck become the next demon lord so I will mold you into someone worthy. Ha ha ha. But yeah, you are right, I do need you for a new body and to see my homeland again so don't die on me until then, Avilia said with a chuckle and a playful voice, joking around to match Moby's smug attitude. Moby inwardly nodded at Avilia's words feeling really appreciative of her, a smile on his face that dissolved into something more serious as he focused back at the task at hand. He needed to find Ray as soon as possible, he just hoped that he was okay and nothing bad had happened to him like he feared, as he quickly ran out of the arena at top speed before slowing down once he reached the crowded hallway in front of the arena entrance. Chapter 161 as soon as Moby exited the arena and entered the packed hallway of the school that was mostly filled with weaker students, he immediately attracted everyone's attention which led them to step back unconsciously in fear. Moby then sighed at the sight before jogging at a steady pace towards the school cafeteria, making sure not to run into any student that may come in his way. Lunch only lasted an hour and he did not have much time to waste. As he ran through the hallway, he noticed that those same looks were not niche to that one part of the school, they followed him everywhere he went as people moved out of the way immediately after they saw him come near, something that he fully expected. Some even got extremely startled, clenching their hearts as soon as they saw Moby speed right past them as they did not notice him at all before loudly breathing out, wiping the sweat off their face in relief. However, out of those looks of terror and unease were a few mellow smiles sprinkled in the crowd. 
Moby's actions of saving an E-rank bald kid in the morning had already spread to nearly every corner of the school, especially amongst all of the weaker students. The news came as a shock to everyone, most thought that it either must have been a fluke, a lie or that he had a bigger plan at work. There were only a few people in the entire school that were genuinely nice, one of whom was of course none other than Alex Hart. The idea of Moby being on their side felt like a delusion as it was too good to be true. They thought that the only plausible explanation must have been that he must have had a bigger plan to lure them into trusting him. It was by far the more popular opinion. However, the other side also existed. Some people really did believe that Moby did what he did out of the pure goodness of his heart. After all, he was also of course a bullied, badly treated F rank just like them before gaining his ability, making him probably sympathize with their conditions. Not to mention the fact that Alex Hart was his roommate who had probably rubbed off on him, and inspired him to use his newfound powers for the sake of protecting others. That small group saw Moby as a hero, no, a messiah who had come to save them from their high-ranked, selfish, power-hungry, almost demonic abusers. Of course, Moby did not notice those looks that were too few and far between as they were too subtle to pick up on. He instead tunneled everything out, and focused his attention on getting to the cafeteria as fast as possible alongside examining the faces of the many short people, he passed by to see if he could find Ray in the hallway, he had absolutely no idea that his previous plans were actually working right under his nose. As Moby neared the cafeteria, he noticed an entire wall of students blocking his way with no means for him to slide by. Needless to say, he could have just taken the easy way through and jumped right over them, but Moby had another plan in mind. At the edge of the blockade, there was a short, pink-haired student facing a much taller and skinnier black-haired student, his hands firmly planted against a locker as he prepared to punch him, it was like the most stereotypical bully situation imaginable. Moby did not at all find that to be an odd sight, the sight of a larger person being bullied by someone half his size. One hundred years ago before the discovery of abilities that might have been extremely bizarre, but in this age, size differences meant nothing in the face of greater power, Moby smiled as he knew that he could use this situation to his advantage, running straight at the bully, not even slowing down in the slightest. Pay me your daily fifty dollars now or else I'll eat yo dash, the short bully said, ready to punch the weaker, larger kid in front of him before suddenly, he felt an intense pain crash right into his face, his jaw completely shattering as he was launched far away like he was a football, sliding on the ground as every other student dodged his incoming unconscious body, faces of shock, fear, and admiration looking straight towards him after what he had so easily and nonchalantly done, system alert. You gain 2000 XP for defeating a low C rank enemy, get out of my way dickhead. Take care kid. Hopefully, he doesn't bother you again. Moby casually said as he bolted right past the scene, the tall kid looking at him with a mixture of shock and admiration, too speechless to even properly thank him. Damn, not even a thank you, maybe I am taking the wrong approach when doing this, Moby thought with a long sigh as he reasoned that he could have both made a path for himself and shown his goodwill more around the school. Then Moby shook his head, pushing those thoughts to the back of his mind as he had arrived at the cafeteria, even faster than he expected as he thought that he would have been stopped or approached on his way there but that was luckily not the case. Now that I think of it. This is my second time ever actually entering into the cafeteria ever since the first day of school, Moby thought, looking around the familiar yet unfamiliar area, the cafeteria was very large, almost the size of a football field in order to accommodate every single first year student in the school, it did not at all feel empty even when knowing the fact that a good portion of first year students died from the first exam. The entire room was mostly white with somehow clean marble flooring, despite the overwhelming amount of students inside eating at the various long metal tables. Just by looking at the people sitting at each table, it was clear to determine the divide between the various different students. Most of them were divided by their gang affiliation and strength while only a very small minority seemed to be sitting with each other, because they shared a common interest. Moby casually walked around, surveying the area trying his best to keep a low profile and blend in with the crowds. Luckily, the few people that noticed his presence kept quiet, and did not make a big deal out of anything as they were too scared to anger him by making a huge commotion. Sadly, in the end, he managed to find no sign or lead of Ray's location, making him extremely disappointed as he headed back towards the entrance of the cafeteria to continue searching. H hey! Moby old buddy! It's been a while since we last talked. A nervous yet recognizable voice came from right behind him. When Moby turned around to see who it was, he saw a familiar, decently tall, red-eyed, black-haired boy with a few strands of white that were not very easily seen, his skin was pale with a few subtle signs of aging, making him look slightly older than he actually was which was definitely due to their last encounter. It was none other than Travis Ligmus, the only actual living survivor of his team from the first exam, behind him were two, intimidating somewhat hairy men with a scowl on their face, looking like they were ready to attack at any time. From their watches, Moby could tell that they were both high to mid-B ranks which did not intimidate him too much as he was confident, he could take them both out with moderate difficulty. Who are you calling old buddy? Me and you were never friends. If you don't have something important to tell me then fuck off. I'm really in a hurry now. Moby said in a cold attitude, not even batting an eye. This made the two men standing beside Travis lift their eyebrows in surprise as they looked at each other, before focusing back on Travis with an ugly, doubtful look, making him awkwardly chuckle as he twiddled with his thumbs, looking straight at the ground with immense fear and nervousness, gulping down all the saliva in his mouth as sweat began running down his face. Just from their movements and mannerisms, Moby could probably assume exactly what went down, making him inwardly let out a sigh. Those were probably gang members that either convinced themselves that he and Travis were on good terms with him during the exam or, he was the one that had convinced them that he was on good terms with him in order to get more on their good side. However, he was leaning more towards the former as Travis knew very well that Moby didn't exactly like him. Ha ha ha. What's that look about? Of course, I am just playing around. What is it that you need? Moby said, his mannerisms immediately changing as he played it off as a joke, making Travis look up with a happy look in his eyes, nothing like his previously depressed looking state. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. It's always like you playing jokes like that. Travis said, going along with Moby's words, making the two men next to him greatly lighten their expressions. Well, I just came here to give you an offer to join the greatest and most esteemed gang in the entire school. The Zexis Gang. Our great leader has even chosen to appoint you third in command immediately if you chose to join, no one has ever been offered something like this before. 
It is a once in a lifetime experience. So, what do you say? Travis asked with immense expectations in his now even more weary eyes. Chapter 162. Of course, Moby did not act nicely towards Travis out of the kindness of his heart, he only did what benefited him. He could not care less about anyone that was not part of his close, inner circle of friends. Moby's true intentions were to keep Travis close, on a leash as his loyal dog, a pawn that he could use to extract valuable information from the Zexis clan without turning him into a demon, reducing his chances of failure and removing a great deal of stress in the off chance that he is caught by them or betrays him, which would lead to his secret being completely exposed. If they found out that he and Moby were not on good terms, they might replace him with someone else, or, even worse, kick him. Out of the gang for being useless or for wasting their time, both options being something that Moby did not want. Travis was a person who he had already dominated with his will, scaring the shit out of him during the exam. He highly doubted that he would betray him after what he had done to him, making him easy to manipulate and a free source of information. If the gang kicked him out, Moby would lose an important pawn, forcing him to waste time finding a replacement spy who he doubted would even be half as effective as the gang thought that Travis and Moby were friends of some sort, making him the perfect messenger between both of them. Even if he told the new spy to pretend to be friends, the gang would be easily able to pick up that it must be a trap or scheme of some sort and act accordingly. But even despite all of those facts, Moby had no choice but to decline, there was no way in hell he would associate himself with any gang. He answers to no one and has no plans of being bossed around and ordered by those pathetic scum. I am sorry Travis, but I must decline. I have absolutely no plans of joining any gang of any sort. It is not about you, it's just that I want to be independent you know. No hard feelings right? Moby said with a wide smile, declining Travis's offer. As soon as Travis heard Moby's response, his already unsteady eyes became even warier as they shifted towards the ground before he took a big gulp of saliva. Hey, kid. What do you mean you decline? Do you even understand the honor you are being bestowed? I have worked my ass off in the gang for months and I've only reached 12th rank and you just come along declining the third seat. Are you fucking brain dead or are you just being so arrogant to the point that you are as good as blind? One of the men standing behind Travis roared, his face turning red from anger with a visible blood vessel popping out of his head, attracting everyone's attention to their area as they formed a circle around them, most pulling out their phones to film what was inevitably about to go down. Gary. Just calm down we didn't come here to fight. He's really strong. You are going against orders. If things didn't work out we are supposed to ignore it and report back. The other man said, trying to hold his friend back. Are you a fucking pussy? We can easily take him down if we teamed up. You heard how he so casually declined the. The angry man said before being immediately and abruptly cut off short. I have no time for games now, can't you tell that I am in a hurry? Moby said in a cold, distant voice, his eyes turning into glowing purple deadly slits, infusing his arms and legs with pure demon energy as time began to slow down all around him. With one single step, he immediately disappeared from his previous location, leaving a small crack on the marble floor as it seemed like he had almost disappeared into thin air, looking like a blur in the eyes of the many spectators. In the next second, the sound of two heavy blows was heard before Moby reappeared right behind the two men who just proceeded to fall flat on the ground, their eyes rolled to the back of their heads leaving nothing but white in their eye sockets, making the crowd laugh and cheer, even if they were distracted, with just two simple blows, those two big, burly B ranks were effortlessly taken down. From the looks on the faces of the crowd, most of them were not at all surprised, after all, they knew Moby's capabilities as a world-class fighter, not to mention that his power level was greatly higher than his opponents, it was only natural for him to win, but, it was good entertainment and drama nonetheless which made people extremely excited. As soon as Travis saw what had just happened, he felt a familiar, eerie feeling ravage his entire body. The atmosphere felt all too similar. His entire body began to quiver in fear as he was now barely able to move, his teeth clacking uncontrollably. As Travis slowly and reluctantly turned around to face where that horrible feeling was coming from, he saw the face of a pure demon, a wide grin plastered on his face, his purple eyes staring deep into his soul with immense pressure coming his way, making him even more scared that before as his legs melted into jelly, falling right on his ass, trying his best not to piss his pants. The less than pleasant sight of the demon in front of him made his nightmares come back to life as they played over and over in his mind, almost like he was hit with an immense wave of PTSD. In a split second, he was fully reminded why he promised himself to never fuck with Moby Kane if he did not want what had happened to him in the exam to repeat itself or even worse. Hey. Travis. I would like to have a quick chat with you. Follow me. Moby said with a big, friendly smile on his face, reaching his hand out to help Travis up, his eyes of sin still active making him look like he was about to drag him to the depths of hell. However, no matter how scared he was, he just had to accept. If not then he doubted his own safety in life, and if he died, how would he be able to get money to save his mother? The fact alone was more than enough to make Travis steal his resolve enough to move forward and grab Moby's hands, as he pulled him back up on his now slightly less shaky feet. Follow me, Moby said with a smile, walking out of the encirclement of students surrounding him, Travis nodding back before following right behind him trying his best to be as confident as possible, making them all disperse and go back to what they were doing before as if nothing happened, ignoring the two men who were knocked out on the ground like they were obstacles, no one really wanting to call a teacher or take them to the nurse as it was none of their business, the supervising teacher who was currently on the other side of the cafeteria could help them out when they get the chance. Asterisk asterisk Moby led Travis to the back of the school, somewhere that he knew would be unoccupied, allowing them to talk freely. As they were no longer in the public eye, Moby could finally stop playing pretend. Now that he implanted the thought that he and Travis were friends in front of many people, Travis would be mostly safe as the gang would definitely keep him as a useful tool. However, Moby knew full well that his plan could easily backfire as the gang might get the wrong idea, thinking that he and Travis were closer than he meant them to think. That might lead to them keeping Travis as a hostage until Moby comes to save him, something that he would of course not be willing to do which might lead to Travis being thrown away and abandoned. Yet, Moby was still willing to take the chance as he believed that the more likely outcome would be the first, he would get nowhere otherwise. Right now, Moby's current objective, and why he had asked Travis to talk was to try and suck him out of as much information as possible pertaining to Ray's location, and if the Zexis gang had anything to do with why he was not responding. Moby could have of course just forced him into letting him take a peek into his brain. 
but he would need to get express permission from him to willingly do it, not to mention that the entire process would have taken too long. At times like these, he really wished that he had more stats in mind. A stat that he had been neglecting for so long as it did not give him any power level boost. More mind would allow him to manipulate and control more people, something that he was only now seeing the true value of. There was more to power than just strength. This realization made him make up his mind to finally start focusing more on the mind stat, assigning more stat points there as he felt like it would be well worth it in the future. For now, he just needed to trust his instincts that Travis would be truthful with him, and even if he was being deceptive, he still had a way of making him talk and stay 100% loyal, he knew his weakness. As long as the Zexis gang doesn't give him a better offer, something that he doubted would be the case, then he should be completely safe. Still, even in the case that he was betrayed or his plans were found out, it would not be a big deal as he did not reveal any important information to him. He just wanted to use Travis for as long as possible, something that he knew would not last forever. Okay kid, no more pretending, I only acted nicely towards you there to save your guts because I still have uses for you, why yes, sir. I am well aware. You haven't betrayed me have you? And never in a million years. Good. Now I just have two simple questions, what information do you have about Ray Guane? Does the Zexis have any affiliation with his whereabouts? I am extremely sorry, but I have no idea who that is you are talking about. Travis said those words with truly honest looking eyes, making Moby highly doubt that he was lying. However, Moby was not stupid, he knew full well how deceptive people could be even right in front of his face. Are you sure you don't? Moby asked once more, activating his eyes of sin, looking at Travis like a predator about to eat his prey. Why yes I, I am sure sure sure, Travis replied in a shaky voice, backing up onto the cold wall behind him, closing his eyes as to not look at Moby's terrifying figure that brought back memories of their previous encounter, praying to dear God that what had happened before never repeat itself again, it felt like he had already lost several years of his life just from the fear and stress of that incident alone. One million dollars right now if you tell me any useful information about him, I am not. Joking. Moby said in a confident voice. Moby knew Travis's main weakness, his drive in life, money. Money that he needed to pay for his mother's medical bills for her unknown sickness. Nothing to him was more important. And, from his total of $16 million, $1 million would be well spent in guaranteeing Travis's loyalty. From the way that Travis answers, he would know everything, when Travis heard the words, $1 million, many thoughts ravaged his mind. $1 million was a ridiculous sum of money, it would be more than enough for him to pay off his mother's medical bills. Travis had a feeling that Moby was not joking and being 100% serious. From the bottom of his heart, he wanted that money. But sadly, to do so, he needed to lie to Moby as he truly did not know where this Ray Guane person was, something that he couldn't bring himself to do. Travis was not dumb. He knew that if he had told a lie, it would not end too well for him. As soon as the lie would be discovered, he would be hunted down no matter where he fled, subjected to dying a miserable painful death before he even got the chance to pay off his mother's bills. Plus, if he lied to him now, it would mean that he was lying to him on the first question which would mean that he might not even give him the money in the first place, and could be just a test. Or, he would only transfer the money after he confirmed his claims were true, not before. And he would be in no place to demand otherwise. No matter how much it pained him to decline one million dollars, he had no choice but to do it. I am sorry, but I truly do not know who or where this Ray person is. I would never dare to lie to you no matter how much money is on the line. Travis said in a shaky yet firm voice. I see, at least I know now that you are being honest with me. How about I cut you a deal? For your information and spying services, I will pay you appropriately. Whatever Zexis pays you I will pay you at least double. How does that sound? It's like I am hiring you, it would be too immoral if I made you work for free right? Your mother needs the money, doesn't she? But, just know that I have my ways of knowing that you are lying, and if I find out then the life of your mother will be the least of your problems. Moby said with a devilish smile, giving him an offer he could not refuse, even further tightening the existing collar around his neck. Chapter 163 Ray sat in a dorm room similar to his own, only much dirtier and more revolting. Dirty brown socks that used to be white, black underwear, junk food and trash of all kinds littered the ground making it give off a repulsive stench that would make anyone throw up, assuming they have not gone nose blind to it, that was exactly what had happened to Ray, he had sat there so often that the smell that once used to make him want to regurgitate his morning breakfast, was now something all too ordinary to him. On a desk with various tiny shards and machine parts sat Ray, his school uniform all dirty with splatters of blood in some areas that were really not that visible due to his black school uniform. With a blanket sad expression on his face, he used his telekinesis ability to meticulously put every part in the correct place with incredible speed and accuracy. On the line of bunk beds directly to his right sat two boys, one of whom around his same height, cyan hair that fell down to his eyes, but with an uglier expression on his more rigid face. The other boy, no, such a person could not be called a boy, he was more like a giant. He was greatly taller, fatter, and more muscular than the other boy as he casually sat down on the bottom bunk with his phone in hand, almost looking like everything around him was going to collapse from his weight. He had fiery red spiky hair, almost the same color as Abby's, but unlike Abby, his eyes were purple instead of her blood red. Fuck. I hate babysitting. Why do two important members like us have to subject ourselves to such boredom? Hey, kid. How many have you completed so far? You've been at this all lunch. Those materials cost us a great deal you know. If you mess up we would have to teach you a lesson. A deep, ugly voice rang from his right where the two boys were seated, most likely coming from the red-haired boy who had just stood up to check up on Ray who was still hard at work. I, I have only finished one, these things take a long time to produce. Ray muttered in a frightened, low shaky voice. Then work faster before I fuck you up again, only this time even more. Rejecting our invitation was the worst mistake you've ever done in your life. I am still pissed about that. I would beat the shit out of you now just to take my anger out, but we still need you to be in full health to manufacture this shit as fast as possible. The red-haired boy said, looking down at Ray in disgust. He saw it as an honor to be invited to join the great Zexis gang and anyone who rejected needed to learn a lesson, as they were disgracing the gang's great name and making a mockery out of them. Why yes sir, I understand. I will work harder. 
Ray replied, not even daring to look the other boy in the eyes as he tried his best to make himself look more productive than before. To the right of the table where Ray was seated was one robotic looking capsule around the size of a human thumb. That was what he had been manufacturing nonstop for the past week or so. After he, Moby, and Alex went to the amusement park, and since he had told them the truth about his past, seeing their smiles and words of support truly inspired him. His heart was filled with more joy than he could ever remember having ever since he was still a naive little child. It gave him hope and inspiration to work hard and shock the world once more just like he did as a kid. That was precisely what he did, for the research division's exam, they were given an entire week to craft something unique given a very wide array of materials. And, out of all of the contestants, despite Ray's considerably low power level, he managed to come in the top 5% of all contestants, shocking all the teachers and students that did not expect anything special to come out from him. Not even he thought that he was going to be as successful as he was. He managed to invent a little capsule that was able to store any non-living objects or plant, almost like a storage ring only that the capsule was a four-time use before being destroyed and, instead of it only being able to store stuff that fit in a certain area like the storage ring, it went off weight instead, as it was only able to hold 10 grams worth of objects. The main advantage of this item was that it was far cheaper to create than storage rings, only requiring a small void shard and a few strengthening machines that made it work. It was able to be activated when the button on the top of the capsule was pressed and, it also allowed the user to tamper with the setting to make the activation delayed, making it somewhat useful in combat when used meticulously in the right hands. It was truly an incredible invention, worthy of a top place in the exam. It did seem serviceable but currently, due to the weight restraints, it still needed more development until it would go fully mainstream. The one thing that was super shocking about the invention, and what truly caught the gang's attention was the fact that the capsules were not at all constrained and restricted by the magical crystal, that blocked the storage rings around the school. This made the school realize a flaw in their defenses, making sure to develop a crystal able to block out the storage capabilities of the capsules. But until then, they were unhindered which made many gangs pounce on the idea before it becomes restricted, with that invention, they would be able to easily trade and sell illegal material even in the open, and restricted zones, increasing their income drastically. The 10 gram limit was not even a big deal in their eyes as most of the products they planned to distribute fell within that weight range. And, even once they do make a magic crystal able to block the effects, with their creator and only person that knew how to craft them, they would hold a monopoly on all of the capsules and they could always manufacture them, and release them before they are even available to the public at an extremely marked up price. Not to mention the fact that Ray was Moby Kane's roommate, the F rank that had suddenly skyrocketed up to B rank and only keeps growing, as well as having important friends including Jaden Griffith's boyfriend, this only made them want him even more just to be able to manipulate him and use him as a pawn in their plans. I in the end, after many hard fought battles, the Zexis gang came out on top. He had of course rejected their offer at first, but without any power and backing of any sort, he was immediately taught a lesson the hard way. He had tried his best to resist and endure all the excruciating pain he had to go through but in the end, it was way too much for them to bear, making him give up and crack, agreeing to their terms and becoming their slave, then they immediately put their new craftsman to work until the time was right for the next step of their plan, and it seemed like that time was right now. Chapter 164 Asterisk Burr BRR, asterisk all of a sudden, a notification sound rang from Ray's watch, when he looked at the person, it was Moby who had been trying to contact him all day. It seems like you really are important to him. You really are a great find and would make a great hostage if it comes to it. I don't know why the boss is so dead set on inviting this Moby Kane into the gang, and at third seat from the start. They must see some sort of potential in him that not even I see. I would be lying if I said that I am not jealous. But, it's not my place to decide, the red-haired boy said with a playful laugh. Then suddenly, the cyan-haired student who was lying down on the top bunk with a bored look in his eyes, staring at the white ceiling, jumped up in surprise, his once bored, bland eyes growing wider as a smirk suddenly appeared on his face, followed up by a maniacal chuckle. Jason, I have big news. The cyan-haired student said, now sitting cross-legged on the bed. What is it nags? Do you have any important information? Jason replied with a skeptical look in his eyes. He rejected the invitation. We are now authorized to go into plan B. Nag said with a creepy smile on his face. What? He rejected third seat. This is outrageous. Truly fucking outrageous. Our great gang has never suffered such humiliation. How dare he? Rejecting such an honor. Jason roared, unable to believe his ears. Calm down Jason. This only means that we can now force him to join along with teaching him a lesson right. It's not so bad after all. It's been a while since I actually had someone worthy to fight against. Nag said, his smile growing even wider than before. I'll tear him limb from limb mark my words. I can't let you have all the fun. Jason immediately retorted, smashing his own fists against each other in anger. Ray listened to the two boys' conversation with a scared yet worried look in his eyes, sweat running down his face as he knew exactly what they were talking about, in his heart. He knew that this time would come, but he wished that it would have come much later than sooner. Hey. Kid. Did you hear that? Your friend also fucked up just like you. Now we also have to teach him a lesson and show him who he is messing with. You can finally make yourself more useful to us. Who knows, maybe if you do well you might get promoted from slave to member. Jason said with an eerie yet bright smile, putting his hands on Ray's shoulder, making him shudder as goosebumps ravaged throughout his entire body. Plan A, which was just to ask him to join failed miserably. So, we are switching over to plan B, teaching him a lesson and forcing him into submission. Now, listen carefully and don't make me repeat myself. Jason said, his bright smile turning more disturbing the more he talked. For the next few minutes, Jason sat down beside Ray as he explained to him exactly what was about to go down and his role in all of it. The more he listened the more and more his expression twisted into immense fear. So, you got all of that kid? Failure is not an option. Jason said, finishing his explanation to Ray. N no. I refuse. I won't do it. Do whatever you want to me, but leave my friends out of it. Ray said, starting out nervous but ending with clear resolve. Wait what? Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Would you like to repeat that one more time? 
Jason said, his smile turning into an ugly, demonic frown, punching Ray in the stomach so hard, knocking the wind out of him before holding him up with one hand, his hands tightly around his throat. Did you not learn your lesson the first time? Do you want me to remind you? You are under the Zexis gang. We will ruin your life beyond anything in your wildest dreams if you reject. Also, even if you do reject, we will find another way to get our plans done. We could always just use you as a hostage. How does that sound instead? You are being given true mercy. One option would leave you as a hollow body without life and the other would leave you as a better, more respected member of the gang. Both options would lead to the same end for your friend. The answer is clear so don't be stupid and make the only right decision. Jason said, his hand still grasping tightly on Ray's neck, making it extremely hard for him to breathe. Ray began to squirm around, tapping frantically onto Jason's large, muscular, hairy hand as he was starting to lose consciousness. Jason. Let him go. Are you trying to kill him? We still need this kid. He can't talk with your hand around your neck. Nags, who was standing right behind him ordered with clear authority and a hint of annoyance in his voice. Okay, okay, fine. I just got a little carried away. Jason replied, dropping Ray's body on the ground, causing him to cough like a madman, his hands around his neck where Jason's hands once were. So? Have you thought it over? What will it be kid? Jason said with a devilish grin from ear to ear, crouching down to meet Ray at eye level. F fine. I'll do it. Jay just spare me. I'll do anything. Ray muttered with true fear in his eyes, his teeth shaking like crazy, from the look in his eyes, Nags could understand the weight of Ray's words and that what he said took a lot out of him, it was not at all what he wanted to do. He seemed like a true, honest friend. But in his predicament, he did not really have any other choice. That sight made him smile as he approached Ray to even further add on to his despair. Oh, one more thing. Take this, you will need it. Nag said with a smile, installing something onto Ray's undershirt of his school uniform. It was a little, transparent, high-tech looking sticker that seemed almost invisible to the naked eye. That's just in case you want to be sneaky and betray us, going back on your words. It may look stupid, but it was more expensive than you can even fathom. The school used to use something similar before the important families started complaining about the military spying on them. With this, we will be able to monitor your every move in real time as your body will show up as a hologram for us to inspect. It can also pick up on any sounds and video the area around as well. Someone from the gang will be monitoring your movements at all time. The instant you are even suspected of revealing the plan or doing anything suspicious that might compromise anything, you will be teleported straight to where either I am or another member is where you will be tortured and taken hostage to teach you a lesson. I know that you wanted to tell your friend and beg for protection from him or something, but now you know that it is not possible. You got that? Nags explained with a confident, wide, friendly smile on his face, putting his hands on the now even more frightened and hopeless Ray who was still coughing on the ground. All I need now is your fingerprint on this tablet and we are good to go. So, what will it be? Nags continued, his smile growing even further as he brought out a tablet where there was a clear marker where he was supposed to provide his fingerprint, a similar looking sticker on top of the area. Ray stopped coughing as he looked at the fingerprint with depressed, shaky, nervous eyes. He wiped the sweat off his forehead before taking a big gulp of saliva, as he slowly reached out his trembling arms towards the tablet in Nags' hand, authenticating his fingerprints with his eyes closed like he was disgusted with himself for what he had just done. You have made the right choice my friend. For your sake. I hope you don't disappoint. Chapter 165 5 p.m. after school. Even with the combined effort of every single member of Moby's group, they were still unable to locate Ray. They searched damn near everywhere in the school in just the span of a single lunch, plus a little extra after. Abby even used multiple wisps and Jaden used her doppelganger powers to help search and it still yielded no results, Ray was nowhere to be found. The only places that Moby was not able to search were the upstairs area with all of the second year students, every single classroom, janitor's room, closet, storage area. Other than that, everywhere else was covered. They did not want to ask around with the other students, or even teachers in order to not throw off the people possibly keeping him on a leash that people are trying to look for him, which would, in turn, make them hide him even better, the only places he thought that he could have been was in a hidden area of the forest, in a room he had not checked, or in one of the dorm rooms. On his search, Moby was asked by other gangs if he was willing to join them which he of course rejected and thrashed out of his way if they kept on, insisting or tried to force him. However, he was only asked by a very small, insignificant amount. He was expecting to be asked by at least 10 groups or gangs which turned out to be very far from what actually happened. The only possible explanation that Moby could think of was that the news of him rejecting the Zexis gang had spread throughout the entire school and if any other gang had Moby as a member it might just bring them trouble from the Zexis gang. If that was the case, then the Zexis gang was stronger and held more influence than he had first assumed. He needed to keep his guard up around them, which was precisely why he needed Travis for that job. Of course, Travis had accepted Moby's offer of paying him to be a spy. Moby knew that in the end, he would choose whichever yielded him the most amount of money. It was just in his nature, he would do anything for his mother, something that Moby could use to manipulate him. In addition to him accepting his offer, Moby asked him various questions concerning the gang, most of which he had no idea since he was a very low-ranking member. Questions like who is the leader, how many members does the gang have, how far is their reach, what is their purpose, all of those questions Moby was given vague or no answer at all. This confirmed to Moby that in Travis's current state, he would not be a useful spy and that even if the Zexis gang truly did have Ray, he would be withheld from that information. He just hoped that if they find out that he was trusted, and would be useful in obtaining him as a member, he would undoubtedly rise in the ranks and be provided with more information. As for the most important question concerning the leader, Travis told him that no one in the gang outside of the top three even knew who the leader was. That fact really messed with Moby's brain. If seeing the leader was such a big deal, then why would they want to appoint him as the third seat from the start? Why did they want to meet him in person before he could prove his loyalty to them and push up the ranks? Why him? What was their purpose? Maybe I should have accepted their offer just to do some spying, then immediately leaving. No. That would have been way too risky. 
Moby thought at the time, questioning his previous hasty actions before deciding to stick to his guts. I in the end, Moby left Travis to continue searching the entire school, not without providing him with a little payment for his services, and giving him some throwaway information he could claim to have extracted from him to gain further trust in the gang, in turns providing him with more information in the future. After many hours of failed searching, the school doors closed and they were forced to leave the building, meaning that Ray was probably not even there. Ray was still not answering his phone and their only near 100% reliable way of finding Ray was to just head back to their dorms, and wait until curfew where he would be forced to come under the school rules or else he would be in big trouble. And if that didn't work, then they would just have to camp out of Ray's classroom the next day until he comes out. Until any further notice, Moby had ordered all of his servants to stop the search and go back home as it was yielding no results. Jaden went home in her limousine, escorted by a few servants. As Moby went to bid her farewell, he noticed that none of the servants present were her butler who had always stood out and greeted her on arrival. At first he thought that it was very odd, however, he pushed the thought away as he believed that it was nothing of importance and that the butler was probably in the driver's seat, or had something super important to take care of at the mansion. As for Abby, she kept on insisting that she could keep searching but ended up following Moby's orders in the end and headed back to her dorm. Moby and Alex were now walking together back to their own dorms, not even saying a single word to each other. The worried and less than chipper expression on their faces told the entire story. When they finally reached the front of his dorm, Moby let out a loud sigh, scanning his card before tightly grasping the door handle, twisting the knob and opening it up. As the door slowly opened, the light from the inside flashed in their eyes, something that they did not at all expect as they were almost certain that the lights would have been turned off. As the blinding flash of light faded away, what they saw was something they were not at all expecting, their eyes and mouth opening wide in surprise. Ray! What are you doing here? Both Moby and Alex asked, almost unable to believe their own eyes. There casually sat Ray, on the bottom bunk of the bed with the usual dull expression on his face, a game system in his hands with headphones on his head. He was all safe and sound, not even a single scratch or speck of dirt to be seen on his face and the usually dirty school uniforms. Despite the loud scream of his two friends, Ray did not even flinch or look in their direction as if they were not even there. It reminded Moby of the scene when he had first entered the dorm all bloodied and Ray just did not notice his presence at all since he was so immersed in his video game, Moby and Alex both instinctively glanced at each other, looks of relief on both of their faces. They now knew that Ray was completely safe. However, they still needed to ask him a few questions to let their minds be at ease. They both walked up to Ray, tapping him on the shoulder to grab his attention as their screams were clearly not working. Oh. You guys are here. Sorry, I didn't notice you guys at all. Ray said in a happy tone, a somehow natural looking smile on his face that greatly caught Moby and Alex off guard. Other than that one time at the amusement park, it was their first time ever seeing such an expression on Ray's face. Any other time that he had tried to smile, it would always turn out extremely weird and awkward, however this time, it looked very natural which made them happy yet greatly disturbed at the same time to see how much he had changed in the two weeks, that they did not see each other, however, with Alex's night vision that even exceeded Moby's, he was able to spot that his smile was slightly twitchy, and not perfectly natural which made him believe that either Ray was trying to practice how to properly smile or he was being forced to smile by someone else. He relayed that information to Moby using their mind link and he thought that observation was very intriguing. So, they both decided to ask their questions in order to confirm what was actually happening and get to the bottom of things. Hey. Ray. We really are so happy to see you. It's been so long. We hope that you have done well in these two weeks we've been apart. We have been trying to contact you all day and you would not respond at all. Why is that? Even if you were playing video games at lunch and after school, you could have still checked your notifications when you were in class. You had us extremely worried you know. We know joke searched the entire school and we were not able to find you, Alex said with a worried expression on his face. Hum? Ray said in confusion, taking off his headphones before looking down at his watch to see upwards of 50 unanswered notifications on his watch, making his eyes go wide. Oh. I am so, so sorry. I honestly had no idea. I have been sitting here for the past 10 hours or so, I honestly lost track of time while I was playing and I couldn't hear the notification from my headphones. Ray answered with an embarrassed voice. Wait. 10 hours? Does that mean that you have been here all day? You didn't go to class? Moby asked with extreme skepticism in his eyes. Their dorm room was one of the only places that they did not check during their search since they would eventually be forced to go back there in the end, now they felt extremely stupid for thinking that. If only they did not have that mindset and checked the dorm room earlier, they would have saved them the trouble of searching for hours on end. Oh. You guys haven't heard. Those who got in the top 10% in the research division exams get an extra free day off school. I just decided to stay in the dorm and play video games until you guys came back. It was pretty much all I did for the week break. I had no idea that you guys were that worried about me. Ray said, looking down on the ground to hide his sad, disturbed facial expression even though it was not a total lie. The school did indeed give him and the other top 10% a free day off school but he used that excuse to hide the rest of the truth. Wait. Does that mean that you got in the top 10% of everyone? They both asked in shock. Yes, it does. You guys gave me motivation and helped inspire me to work harder to get what was truly supposed to be mine in the first place, Ray said, still looking down, his disturbed expression shifting into a mellow smile as it was one of the first truths that he had told in his entire story. Chapter 166 as Moby listened carefully to Ray's words, he found a big contradiction, and in addition to his shaky smile, he began to doubt his words. He was not at all acting natural, nothing at all like the Ray he remembered. He said that he got inspired and began to work hard right after he said that all he did during the break was play video games, those two statements don't add up. He felt like Ray was trapped, inwardly crying for help trying to give them hints without making it obvious for some reason. He was almost certain something else was going on but he had no solid evidence to confront him with, plus that would be a reckless move in his circumstances. If Ray suddenly jumped up in the research rankings, it would be very odd for a gang not to be interested in him. Gangs usually only invite very talented people while the weaker students usually beg them to join for protection. 
He relayed all of his information to Alex using their mind link and they decided that it all depended on what his exam was, and what he did in it. For now, due to the awkwardness and obscurity of the situation, Moby decided not to push any further and continue with his questions to see where it would go from there. Wow. I am so happy to hear that. What kind of exam was it? Alex asked with a smile. It was an exam about creating something in a limited amount of time, Ray said, slowly lifting up his head that was previously looking down to reveal a few subtle drops of sweat on his forehead with that same natural, smile as before. So, what did you invent to get you so high up in the scores? Moby asked. It's a secret, under the school rules, I am not allowed to disclose that, Ray replied, telling the truth yet lying through his teeth at the same time. Oh come on man. We're buddies, you can tell us anything. We won't expose. Alex added with a smile. I just can't risk it, maybe the school is spying on what I say through the watch. I just can't. I'm really sorry guys. Ray said in a heavier voice, his smile turning slightly more mellow. Oh. Okay. We understand, sorry for pushing you, Moby said with a chuckle, rubbing the back of his head. I was just wondering, did you ever get involved with any gangs during the break? I find it hard to believe that they wouldn't jump at the chance to recruit someone as useful as you, Moby asked with clear worry. Oh, don't worry about it, I have not gotten involved with that crowd at all, they seem to still be uninterested in me. Like I told you before, my blandness usually slips under the radar and not many bullies even notice me, Ray said with a natural yet awkward smile and a chuckle, standing out of his bed, heading towards the fridge. With two questions down, Moby was almost certain that something was happening. It was almost like Ray was being held at gunpoint with every movement that he did as everything felt all too stiff and forced. However, he still did not have any solid evidence to back that with, for all he knew, he was just really nervous to see them again after so long. So, he decided to keep going like he did not notice anything until more information arises, who knows what would happen if he announced his skepticisms right now. Ray slowly approached the fridge. He opened it up before looking for a bit, grabbing a plate of what looked like chicken nuggets, closing the fridge before putting it in the microwave that was right beside it. So, how was your guy's exam? I heard that it ended up as a disaster and that they are looking to fire or maybe even jail General Riker, Ray said, pushing the buttons on the microwave to heat up his food. Asterisk beep asterisk asterisk beep asterisk asterisk beep asterisk yeah. So many students died due to carelessness, I heard that they are still looking for a suitable replacement for the general and in the meantime, he was still here to stay, Alex replied. Asterisk beep asterisk. I also heard that both of you guys even got really high on the exam and that Moby got a new, extremely strong and fast growing ability from it. It must really be nice, congrats. Ray said, hiding his face that was facing towards the microwave, as he continued to press the buttons. Asterisk beep asterisk, yeah, it was all by sheer luck, I am so fortunate. Yet, at the same time, it's bringing me a lot of trouble. A bunch of gangs are now trying to get me on their side just because of it. I don't want to join any of them for obvious reasons, but I feel like they might try to pull something on me to make me join. I am not sure why they would want me to join so badly, Moby explained. Asterisk beep asterisk, oh. That's awful. I hope that it all works well for you. Ray replied, trying to hold back his tears, hoping that his message and hints would get through to his friends and not get noticed by the person spying on him. Asterisk beep asterisk asterisk beep asterisk asterisk beep asterisk, what is with all of these beeps? It doesn't take that many presses to use a microwave, does he keep changing his mind or something? Moby inwardly wondered before just forgetting about it as he thought he was thinking into things too much. However, when he turned to see Alex's face, that told an entirely different story with shaky eyes that said he figured everything out. SOS. Alex mumbled to Moby using his mind link, huh? Moby replied in confusion, unable to understand why Alex randomly said that. SOS. Alex said once again but more enthusiastically, confusing Moby even more than before. SOS. It's SOS. Those beeps. That's Morse code for SOS. Three short beeps, three long beeps, and three short beeps. It's a cry for help. Ray, you're truly a genius. Using the microwave sounds to signal SOS. Alex said, inwardly laughing at his sudden realization. As soon as Alex explained it all out to him, he struggled to keep his poker face as his eyes almost popped out of their socket from the sudden realization that hit him like a truck. They had previously learned about Morse code and the meaning of SOS back in school. However, he never knew that they could be applied in such a way and that Ray could be resourceful enough to use them in his current situation. Alex. You're a genius too. How the fuck did you pick up on that? Moby asked, still in a shocked state. Well, I knew that the beeps were way too many to use a microwave, so when I thought more deeply and listened more closely, the answer just hit me in the face. This now confirms it. Something happened to Ray. Alex said, leading to Moby inwardly nodding in reply. This realization made many questions and thoughts ravage Moby's mind. He first thought that he could turn Ray into a demon in order for him to force him into revealing the truth, or to use his mind-altering skill to peek into his mind and memories before erasing the memory of him doing it. However, the more he thought of that idea the more he came to a realization that it was a very reckless and idiotic thing to do. Ray clearly wanted to get the message across that he was in trouble but why did he do that in such a subtle way? He could have just written it down to avoid saying anything or use some sort of sign language. The only possible answers would be that he was being spied on by an outside source. He was not sure how, the only possible explanations would be that there were cameras in the room, there was someone who has the ability to see through walls who is spying on them from the outside, or there was a camera or some sort of sensor on Ray himself. Either possibility would not allow him to turn Ray into a demon or alter his memories as it would expose himself as inhuman. He also thought that since Ray was there with them, even if he was being spied on he could have just told them what happened and asked for protection. However, he was clearly not doing that. That must mean that there are circumstances that would not allow him to do it. The gang keeping a hostage to force him to do what he did was the most plausible explanation. Moby relayed his thoughts to Alex who said that he was also thinking the same thing. They both agreed that it must have been a gang's doing and Ray was being forced to do what he was doing to force Moby to join them. 
their only rationale, least reckless course of action to keep Ray and the possible hostage safe was to go along with the gang's wishes try to find a way to fight back, or outsmart them. Ray was one of Moby's first actual friends and he would be damned if he let him die or get tortured with it all being his fault. Alex felt the same way but for different reasons of course, they both decided to act natural for now and see how things progressed, trying their best to hold their poker face that hid. Their inner doubts and worries as they stared at Ray who was casually eating his chicken nuggets. Chapter 167 As soon as the food was finished, Ray grabbed it out of the microwave and sat back on his bed before turning on the TV, munching on his chicken nuggets. Do you guys want any? Ray asked, his hand out with the plate of microwave chicken nuggets. What followed was the most awkward two hours Moby and Alex had ever experienced as they all just sat down and watched TV with small talk every now and then as they were waiting for Ray to make a move. It was almost like he was stalling for time in a way that would seem ordinary. All three of them were acting extremely fake as they needed to fool the person spying on them, so they did what they had to do to make it seem as natural as possible even though in their hearts they knew that it was not at all the case. Moby was almost certain that Ray also knew that he and Alex had gotten his message, but he had no real way of confirming it other than picking up on what seemed like subtle hints in their conversation. At times like these, he really wished that he had already turned Ray into a demon just so he could communicate with him using MindLink, which would have avoided such a problem in the first place. But sadly, even if he wanted to turn him in secret, he did not have any open slots at the time so he was not able to do it. Suddenly, Ray turned off the TV before casually looking at him. Hey, Moby would it be possible if I just talked with you in private? I have noticed a problem in my ability, I can't seem to get it any stronger than it already is, can you help me out? Ray nervously asked. Huh? Why me? I just got my ability very recently and I'm super inexperienced in using it, wouldn't asking Alex be a better idea? Moby replied in confusion. Well, you are like the fastest growing student I have ever seen, you went from F rank to nearly a rank in the span of a few weeks. You must have some sort of secret to getting strong right? Can you please share it with me? Ray said, bowing deeply. Well, I think it was just due to the nature of my ability that it grows fast at the start, not because of anything special I am doing. But, I would be glad to give you some pointers, we are friends after all, Moby said with a smile. Moby knew that what Ray said was a trap but he had to go along with it for his sake. Really? That's great. You're the best. Ray said in excitement. If Moby did not know Ray for so long, he would have thought of him as a traitor and just simply abandoned him to his fate. But, it was the fact that he knew him for. So long that he understood that he was doing this against his will and had no other choice. He also knew that Ray was the type to have a plan in such situations, just like what he did with the SOS message. So, he decided to put his trust in him for now until proven otherwise. Can we train in the forest instead of the yard outside of the dorms? There should be more things to target there and it is a more calm environment. Plus I know that there are many lights in the yard and that it's dark in the forest, but I have also wanted to test out the effectiveness of my new night vision goggles. Two birds with one stone. So, are you willing to help? Ray asked. Now Moby knew everything, there was going to be some sort of ambush somewhere in the forest. If he did not know any better and if Ray did not show him any signs or hints, he would have thought of it as nothing but a simple request. But now, Moby was heavily on guard. Even though he was nearly 100% certain of his deduction, he still needed to confirm it with his own eyes and gauge the strength and numbers of his enemies, Abby. Can you hear me? Moby asked, opening up a mind link. Yes, my lord. I can hear you loud and clear. Abby replied as she stopped swinging her scythe, wiping the sweat off her forehead. I have an update on the situation, my friend is completely safe, but it seems like he is being manipulated into luring me into an ambush in the forest, I need you to send a wisp or two to scout the area around the forest and report your findings to me as soon as possible, Moby said in a firm voice, what? Luring my lord into a trap. Unforgivable. That is a sin. No. That is far beyond any sin. If you allow me to speak my opinion, he should be either abandoned or executed for such actions, in his place I would have gladly sacrificed myself for your sake. My lord, my life belongs to you, Abby replied in a stern voice. Calm down Abby, there must be some sort of reason for this, that is why I have decided to follow along with this trap and take them head on. Ray is a very important person to me and I also feel like his skills and talents would serve me well in the future so please take that into consideration as well. For now, just search the forest and report your findings so I can formulate my thoughts, Moby replied, trying his best to calm her down as he was slightly taken aback at how fanatic she was growing before deciding to ignore it for now as there were more urgent things to worry about. Understood, it shall be done. I was just trying to provide my opinions and suggestions like you had previously asked my lord. I will of course trust your judgment as you are more knowledgeable than me, Abby said, bowing from the other end before sending out her wisps to spy. Moby then thanked her for sharing her opinion and her good memory and listening before he closed the mind link and waited for her to respond. He told Alex everything he and Abby talked about. In the meantime, he still had to stall for time and get more information out of Ray while trying to fool the people spying on them into thinking that they were clueless, seeing that nothing had yet to happen, it seemed like they were doing a good job, so they just had to continue what they were doing to make everything seem as natural as they possibly could. The person spying on Ray was sitting beside a computer, his hands hovering over the abduct button with bored yet keen eyes as he had yet to notice anything wrong or out of place in what was happening. Moby and Alex did not voice their true thoughts or whisper secretly between each other, and they did not push anything on Ray or disagree with him in any way which would have urged him to press the button, plus, the hologram sensor of Ray was not completely perfect. It was able to pick up on all the movements of his naked body but complex facial expressions were not completely replicated. This meant that a slightly shaky smile from Ray seemed completely natural from his perspective, and he found no evidence of Moby and Alex reacting badly to it or finding it suspicious so he did not think much of it. If they did, then they would voice their concerns and observations like normal people, however, the problem was that they were not normal people. He was actually fooled into thinking that everything was as it was supposed to be. From his perspective, it seemed like everything was going according to plan, as he had absolutely no idea of the existence of mind dash link. I in the time that Moby was waiting for Abby to respond with her findings, the group just had casual chatter. Before their conversation progressed too much, according to plan, Alex voluntarily left saying he wanted to go on a walk and do some training in the yard. 
This was so just in case there were cameras in the room, it would not seem like he left the room a few minutes after, making it look very obvious that he was going to follow them which might lead to some trouble. And, since he left before Ray told Moby the exact location they were headed, it would give off the illusion that he had no idea where exactly they were going, and that he would not be able to follow them even if he wanted to. After talking for a few minutes, Moby and Ray finally decided to leave the dorm room, heading straight into the forest located behind the dorm building. The time was around 6pm, far from curfew yet it was still very dark outside as the sun was almost completely set due to it being in the winter season, which definitely made sense for an ambush. As they left the room, Ray reached into his bag and grabbed two pairs of black night vision goggles with green lenses. Of course, Moby had no use for them due to his natural night vision as a demon but he accepted them anyway, when he put them on, it clamped fairly hard on his face. And, it was not at all green like he thought it was going to be. Instead, it seemed exactly just like his normal vision but slightly blurred due to the fact that he was now looking out through a lens. They both walked down the stairs of the dorm room building and immediately strode towards the dark, yet now not so dark forest ahead, slowly walking through a muddy, unorthodox path as the cold winter wind struck them in the face, making Ray slightly shiver while Moby seemed completely fine, most likely due to his new cold resistance passive. Where exactly are we going? Do you have some place in mind? Don't worry, I know of a good area where we could practice. By the way, are the goggles still good? Yeah, they are working perfectly, seeing clearly at night is quite the experience, I see. I am glad to hear. Also, I have been meaning to tell you this for a while now but I never got around to say it. Please trust me, I know exactly what I am doing. The monsters in the forest won't be a big problem, Ray said with an actual smile that Moby could tell was not fake, his first real genuine smile the entire time. Don't worry, of course, I trust you. I wouldn't be here if I didn't, Moby replied back with a genuine smile of his own as he probably guessed the metaphor Ray was going for, plus he truly meant what he said, then, suddenly, he heard a familiar, soft, womanly voice enter his ears, something that he had been patiently waiting for and expecting, my lord. It's Abby reporting in. From what I see, it's pretty bad. I spotted at least 50 people in the forest in a clearing very far ahead of your location. However, that is only a rough estimate. The trees were mostly blocking my line of vision and I did not want to swoop in closer just in case I get spotted so, I can guarantee there to be more students waiting in ambush. They are very serious about capturing you, my lord. What are your orders? More than 50. If they have any B or a ranked in their mix then this will indeed be far more troublesome than I thought. Moby pondered, with real thoughts of retreat in his mind as he was now really doubting his chances of success. It was either his life or Ray's and he would much rather save his own any day. He really wanted to abandon him yet a part of his mind kept aching every time he wanted to leave, even though he knew that it was seemingly the only logical thing to do. Ray's earlier words played over again in his head and his words, of trusting him did as well. Was he really about to become a liar and go against his own word so quickly? Then, he shook those thoughts out of his mind. He steeled his resolve as he knew that he was not the type of person to so easily go back onto his words, as he tried to think about the positives of facing them. He was bound to fight the Zexis gang sooner or later and he would rather do it at night in the forest with no spectators, and where he had the advantage than any other time and place. Plus, he would be able to catch them off guard as they would think that he had no idea of the ambush. The more he thought about it the more sense it made and the more he began to believe that it was the perfect time to strike. Plus, he still wanted to save Ray who seemed like he was now more of a wild card than ever and might have something up his sleeves. It was now or never. Okay. I have decided. We will all go on the offensive and take them out with an all-out attack. It might be tough, but this is our best time to strike when they don't expect it and when we have the advantage. If we flee right now, we are bound to fight them in the next few days when Ray's circumstances would be worse, and when they would be more prepared for all of us and hold the upper hand. That would be less than ideal. So it is now or never. Moby announced to Abby, understood my lord. Abby replied with a bow, clear excitement in her voice, this is war. They chose to mess with the wrong demons. Let us show them the errors of their ways. Let us show them what the house of blissful demons is truly capable of. Moby said in a serious, motivating voice. Yes my lord. Your will is absolute. All your enemies will fall. Abby responded, her excitement growing even further than before as she could finally fight by her lord's side for the first ever time, and prove herself once more to make up for her previous failures, I will inform Alex and Jaden about everything. In Jaden's case, it might take a while for her to arrive so I will try my best to stall to give her more time. In the meantime, wait on standby somewhere that you could easily rush into the battlefield and wait until further orders from me. Report if you find anything suspicious during your wait, Moby ordered with a kind yet commanding voice, my lord, your wish is my command. I wish you the best of luck on your endeavors. The Zexis gang shall pay for all of this. Abby said with clear hate and animosity in her voice, indeed, Moby replied, inwardly smirking as he closed the mind link with Abby. He then looked over at Ray who had a slightly serious expression on his face as he slowly and calmly navigated through the thorny forest, taking note of the state he was in before opening a mind link with Jaden to inform her about everything that had just transpired and ask her to come and help. Chapter 168. Hey, Jaden, I have good news. Ray is completely fine, but I need your help, he's being forced into a situation where we must fight against the Zexis gang to get him back. Abby and Alex are here and ready to fight. Can you please come as soon as possible? Your help would be greatly appreciated, Moby said using his mind link, oh shit. Is this going to be some sort of all-out brawl? I'm in. Jaden said in excitement, accepting Moby's offer as he heard a loud bang come from her end because of the knife and fork that had dropped out of her hand, oh, and can you also get your butler to come too? Just in case something goes bad, he could come in and save the day? You know? Moby asked with a smile on his face as he just thought of it as his trump card. The idea and realization had just suddenly popped up in his head. He didn't want the butler to come in and defeat all of them from the start since he would not receive any XP for doing so. But, if the butler was used as a backup plan, it would not be a problem. Plus, if he did that then he would have no pressure in his head as he would know everything would be okay. And, he would not be forced into revealing his two trump cards, something he wished to keep a secret for as long as possible, especially his sin mode. Um. 
About that, it would definitely not be possible. Jaden nervously responded with a chuckle. What? Why? Moby replied, flabbergasted as he did not expect rejection. There are two problems. The first would be that nobody outside of students and staff are allowed to enter the school premises without explicit permission, that also includes the forest. The school automatically scans and detects our ID every time we enter and exit the school ground, and if an unknown person enters, that would be deemed a crime and they would be hunted down as an intruder. That's why my servants and butler always waited for me at the school gates and never entered the school. Plus, who would give permission to someone who wanted to enter the school to spectate a fight? Even with my family power that would not happen, the school has very strict rules about entry, Jaden explained. Moby inwardly cursed his stupidity and naiveness. Of course, he had already known that rule but had simply forgotten it as he lost himself in his hasty and wishful thinking. The gang must have thought ahead and kept the fight on school grounds just for that reason alone. He had also contemplated reporting the problem to the school but with no incriminating evidence, he would have no right to demand a lie detector test against them. Plus, the gang's power definitely stretched out to many of the teachers as it was proven when Travis was able to bypass the lie detector test with the help of a corrupt teacher who made a deal with the Zexis gang. Reporting the problem to the school would have only made it worse. It seemed like the stakes had just once again risen to extreme proportions. As he gritted his teeth and prepared for the bloodbath ahead of him, you said two problems, right? What was the second one? Well, at random times of the year, my butler takes a small vacation to relax. This is one such time. He usually takes one or two weeks off. His job must get really stressful, so I can't blame him. My point is that even if that rule didn't exist, then my butler wouldn't be here to help anyway, Jaden explained, making Moby nod back in response, remembering how her butler was not there to pick her up, as he took a deep breath to calm his nerves. He knew exactly what he was getting himself into when he had declared war, and had only thought of bringing in Jaden's butler after his conversation with Abby. All he needed to do now was go back to his previous mindset. As their leader, he could not allow himself to show any weakness or hesitation in his words, so, honey, I should be there in around 20 minutes if I turn into a wisp. Hold out for me until then, if I arrive before the fighting had started, I'll let you know and I'll wait for your signal to attack, Jaden said with a smile, checking the weather to make sure that it wouldn't rain. Sounds great. I'll try my best to stall for you to come. Just be fully prepared, they have at least 50 people waiting for us in ambush and we have no way of gauging their strength. This is a big gamble, we might be walking into pure defeat and we wouldn't even know it, Moby said in a stern tone as it did not seem like Jaden was taking it seriously. Don't worry, I am well aware of what I am getting myself into. Just know that I would do anything to help you just like I know that you would do anything to help me. Plus, unless they are psychos, I doubt that they would even dare lay a finger on me due to my status, Jaden said with a laugh that made Moby inwardly smile in response as he really wished to give her a hug, but that was of course not possible. Thanks for that, I am counting on you. Of course you are. What would you even do without me? I'll be there in 20 minutes, good luck with everything, Jaden replied in her usual playful tone. As their mind link closed, Moby immediately opened up another one to quickly inform Alex of the situation. His conversation with Jaden was really insightful and heartwarming, making him steal his resolve even more as he promised himself that he would not let her down and fail. However, it took longer than he expected and time was something he was very short on. After filling Alex in about all the new information, he was of course not against the idea of fighting. His voice sounded extremely serious yet ominous when he promised himself that he would save Ray no matter what and that he would make anyone that dared lay a finger on him pay miserably. If it were Alex before the exam, he would have definitely not acted like that. It even further proved that he was still a very nice guy but his personality got more twisted and distorted from his demon nature. As soon as Moby finished informing all of his comrades on what to do, he tightly gripped his right hand into a fist and inwardly took a deep breath, trying his best to relax his slightly stiff-looking face. Ray, how much longer until we reach the area? It should not take longer than five minutes, Ray said with a mixture of seriousness and calmness. I really have to go to the washroom, I am going to do it in that bush over there. Just wait a second for me, as promised, Moby managed to stall for time in as best and as many ways as he could. Anything from going to take a leak to hunting weak beasts found in the forest that seemed like they wanted to attack. He did anything that didn't make him seem out of place to stall for time which stretched that five minutes into ten minutes instead, which was not bad at all. We are finally here, Ray said, pointing towards a clearing in the forest ahead. It was an area of about 1,000 meters squared, around a fifth of a football field and two times the size of a basketball court. In the distance to their right, a river and a small waterfall could also be seen. As the two of them slowly yet casually walked over to the center of the clearing, Moby tried to look around and see if there was anyone else hiding in the area only to find nothing. However, he was more than certain that there were people there. Although he was not able to use his inspect skill when he had no one to see or target, he still had other skills to utilize. He used the opportunity to activate his energy sense which gave off no visual evidence of him using it, knowing full well that it would not alert the enemy. Shit. 50, no. 60 people, Moby inwardly cursed, counting all of the people who were hiding behind trees. He really wished that his energy sense could also tell him the strength of his enemies, but sadly that was not the case at its current level. All he could do is prepare himself for the worst possible outcome and hope that Ray had some sort of plan in mind. One second, let me put my gloves on before we could start, Ray said, reaching into his bag, pulling out two pairs of black metal gloves. Moby recognized them as the string gloves that he showed him during their visit to the amusement park. If he remembered correctly, they were his own personal invention that released vibrating threads of string, that he controlled with his telekinesis ability to attack his targets. He firmly put the gloves on both hands, making them clamp with a loud click. Then, he reached his hands into his pockets as he began to play with a certain red button that he had been hiding. So, are you ready? What do you need practice with? Moby said, taking in a breath of fresh air, a wide smile on his face. Moby. I. I am sorry, but I had to do this. Please forgive me. Ray said, turning away with an ugly, regretful look on his face, pressing the red button in his pants before immediately bringing his arms out. Huh? What do you mean? Moby said, feigning ignorance as he inwardly prepared himself to fight, clenching his fists as his eyes hidden behind his goggles turned into deadly slits. 
Suddenly, a loud buzzing sound came from his helmet before a message appeared right in front of his eyes. The buzzing and static from his helmet continued as his ears were filled with nothing but their sound. What the fuck is happening? Ray. I can't see. I can't see. Moby said in distress, lying through his teeth as his vision was still completely fine. He just wanted his opponents to recklessly attack him thinking that he is blind before attacking them when their guard was down, and when they least expected it, not even a second later, the sounds of multiple footsteps were heard, making Moby look up only to see an army of students who were hiding in the forest heading his way, a full set of armor and weapons on them with goggles on their eyes and a dirty smile on their face. Moby stopped himself from instinctively taking a fighting stance as he tried to keep his poker face of distress and confusion to lure his enemy in. Then, as they all at once jumped full speed from the forest and into the clearing, they were suddenly stopped by some sort of invisible barrier as they all started to fall down like flies, as screams of surprise and agony filled the air, making Moby's jaw nearly drop and break his poker face from the sight he was seeing. The bodies that fell all had severe injuries and deep cuts, some even lost their arms and legs in the process, spraying the grass under them dying it crimson. Even the students that were late to join were already in mid-air and had no way of dodging or changing directions, leading them to meet the same fate as their friends below. They looked like a group of flies recklessly jumping into a trap. In just the span of a few seconds, nearly all of the assailants were on the ground, either unconscious or begging for help and healing. The tides had shifted so fast and Moby had no idea what was happening as his mind started spinning in circles. When he looked at Ray's face right beside him, it told the entire story, taking Moby off guard, his once innocent looking smile turned into something much uglier and more devilish. It looked like he snapped, letting out all of his bottled emotions of hatred and contempt, as he watched the students fall right into the trap with a smile that could only be described as mad. Out of his gloves were various, thin, vibrating, nearly invisible strings that stretched very far, Moby did not even notice when he had even extended them. Then, as he followed the direction of the string, he noticed that what the enemy had run into was not a magic barrier at all but just raised vibrating strings wrapped around each tree instead, blood dripping down from them as he now understood exactly what happened, but not how it came to be. Chapter 169 The person tasked with spying on Ray and pressing the button to take him hostage whenever he acted suspiciously was in his dorm, sitting in front of a monitor screen, his right hand shaking as his thumb hovered over the button in his hand, his eyes almost popping out of their sockets, a mixture of fear, shock, and anger on his face as he watched his fellow gang members get slaughtered right in front of his eyes. T traitor! How the hell did he do this right under my nose? This fucker will pay! The spy said, snapping himself back into reality with an emotion-filled voice as he immediately pressed the red button, to make the scene in front of him stop. Asterisk click asterisk as soon as he clicked the button, he looked at Ray's figure displayed on his monitor screen and began waiting in anticipation for his body to get teleported. But, after a few seconds, nothing had happened which gave him a bad feeling running down his spine as his hands began to sweat like crazy, ha. Huh. It must have been a glitch. He thought to himself, trying to calm his nerves as he pressed the button once again. Asterisk click asterisk nothing. Fuck. Again. Asterisk click asterisk 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 why is this not working he thought to himself hyperventilating tears of panic horror and despair running down his face as he continued to press the button like a madman they had tested out the functions of the button before they had Ray go and it worked perfectly so why did it stop working when he needed it most? That along with how he managed to pull that trap with him watching his every move, nothing made sense in his head. It was like he was living out one of his worst nightmares. His body that was hunched over in his seat now just leant all the way back as his dead looking eyes began to tear up even more as waterfalls of tears began to fall down his face. His right hand that had been previously holding the button now completely wide open as the useless, broken button fell on the ground with an immense thud that was filtered out by his staticky mind. W what the hell is going on? I I watched his every move so carefully. H how did this happen? I I am so dead. The gang is gonna kill me. He muttered to himself with a low voice as his mind delved into turmoil. The plan was very simple, Ray would lure Moby alone into the forest, giving him night vision goggles as an excuse to go out at night. Then, when he reached the designated area, he would press a button, making his night vision goggles malfunction while at the same time making it let out a loud, unbearable staticky noise, causing Moby to lose the use of his two most important senses, his hearing and vision, leaving him as a sitting duck and an easy target, and, if Ray even showed a hint of betrayal or if Moby seemed to have caught onto what was going on, then the spy would have pressed the button, taking Ray hostage. The plan seemed foolproof, nothing could have possibly gone wrong or so they thought. The gang had made two huge miscalculations, the first was that they had no clue of the existence of Moby's mind link. And, second and most important was that they underestimated truly how intelligent Ray was, as he had never been heard of prior to his good performance on his exam. Ray had fully anticipated everything in the gang's plan before they had even proposed it to him, and, he had prepared and acted accordingly. He had endured all of those weeks of pain, humiliation, and suffering all for that moment, to help out his only friends and to get his payback. Prior to the gang's recruitment, Ray had already made a few storage capsules for his own personal use. After all, he made those storage capsules for especially creating traps with his ability and gloves in mind. The weight limit of 10 grams was so low because he had only intended them to hold his strings that weighed almost nothing. After the gang let him go for the day and left the spying device on his shirt, Ray had just simply gone back to his own dorm. However, on his way there, he tripped and fell in mud, leaving his pants extremely dirty. Then, he had asked permission from the person spying on him if he was allowed to change his pants so he seemed cleaner, and could sell his story better to his friends that he had been inside the entire time, the spy of course agreed, using the microphone embedded on the device. He thought nothing suspicious about it as he felt like the request was fully reasonable. However, unknown to the man, Ray had worn a pair of pants that he had been keeping his old capsules filled with his strong, vibrating threads. Due to some prior reading, Ray knew about the spying device and its exact functions even though the gang did not explain everything to him. 
He knew that the spy had absolutely no idea of this as on his screen, he was only able to monitor sound, the video being taken from Ray's perspective, and a model of Ray's naked body, items and clothes being held on him were not at all simulated. And, he used that knowledge to his full advantage after wearing the new pair of pants, Ray decided to nervously ask the spy for directions about where exactly in the forest he was supposed to lead Moby. This was a request that the spy found a little odd as Ray had just finished changing his pants, but at the same time it was a very important and reasonable question to ask in his circumstances, and he might have just forgotten to ask it before he wore his new pants. Plus, he was going to have to do it anyway. The spy led Ray to the exact area where the trap was supposed to take place and Ray decided to take his time inspecting it, his hands in his pockets as he began circling all around the edges of the clearing to better take in the environment. From the spy's perspective, this all looked very natural and he saw nothing to hint at Ray doing anything suspicious, so he let him be as he continued to inspect him very carefully. Yet, what the spy did not see was how Ray dropped various small capsules on the ground every few meters. By activating all of them all at once, that was how he intended to trap the gang. Once activated, the strings would automatically connect to his gloves, allowing him to stretch them out and control them using his ability, wrapping them around the trees for an easy trap. However, the gang's biggest mistake and miscalculation was how they did not have anyone proficient in technology in their gang, so they had to rely on Ray to create the mechanism of disabling the night vision goggles, which he of course did and showed them how it fully worked. Except, unknown to them, the button had more functions than just disabling a specific night vision goggle. It also served to activate all of his personal capsules that he left in his dorm as well as send out a certain electromagnetic wave, that would temporarily disable the teleportation feature. He programmed it so that he could decide which effects he wanted by simply pressing the button longer or shorter. A short press would activate all of the effects while a long press would only activate disabling the helmet. The only demonstration that he showed the gang was when he long pressed the button, the thought never crossed their mind that pressing the button longer or shorter would have led to different effects so they never bothered asking, or looking into it, then, he went home to relax and play video games until Moby and Alex arrived, the rest was up to them if they caught his message and if they would lead to all of his efforts going in vain, getting him taken hostage. The thought of activating the button to disable teleportation before he had lured Moby in did cross his mind but in the end, he decided against it. If the spy saw him make the motion to press the button before the time was right, he would be teleported or taken hostage before he could even get the chance. He assumed that the person assigned to keep an eye on him was very strong and perceptive, giving him a much faster speed and reaction time to him which would have led to him failing more times than not, and he was not willing to take the risk. So, he decided to continue with his original plan. Luckily his gamble paid off and his friends did not act suspiciously at all or force him into a corner, everything went too smoothly almost like they also had a firm grasp on the situation. What Ray did not know was that his gamble was even bigger than he thought as he was able to evade and slip past both Abby's and Jaden's eyes, who were searching the campus and forest respectively. The grounds of the school were very huge and it did not allow them to search everywhere at once, especially in Jaden's case who had to search the entire, wide, expansive forest. If Ray was not lucky enough to evade their search, he would have been either questioned or caught by them to send straight to Moby, leading to him getting taken hostage. Ray was not even aware that such a reality could have happened. Everything fell in the right place due to a mixture of luck and careful planning, and he would be lying to say that he was not satisfied as the gang fell right into his hands. He held onto the spying device on his shirt and immediately ripped it out, throwing it on the ground as he stared at the gang members jumping right into his web with a chuckle and crazy smile on his face, the strings turning them into piles of meat stacked on top of each other, squirming and screaming on the ground as a result of his trap. He was not sure if some of them were dead or unconscious but he did not at all care, they deserved what they got for all the pain they had made him go through and for trying to hurt his only friends that meant so dearly to him. If the school asks him why he did what he did, he would simply answer with self-defense and that he was scared for his life which was not at all false. At this point, he was ready to do anything. Chapter 170 the loud buzzing sound in Moby's head coming from his goggles became too unbearable for him to listen to any longer. So, he ripped them out of his head and threw them on the grass under him. Then, as he did in the exam, he faked his night vision by using his pure demon energy aura on his eyes, claiming that it gave him night vision when in reality it did nothing. He shifted his focus from the crazy look on Ray's face before once again looking at the crying pile of meat in front of him with a mixture of joy and panic. Joy that Ray had some sort of plan and didn't betray him and panic from seeing the sight of the severed limbs, some being the arm that held their school watch on. He did not even bother to check if some of them were dead as it would have led to the same result either way. This only meant one thing, the school had been notified about the possibly dead, or severed arms of the students and were now headed in their direction. Of course, Moby knew that he did nothing wrong but the same could not be said about Ray who he had no doubt in his mind had everything planned out. Even if he claimed that it was all self-defense, the gang's control over the school and the possible family power of the injured students could either pressure or manipulate the school into expelling, jailing, or even killing him, the only thing he could do now was leave no evidence, kill every student in the forest before the retrieval team arrives and leave without being caught. Then, he would turn Ray into a demon and mind control him to get past the lie detector test if he was summoned. However, that would not be possible if they even left a single survivor, it would make both Ray and the witness be telling the truth which would have been impossible and would have brought many doubts, and problems coming their way as the school would have no doubt concluded that it must have been some sort of mind manipulation. Moby did not have time to inform his friends about what happened and for now, just in case anything unexpected arises, he did not order them to retreat. He needed their assistance in the case of unknown enemies showing up. I did it Moby. I saved us all. They all got what they deserved. Ray celebrated as he looked at Moby with wide eyes and a twitchy smile. Ray. We have to leave now. Leave no evidence behind. Moby yelled. He did not react or hesitate at all, not even celebrating or properly responding to Ray as he knew that he had more important things to worry about. He bolted straight at the pile of bodies with a serious look in his eyes, his hands filled with an aura of pure demon energy. His demon energy would be able to completely obliterate them without a trace as it was nothing at all like fire, which was exactly what he intended to do. He fired a large stream of pure demon energy straight at the pile of students in front of him with no hesitation or remorse. His humanity had already been long lost to him. In front of his eyes, he did not see them as fellow students or even humans but more as piles of XP, assassins and witnesses that would get in his way. 
To Moby's surprise, as the stream of demon energy erupted out of his hands, his attack was completely and abruptly nullified, almost like it vanished in mid-air hitting something invisible. When he looked closer, he saw a flickering energy barrier surrounding the pile of bodies, making his eyes go wide as he did not expect such a thing to happen. When he used his energy sense, he was now able to see the entire shield. It was a yellow, slightly cracked energy barrier that surrounded all of the bodies in the shape of a dome. What the fuck is this? A gadget or someone else's ability? Moby inwardly cursed, leaning more towards his latter assumption. He inwardly panicked and immediately turned around, his energy sense still activated as he was worried that something had happened to Ray when he left him alone but luckily, he saw only his energy signature and no one else stopped asterisk clap asterisk, asterisk clap asterisk, asterisk clap asterisk, asterisk clap, asterisk the sound of slow clapping suddenly entered into Moby's ears from the forest, the exact opposite direction he was looking, making him snap his focus once more. Yet, even with his night vision, he saw nothing. But, with his energy sense, he saw two energy signatures, one of a tall, muscular man and one of a short boy around Ray's height standing behind a tree, making him inwardly curse as he instinctively took up a fighting stance. I commend you for all your efforts so far, you caught us all by surprise. Who knew you and your buddy there had such a plan up your asses? Not to mention that you were about to kill about 60 people just now without even batting an eye. You have far exceeded my expectations, no wonder the boss really wants you. You're the real deal. I thought that you would be some pussy trying to act tough after a small power boost but I am happy to be proven wrong. A tall, spiky red-haired muscular man said as he slowly walked out from behind a tree with a confident, excited smile on his face. He wore a full set of heavy-looking dark blue armor that was embroidered in gold. On his head, he wore a bandana and no helmet, revealing his obnoxious red, spiky hair that Moby was not sure was natural or gelled. And, he also wore no night vision goggles which greatly confused Moby about how he was able to properly see. Beside him was a short, young-looking cyan-haired boy who seemed to only go up to the waist of his partner. He seemed to be quieter, more calm and collected than his friend, however, he gave off an even greater sense of confidence and arrogance as he wore nearly the exact same smile as the man beside him. Just like his friend, he wore no goggles and helmet, only opting to wear a bandana for head protection. The rest was a set of black and red armor that looked far more intimidating and expensive than that of his friends. Even without using his inspect skill, he could feel the immense amount of power exuding from them, making him instinctively take a step back and prepare for the worst. But sadly, your fun will now have to come to an end. You have angered the boss and brought shame upon our gang's name and reputation. And now you were trying to kill 60 of our most loyal newbies who we wanted to get some practice. We can't let that slide now can we? You should have joined when you had the chance, I bet you had no idea what it meant to reject our offer but you will now find out the hard way. I think a punishment is in order. And I will be your executioner. The red-haired boy said, slowly walking up to Moby with a smile. As for you Ray, I expected much better. You still betrayed us after everything we've done for you and the great rewards we promised. You're beyond saving. But no matter how much I want to kill you, I am not allowed to as you still have your uses. He continued, glancing over at Ray who inwardly shuddered, his eyes becoming all shaky from seeing his face again, fuck, it's Jason. Why at times like these? Ray inwardly cursed before screaming out to Moby. Hey. Let's run. Now. They are way too strong for you. They are ranked fourth and third in the gang. We got what we wanted. I am free of their grasp now. We can just flee before the retrieval team comes. If something happens we can just count everything else as self-defense so I shouldn't get in trouble with the school, you fool. It's not that simple. The system is not fair. The gang has many teachers under their belt that they could manipulate to fuck with the system. If you are caught you would be playing into their web. Our only option is to kill all the witnesses. So fleeing is not an option. We only have so much time before the retrieval team comes. We can't waste any time. Moby immediately retorted to Ray. Ray inwardly cursed as he had been very much out of the loop in regards to how much strength the gangs have and how far their corruption spread. He only now found out that his plan was fundamentally flawed from the start due to his lack of knowledge. All he could do now was follow Moby's lead and try to take Jason and Nags out before the retrieval team arrives, something he thought to be almost impossible. However, it was his only option in his circumstances. Nags and Jason could not help but be amused as they listened to the conversation going on between Moby and Ray, trying to hold in their laughter. The retrieval team. Ha 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 ha. That should be the least of your worries. We already paid off a teacher to delay the watch's emergency signals by two hours. We fully expected for there to possibly be a few deaths when confronting you since we were also training some newbies, and we didn't want the retrieval team interrupting us while we enacted our plans. We have a long two hours of pain and agony ahead of us. If I were you, I would be more frightened by the fact that the retrieval team won't be coming to save your asses from what is about to go down. Chapter 171 As soon as Moby heard the man's words, he inwardly took a sigh of relief. If the retrieval team was not coming anytime soon, that cut off most of his worries about the time crunch. It very much worked out in his favor since he had no plans of losing. Now, he was able to take his time in ensuring that he left no evidence behind, meaning that he had to eradicate every last person in the forest, including the two in front of him that Ray claimed he stood no chance against. So, Nags. You're really letting me take him on all by myself first? If you want we can team up on him and get it over with quick, I said that it's fine Jason. You kept on nagging about it so much that I couldn't take it much longer, just don't lose and become a disgrace, I might have to abandon you if that happens. Besides, if he can't even beat you he would never stand a chance against me, ha ha. Yeah, you fighting would be a waste of your time and effort. So, just let me take care of him. Once I whoop his ass we can both have fun with him and the pipsqueak, Moby noticed that the two students he now knew were called Nags, and Jason were just casually chatting between themselves like they did not see him as a threat, but a toy, as they talked about who wanted to play first which slightly annoyed Moby and rubbed him the wrong way. However, he would be lying if he said that he wasn't also satisfied. They were actually willing to take turns fighting him instead of going at him at the same time, which greatly increased his chances of survival due to their arrogance. He found that his opponent's actions gave him a good opportunity to do two things, check their stats and power level, and inform his friends about the situation and tell them to engage. 
No matter how strong they were, there was no way in hell they could withstand the assault of him and all of his family members, everyone. Engage. Follow my energy signal to my location, I have come across two strong enemies. Prepare to fight. Moby gave the order through his mind link with a passionate voice that reverberated strongly in the ears of all of his comrades, as they all gave him a strong response as they all answered his call to action with no hesitation, Jaden giving him an update that she would arrive in no less than five minutes. Now, in his mind, all he needed to do was hold out until the arrival of his friends for a guaranteed victory. As he inwardly smiled under his poker face of distress, he decided to inspect his enemy's status starting with Jason, the big, burly, spiky redhead. Asterisk 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 name, Jason Faust race, human ability, level 8 sound power level, 28,160, 24,160 plus 4,000, HP, 170, 170 mana, 621 and 621 strength, 812, 712 plus 100, agility, 632, 532 plus 100, endurance, 751, 651 plus 100, intelligence, 621, 521 plus 100, mind, 50 asterisk 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 as soon as Moby saw Jason's stats, he was almost unable to believe his eyes, making him blink a few times as he inspected his stats once more. It was not the fact that he was an A rank in terms of strength, around his own strength with his armor on, far from it, as it was exactly the type of strength he was expecting from him, what the fuck? How the hell does he have stats in mind as a human? Moby inwardly thought as it was the first time he saw such a thing, his mind spinning in circles. The only possible conclusion he could come up with was that his ability somehow had the ability to manipulate someone else's, mind in some way shape or form. Avilia did tell him that it was indeed possible for humans to have stats in mind but that demons had a much higher affinity to it. This meant that he should be on guard to watch out for any underhanded mind tactic that he might try to pull on him, however, that was not the only problem he was encountering. The only detail about his ability that his inspect skill provided him was that it was level 8, the same level as his, and that it was sound related, nothing more. He had no idea what that specifically meant as it could mean a multitude of things as there existed various different abilities, pertaining to sound, some much more powerful than others. The knowledge he gained from his research of abilities was serving to be somewhat useless, as his inspect skill was not giving him the exact names of the abilities of his opponents, now, he shifted his focus from Jason to Nags who was standing directly beside him, his arms confidently crossed as he continued to talk to Jason like he was not even there. Even though he knew that Nags was not going to be his opponent at the time, he still thought that it would be best to inspect him as well while he Still had the chance. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk name, Nags Older Ace, Human Ability, Level 9 Barrier Power Level, 33,390, 28,790 plus 4600, HP, 150 or 150 mana, 739 or 779 strength, 842, 712 plus 130, Agility, 732, 637 plus 95, Endurance, 986, 836 plus 150, Intelligence, 779, 694 plus 85, Mind, 0 asterisk, 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 Nags was clearly the stronger of the two. However, the mystery of his ability was not as big as his friends as Moby had already seen his barrier ability in action to block, his attack on the gang members still piled up on the ground, which only seemed to have made him use 40 mana to block such a powerful attack. At face value, his ability might seem very defense-centric, but under the right conditions, it could be used very offensively as well, all in all, Moby was happy that he had to fight Jason first instead of Nags which might have ended badly. If he was able to kill Jason before fighting Nags, he might be able to level up a few times to even the playing field. If these were only rank 3, and 4 of the gang, he was scared to find out how much stronger ranks 1 and 2 were, making him relieved that those people were not his current opponents. Okay Nags. I hope you don't regret your decision because I'm going to tear him to shreds before you even get the chance to lay a finger on him. He needs to be taught a lesson, Jason said with an amused voice, slowly approaching Moby's location as he punched both of his gauntlets against each other, making a loud clanking noise of metal clashing against metal. That was the moment that Moby snapped back into reality as he stopped wondering in his own thoughts, his friends should arrive any second now and all he had to do now was stall and hold out until then. Okay, but like I said before, I promise to not interfere in this fight no matter what. You are on your own. Prove your worth. Nag said with a smile as he casually sat on a nearby rock beside the barrier he erected for the pile of his fellow gang members. Ha ha. I would rather die than admit that I need your help. I would never allow myself to become such a disgrace. Don't help me no matter what. That would be a big insult and I would never forgive you if you did. Jason said in a playful yet serious voice, making Nags laugh out loud and agree in response. But, just for a little help, here you go, Nag said with a smile, snapping his fingers as he created a huge dome of yellow energy surrounding the area around one kilometer in diameter. Now they won't be able to run away and no one could come in and interrupt us without me being notified. Especially so the pipsqueak doesn't run away since I don't expect you to be taking him hostage for this fight, and he would have probably slipped away while you were distracted with the main target, Nags explained. Fine. But that's the only thing I will allow since I don't want to be interrupted in the middle of my fight. If anyone else somehow snuck past everyone and shows up knocking at our doorsteps then you go take care of them. Jason said in a confident voice before redirecting his attention to Moby and Ray, fuck my life, Moby inwardly cursed as he was not at all expecting such a thing to happen. He was about to send Ray off to go hide somewhere safe because he would have been useless in the fight. But there now seemed to be no use in doing that as he doubted that Ray would be strong enough to break through the barrier. However, as long as he stayed far away from their attacks, he should be safe. Assuming that they keep their words and don't take him hostage, something that he could of course not trust them on. The barrier also served to notify Nags, when someone else was coming meaning that his plans of his friends showing up and taking them by surprise just flew right out the window. Also, when Jason was talking, he heard him say, snuck past everyone, which hinted at there being more people hidden in the forest, probably for emergency or scouting purposes. The operation must have still been on a bigger scale than he expected. He needed to immediately inform his teammates about the new information that he just received, but before he even got the chance, he found out that he was already too late. Chapter 172 my lord. Alex and I have run into the enemy on my way to your location. 
There are two people and from my angle, I am unaware of their power levels as I am unable to see their watch. Fleeing does not seem like an option. Depending on how strong they are, we might be late my lord, Abby reported to Moby using her mind link. Yeah. Don't worry. We'll be there as soon as we destroy these two pricks. Just keep Ray safe for now until we arrive to help, Alex added, making Moby hold all of his emotions under his poker face. Before he even had the chance to warn them about the possibility of others in the forest, he was already too late. Those people did not appear when Abby scouted the forest and due to their low numbers, he could only assume one thing, that they were also high-ranking members of the Zexis gang. Ray. Stay back. You were a great help from before and now it's my turn to take care of the rest, Moby said with his hands out straight, motioning Ray to hide behind one of the trees. Ray understood Moby's intentions and did not complain or hesitate as he did as he was told. Good call. I would hate for him to get in our way and die. That would have been a problem since we both still need him alive, Jason laughed. Moby had to split his concentration between two tasks, the task of informing and listening to his friends, and the task of paying attention to what was going on in front of him which was much easier said than done, don't get too careless. Those aren't just fodder or ordinary people. They are definitely some high-ranking members of the gang. Don't underestimate them. Also, I will add to your orders, kill everyone in sight using any means you deem necessary. Due to the gang's actions, the watches have been disabled for the next hour, and we must leave no evidence behind since Ray had already chopped off the watch arms of various students. Any witnesses alive would risk us and him getting exposed. When I say by any means necessary I mean by any means necessary. Use your demon powers if you have to. Dead men don't talk. Just make sure no one else is watching and that they are not recording you and posting a video on the spot, which I doubt they would even think about doing in their predicament, Moby ordered using their mind link, also making Jaden here as well. Alex and Abby immediately agreed and understood their new orders. Although Abby was slightly sad and disappointed that she would not be fighting by her lord's side like she had hoped to do, she was still content with following orders. As for Alex, he felt like lowly scum like them who kidnap and torture innocent people like Ray are a waste of space and not worth living, so he had no qualms with killing them whatsoever. And, from what he understood from his new demon nature, he would also strengthen himself by doing so. I wish you good luck against your opponents, kill them all. Moby ordered once again in a firm voice, leading to Alex and Abby passionately responding before he closed the mind link between them, keeping Jaden on the line. I am kinda disappointed to have to fight you while you have no armor and weapons but I guess you should just thank your bad luck, Jason said with a confident smile as he looked at Moby's school attire from head to toe that seemed to lack even the simplest of weapons. Ha ha. Are you sure about that? Moby replied with a smirk, ripping off his school uniform only to reveal his katana, a new heavy set of black and purple frost armor underneath, making Jason, Nags, and even Ray go wide-eyed in disbelief. There was no way he had been hiding such heavy armor underneath his clothes, meaning that unless his armor had some special properties, he had just used his storage ring. Which was impossible since the school had disabled their use unless given express permission. What the fuck? How did you do that? Where were you hiding that armor? Impossible. Jason screamed in outrage, still in disbelief at what happened. Well, I just wore it under my school uniform of course. Just beat me and find out. It can't be that hard right? So why are you so impatient? Moby said, lying through his teeth as he just used his inventory. Asterisk asterisk name, Moby Kane race, draconic demon of sin ability, level 8 ice level, 50 xp to next level 45, 950 000, 000 dragon skill tree level, 2 dragon skill tree xp to next level, 0 of 500 power level, 28170, 23470 plus 4700 hp, 188, 188 demon energy, 702 of 702 mana, 702 of 702 demon energy of mana regeneration, 7.8 energy a minute strength, 746, 591 plus 155, agility, 722, 647 plus 75, endurance, 647, 497 plus 150, intelligence, 702, 612 plus 90, mind, 140, 100 plus 40, available points to distribute, 0 asterisk asterisk with his new armor, his power. Level was now very much equal to that of his opponent. However, he still considered himself at a disadvantage as he had no information about his opponent's ability, while his opponent had probably already done his research on him and knew most of his moves and techniques. Knowledge was key in winning a fight and the lack of it could prove to be fatal, Moby had no problem doing such a reckless move. If he was captured, the gang probably had some ways of extracting him out of his information using a lie detector or something along those lines. He should not hide anything from them as he planned to kill them anyway. Nothing was off-limits and he had to use his trump cards to his advantage. Only careful planning and strategy would allow him to win in his seemingly dire situation. For now, his opponents assumed that it must have been some property of his armor. They did not bother asking any more questions as, like he said, they would find out when they defeated him. This also made Jason extremely happy as he would now be able to fight Moby at his full strength, and not just accept a hollow victory of defeating someone that lacked proper equipment. The more they see of Moby the more they see why their boss wanted him so badly to the point of sending so many people after him, Jaden, don't come to my location, it is way too dangerous, there is a barrier around it and anyone who tries to enter would be immediately notified to the person who erected it, making him join the fight. You coming to help would only make it much harder for me, turning my 1 vs 1 with the weaker person into a 2 vs 2 fight where the stronger person joins. I somewhat have a plan in mind to defeat both of them and you joining in would only make my life harder, and make my chances of victory almost non-existent. Go help out Alex and Abby instead, and once you beat those people, then come and help me when all three of you could come together. I am not sure if I understand the full situation, but if you say that I would only be a hindrance then I believe you. Now is not the time to argue or play around. I trust your judgment and I'll go help Alex and Abby instead. I know that it will be tough for you and the last thing I want to do is make it harder. 
I wish you the best of luck, Kildera's honey, Jaden said with a mixture of seriousness and playfulness that made Moby inwardly smile at her response as he imagined her to be outraged, that he thought that she was too weak to join or that he didn't want her with him, yeah, thanks, and good luck to you too Jay honey, Moby said in a warm voice, inwardly smiling before closing their mind link, focusing back on the task at hand. The conversation with his friends took much longer than he expected. Splitting his focus was very mentally taxing for him and he was glad that it was over. Now he could stop his stalling and get ready to battle, as he saw his opponent take up a fighting stance. Enough chit chat. This is getting boring, why don't we get started? We have less than an hour to do this and we might as well get started now, Moby taunted, activating his eyes of sin that appeared to have seemingly no effect on his opponent who didn't even flinch at its activation, leading to him chuckling with a smirk on his face. Enough with your arrogance, now let me put you in your place. I'll show you what it meant when you decided to mess with us. Jason then relaxed his body and stood up straight, holding his hands out with metal, claw-like gauntlets as he put both his thumb and index finger together. Moby was not sure what was happening but he was certain that he was planning something, making him focus even harder on his opponent's seemingly casual movements, gripping the hilt of his katana tightly in anticipation. Asterisk snap asterisk the sound of Jason's metallic gloves slamming against each other rang throughout the entire forest. And in the next instant, before Moby had the chance to even react with his eyes of sin activated, Jason's large shadow had already been looming over him, his sharp, metallic fist covering his entire field of vision as it accelerated towards his face with incredible speed. Moby was punched so hard in the face that he was sent flying straight towards the tree right beside Ray, making him shudder and panic with a fearful look of despair and disbelief in his eyes as Moby's body flew right past him, creating a heavy gust of wind. The punch was so strong that his body skipped across the dirty soil and broke through several large trees before finally stopping, leaving his body seemingly motionless on the ground. Chapter 173 Moby, who was still in a state of shock, was on the dirty, muddy ground, staring at the black night sky above him that was unobstructed by any trees due to him breaking them during his impact. His face bore the impact of what like a cannon, despite his efforts of trying to block it in the last second. Luckily, although he felt extreme pain in his shaky face, there seemed to be no bones cracked or broken which would have taken a bit longer to heal with his demon regeneration. Moby could have easily forced himself to stand back up and fight, but he decided to play dead for a bit longer just to have time to himself as he needed to completely rethink his plans of attack. When he read that he had a sound ability, he had no idea that it would lead to what happened. In his mind, he thought that he would have extremely loud screams that annoyed and messed with people's ears allowing him to attack while his enemies were distracted, but he was sorely mistaken. The ability that Jason used was unlike anything he had ever seen or read about in his hours of ability research. However, that was to be expected, there was no way he would know everything. So, that only meant that he had to decipher his ability with the knowledge that he now knew. It seemed like a snap was what activated his ability. He snapped, and in the next second, he was already right in front of Moby's face. The only sound-related explanation that Moby could formulate was that when he snapped, he was able to travel through those sound waves at incredible speed to reach his destination, and his powers would only be activated as long as the sound wave lasts, making him need to snap once more. He also determined that Jason was not actually turning into sound waves, but his body just becomes really fast as he travels through them, which means that it is possible for him to be hit in the middle of his ability usage, however, all of that was, for now, nothing more than a theory. He had no idea if Jason needed to snap to activate his ability, and if he was limited to only travel through the sound waves of his snap. He also did not know if he was only able to move linearly as he had just done or if he was able to move non-linearly as well. And last but not least, he did not know if what he had just shown him was the full extent of his sound powers or if there was more, which he had no doubt in his mind was the case due to his stats in mind. Assuming everything he had just stated thus far was true, his ability seemed to be like a weaker version of Blink, that gave instant movement instead of the speed of sound. Plus, Blink did not require the user to do any hand gesture to activate, but the only downside was that its range was fairly lackluster compared to Jason's ability that allowed him to travel as long as his snap reached. And from the volume of his initial snap, it seemed like his metal gloves amplified the sound, making it reach farther which also reinforced the fact that he needed to snap to activate his ability, otherwise he would not have needed such specially made gloves. Since Moby was able to defeat Natalia with worse equipment and fewer skills when they had around the same power level, in theory, he should be able to do it much easier against Jason who he could more easily block, track and predict due to him having to snap before each activation. If he just didn't allow him to snap, he had nowhere to flee. He knew that it would still be a tough fight, but if he used his trump cards and current knowledge to his advantage, he felt like victory was already assured, making a smirk appear on his still bloody face. Hey, Nags. It's been a few minutes now. Do you think I killed him? Did the boss really expect that kid to be worthy of taking your place as the third seat? He wasn't even able to survive a single punch, if you killed him then you should be prepared to die by the hands of the boss, B but I didn't know he would be so fragile. Then, suddenly, in the middle of their conversation, a sudden blast of purple energy appeared out of nowhere, striking Jason in the face with immense force when he least expected it, creating a dust cloud in front of Jason's now bloody face, causing him to shout from the unexpected pain as he was unable to see his opponent, putting his hands in front of his face for protection, the only thing he was able to see through the dust cloud was a pair of two glowing eyes, confirming that his attacker was none other than Moby, then, suddenly, he felt several immense clanking sounds of metal clashing against metal coming from both of his hands, making his entire body shake but feel no pain as he panicked through a random kick in front of him that seemed to have hit absolutely nothing, this made him inwardly curse as he prepared himself to snap away. However, when he moved his hands, they for some reason, felt extremely slow, and before he even got the chance, his hand was struck by an immense force that did not allow him to snap as his guard was almost completely blown away. At first, the attacks that were hitting him were fairly weak as they just bounced off of his armor, almost like they were nothing. However, the more they came the stronger the attacks got as well to the point of them being able to cut through his armor with moderate difficulty, allowing who he could only assume to be Moby, to be able to strike his flesh. He noticed, that the brunt of the attacks were directed at his hands and arms that were blocking his face instead of his armored yet exposed body right under. Get the fuck away from me you filthy bug. Jason screamed in outrage as he completely ignored snapping as it didn't work the last time, opting to roll away out of the dust cloud instead. 
but, just like before, his movements were still for some reason extremely slow, making Moby follow him once more, as he created another cloud of dust that obstructed Jason's vision allowing him to continue his seemingly never-ending onslaught of attacks, cutting through his armor now with ease as he was able to cause some real damage to both Jason's body, and arms as blood began dripping from his figure, dyeing his armor and the grass under him crimson red. Moby followed him no matter where he tried to go. And whenever he tried to snap, he was always interrupted as his body kept on feeling slower and slower, as the seemingly never-ending attacks that only seemed to get stronger every second kept on weighing on him. It was the first time he had ever experienced such a thing, the feeling that he was unable to snap away when things got dicey. Moby Kane was much stronger than he first expected. He had no idea that he was so dangerous. He must have only pretended to be knocked out from his first attack. He was being too reckless and overconfident, he should have ended it when he had the chance instead of lazing around, waiting for him to stand up. Jason now felt trapped, like he was being ensnared in a trap where there was no escape other than death. No matter what he tried to do, he was just too slow to do anything, but, despite his heavily injured, dire situation, he was not ready to give up. There was no way he would allow himself to lose as a high-ranking member of the Zexis gang. He would rather die than show shame to them, the same gang that took him in and got him to the level of strength he was at today. Without them and the boss, he was nothing, and he did not want to repay their help with disgrace, he would not allow himself to, no matter what, Jason gritted his teeth, and strengthened his stance, his eyes narrowing down into slits, his anger and frustration became more and more immense as he prepared himself to use every fiber of his being to win the fight, and, unannounced to him, his inner spirit felt their host's strong emotions and will to live, making it resonate more with him, giving him a way out of his predicament. Didn't you hear me the first time? Get the fuck away from me you filthy bug. Jason screamed his heart out, letting out various shockwaves of sound that rang throughout the entire forest, and even made Nag's barrier slightly wobble from the strong shock waves. The waves completely blew away the dust cloud obstructing his vision alongside Moby who had a devilish smirk on his face, about to deliver the finishing blow, who now crashed to the side of a rock with an immense clatter. Although his ears seemed to somehow be unharmed, the damage from the impact was still somewhat significant. However, that was far from being the biggest problem, making Moby inwardly curse his seemingly never-ending bad luck as he tightly gripped both of his katanas. Moby's plan was going perfectly. He waited until his opponent looked away from him due to his arrogance and carefree nature, giving him the chance for an easy blast when he least expected to both damage and obstruct his vision. Then, before he had the chance to react and snap away, he came into close quarters, using both his ice stick and his novice demon katana dual wielded. Using both of them at once did not give him any extra stats as it only took the stats of the more powerful item but, it allowed him to benefit from both of their effects at once. They were a deadlier combo than he had first imagined, especially against Jason who had to fully rely on snapping. With his ice stick, he would ensnare his opponent until he became too slow to flee or get away from his combo, and with his novice demon katana, he would continue to attack with continuously stronger slashes. Once Jason got stuck in the combo, there was seemingly no escape as he was too slow to do anything. Moby focused most of his attacks on Jason's hands, trying his best to attack and cut them off. Without his hands, he would be unable to snap and use his ability which would have no doubt guaranteed his victory. At first, his attack seemed to be doing little to no damage as Jason probably expected his opponents to be wanting to cut off his arms, so he made his armor much stronger in that area. However, with the strength of his novice demon katana, he was slowly but surely cutting away at it to the point that it only needed one more strike before both of his arms fell off. But, he and his combo were both suddenly and abruptly stopped. All of his careful planning going to waste by what he could only assume was Summer's pull, plot armor, power of determination bullshit he had seen in so many anime that Jaden had recommended him to watch in his free time, then, he remembered Leo's words about inner spirits and about how they could resonate with a person's feelings and emotions, especially in the middle of a fight, which only confirmed his suspicion. Moby looked at Jason's heavily injured figure who was tightly clenching his teeth, heavy breathing with unbridled rage in his eyes that most likely made him ignore all the pain and damage he had sustained, he doubted that he would let his guard down so easily and he doubted that he would get off another deadly combo like he had before. It seemed like his arrogant, superior attitude had completely disappeared as he was now completely driven and blinded by rage and the need for victory. Anything else in his mind was secondary, Moby was now really annoyed but he was nowhere near ready to give up. He knew that he now had to use his opponent's rage to his advantage as he prepared to switch to plan B, looking straight at the river and waterfall in the distance that was still luckily in the area of Nag's barrier. Chapter 174 You. Cheap. Lucky. Son of a bitch. While I was playing nice, you were just playing dirty. Well, fuck that shit. Now you're dead. Jason's voice rang throughout the entire forest, nothing but rage filling his eyes. Heh, tough talk for a fellow with a small cock. You're just making up excuses for your failure. Just face it. You're weaker than me and you're a disgrace to your gang. Moby replied with clear mockery in his voice, not even suppressing his laughter that made Jason's blood boil even more. Shut the fuck up. Before I kill you, I'll have fun ripping off your tongue and feeding it to you for uttering those words. Jason screamed in outrage, as he prepared to snap his fingers when he suddenly noticed that in between his monologue, Moby's figure had disappeared and ran off into the forest. Get back here you fucking coward. Jason roared once more, his anger only growing more, and more as he snapped his fingers, disappearing from his spot to run after him. Throughout the entire fight, Nags had been silently analyzing it all from the sideline and he was very impressed to say the least. Moby was toying around with Jason like he was nothing by somehow making him slower with every attack he delivered. The more he looked at him the more he understood why the boss wanted him so badly, making his respect towards him grow each time he wanted to scream out to Jason that if it came to it, he should not kill Moby but that would have just interrupted his raging state. Plus, he did promise to torture him first before killing him so he just decided to calm him down if he won the fight. Nags was still interested in spectating so he decided to follow both Moby and Jason, leaving his injured fellow gang members who were still in his defensive barrier behind, as he began to hop from tree to tree right behind the action. Moby was meticulously using his air steps alongside his combat knowledge to jump from tree to tree like he was a ninja, while Jason who was tailing him was nowhere near as graceful as he broke through every tree in his path in his pursuit to catch up to Moby. 
That confirmed one of Moby's theories, the theory that Jason was only able to travel linearly using his ability since if that was not the case, he would have traveled around the trees instead of breaking and going through them which no doubt greatly slowed him down as he had to stop at every tree his sound waves hit. However, despite all of that, he was still slowly but surely catching up to him which was less than ideal. He was still fairly far away from the waterfall which was his destination, so he began to speed himself up using his demon flash with every step that he took which used up a great amount of demon energy, but it was demon energy he was more than willing to spend, yet, in spite of all his efforts, Jason was still able to reach him in the end. Now I got you, you little bug. Jason screamed with a crazy look on his face, snapping his fingers as he reached Moby's location, immediately throwing a punch with his metallic gloves. Moby had already predicted his attack due to him having to snap, making him turn around using his freezing time skill to slow down Jason's movements, allowing him to just barely dodge his speeding attack, giving him the opportunity to counter. He unequipped his novice demon Kartana and threw it back in his inventory, giving him free use of his fists, as it would do little to no damage if it was not used in a combo. Plus, not to mention the fact that Kartanas, in general, were not very effective against heavily armored targets. He infused his fists with nearly every last drop of his remaining demon energy, and used the opportunity to strike Jason's lungs with all of his might in order to knock the wind out of him and slow him down, cracking his armor even more, making him slightly stagger, clenching the area of impact in pain as he landed on a nearby tree branch. Normally, that blow would have not done nearly as much damage. However, due to Jason's already heavily injured, fatigued state, it was much more effective. Asterisk, cough, asterisk, you. You'll pay for this. Jason's voice resounded through the air once more as he immediately snapped his fingers to follow Moby who had already fled even farther away, not even taking the time to properly catch his breath, since Moby was now all out of demon energy, he had to deactivate his eyes of sin as he was not able to sustain it any longer which heavily slowed him down. And, now, using his freezing time skill would also be futile. This meant that it would be virtually impossible for him to dodge another one of Jason's attacks. With his current stats, he was only able to sustain his eyes of sin for around 6 minutes, and along with the use of his other skills like air steps, freezing time, and pure demon energy, it managed to drain his demon energy reserves faster than he had expected. The useless feeling of being out of demon energy was something he didn't want to experience and put him at an even greater disadvantage than anything else. This wake-up call made him realize now more than ever that he should prioritize his intelligence stat over everything else in a dirt to use, his extremely powerful skills that came at a high energy cost. He had put a fair amount of distance between them, but it was only a matter of time before he caught up to him again, especially in his now slower, weakened state. Just a little bit longer. Moby inwardly thought as he had nearly reached his destination, using every ounce of energy in his body to force himself to go even faster as he could now pick up on the sound of the waterfalls. Distinct crashes. You're not getting away this time, bitch. Jason bellowed with a mad look on his face, snapping his fingers as he was once again in range for an attack, and this time, he had no plans of missing. Moby inwardly cursed his bad luck, he was so close. But he had no plans of losing or giving up as he used his quick thinking to find a way out and make it work out in his favor. With a subtle smirk on his face, he turned around with his hands blocking his visage, keeping his momentum, no intentions of dodging as it would have been futile. Die. Jason screamed as he appeared right in front of Moby, punching him straight in his arms that had suddenly sprung up to guard his face. Cracks were heard from both Moby's arms before he was sent flying in the direction behind him at incredible speed. The impact from his punch was several times harder than that of the first punch that he delivered to him. He was either holding back or he had gotten much stronger due to his inner spirit, the second option being the more likely. Just like before, Moby crashed through several trees, breaking through them like they were twigs. Then, after what he felt like endless crashing and airtime, he felt a cold, soothing sensation as he suddenly lost his ability to breathe. He was now fully submerged in water, most likely the river in front of the waterfall he was aiming for. It all worked out exactly as he planned. He angled himself perfectly in order to boost himself using Jason's punch to his destination. It was extremely risky as it was not guaranteed that he would have landed in the river. Plus, he had to sustain an insane amount of damage to boost himself. But in the end, it was all worth it, it all seemed to have worked out perfectly. Now all he needed to do was lure Jason straight into his trap, Moby forced his injured body to stand up, the water reaching around the middle of his thighs as he began to limp away towards the waterfall in what could only be described as fear and desperation. However, he only managed to reach about halfway to the waterfall before a great slashing sound came from behind him. Ha ha ha. Where did that confident attitude of yours disappear to? Now you look so pathetic. What kind of stupid idea are you thinking? That the waterfall could maybe block or drown out the sound of my snaps. Tough luck. Such a plan would never work. Jason screamed, his arrogance starting to come back as his anger began to slightly subside. Nags, who had been spectating the entire exchange from a tree above the river was looking down at Moby with clear disappointment in his eyes, paying close attention to his sorry, pathetic state. He thought much more from him. He thought that he might have even been able to give him an exciting fight, but it seemed like he was sorely mistaken, and thought of him in too high of a regard, he just got his hopes up for nothing. His previous antics must have all just been from the result of luck. Asterisk sigh, asterisk, you disappointed me. The boss must have made the same mistake I did by overestimating your abilities. What a shaw dash, Nags said in a bored yet casual tone before biting his tongue as he looked down at what was happening beneath him. Now die. Jason yelled with a creepy look on his face, his legs fully submerged in the river's water, as he stared at Moby's behind limping away from his direction. Asterisk snap asterisk, what the fuck? Asterisk snap asterisk asterisk snap asterisk asterisk snap asterisk asterisk snap asterisk, why isn't this working? Asterisk snap asterisk 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 asterisk snap asterisk, you bitch. What did you do to me? I can't move. Jason roared in outrage, his anger boiling up once more, making Moby reply with a less than innocent smirk on his face. Look under you. When he did, he noticed thick, purple ice growing out of the water beneath him, as it quickly began to grow and spread around his entire body. What? How is this possible? Is there an ice ability user somewhere near here? Did you set me up with one of your friends? You fucking dirty coward. 
Jason roared in outrage, smashing the ice underneath him as it began to grow, only for him to be too slow, as he was unable to stop the ice's advances on his body as it had already spread to the top of his chest. No, that was all me, why don't you look at this? Moby said with a confident, mocking tone as he pointed out the trail of purple ice spreading from his body towards Jason. Ah. You'll fucking pay for this. I am not sure how you did this, but you have embarrassed and mocked me for the last fucking time. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll fucking kill you. Jason roared before he was able to scream no more as a thick layer of purple ice engulfed his entire body, making Moby laugh out loud in victory, relief, and hilarity as he stared at Jason who was frozen with a less than pleasant expression on his face. Chapter 175. Nags, who was still standing on a tree branch spectating the fight could not believe his own eyes. Was Moby the first person to ever wield two abilities or did his ability also include purple ice as part of its repertoire? At this point, he was not able to tell. But, since Jason was swiftly defeated he knew that it was his turn and he could take his time forcing the information out of him. He did not care for saving Jason just like he promised, he brought it upon himself and now he was about to face the consequences. Nevertheless, before he went down to Moby's location, he decided to verify Jason's theory of there possibly being someone that was in the forest before he had erected his barrier, and that person was the one who used the ice ability to win by using a dirty tactic. Yet, just like he expected, after hopping around from tree to tree around the area, he found absolutely nothing, meaning that Moby's claims were no bluff. However, as he was ready to hop down from the trees to reveal himself, something even more unexpected happened, making Nags laugh like a madman, clenching his stomach before once again sitting back to enjoy the show. Moby's strategy of luring Jason into water, where his ice powers were buffed, was very risky in more ways than one, especially since he did not know how much better his basic ice manipulation skill had strengthened his ice powers, as he did not have time to test it out due to the fact that he was searching for Ray all day. It was his only choice since all he had left was his nearly full reserve of mana since his demon energy was all, but depleted. He took a massive gamble since this was his first ever time testing out his ice powers after his boost, and he would be lying to say that he was disappointed. It worked out much better than he expected. The ice, using the water as a means to strengthen it, was relatively easy to control and it was extremely difficult for Jason to break off as he was still in a very injured state, more than he could have ever dreamt of getting out of his ability from before. Moby now stood up straight from his previous hunch and removed his arm that was clenched onto another one like it was broken, as he had no more reasons to pretend or overplay his injuries in order to lure in his opponent since he already got him right where he wanted him. As Moby approached Jason's frozen body to do what he had to do, he began to hear small cracks coming from his direction. At first, he thought that he must have stepped on a twig or that he must have just imagined it. However, when he looked back over at Jason, he noticed large cracks beginning to appear on the ice surrounding him, making it shake like crazy, this made Moby panic as he knew what this meant, Jason was somehow about to free himself from the ice prison binding him. Moby threw away all of his previous plans and focused on just solely killing Jason before he was able to completely break out. He sprinted straight towards him with all of his might, instinctively putting his hand out in order to blast his demon energy only for it to not work. As he cursed his stupidity he shifted to using his other energy source that he was not used to having just yet, his mana. He lifted his hands in the air and with the aid of the water surrounding him, he created five spears of ice, immediately throwing them towards Jason, aiming straight for his head in order to deal the finishing blow, however, right before the spears could make impact, they were suddenly and abruptly blocked by wing-like, blue, unknown energy that almost seemed to be fueled by sound waves that emerged from Jason's back. What the fuck is that? Moby blurted out in shock as he was unable to understand what had just happened, and what kind of power that was. His attack seemed to be ineffective, so the only thing he could do was try his best to hold Jason in place by strengthening his ice. He knew that it would undoubtedly waste a great chunk of mana doing so, but he had to take the chance just in case that it worked. He lifted both of his hands out in front of him as he began to strengthen his ice prison, sweat running down his face. Yet, despite all his efforts, he was still unable to keep up with the rate the ice was breaking, making him internally curse as he watched the scene he did not want to see unfold right in front of his eyes, before he knew it, Jason was now free, free to do whatever he wanted as he laughed maniacally, his wings flapping as he floated in the air above the river with a beyond crazy look on his injured, bloody face, a few visible veins popping out. Ha 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 ha. I'm free. You sly little fucking bug. I'm finally free. Did you miss me? You really thought you had me didn't you bitch? But seems like all your little tricks have run out. You have no idea what I'm gonna do to your ass. Just you wait. I'll show you what true power looks like. I'll fucking tear you to shreds and piss on your remains before I feed them to the dogs. There's no getting away this time. Jason shrieked like he had completely lost his mind, celebrating his newly acquired freedom with deranged laughter, blue, sound energy with what looked like musical notes surrounded his entire body. The energy formed more than just two wings that sprouted out of his back, but also two extra long ears coming out of his head, a small, thin tail that protruded from his behind, short yet sharp claws, and the same kind of blue, sound energy glowing from his eyes. He looked exactly like a bat. The connection was unmistakable. Moby could not believe his eyes, what he saw was something that he had only seen on Firewatch when he was doing his ability research. Spirit mode. A mode that could only be activated by an ability user who had reached enough of a connection and bond with their inner spirit. When the mode was activated, a person's ability strength is greatly increased and the person begins to take on properties from their inner spirit's looks and attributes. This meant that Jason's inner spirit was that of some sort of bat and he had strengthened and evolved his bond so much during their fight to the point that it now allowed him to tap into his spirit mode, something that Moby did not expect seeing in his current situation. The only person he had ever seen possibly use such a technique was just the day before during the Griffith family party, when Mason Griffith, Jaden's father, used it to silence the crowd with his drowning, overwhelming strength. Moby's streak of never-ending bad luck seemed to indeed truly be never-ending. No matter what careful planning he did, no matter how much effort he put, his plan seemed to always work at first only to be thwarted by some unknown mean that he could only describe as bullshit. He and Lady Luck seemed to have never really been on good terms but he really wished that it would change in the future. 
In his current injured and drained state, his only option for victory was to activate his sin mode and use those effects to heal, restore, and buff himself in order to combat, and possibly even overcome Jason's spirit mode. He was already forced to reveal one of his trump cards, his ice powers, and he really did not want to reveal both, especially in front of Nags who he knew was no doubt spectating. He really wanted to save sin mode when he needed to fight Nags, since the five minute time limit would not allow him to fight both of them while it was active. But, despite his urges, even if he would lose the element of surprise that came from his two trump cards, his ice powers and his sin mode, survival was still his top priority. I'll make you pay for all the shit you made me go through. You have made a mockery out of me and the gang for the last time. You're dead, you're dead, you're fucking dead. You're dead. Jason roared as he flapped his wings, flying straight towards the injured Moby at incredible speed, his tongue out with a disgusting look on his face as he put his fist out ready strike. However, halfway in the air before he was able to reach Moby, he heard several cracks coming from his body enter his ears. What followed was the most immense pain that he had ever experienced before in his entire life as he felt all of his muscles and organs throbbing, and his bones breaking, causing a huge splash as he dropped straight into the river. His extremely injured body had already been pushed far beyond its limits. The entire time, extreme pain was ravaging through his entire system, but due to his adrenaline and blinding anger, all that pain was simply ignored as it continued to pile up. Now that pain had gotten to the point where it would be impossible to ignore, and where he had pushed his body to the point that it would not be able to properly function. The possible strain on the body from using spirit mode most likely also added onto that fact. The human body could only sustain so much after all, Jason's body was completely submerged in water, his eyes extremely blurry as he was about to pass out from everything that just happened. He cursed Moby along with his entire existence as he tried his best to move his body and stand up in the extremely shallow water, however, despite all of his efforts, he was not able to move or even do anything. Why did his body have to shut down the moment he felt victory was so near and the moment he had finally-